Welcome to the Velvet Room. Ah, it seems we have a guest with an intriguing destiny. <laughs> My name is Igor. I am delighted to make your acquaintance. This place exists between dream and reality, mind and matter. It is a room that only those who are bound by a contract may enter. It may be that such a fate awaits you in the near future. Now then, why don't you introduce yourself? Hmm, I see. Now, let's take a look into your future, shall we? Do you believe in fortune telling? Each reading is done with the same cards, yet the result is always different. <laughs> Life itself follows the same principles, doesn't it? Hmm. The tower in the upright position represents the immediate future. It seems a terrible catastrophe is imminent. The card indicating the future beyond that is... The moon in the upright position. This card represents hesitation and mystery. Very interesting indeed. It seems you will encounter a misfortune at your destination, and a great mystery will be imposed upon you. In the coming days, you will enter into a contract of some sort, after which you will return here. The coming year is a turning point in your destiny. If the mystery goes unsolved, your future may be forever lost. My duty is to provide assistance to our guests to ensure that does not happen. Ah, I have neglected to introduce my assistant to you. This is Margaret. She is a resident of this place, like myself. My name is Margaret. I am here to accompany you through your journey. We shall attend to the details another time. Until then, farewell. With the refreshing taste of calorie magic. And we're back. Now on to some juicy news. The Mayumi Yamano scandal. I'm sure everyone is... <laughs> first he bags a singer, then he has an affair with a TV announcer on the side. Do chicks really dig politicians? Isn't it just stuff like money and connections? When you get down to it, financial and political clout is what matters. Hey, 
What is that supposed to mean? Well, what do you think? Well, I'm sure that you all know already, but at the end of this month, he will be transferring to another school. Quiet down, guys. I'm not done yet. We will arrive at the Yasugami Terminal in a few minutes. Passengers headed for Inaba City and Yaso Inaba Station Please go to the other side of the platform. <clears throat> the scandal involves the Enka star Misuzu Hiragi preparing to tour overseas. Taro Namatame, a council secretary in the Inaba region, whom she married just last year, is now under suspicion of having an affair. What's more, his rumored mistress is the well-known TV oh, announcer. Oh, should we go Bino. soon? Yeah, it's just about. The question on everyone's minds is how this love triangle will affect... Hey, over here. Well, you're more handsome in person than in your photo. Welcome to Inaba. I'm Ryotaro Dojima. I'll be looking after you. Let's see, I'm your mother's younger brother, and that about sums it up. I'll say, you've really grown. I still remember when you were in diapers. This here's my daughter. Come on, Nanako. Introduce yourself to your cousin. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> what are you so shy for? Ow! <laughs> <laughs> well then, let's get going. My car's over there. Hey. You drop this. Whatever. All I did was pick it up. What's wrong? Can you go to the bathroom by yourself? Uh-huh. It's in the back, to your left. You know which way's left? The side you don't hold your chopsticks in. I know. Jeez. Are you taking a trip? No, we just went to pick him up. He just moved here from the big city. A city, huh? Fill up my car while you're at it. Regular's fine. Right away, sir. Good time as any for a smoke. Are you in high school? Does it surprise a city boy to see how little there is out here? There's so little to do, I'm sure you'll get bored fast. You'll either be hanging out with your friends or doing part-time jobs. Speaking of which, we're actually looking for part-time help right now. Give it some thought, why don't you? We don't mind if you're a student.
Oh, I should get back to work. Are you okay? Did you get car sick? You don't look too good. What's wrong? You okay? That's understandable. It must have been a long trip for you. Why not take a little walk? Get some fresh air. Just let me know when you're ready to go. All right, let's have a toast. So, your mom and dad are busy as always. They're working overseas, was it? I know it's only for a year, but getting stuck in a place like this because of your parents? It's rough being a kid. Well, it's just me and Nanako here, so it'll be nice having someone like you around. So long as you're here, you're part of the family. So make yourself at home. <laughs> Come on, there's no need to be so formal. <laughs> Look, you're making Nanako all tense. Well, anyway, let's eat. Oh, who's calling at this hour? Dojima speaking. Mm hmm. Yeah? I see. So where is it? Uh-huh. All right, I'm on my way. Looks like I made the right choice to skip the booze. Sorry, but I gotta go take care of some business. Go ahead and eat without me. I don't know how late I'll be. Nanako, you help him out, okay? Okay. Nanako, it's raining out. What did you do with the laundry? I already brought it in. All right. Well, I'm off. For this week. Next, let's take a look at the hourly breakdown of tomorrow's weather. With storm clouds moving in from the west, expect rain throughout the day tomorrow in most areas. Let's eat. It 
It's always like this. My dad's a detective. And now for the local news. City Council Secretary Taro Namatame is under fire for an alleged relationship with a female reporter. His wife, Enka ballad sensation Misuzu Hiragi, revealed to this station that she will likely pursue damages. In response, iTelevision has decided to cancel all of announcer Mayumi Yamano's televised appearances. Until allegations of an affair with Mr. Namatame are resolved, she'll remain off the air and out of the public eye. This is boring. At Tunis, every day is Customer Appreciation Day. Come see for yourself and get in touch with our products. Every day is great at your Tunis. Every day is great at your Tunis. Aren't you going to eat? Breakfast ready.
the morning. Okay, let's eat. There was some kind of trouble. You won't be back. You're starting school today, right? My school's on the way, so let's go together. straight from here. My school's this way. Bye! teacher here is Moraoka, isn't it? Yeah, it's King Moron, all right. We get to enjoy his long-ass sermons every day for a whole year. Hey, you guys, I heard there's going to be a transfer student from the city in this class. Huh? Really? A guy or a girl? A transfer student from the city? Just like you, huh, Yosuke? Huh? You look dead today. Yeah, um... I don't want to talk about it. What's with him? Who knows? All right, shut your traps. I'm Kinshiro Moraoka, your homeroom teacher from today forward. First things first, just because it's spring doesn't mean you can swoon over each other like love-struck baboons. Long as I'm around, you students are going to be pure as the driven snow. Now, I hate wasting my time, but I'd better introduce this transfer student. This sad sack's been thrown from the big city out to the middle of nowhere like yesterday's garbage. And he's just as much of a loser here as he was there. So you girls better not get any ideas about hitting on him. Tell him your name, kid, and make it quick. What's that look you're giving that girl back there by the window? You thought I wouldn't notice? Now listen up! This town is miles away from your big city of perverts and assholes in more ways than one. You'd better not even think of getting involved with the girls here, let alone abusing them. But what do I know? It's not like the old days. Even here, kids grow up so damn fast. Every time I turn my back, you're fooling around on those damn phones, checking your life journals and your my places. Excuse me, is it okay if the transfer student sits here? Huh? Yeah, sure. You hear that? Your seat's over there. So hurry up and sit down already. He's the worst, huh? Rotten luck for you to get stuck in this class. Well, we just have to hang in there for a year. Sucks to be the transfer student, ending up in King Moron's class on the first morning here. Yeah, he won't think twice about suspending you if you get on his bad side. And then again, we're all in the same boat. Shut your traps! I'm taking roll, and I damn well expect you to respond in an orderly manner. Huh? 
That's all for today. Normal lectures will start tomorrow. Attention all teachers. Please report immediately to the faculty office for a brief staff meeting. All students must return to their classrooms and are not to leave the school until further notice. Ugh. You heard the announcement. Don't go anywhere until you hear otherwise. He's seriously getting on my nerves. Did something happen? Don't those sirens sound really close? Ah, I can't see a damn thing. Freaking fog. Yeah, like every time it rains lately, it gets all foggy. Hey, did you hear? I hear that paparazzi's looking all over for that announcer. Oh yeah, you mean Mayumi Yamano, right? I heard some guy spotted her at the shopping district. Actually, I heard that. Are you serious? Hey, Yukiko-san. Mind if I ask you something? Is it true that announcer staying at your family's inn? I can't discuss such things. Yeah, I guess not. Oh, sheesh. How much longer is this gonna take? There's no telling. I should have left before the announcement came on. By the way, did you try what I told you the other day? You know, that thing about rainy nights. Oh. No, not yet. Sorry. Aw, uh, that's okay. It's just, I heard a guy in the class next door yell something like, My soulmate is Yamino, the announcer. Attention, all students. There has been an incident inside the school district. Police officers have been dispatched around the school zone. Please stay calm and contact your parents or guardians as soon as possible and quickly leave the school grounds. Do not disturb the police officers. Head directly home. I repeat. Incident? What? Something actually happened? Come on, let's go take a look. Are you going home by yourself? Why don't you come with us? Oh, nearly forgot. I'm Chie Satanaka. You know, I sit next to you, right? Well, nice to meet you. This is Yukiko Amagi. Oh, nice to meet you. I'm sorry that this is so sudden. Come on, don't apologize like that. It makes me look like I got no upbringing. I just wanted to ask some stuff, really. That's all. Uh, um, Miss Satanaka, this was really awesome. Like, the way they moved was just amazing to see. And I'm really sorry, it was an accident. Please just have mercy until my next paycheck. See ya, thanks. Stop right there. What did you do to my DVD? Are you worried about me? He's fine, Yukiko. Let's ditch him and go home. You're Yuki, right? Y you want to go hang out somewhere? What? Who are you? What's up with him? What school's he from? Never mind that. He's going for Yukiko-san? Man, you'd think he'd at least wait until she's alone to make his move. I bet you a can of tap he gets knocked out. <laughs> no bet. Haven't you heard how difficult the Amagi challenge is? Uh, so are, are you coming or not? I, I'm not going. Fine! 
did he want from me? What did he want? Uh, obviously he was asking you out on a date. Huh? Really? You really had no clue? Sheesh. But then again, that was way over the top. It was creepy how he called you Yuki all of a sudden. Yo, Yukiko-san. Turned down another lovelorn fool, huh? Man, you're cruel. You got me the same way last year. I don't recall doing that. Oh, are you serious? So then you want to hang out sometime? I'd rather not. That'll teach me to get my hopes up. Anyways, you two better not pick on the transfer student too much. We're just curious is all! Um, I'm sorry for dragging you into this. Come on, let's go! Everyone's staring. So you came here because of your parents' job? <laughs> I thought it was something way more serious. There really is nothing here, huh? That's what makes it nice. But there is nothing much we can show to people from outside. Though there is something from Mount Yasagami. I think our dyed clothes or pottery or something is kind of famous. Oh, wait! And there's the Amagi Inn! Yukiko's family runs it. It's the pride of Inaba. Huh? It's just an old inn. No way! It's been in all sorts of magazines as a hidden treasure! It's a great inn. It's been going for generations, and Yukiko here is going to take over someday. Their inn actually attracts a lot of visitors to Inaba. It pretty much keeps this town going. I don't think that's entirely true. So, tell me. You think Yukiko's cute, huh? Oh, I knew it! Come on, don't start this again. She's really popular at school, but she's never had a boyfriend. Kinda weird, huh? Come on, stop it. Y you shouldn't believe that, okay? It's not true that I'm popular or that I've never had a boyfriend. Wait, no, no, no. What I meant to say was I, I don't need a boyfriend. Jeez, Chie. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. But this is our chance to talk to someone from the big city. And you barely said a word. Hey, what's that? <laughs> So that high schooler left school early, and as she came down this street... Wow! Who could imagine that hanging from an antenna? I wanted to see it too. Oh, you got here too late. The police and fire department took it down just a moment ago. Well, I think it's terrifying. I can't believe a dead body showed up around here. Wait, what did she just say? A dead body? What are you doing here? Huh. I should have figured that'd happen. That damn principal. We told him not to let them through here. You know this guy? I'm Detective Dojima, his guardian. Uh, well, how should I say this? I hope you get along with him. But you three really ought to stop wandering around and head straight home. Adachi, how long are you going to act like a rookie? You want to be sent back to the central office? I'm sorry. <clears throat> oh, go wash your face. We're going to go around and gather information. Was this what that announcement was about? What do they mean it was hanging from the antenna? Hey, Yukiko, why don't we go to Juness some other time? Good idea. All right, then, we're taking off. 
Starting tomorrow, neighbor, let's do our best. I wonder if Dad's not coming home again tonight. Our top story this evening concerns a bizarre case in a quiet suburb. Around noon today, a woman was found dead near the Samegawa River in Inaba. The deceased has been identified as Miss Mayumi Yamano a 27-year-old announcer at the local television station. The initial results of the Inaba Police Department's investigation have revealed... Uh, the, the Inaba Police Department! That's where Dad works! Uh-uh. <sighs> it's his job, so things like this happen. The body was found hanging from a large television antenna atop a local resident's roof. Authorities are uncertain as to why the body was in such a state. With the cause of death also uncertain, police continue to investigate whether the death is an accident or a homicide. A thick fog common to the area has slowed their progress, and plans to fully canvas the area are delayed until tomorrow. the roof? That's scary. <gasps> oh, it's Juness. At Juness, every day is Customer Appreciation Day. Come see for yourself and get in touch with our products. Every day's great at your Juness. Every day's great at your Juness. You memorized it already? <laughs> I'm the best one in my class. Someone! <laughs> you saved me. Thanks. Um... Oh yeah, that's right. You're that transfer student. I'm Yosuke Hanamura. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Say, did you hear about the incident from yesterday? They found that announcer lady hanging from an antenna. You think it was some kind of warning? There's no way something that weird could have been an accident. Dangling a dead body over a roof like that? That's just messed up. Then again, it's pretty messed up to kill someone in the first place. Oh crap, we're late. You want a ride? It's a little squeaky, but it should be fine.
So, are you getting used to this place? Wow, that was fast. There isn't much to do here compared to the big city. But there is that certain something you can't get anywhere else. The air is clean, the food's great. Oh, you know about the local delicacy? It's grilled steak, man. Like that's anything special, huh? I know a place where you can get it cheap. Wanna come? You helped me out this morning, so it's on me. What about me, huh? No apologies? My trial of the dragon? You always come around when I'm talking about food. How bad at Yukiko? Don't you think he should treat us too? I'll pass. I don't want to gain any more weight. I need to help out at the end today anyway. Wow, Yukiko-san. You started training to take over the business? It's not like that. I'm just helping out when it gets busy. Well, I should be on my way. Oh well, we should get going too. Huh? Do I seriously have to treat two people? This is the cheap place you were talking about? Ugh, they don't have grilled steak here. Yeah, well, once you hopped on the freeloader train, I had to change my plans. Still, that's no reason to take us to your place. Dude, this isn't my place or anything. Oh, right. I haven't told you yet, huh? I moved here from another city about six months back. This location just opened up and my dad was assigned to manage it. So our entire family came out here. Here, this is to welcome you to town. Sadonaka, yours is on me too. Yeah, I know. It's only been half a year since this place opened up, but I haven't been to the local shopping district much since. A lot of stores there started closing, and... Ooh, uh... You can't blame it all on Jeunesse, can you? <sighs> hey, it's Saki-senpai. Sorry, be right back. Kanishi. Her family runs a liquor store in the shopping district. I think she's working here part-time, though. Hey, how's it going? You look beat. Hey, I'm finally on break. What's up, Hanachan? Boosting the family business by bringing your friends here? Oh, madam, you wound me. Kidding aside, you look down. Did something happen? Oh, it's nothing. I'm just a little tired. Hey, if you need to talk, I'm always willing to listen. I... <laughs> I'm okay. Thanks, though. Ugh. Why'd I leave school early yesterday? Hey, is he the kid who transferred here? Are you the transfer student? Oh, did you hear about me already? It must be nice to have someone else from the big city to talk to, huh? I don't see Hanachan hanging out with the other guys much. Not necessarily. He doesn't have too many friends, so I hope you two get along good. Hanachan's a good guy, but he can get nosy sometimes. You gotta tell him right to his face when he starts to annoy you. <laughs> I know. I'm just kidding. Come on, Senpai. There's no need to worry about something like that. Well, my break's just about over. Back to work I go. Laters. Oh, uh, Senpai? <laughs> Saki Senpai says I'm annoying, but she's even nosier than me. She has a younger brother, and she treats me pretty much the same way. Oh! You don't want her treating you like a brother, huh? <laughs> I get it. So that's how it is. The daughter of a local family-run liquor store. And the Saya 
son of the invading chain. Oh, the flame of forbidden love. Dude, it's not like that. Oh, really? Well, I know just the thing to cheer up that lovesick heart. You ever hear of the Midnight Channel? You're supposed to look into a TV that's switched off, alone, exactly at midnight on a rainy night. While you're staring at your own image, another person will appear on the screen. And they say that person's your soulmate. What? For a second, I thought you were actually going to say something useful. How can you get all excited over such a childish urban legend like that? Childish, huh? You don't believe it, do you? Of course I don't. Well, it's raining tonight. Let's all try it out. Then you'll see. Try it out? Wait, you haven't even tried it yourself? Wow. I'm trying to remember the last time I heard something this stupid. All that aside, you know that incident yesterday? You guys think it was murder? Ooh, what if the culprit behind it was still lurking around? <laughs> Jeez. You shouldn't joke about stuff like that. Now who's the childish one? All I'm saying is, you guys better try it out tonight. What a day. I'm back. Did anything happen while I was out? No. You're late again. I'm sorry. I'm busy at work. Can you put the news on for me? Next. More details in the developing story on the incident in Foggy Inaba. Announcer Mayumi Yamano's dead body was found hanging above a house in this isolated rural town. It is confirmed that Miss Yamano had been involved in an affair with Taro Namatame, husband of Enka singer Misuzu Hiragi. Police plan to investigate this relationship and question any personnel involved with them. In addition, we now bring you an exclusive interview with the local student who found Miss Yamano's body. Ugh, an interview with a kid? Ugh, where the hell did they find her? What went through your mind when you saw it? Could you tell she was dead? Did you see her face? Uh Don't you think it's scary that someone was killed on a foggy day? Huh? She was killed? Oh, uh, so did you see anyone suspicious around here? No, not really. We heard that you found it when you left school early. Did you have some personal business to take care of? Huh? That's... A tragedy that occurred near the local shopping district. Many store owners are raising concerns about losing customers as a result. <laughs> if they lose more customers, it'll be because you're making such a stink about it. It really is a bizarre case, isn't it? I mean, hanging someone upside down from an antenna. <laughs> I'd have to say it's a warning or a sign from the culprit. Yes, but so far, no one has come forward to take credit for the crime. <sighs> Loads of prank calls, though. So the cause of death is still unknown? And they don't have a single suspect yet? Taxpayers' funds are going to a police force who can't even figure out if this is an accident or a homicide? <sighs> we'll be right back after these messages. At Juness, every day is Customer Appreciation Day. Come see for yourself and get in touch with our products. Every day's great at your Juness. Every day's great at your 
Juness. Hey, Dad, can we go to Juness together sometime? <laughs> no? Um...
What's up with the body being hung upside down? That's so freaky. Is it supposed to be like mimicking an execution? It's messed up. My senpai told me it was a third year named Saki who found the body. Yo. Um. It's, a. Uh, it's not really that important, but, well, yesterday on TV, I, uh... Oh, uh, you never mind. Look, I'll tell you later. <laughs> Yosuke, did you hear the rumor? Saki Senpai is supposedly the one who discovered that body. I wonder if that's why she looked so down. She doesn't seem to be at school today either. Huh? Hey, Yukiko, are you helping out at the inn today too? Things are really out of hand right now. I'm sorry. Is it just me, or does Yukiko-san seem way stressed out today? I guess they're running her ragged. By the way, did you see... it last night? Huh? Uh, well, what about you? I did! I seriously saw a girl! But... my soulmate's a girl? What's that supposed to mean? I couldn't quite tell who it was, but it was a girl for sure. Her hair was brown, about shoulder length. She was wearing our school uniform, and... Hey, I think that's the same person I saw. I couldn't make out that much detail, though. The image I saw was much blurrier. Wait, so you saw it too? And we saw the same girl? D does that mean we have the same soulmate? How should I know? How about you? Did you see it? It sounds like we all saw the same person. But weird voices aside, what was that about getting sucked into your TV? Were you that tired last night? You must have just fallen asleep in front of your TV. That'd be one interesting dream, though. I like the part where you got stuck because your TV was too small. <laughs> That's pretty realistic. If it had been bigger... Oh! That reminds me! Our family's been talking about buying a bigger TV! Oh, yeah? Well, flat-screen TVs are definitely in these days. Want to go check them out on the way back? We're beefing up our electronics department this month. Oh, definitely. My parents don't know anything about electronics, and I've just got to see my kung fu movies on the big screen! We've got some pretty big ones in stock. I bet they'd be big enough for you to fit into. <laughs> I don't know. Rich folks? Honestly, not many people shop for TVs here. That's why we don't have clerks around. Huh. Not worth trying then, I guess. Well, at least looking's free. Nope. Can't get in. Figures. <laughs> this proves it. It was all just a dream. Besides, these flat-screen TVs are so thin, you just end up on the other side. Ugh, what am I saying? So, Chia, what kind of TV are you guys in the market for? They said they wanted one that's cheap. You got any suggestions? <clears throat> well, miss, uh, might I suggest this one over here? It's the newest model just released this spring. I should have asked what you meant by cheap right off the bat. You got connections, right? Come on, hook me up! You know I can't do that. Hey, how about this one over here? It's a display unit, it's a little old, but... Oh yeah, what kind of TV do you... Huh? Something wrong, Yosuke? Is his arm in the TV? Whoa! 
Uh, is that some kind of new model? L like with a, a new function? Hell no! You gotta be kidding me! Did you really stick your hand through the screen? Oh man, this is for real. That's some magic trick, man. So how's it work, huh? What's the magician's secret? Inside? What, what do you mean, empty space? What do you mean, spacious? I mean, what's going on? Old crap. I think this is all too much for my bladder. What the? Are you gonna pee your pants? I've been holding it in all day. I haven't had a chance to go. I can't hold it anymore. Shit! Customers! They're coming! What? But we've got a guy half stuck in the TV here! What are we gonna do? Wait! Whoa! Wallet. Man, where the heck are we? What is this place? Some place inside Juness? Hell no, it isn't. I mean, we fell through a TV. Actually, uh, what is going on here? Stupid. Look around. Is this a studio? All this fog. Or is it smoke? There's no place like this in Inaba, is there? Hell no, but man, this place is huge. What are we gonna do? Huh? B but look. We need to get home, and... Huh? Wait a minute. Wait, which way did we come in from? Uh, I don't see a way in. Or out. What? That can't be right. How could that be? I don't know. Don't ask me. I can't take this anymore. I want to go home. Okay, so how? Yeah, an exit. We need to find one. Let's calm down and think about this. All right, so we need to find a way out. Is there really a way out of here? We got in, so we must be able to get out somehow. That's true, but... If there's no exit, we're trapped, so let's cross our fingers and look around. What is this place? It feels different from where we were before. It looks like we're in some kind of building, but... Damn, this fog's so thick I can hardly see. Are you sure we're not wandering farther away? I can't be positive, but we've got to trust our instinct a little. I know, but...
Hey, is it me or is the fog lighter here? No service. What a surprise. Can you guys slow down a little? It's hard enough to see where you're going. Huh? What the? It's a dead end. There's no exit. It keeps getting creepier and creepier the further we go. Uh, I can't hold it any longer. My bladder's gonna explode. Yosuke, what are you doing? I gotta let it out before I piss my pants. You're going here? Oh, you have got to be kidding. Turn around! I can't go if everyone's watching. I can't do it. It's all your fault if my bladder bursts. Like I care. Anyways, what's with this room? Check out these posters. Their faces are all cut out. Someone must really hate this person. Dude, this chair and rope, that kind of arrangement is never good. It's tied in a noose. Is this a scarf? Come on, let's go back to where we came from and look somewhere else for an exit. I think I've seen that poster before. Who cares? Let's go! I'm sick of this place. And I'm not feeling so good. Now that you mention it, me too. All right, let's go back. I'm seriously starting to feel sick. made it back here. Wait, what's that? There's something over there. What is this thing? A monkey? A bear? What in the world? That's what I want to know. Who are you guys? You! You want to fight? D don't yell at me like that. This place is what it is. It doesn't have a name. It's where I live. You live here? If I was you guys, I'd hurry back to the other side. Someone's been throwing people in here. It's a big headache. Huh? Throwing people in? What are you talking about? I don't know who's doing it. I just want them to think before they go doing things like that. Hey, what's your problem? What gives you the right to yell at us like that? What are you? Where are we? What the heck is going on here? I already told you. Anyways, you should hurry back. What it comes down to is, you want us to get out of here, right? Well, so do we. We just don't know how, damn it. Uh, that's why I'm saying I'll let you out. Like I keep saying, we don't know where the frickin' exit... Wait, what? What the hell? Where did those TVs come from? Okay, now go, go, get out of here. I'm a busy bear. What's going on now? Whoa! Hey, what are you doing? S stop pushing! Huh? Is this... 
Did we make it back? Attention shoppers! Our daily limited time sale will now begin at the side dish area on the first floor. Why not try the delicious fresh produce Juness picked for you this morning as your side dish for dinner tonight? All ages are invited to take advantage of this incredible bargain. Crap, it's already that late? <sighs> Looks like we were in there for quite a while. That's right. Now I remember where I saw that poster before. Look over there. That's the poster we saw. What's up now? Hey, you're right. They're the same. I couldn't tell before without the face, but it was Misuzu Hiragi. She's been all over the news lately. Something about her husband having an affair with that announcer lady who died the other day. Hey, so does that mean that weird room we saw? Could it be related to that Yamano lady's death? Now that I think about it, there was that creepy noose hanging from the ceiling. Yeah, stop. No more. We gotta stop talking about this. I'm gonna wipe what happened today from my brain. I don't think my poor heart can take anymore. I'm feeling a chill, too. Let's go home. I wanna lie down and rest. Hey, welcome home. Um, well, I doubt you'd know. But have you heard anything about a student named Saki Konishi? Oh, I see. Well, to be honest, we got a call from her family. She's disappeared. We've got people looking for her, but she hasn't been found yet. Oh, work just keeps piling up. And now, more on the case still casting a shadow over the foggy town of Inaba. Not long ago, television announcer Mayumi Yamano was found dead in the small town. Up until now, her whereabouts prior to her death had been unknown. But the police investigation has found that she had been staying in the region's famous Amagi Inn. She had apparently been staying there alone. Perhaps she was taking a vacation to recover from her ordeal? Oh yes, the Amagi Inn. Their hot springs are first rate. The manager's teenage daughter also works there, and it's rumored that she'll take over the inn this spring. If that happens, she'll be one of the youngest managers on record. I should book another trip there. Uh, I see. Moving along, it's time for the weather report. The rain has begun to subside. From now until morning, heavy fog warnings will be in effect in the Inaba region. Visibility will be severely reduced, so please be careful if you plan on driving in the area. Is the ramen ready now? Give it some more time. Are you sick? You're probably still adjusting to the new environment. Nanako, could you get him some cold medicine? You should get to bed after you take it. Oh, you're up. Well, I'm off. Dad has to go do something. 
He got a call, so he left. When I looked, I saw three police cars zooming by. You live by the police station, don't you? Did you hear anything? I heard some yelling, but nothing more. A total disappointment. Jeez, you need to pay more attention to stuff like that. How else are we supposed to get the juicy stories? Hey, did you see it yesterday? Of course not. What is that rumor for real? I don't know, but it seems like a lot of people have seen it. Yukiko said she'd be here after lunch. I wonder why they're holding a school assembly all of a sudden. Hey, what's wrong, Yosuke? Hmm? Oh, it's nothing. Everyone, please settle down. The school assembly is about to begin. First, the principal has something to say. I regret to say that I have a terrible announcement for all of you. One of our third year students, Ms. Saki Kunishi of Class 3, has passed away. Passed away? <sighs> Ms. Konishi was found deceased early this morning. The reasons behind her passing are currently under investigation by the police. If they ask you for your cooperation, I urge you as students of this school to provide only the facts. All right, please quiet down. I have been assured by the faculty that there's been no evidence that bullying was involved in the incident. So mind what you say, not only to the police, but to anyone who asks. Found dead? How could this happen? <sighs> She died the same way as that announcer, right? It's so creepy. Well, last time it was from an antenna, but this time she was hanging from a telephone pole. It's gotta be a serial murder case. Someone said the cause of death was some unknown poison. Unknown? Come on, this isn't some sci-fi drama. Oh, by the way, did you hear? Someone saw a girl that looked like Saki on that Midnight Channel thingy. They said she totally looked like she was in pain. Isn't that scary? <laughs> Sounds like someone had a nightmare. The media's been broadcasting their interviews with her nonstop, so maybe they just had Saki on the brain. Sheesh, it's easy to toss around theories if you're not personally involved. Hey, did you guys check out the TV last night? Yosuke, not you too. Just listen for a sec. Something kept bothering me, so I watched it again, and I think the girl on the screen was Saki-senpai. There's no mistaking it. Senpai looked like she was writhing in pain, and then she disappeared from the screen. What? You heard Senpai's body was found in a similar situation as that announcer's, right? Well, remember that guy you told us about? How he was all excited that his soulmate was the announcer? Maybe... Just maybe, but Ms. Yamano might have been on that midnight channel before she died, too. What's that supposed to mean? Hold on. Are you saying people who appear on that TV die? I can't say for sure, but something tells me. I just can't dismiss it as coincidence. <gasps> Plus, remember what that bear thing said? How that place was dangerous and we should leave before the fog clears? It also said that someone's been throwing people in there. And that room with the posters on the wall, 
it has to have something to do with the announcer's death. I mean, don't you think there's some kind of connection there? Couldn't that world in the TV have something to do with Senpai and the announcer's death? Well, what do you think? So it's not just me, huh? If there is a connection, then it's a good bet that the two of them went inside that world. That would explain the posters in that room. Which means, if we look around, we might find a place that has something to do with Senpai, too. Yosuke, don't tell me. Yeah, I'm thinking about going in again. I want to find out for myself. D don't do this! You should just let the police handle this and... You think we can rely on the police? They haven't made any progress on the announcer's case. Besides, even if we told them about the world inside the TV, there's no way they're gonna believe us. If I'm completely off base with this, that's fine. It's just, I need to know why Senpai had to die like this. Yosuke. After what I've seen and what I've put together, there's no way I can ignore it now. Sorry, but you're the only person who can help me. I'm gonna go get ready. I'll be waiting for you at Juness. I can kinda understand how he feels. But we can't be sure we'll be able to get out safely again. What should we do? You serious? Anyways, let's go to Juness. We can't leave Yosuke alone. You guys came. We came to stop you, idiot. Come on, you really shouldn't do this. It's too dangerous. I know, but we were able to come back once, right? If we go in from the same location, maybe we'll meet that bear again. Maybe isn't good enough. Look, I can't just act like everyone else and pretend this has nothing to do with me. That's true, but... What about you? Could you just walk away? Yeah, I thought not. Don't worry, I'm not going in without a plan. Chie, I'm leaving you in charge of this. Huh? What's that? A rope? We'll go in with this tied to me. So I want you to hold on to this and wait here. Wh what? Then this is a lifeline? Come on, wait a sec. Here, this is for you. I thought it might be better than going in empty-handed. All right, let's go. There's no use wasting any more time. Chie, whatever you do, don't let go of the rope. Hey! I said wait! This is the same place as last time, so they are connected from place to place. You guys! Why'd you come back? I get it! You're the ones behind this! You're that thing from last time. Wait, what the hell did you just say? Lately, I can tell someone's been throwing people in here. It's making this world more and more messed up. This is the second time you guys came here, and I don't think anyone forced you in. That means you're the most suspicious. You guys must be the ones throwing the people in here. What are you talking about throwing people in? 
If someone was thrown in here and they couldn't get out, they might die. Who would do such a... Wait a sec. All this talk about someone throwing people in here. Does he mean Senpai and the announcer? Did that someone throw those two in here? Hey, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. Let's assume he's telling the truth. Could it be that someone's throwing people in here, intending to kill them? If that's the case... What are you guys mumbling about? Why'd you come here anyways? It's a one-way door! You can't get out once you're in! Remember how I had to let you guys out? Yeah, whatever. We don't need your help this time. See, this time we have a life... Li what? Hey, you better let us out once we're done investigating here. I'm the one who wants to investigate. I've lived here for a long time, but it's never been noisy like this till now. Do you have proof? Prove to me you're not throwing people in here. See? So it is you guys. For the last time, it's not us. So we've got nothing to prove to you. Hey, you better answer our questions. This isn't like last time when we came by accident. We're dead serious. Listen up, because people have died in our world. Every time the fog appears, a dead body shows up with it. It has to be related to this place somehow. If you know something, tell us. A dead body? Whenever the fog appears? I know that if it's foggy on your side, the fog lifts here. It's really dangerous when the fog lifts. That's when the shadows get violent. Ah, I get it. Huh? If you get it, then explain it to us, damn it. If it's foggy on our side, it isn't in here. Shadows get violent? That's why I said to hurry back. It's dangerous when that happens. Okay, no more questions. I know you guys did it. You better stop right now. I've told you and told you we're not the ones doing it. I've about had it with you. Why the hell won't you listen to what we're saying? Uh, I'm just saying you might be the culprits. Uh, I'm just making sure. What? Man, this bear's driving me nuts. What is this place anyways? It looks like a TV studio. Is something being filmed here? Hey, hey, don't tell me. Is that weird show being filmed here? Weird show? Filmed? What does that mean? Uh, I'm asking if someone's been filming the people that get thrown in here. Eh? I don't get it. This world has always been like this. No one has ever done that filming thing here. Only me and Shadows are here. I told you before. We don't know what these shadow things are, or what you are either for that matter. You keep telling us to prove our innocence, but you're the most suspicious thing here. Maybe you're the real culprit. And what's with that stupid costume? I'd say it's time you showed your face. Whoa! What the hell are you? It's empty inside. Me? The culprit? I wouldn't do such a thing. I just live here. I just want to live here peacefully. <sighs> okay, I'll believe that you guys aren't the culprits. But I want you to find the real guy who did all this. You have to stop him. Promise me. Or else... I'm not gonna let you guys out of here. You little... This can't keep going on. My home here will be a complete mess. And then... And then... I... <laughs> what are you crying for all of a sudden? Jeez, this thing's really weirding me out. Hey, what should we do?
It seems you will encounter a misfortune at your destination, and a great mystery will be imposed upon you. You're the only ones I can ask. Will you promise me? Thank you! Damn bear. Practically holding a gun to our heads. But it's true that we came here to figure things out. So far we're completely in the dark. Look for the culprit, huh? Bring it on. You got my word too. Might as well introduce ourselves. I'm Yosuke Hanamura, and this is my buddy. You got a name? Teddy! <laughs> Figures. But how are we supposed to find the culprit in the first place? I don't know. Oh, but I know where the last person came in. The last person? You mean Saki-senpai? I mean the person who came in and disappeared last time. I don't know the name. I'll take you there. You might find clues. Oh, one thing first. You two should put these on. What are these glasses for? Whoa! The difference is like night and day. With these on, it's like the fog doesn't exist. They'll help you walk through the fog. Well, I've been here for a long time, so you can rely on me. Uh, but I can only show you where the place is. You guys will have to defend yourselves. What happened to relying on you? Th there better not be any monsters, you understand? We brought weapons, but I mean, they're more for show. We just got here. If it's so dangerous, why don't you do something instead of relying on us? Uh-uh. No way. I've got no muscles. Oh, oh, I'll give you guys moral support from a safe distance. How's that sound? <laughs> no! <laughs> Is this thing for real? This is so lame. We swore to find the culprit, and this is all the backup we get? Oh, yeah. Can I ask you something? Who's this Saki senpai person? Someone you know? <sighs> that doesn't matter right now. Anyways, at least now we know senpai might have been thrown in here. Maybe we can find more information, too. Let's get moving. What? Wait! What is this place? It looks just like the shopping district. What's going on here? Some weird places have appeared here recently. Things are getting so tangled, I, I don't know what to do. Uh, by the way, why are you standing so far from us? You better not be planning to hightail it if something does come up. <laughs> of course not. I mean, um, I can't stand too close, you know, I get in your way. <sighs> Man, they really went all out on this. But out of all the places in town, why'd they replicate this one? How should I know? This is reality for the one who's here. <sighs> As usual, nothing you say makes any sense. But if this is our shopping district, we're not far from Saki-senpai's... I knew it! This is the liquor store that Senpai's parents run. Does this mean Senpai disappeared here? What could have happened? Wait a second! They're here! What? Shadows! I had a feeling they were going to attack!
open thine eyes and call forth what is within. Listen, some shadows have weaknesses. If you can pinpoint that weakness and take advantage of it, the battle will be a lot easier. I can tell this one has a weakness too. Try stuff out and see what works. have what effects on enemies. This one's tough! Hang in there! What was that? Did I hear you say Persona? What was it? I mean, what did you do? Hey, you think I can do it too? Calm down, Yosuke. You're troubling Sensei. S sensei Gosh almighty! You're amazing, Sensei! I am one impressed bear. I can't believe you were hiding such an amazing power. No wonder the shadows were scared of you. <gasps> Are you the one who's able to bring people into this world? That's what I thought! This is really something! Don't you think so, Yosuke? Dude, you call him Sensei and then don't show me any respect? Sorry. Well, your support wasn't bad, though. I gotta give you some credit for that. Huh? Really? <laughs> Alright. You two keep it up and I think we'll be fine from here on out. Now let's get back to the investigation. I wonder what could have happened to Senpai here. Ugh, I wish Janess would go under. It's all because of that store. What the? Oh, uh, I heard that Konishi-san's daughter is working there. Oh my, how could she with her family's business suffering like it is? I heard their sales have gone downhill because of Juness. Stop it! That poor father. To have his own daughter working for the enemy. What a troublesome child. Hey, hey, Ted! You said that this place is reality for those that are here, right? So, does that mean this was Senpai's reality when she wandered in here? I only know about what's over here. Fine. Whatever's going on here, we'll find out ourselves. Not 
again. Saki, how many times do I have to tell you? Is this Senpai's dad? You know what the neighbors say about you, right? Aren't you ashamed of yourself? You're the eldest daughter of a family who's owned this store for generations. Is it the money? Or did you meet some guy there? Just tell me why you have to work there of all places. I, I can't believe this. She seemed like she had fun at work. She never said anything like this to me. You're telling me this was how Senpai really saw things? These photos. Hey, is this... It's the photo we took the other day with the other part-timers at Juness. Why is it cut up like this? I never had the chance to say it. Is that Senpai's voice? I always wanted to tell Hanachan. Huh? Me? That he was a real pain in the ass. I was nice to him just because he was the store manager's son, that's all. But he takes it completely the wrong way and gets all enthusiastic. What a dick. But pain in the ass? Who cares about Juness anyway? Because of that store, our business is ruined. My parents hate me, the neighbors talk behind my back. I wish everything would just disappear. It's a lie. This can't be. Senpai's not like that. It's so sad. I feel so sorry for myself. Boo-hoo! Actually, I'm the one who thinks everything's a pain in the ass. <laughs> uh huh? Two Yosuke's? Who are you? I, I wouldn't think that. <laughs> yeah, right. How long are you going to keep deluding yourself? Screw the shopping district and Juness, too. You're sick of everything, especially living out in the sticks. What are you saying? Th that's not true. I. You put on a good show of being carefree and happy go lucky because you're so terrified of being alone. The more, the merrier, right? You've got to be surrounded by people to block out the pain of isolation. And what's this about checking out this world for Saki-senpai's sake? Ha! But I know the real reason you came snooping. Stop it! <laughs> Why so panicked? I thought I was just spouting bullshit. Or maybe I do know everything you're thinking. Why's that? Because I am you. You just came because you thought it sounded like a good time. What else is there to do out in this shithole? The world inside the TV. Now that's exciting. You didn't have a single other reason for coming here, did you? It's not true. Stop. Stop it. You're just trying to act like a big shot. If all went well, hey, maybe you could even be a hero. And that senpai you were so sweet on? Her death was the perfect excuse. That's not true! What are you? Who are you? <laughs> I already told you. I'm you. Your shadow. There's nothing I don't know about you. Screw that! I don't know you! You can't be me, you son of a bitch! <laughs> That's right! Say it again! You're not me! You're nothing like me! Hmm. Yeah, that's right. I am me now. I'm not you anymore, see?
am a shadow, the true self. I'll crush everything that bores me, starting with you. <laughs> How long can you survive this? This one's much stronger than the last type. Be careful! Whenever you feel threatened, just defend yourself. from you, Yosuke. You have to admit it, or it'll go berserk again. Myself. Damn it. It hurts to face yourself. I knew it wasn't lying. But I was so ashamed that I didn't want to admit it. You're me. And I'm you. When you get down to it, all of this is me. Senpai's voice. I wonder if that was something Senpai had been keeping deep down inside. <laughs> he was a real pain in the ass, huh? What a way to find out. Jeez, this is so embarrassing. If you weren't here, I don't know what would have happened. Thanks. Hey, Teddy, could Senpai have been attacked by her other self here? Like how it just happened to me? I think so. The shadows here were originally born from humans. Sometimes the fog clears, then they all go berserk. And you saw what happens next. A strong-willed shadow draws others to it, and the big mass of shadows kills the host. So that's why people die when it gets foggy in our world. <sighs> 
Yosuke's pretty worn out. This world isn't made for humans. It's not comfortable for you here. I don't hear any more voices. I think we're done with this place. Let's go back. Hey, Teddy. You said that this place is reality for people who enter, right? So that shopping district and the weird room we saw before, did they exist because the ones who died entered this world and it became their reality? I guess what I'm trying to ask is, did those places form because of the people who entered this world? I don't know. It's never happened before. But that's probably where they were when the shadows attacked them. The fog does lift here sometimes. The shadows get really violent then. I always get so scared I have to hide when it happens. I sensed people here twice before, but both of them disappeared after the fog lifted. So let's get this straight. Senpai and that Yamano lady were thrown in here, and since they couldn't get out, they wandered around. After a while, that shadow thing came out of them. The fog cleared, it went berserk, and it ended up killing them. Does that sound right? So if I'd been here until the fog cleared, I would have been in much deeper trouble? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. You were lucky. Sensei and me were here with you. Damn it. Senpai and that announcer. They were stuck here all alone. No one could save them. Yosuke. They disappeared when the fog lifted. But they were safe before that. No shadows attacked them. They attacked us, though. Maybe they're keeping a close eye on us. They might see people who investigate this place as enemies. It'll be dangerous, but we might be able to fight them. We might save people. Are you saying if anyone else gets thrown in here, we can save them before they disappear? Like how you guys just saved me? Anyways, we need to catch the one who's throwing people in here and make him stop. Yeah. I'm finally starting to understand what's going on. Um, can I ask something too? If shadows are born from humans, what was Teddy born from? You don't even know where you came from? How should we know? I know some things, mostly about this world, but I don't know anything about myself. To be honest, I never thought about it until now. Are you serious? No wonder we couldn't get a straight answer out of you. Will you guys come back here? You'll keep your word? Well, you're the one who said you weren't letting us out unless we do. Oh, that's right. Okay, I'll let you out. But there's one thing. I'll be waiting for you guys here. You need to come in from the same place every time so we can meet up. come in from somewhere else, but then you won't end up here. You might show up somewhere I couldn't get to you. Then you'd be doomed. Got it? Well, pretty much. All right, can you show us the way out? Roger that. One exit coming right up. Cool. First, we need to make sure there aren't any employees milling around out there. Okay, go, go, go! <laughs> Squish! Uh, hey, stop squeezing, you little... Ugh! What's with that face? Ow! Oh, the nerve of you guys! Oh, you're such morons! I, I can't believe this! You guys suck! The rope got cut off! I had no idea what to do! I was so worried! <laughs> You 
I... I think that might have kind of sort of been our fault. Maybe we did go a little too far. Let's apologize to her tomorrow. I'm completely wiped out. I'm gonna go home, soak in the shower for a while and get some sleep. I think... I'm gonna sleep well tonight. Well, see you in the morning. Hmm? Oh, are you surprised to see me dressed this way? My parents sent me out on an errand. Um, are you getting used to your new town and school? I'm glad to hear that. It must be difficult moving to a place you know nothing about. I've never been out of Inaba, so I wouldn't know what it's like to transfer to a new school. Oh, are you getting along with Chie? I mean, I always leave early, so... Um... <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Chie's very supportive, you know? It's always her who gives me the little extra push I need. We had homeroom together last year, too. And I still remember how we cut class sometimes. Oh, I, I should get going. I need to make tomorrow's arrangements with our head chef. Our inn can't function without me right now. Um, I'll see you at school, then. <laughs> Dad's late. Our next story is an update in our ongoing report on the bizarre murders occurring in Inaba. At around 7 a.m., local high school student Saki Konishi was found dead in Inaba's residential area. Since the body was positioned similarly to the last victim, and since Miss Konishi was the one who discovered that body, police are proceeding under the assumption that this may be a serial murder case related to the death of Mayumi Yamano. The coroner's report has established Miss Konishi's time of death at around 1 a.m. last night. The body went unnoticed until this morning as a result of the heavy fog blanketing the area. Another incident. Dad won't be coming home tonight. Uh-huh. But that's how it goes. He's a detective, so he's really busy. Amagi Inn, located upstream of Samegawa River, is the town's oldest historical landmark. Vacationers are known to travel surprising distances in order to visit its open-air, radium-rich hot springs. After the incident with Miss Yamano, the manager has stepped aside, leaving her daughter Yukiko to fill her shoes. In other words, she's a manager who's still in high school. Now that has a nice ring to it. Let's see if we can interview her. Excuse me! Hmm? Um, are you speaking to me? We've heard that you're the new manager. Is it true you're still in high school? Oh, well, I'm only filling in temporarily. Someday, though. That aside, wow, you're looking gorgeous in that kimono. You must have had a lot of male visitors. Huh? No, um... This is boring. Oh, I need to do the dishes. In other Inaba-related news, meteorologists are predicting heavy fog throughout the year. 
The region has seen an abnormal amount of fog over the past few years, and the cause of the climate change is unknown. Whatever the reason, residents of the Inaba area should be extra careful. Our broadcast tonight was extended to bring you up-to-date news on the incident in Inaba. The time is now midnight. Welcome. Do not be alarmed. You are fast asleep in the real world. I have summoned you within your dreams. And so we meet again. This is a space that only those who have, in one way or another, entered into a contract may enter. In your daily life, you subconsciously heard the call to awaken and you chose to follow the destiny of your inner voice, thereby enacting your glorious awakening to your power. Hold on to this. From this night forth, you are our guest in this velvet room. Your destiny will require you to hone your power, and for that, you will inevitably require our help. There is but one prize for this assistance. You must abide by your contract and assume responsibility for all decisions you may make. Very well. The persona you have acquired, it is a side of you that shows itself when you face the world around you. Perhaps you can think of it as... A facade of determination you wear to face various difficulties in life. Your persona ability, however, is that of the wild card. Compared to that of others, it is very special. It is like the number zero, empty, yet holding infinite potential within itself. The persona ability is the power to control one's own heart. And the heart is strengthened through bonds. As you form bonds by becoming involved with others, your own social links will gradually develop. The power of these social links is what will determine your persona's abilities. Social links are necessary for more than strengthening your persona. At times, they will help light the way to the truth you're searching for. Where will your awakened power of the wild card take you? I look forward to traveling the road of your destiny together. <laughs> Till we meet again. Yo! You saw what was on last night, right? I couldn't tell who it was, but if someone's shown up on TV, we can't ignore it. Let's go check it out after school. Maybe Teddy can tell us something. If it turns out someone was thrown in again, there really might be a culprit behind all this. Even if it is something about that place that's killing the victims. If someone's using that world as a weapon, that's unforgivable. We need to find the culprit, no matter what it takes. 
There's no way the police can do it. Who'd believe that the murderer kills people by throwing them into the TV? Yeah, I agree. You know, I tried sticking my head in the TV last night the way you did, and it actually worked. I think I can do that now because I have the same power. Persona, wasn't it? Could be that we got this gift from someone specifically so we could solve the case. Then again, you managed to go inside the TV and get your persona first. I feel like as long as you're with me, I can find the culprit and crack this case. Well, let's do our best. Persona ability is the power to control one's own heart. And the heart is strengthened through bonds. As you form bonds by becoming involved with others, your own social links will gradually develop. The power of these social links is what will determine your persona's abilities. Um, about yesterday? We're sorry we worried you. Never mind that. Is Yukiko still not here? Huh? Y yukiko san Uh, no. At least I haven't seen her today. Oh, man. What should I do? Hey, is that stuff you were talking about for real? You know, all that about how people showing up on the Midnight Channel is related to that other world. Oh, we were just talking about that. We're thinking of checking it out later. The person on TV yesterday? I think it was Yukiko. That kimono looked like the one she wears at the inn, and she wore it during that interview a few days ago, too. I got worried, so I emailed her last night, but she hasn't responded. I called her earlier in the evening, though, and she said she'd be at school today. I... Calm down. We get the picture. And you still haven't heard from her? No! What's that supposed to mean? Wait, are you saying Yukiko was thrown in there? We don't know yet for sure. We should check to see if she's safe first. Give her another call. Are you serious? Then is Yukiko-san inside that place? S stop it! Something must have come up, like an errand or something. Oh, or she might be helping at the end. She wouldn't be able to answer her cell if that's it. Yeah, but would she skip school for that? Well, I'll give the inn a call. Um, I've got the number here somewhere. Come on, Yukiko, pick up. She's there! Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I see. Uh, uh, nah, it was nothing. <laughs> I'll email you again later. <sighs> she was over at the inn. She said they had a big group reservation and she had to help out. Yeah. 
Oh, now that I think about it, this has happened before too. At least once a year. <laughs> she said she'll be at the inn tomorrow too. For crying out loud, Yosuke, you got me worried over nothing. She was totally fine. And you were all, Yukiko-san inside that place? <laughs> Sorry, but there is a reason we thought that. Oh yeah? What? Well, we thought people show up on the Midnight Channel because they're already over in that world. I mean, it makes sense, right? People show up on TV because they're inside the TV. But Yukiko-san's still here in our world. We might want to see what this is about. All right, let's meet up at Juness after school. Okay, I think that's more than enough about my sorry escapades. If I hadn't seen the place firsthand, I'd never have believed a story like that. Yeah, no kidding. Anyways, we need to know what's going on inside. Yeah. Too bad there's so many customers around. I forgot there's a sale in the electronics department today. How? By talking to that Teddy guy? I got it. Come here a sec. Try sticking your hand in and calling him over. I bet that bear's wandering around the entrance anyway. Hey, Chia, stand over here. Make a wall with me. A wall? What's wrong? Shh! Not so loud, you idiot! Dude! Is that a bite mark? Are you okay? <sighs> That's good. Sheesh! That stupid bear must have done it! Hey, you! We know you're in there! Oh, oh is this a game? No, it's not a game! Can you sense anyone inside there right now? Who's anyone? I'm a lonely little bear, like always. This land feels so barren. <laughs> Shut it! So there's no one inside? You're sure? I'm not lying. My nose is running as good as ever. Hmm. I'm gonna go warn Yukiko anyway. Since she'll be busy this weekend helping out at the inn, I doubt she'd go anywhere alone, but still. Yeah, you'll walk with her to school on Monday, right? Sure, I'll go pick her up at her house. Maybe we'll find out more on tonight's Midnight Channel. Cross your fingers that this is all just a misunderstanding. What's your cell number? I'll, I'll call you when I watch it tonight. Don't forget to watch tonight. Looks like we found all we're gonna find here. And we've still got nothing that points directly to a suspect. We don't even know if this is a homicide. Well, what else could it be? There's no way a body could end up like that by accident. <sighs> I know. We haven't found the cause of death for the first Vic, and now we got a second one just like it. If this is a murder case, there's no doubt we're dealing with a single perp. But if that's true, what the hell's going on? You know, I thought at first this all spun out of that love triangle. No, that singer, Misuzu Hiragi, has a solid alibi. She was performing overseas, and her phone records prove it. And remember, the only reason the scandal went public was because Hiragi herself broke it to the media. No one would put themselves under suspicion that way if they had murder on their mind. Got a point there. Same with Taro Namatame, her husband. No matter how much we shake him down, nothing links him to the murders. 
He's been working in the city for the past six months. Seems he was here recently because of the scandal, but he was swamped with work back home at the time of the incident. There are eyewitnesses and other evidence placing him at his office the night that Mayumi Yamano died. And we can't find anything that shows Yamano making contact with Namatame before or after her disappearance. You hear Namatame's career has also been killed stone dead? He's been fired from his position as secretary. He's practically as much of a victim as the Yamano girl. Yeah, I agree. Then we have the second case regarding Saki Konishi. She's the one who discovered Yamano's corpse. And I don't buy the killer shutting her up as a possible motive. She was killed well after she reported the body, and the culprit didn't hide her. It's like they were meant to be found. The only other connection is that she attended the same school as the daughter of the inn where Yamano was holed up. But that hardly points to a motive. And coincidences like that are common in a town as small as ours. Yeah, I heard about that angle on the news, too. What? Is the story about the inn out already? Okay, I got it. How's this? Maybe there was something about the corpse that only Saki Konishi knew. And our perp killed her to keep whatever it was from leaking out. <sighs> Either way, all we can do now is keep investigating anyone involved with the victims. Our perp. It has to be someone in Inaba. Oh, is your detective's intuition at work? Welcome home! Well... already. He said he's gonna be late. Are you going somewhere? I'll be fine by myself. So the weather this weekend will be perfect for going out. As for next week's forecast... Oh, the sun's gonna come out. I should do some laundry. Weren't you going somewhere?
sorry for the hold up. I found some stuff we can use in the closet at home. Take a look at these. We've got our personas, but a golf club's not that reliable of a weapon. So, which one strikes your fancy? Ah, you've got discerning taste. This is a Juness exclusive. The blade's fake, though. As for me... Wait, maybe both would be good, too. Kinda like this? Or like this? What about this? Two suspicious young males found, one armed with multiple weapons, requesting immediate backup. Huh? Oh, crap! I mean, no, 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 this, this isn't what it looks like. We didn't steal it. I guess that's not what matters. Anyways, we're not doing anything bad. We're just two ordinary kids who like weapons. Oh, uh, that doesn't sound right either. <laughs> Put the weapons down now. We'll listen to your story at the station. Hands where I can see them, too! I said now! But, but, this isn't... Are you resisting an officer of the law? You're under arrest! You didn't seem the type to pull a stupid stunt like this. You know what's been going on around town. We got men stationed everywhere, for God's sake. You're lucky I was around, or this would have ended up on your permanent record. We're sorry. Wait, so the one that disappeared is the Amagi girl? Seems like it. That she's just a high schooler, you know. Could be that she decided to run away from home. Hey, did he say Amagi? Then... She really is. Hmm? Who's what now? Oh, uh, nothing. I'm sure you've seen on the news that there's an investigation in progress. We're sensitive about certain things. You're free to go. But this better not happen again. Whoa, pardon me. Huh? Aren't you the kid staying at Dojima-san's place? Oh, uh, can we ask you something? It's about Yukiko-san. I mean, Yukiko Amagi of the Amagi Inn. Did something happen to her? Huh? Oh, um, am I allowed to say? Well, if you're friends with Miss Amagi, keep this between us, okay? We got a call from Miss Amagi's parents yesterday evening saying they couldn't find her anywhere. Since it was the weekend, the workers at the inn were extremely busy, and no one saw Miss Amagi around that time. Oh, but that doesn't necessarily mean this is a case just yet. But, people have been turning up dead on foggy days, so we're really sensitive to stuff like this. By the way, did she say anything to you guys about maybe going through some hard times? Uh, hard times? Well, that announcer Miss Yamana was staying at the Amagi Inn before the first murder. Seems Miss Yamano had some harsh words for the manager about the staff's attitude towards guests. The stress of it caused the manager to collapse. And, with Miss Amagi being the manager's daughter, she must have felt pretty strongly about the incident, you know? By the way, did Miss Amagi ever hint that she might be leaving the house? Because if not, there's been some theories floating around that she's laying low for some reason or another. Ah, crap. I think I've gone too far. You didn't hear that, okay? Adachi, what the hell are you chatting with civvies for? And where's my coffee? Sorry, I got it right here. Psst, forget I said anything, please. Hey, does that detective think that Yukiko-san... Uh, well, there was a slight misunderstanding. We'll tell you about it later. Anyway, something's up with Yukiko-san. Huh? You know already? I kept calling her so, but she didn't pick up. So I went to her house, and it turns out Yukiko really did disappear. I guess we've got no choice but to go now. But that aside, the cops are saying some weird stuff. 
They think Yukiko-san's hiding to lay low. Apparently, Yukiko-san's mom collapsed because that announcer lady bitched her out. They think that gives her a motive. And the fact that the announcer died right after makes her even more suspicious. What? They think Yukiko did it? Oh, what the hell is wrong with them? Dude, don't snap at me. Yukiko's the victim here, damn it, not the suspect. Right. That's the important thing. With the police totally on the wrong track, we've got to handle it ourselves. I'm going to. And that's final. I'm going to save Yukiko no matter what. Are you going to be all right? But man, they just confiscated our weapons. We can't go in empty-handed. Weapons? Oh, I know just the place. Come on, follow me. Here we are. What kind of shop is this? Uh, metalworks, I guess? They sell all sorts of metal crap, like katanas and stuff. Doesn't that seem weird to you? Why would you know about a place like this anyway? Oh, I get it. You watch one too many kung fu movies and... It's not that at all. I overheard some guys in our class talk about it. They said this place sells weapons and armor. Here, this one looks good, but it might be too heavy. I don't know, Chie. I still think it's too dangerous. I know how you feel, but... You don't! You don't know shit about how I feel. Yukiko might die from this for crying out loud. I'm going, and that's that! be fine. My reflexes are second to none. Listen, I'm not kidding around. You don't know what it's like in there. If you're not going to listen to our warnings, we're leaving you here. If you insist on coming, just make sure you have something to protect yourself. All right. But man, what should we get? Hey, mind picking out something for me too? You're our main asset in battle right now, so I think you should choose whatever makes it easiest for you. I got my stuff all picked out. How about you guys? You know, if we wear this stuff around town, we'll just get picked up again. But it's not like we can waltz into Juness with a sack full of gear and expect no one to notice either. Why not conceal them under our uniforms? I don't think people would notice. Okay, let's try that. All right, let's split up and get ready. The store will be crowded until the afternoon sale ends, and if we walk around together, the cops might get suspicious. Then I'll see you guys at the Juness Food Court. So, it finally begins. Now, if you'll give me a moment of your time,
we have been expecting you. The catastrophe that has headed your way. It has already taken human lives in its approach towards you. But you have nothing to fear. You already have the power to fight against it. It seems that the time for you to use your persona has come. <laughs> your persona ability is that of the wild card. If you strengthen your bonds properly, their power will help you overcome any ordeal. Our role is to facilitate that. My contribution is to give birth to new personas. By mixing together multiple persona cards, I can transmute them into a new form. This, in other words, is the fusion of personas. You have the power to hold multiple personas and to use them accordingly. When you defeat an enemy, the seeds of possibility you attain will appear before you as cards. At times, they may be hard to grasp, but you must master your fear and reach out to them. When you obtain new cards, please do not hesitate to bring them here. If you have been developing your social links, then your persona will gain even more power. They will be one of your chief sources of strength. You would do well to take this to heart. The tome you see in my hand is the Persona Compendium. Registering the personas you hold will allow you to recall them at any time. Please see me when you wish to use it. Oh, and one more thing. I would like to introduce a new resident of the Velvet Room, who will be helping you on your journey. <laughs> Marie? <sighs> yeah, I can hear. Nice to meet you. Huh? Oh, maybe. That'd explain why you're so familiar. Hmm. Excuse her, this is Marie. Her soul is still very young and... Shut up. Don't tell him any more about me than you need to. As you can see, she may be brusque at times, but please understand that she is only an apprentice and forgive her for her impoliteness. Marie will be dealing with skill cards. Using these cards will allow you to provide your personas with new powers. Also, I am sure she will help you form a bond between yourself and the outside world. Marie will contact you at a later date. Please feel free to speak with her here when you wish to use her services. <laughs> Do you recall my words to you before? The coming year is a turning point in your destiny. If the mystery goes unsolved, your future may be forever lost. I meant precisely what I said. Defeat in battle is not the only way your journey may come to an end. Please do not forget this. When next we meet, you will come here of your own will. <laughs> I look forward to it. Until then, Farewell.
stick out. Guess it doesn't help that we're in our school uniforms on a Sunday. The sale should end soon, so that'll get rid of some of the people wandering around here. All right, let's get going. Chie, it's not too late to... I'm going! Fine, but don't push yourself, got it? What are you doing? Can't you tell? I'm thinking about stuff. I've been deliberating over it for a long time now. Hey, that wasn't a bad joke. <laughs> uh, so, did you figure anything out? Uh, it's probably useless to think about it too much. I've seen the inside of your skull and it was empty. How rude! You're right, though. I try and try, but nothing comes out of my head. Will you guys shut up? Now's not the time for stupid jokes. Listen, someone came here yesterday, right? Wow, there's a girl with a better nose than me? What's your name, miss? M miss uh, I'm Chie, but never mind that. Tell me more about that someone. I think it happened a little after I talked with you guys. After that, it felt like someone was here. Is it Yukiko-san? I don't know. I haven't looked. The presence is over that way. That's probably where they are. Over there, huh? Is everyone ready? Yeah. You're positive that no one's behind a camera for that bizarre midnight program. Program? I don't know. Maybe people on your side can see stuff in this world. It might be that. And I told you before, there's only me and shadows here. There's no camera stuff going on. This world has been like this from the beginning. From the beginning? That's what we don't understand. I don't know. Can you guys explain everything about your world? I've never seen this program thingy before, so I don't know. Well, is that really what's happening? Are we really looking into this world? Because the first time Yukiko showed up on that channel was before she disappeared. Doesn't that seem off? I mean, Yukiko saying stuff like, score myself a hot stud. Oh, that's not like her at all. Score? Stud? Yeah, I couldn't believe it either. Yukiko-san would never say anything like that. Huh. I wonder. Is this kind of like what happened to me last time? There's a lot of stuff I still don't get. But after hearing your story, I think that program happens because of the person who appears on it. Or something like that. So... Yukiko is producing that show herself? Oh, I don't get this at all! Hey, do you feel Yukiko's presence from inside? I'm pretty sure. So, um, what's this scoring with a hot stud thing? Yukiko's here. I'm going on ahead! Hey, wait, don't go alone! Jeez, we better follow her.
Go for a first strike! When you defeat an enemy, the seeds of possibility you attain will appear before you as cards. At times, they may be hard to grasp, but you must master your fear and reach out to them. Step up too! Chie, are you all right? Chie? She said that red looks good on me. Yukiko-san? I hated my name. Yukiko. Snow. Snow is cold and it melts quickly. It's transient. Worthless. But it's perfect for me. Apart from inheriting the inn, I'm worthless. Still, Chie told me that red looks good on me. Are these Yukiko-san's inner thoughts? I remember hearing Saki-senpai's too. Yeah, this castle is probably here because of this Yukiko person. Yukiko? Chie was the only one who gave my life meaning. She's bright and strong, and she can do anything. She has everything that I don't. Compared to Chie, I'm... I'm... Chie protects me. She looks after my worthless life. And I... I don't deserve any of it. Chie is so kind. Yukiko, I... Chie is so kind, huh? What a joke. Oh man, is that... It's just like Yosuke. She lost control over her suppressed self. Now it's a shadow. Are, Are we, we talking, talking about, about that, Yukiko? <laughs> she, she says I'm protecting her. her. She, she says she's, she's worthless. worthless. <laughs> <laughs> that it should be, right? Yukiko, so good looking, so fair skin, so feminine. She's the one all the guys drool over. When Yukiko looked at me with such jealousy, man, did I get a charge out of that. Yukiko knows the score. She can't do anything if I'm not around. I'm better than her. Much, much better. No, I've, I've never thought that. What are we going to do? We need to protect Chie-chan right now. No, don't come near me. Don't look at me. 
Chia, calm down. No. No! This isn't me! Wait, stupid! Don't say anything else like that! <laughs> That's right. I'm the one who can't, can't do anything, anything alone. I can't win as a girl, let alone as a person. I'm pathetic. But you, Kiko, she depends on me. <laughs> That's why she's my friend. I'll never loosen my grip on her. She's too important to me. No! That's not how I think of her! <laughs> so you're just going to turn your back and deny me again? But things are different now. When the time comes, I'll be the one left standing. You won't mind, right? I'm still you. Shut up! You're... Jie, no! Sensei! Nothing to say anymore? Stop it, Chie. It's all right. But, but. 
But I... He's right. I went through the same thing. So I can understand. I mean, everyone has a side like this. Yeah, I kinda get it now. You are me. A side of me I couldn't forgive. That I tried to ignore. But you still exist. You're a part of me. I, um, it's true that part of me feels that way. But I wasn't lying about being friends with Yukiko. Like we didn't know that already. Hey, Chie! I'm okay. Just a little tired. You don't look okay at all. And I bet you can use the same power we have now. Huh? Hey, what should we do? All right, let's get back to the entrance, though. It's dangerous around here. I never said I needed a break. I can still keep going. Don't overdo it. It's not that we don't think you can. It's just we have to save Yukiko-san no matter what. Now that you have the power, you can fight with us. It'd be much better for us all if you had your strength back. That's why we're saying we should go back and regroup. But Yukiko's still in here, isn't she? Uh, I... Uh, if those were Yukiko's true feelings, then I have to tell her something. I'm not as strong as she thinks. It's because she was with me. Because we were always together, I was able to act that way. If we weren't, I'd... Well, you need to get your strength back. Then you can tell her. Yuki-chan's normal. The shadows don't attack normal people. They only attack when the fog lifts here. So Yukiko-san will be safe until then, right? I'm positive. Why? I don't get it. Teddy told us that the weather here is the opposite of our own world. When it fogs over in our world, that's the day it lifts here. And that's when the shadows attack their victim. So even if we leave for a while, Yukiko-san won't be in danger until the fog starts to cover Inaba. I'm sure of it. It was the same way for that announcer and senpai. Don't you remember how it was foggy in town on the days they died? You mean, they were killed by their other selves? The fog usually appears after it rains. But it's been sunny lately. I don't think it's going to rain anytime soon. Don't worry so much. We'll check the weather forecast first thing when we get back. But, but I can't turn back now! We've come so far! Yukiko's still here! She's all alone! She must be so scared! Then you tell me how much further we gotta go to reach Yukiko-san! Th that's You don't know what's up ahead! The enemies might be even stronger! If we push ourselves too hard and get wiped out, who will save Yukiko-san then? We can't fail no matter what! Am I wrong? <sighs> all right. I'm sorry about before. I shouldn't have rushed in like that by myself. No worries. We're definitely gonna save Yukiko-san. Right? <laughs> right. I... Uh... I'm feeling even worse than the last time I came in here. My head feels like it's gonna split open. Are you guys okay? That's right, you're not wearing the glasses. Oh yeah, what's with those glasses? Did your eyesight go bad? Man, you didn't notice until now? How panicked were you? Tam ta da I got a pair ready for Chie-chan, too. Here you go! Whoa! What the... This is awesome! It's like the fog doesn't exist! 
Why didn't you whip those out earlier if you had them? I made them right now. You didn't tell me she was coming. It was all so sad and, I mean, sudden. Huh. So that's the trick. I was wondering how you guys could see where you were going. Hey, is it alright if I keep these? Faux show! We'll have to stop here today. But I'll be back with these puppies. You guys better not come here without me, got it? Yeah, let's all promise each other. Nobody goes in alone. It's way too dangerous. If we don't work together, we won't be able to solve this case or save Yukiko-san, right? Yeah, I agree. I promise to. All right. So from tomorrow on, we'll try and come here as much as we can after school. And that includes days off. Hey, would you mind being our leader? You were the first to get this power, and you're way better in a fight than either of us. I think it's best for all of us if you set the pace of the investigation and we follow your lead. I'm cool playing second banana. I had a feeling you'd say that. I mean, I'm more the advisor type, you know? An ideas man, not an executive. I'm with Yosuke. If you're the one calling the shots, I'd feel a lot more comfortable about this. I'm with Yosuke too. If you're the one calling the shots, my pillow will be a lot more comfortable at night. Teddy, would you please stop talking? I'm really on edge right now. Let's get some rest for today so we're ready for tomorrow on. And don't forget to check the weather forecast. It gets foggy after a lot of rain, so let's keep an eye out. Also, let's make sure we gear up for next time. That's all for World News Tonight. Coming up next, the local news. Mm. Hey, mind if I ask something? You aren't getting involved with any strange business, are you? What happened at the station this afternoon? It's still bothering me. Is there anything you're not telling me? Is something bothering you? Believe me, I, I do feel bad that I've been too caught up with work for us to have time to talk. Oh, well, what's wrong? Are you fighting? No, we're, we're not having a fight. This isn't the police station. I agreed to look after you, so don't get yourself involved in anything that could get you into trouble. Got that? And now, our weather forecast. Due to high pressure fronts from the west, that sunny spring-like weather will stay with us for a while longer. Is this lady the one who decides the weather? Because when she says it'll be sunny, it always is. Uh... She's not really deciding it. <laughs> Never mind.
You're back. I wonder how Chia is doing. Too much stuff happened yesterday. I hope she's back to her usual self. Oh, morning. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, thanks for everything yesterday. It's kind of embarrassing, you know? You two were right there to see my hidden feelings and all. Don't sweat it. The same thing happened to Yosuke, right? So, what was it like? Huh? Uh, how, how should I put this? Oh, I nearly forgot. None of that happened when yours awakened, huh? Hmm. Could that be because you've got nothing to hide? Oh, so nothing happened for you? I gotta agree that you seem like a pretty open guy. There's a funny air about you. I don't know. I guess that's what draws people to you or something like that. What? Hey, whoa, what are you talking about? <laughs> don't do it. He'll get arrested again. Anyways, what's most important right now is to rescue Yukiko. I'm dead set on coming. Remember, you promised. Oh crap, I still haven't gone to the bathroom. Hey, um, thanks for saving me. Yosuke's cool and all, but there really is something different about you. I feel like you won't let me down. Right. You'll need this from now on, huh? We have to be careful of the fog that sets in after the rain, right? Let's save her before that happens.
Yo!
Yukiko? Yukiko-san, are you all right? Yukiko, what's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> oh my, special guests. I wonder how they'll play into all this. <laughs> Things are really heating up. Okie dokie, I'm going back to hunt for my Prince Charming. Oh, where could he be? This place is huge. It's so exciting, but it makes it so hard to find him. Oh, maybe he's playing hide and seek in the fog. <laughs> Ready or not, here I come. Let's go further in then, shall we? What the hell is this? You're not Yukiko. Who are you? <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm Yukiko, and Yukiko is me. No! <gasps> Don't tell me. Are you? Where's the real Yukiko? What's with these voices? The shadows are getting agitated. Well, I'm off again. <laughs> you better be waiting with bells on, my dear prince. Hey, wait! That clearly wasn't the real Yukiko. It had to be... I think it was. It must have been the other part of herself. So it's just like what happened to us. But I don't think she was excited for nothing. The real Yukiko wants to show us something. I can feel it. It's hard to explain. It seems like she has a strong connection to this castle. This is a lot more dangerous than I thought. Yukiko! Hey! Not again. Damn it, we told her not to run off on her own. Ah, 
counting on you. I smell so Beat them up. It's not going down. Soda. Chie Chan is swarming them left and right. Someone else's turn. Two more enemies. You gotta hang tight. No one stands in Sensei's way. Ooh, that went well. You get to go first! Persona! Come on! Persona! Yikes, it's tough! Atta boy, Yosuke! You're in the zone! That's some thick skin! Sensei! <laughs> calm down, Sensei! Someone else's turn. <laughs> Another level for me.
smell two enemies. Beat them up. Someone else's turn. Cheech, I'm scared. Persona. I realize this is sudden, but I'm Margaret. We met at the Velvet Room the other day. There is one important point I forgot to warn you about. So I thought it best to contact you immediately. Going to save your friends is a selfless and noble deed. By all means, we encourage and support you in regards to this matter. But to proceed too hastily in that quest will mean facing one battle after the next. Though you may be pressed for time, devoting yourself to battles will not quench your heart's yearnings. The bonds created through social links are another important means of strengthening the powers of your persona. Do not hasten heedlessly through your days, and remember the importance of moving at a sustainable pace. Please remember that. Well then, if you'll excuse me.
Amen. I'm Daisuke Nagase. Yo, Daisuke, you waiting for a special invitation? Hmm. Koichijo. Let's go home. Welcome home. You can have this. Night. Yo!
Yo! What? Hey! <sighs> you think so? Let's do it.
Right. <sighs> okay, let's put some fight into this. Let's go! Sensei's way. That should do it. Congratulations, Sensei.
sure you'll win. You're gonna pay, damn it. Counting on you. Someone else's turn. on the wall Keep Wait, it no. going! Couldn't quite beat it. Uh-oh, Yosuke! He <laughs> lowered your up!
going down. Take it. It's down. Here it goes.
Matthew Miyazawa. for it.
<laughs> okay. All right. All right, we're all here. Yeah, let's go. There's two of her. Oh? Ooh, what's this? Three princes are here to see me. My, my. Are you the surprise guests who came in late? Oh, I wish I'd gotten a better look at you. My, it's getting crowded here. Why don't you and I go somewhere else? A land far, far far away where no one knows me. If you're my prince, you'd take me there, won't you? Come on, pretty please? Oh, is this scoring a hot stud? Three princes? Wait, does that include me too? Duh, the third one's gotta be me. I seriously doubt that. Chie, <laughs> yes, she's my prince. She always leads the way. She is a strong prince. Or at least she was. Was? When it comes down to it, she is just not good enough. She can't take me away from here. She can't save me. Yukiko! Stop. Historic Inn? Manager training? I'm sick of all these things chaining me down! I never asked to be born here. Everything's decided for me, from how I live to where I die. I'm so sick of it. To hell with it all. That's not true. I just want to go somewhere far away. Anywhere but here. Someone please take me away. I can't leave here on my own. I'm completely useless. Stop. Please stop. I have no hope if I stay, and no courage to leave. So I sit on my ass, hoping that someday my prince will come. I don't care where we go, anywhere's fine. As long as it's not here, I don't give a damn. Historical tradition, pride of the town, what a bunch of bullshit! How dare you? That's how I really feel. Isn't that right, me? 
No. Stop! Don't say it! No! You're not me! <laughs> oh, this feels wonderful. It's building more and more. If this keeps up, I'll... I'll... <laughs> together. <laughs> Hang in there, Yukiko. I'm right here for you. Oh, really? Then I'll make sure to give you plenty to deal with. Throw down! Show me this strength of yours. Come, my prince. <laughs> to attack!
like I have the wrong idea. You're no princes! Die, you worthless commoners! It's cornered! You're nearly there! <laughs> Counting on you! Come on! Priscilla! No! Understand, you're not the only one like that, Yukiko-san. Everyone has something they can't show to other people or don't want to admit to themselves. Yukiko, I'm sorry. I was so self-centered that I never understood what you were going through. I'm your friend, and I still... I'm so sorry. Chie. I was always jealous of you, Yukiko. You had everything that I didn't, but jealousy was like a wall, and I was so lonely. I wanted you to need me, but it was me who needed you. I can't do anything right on my own. I've caused so much trouble for Yosuke and the others. If you weren't by my side, I... I wouldn't know what to do. Chie, I never saw the real you either. I was too busy trying to find an easy way out. I want to run away. I want someone to save me. You're right. Those feelings are part of me, too. I understand now. You're me. Are you okay? Yes, I'm just a little tired. You all came to rescue me. Of course! Thank you. <laughs> Don't even mention it. I'm just so glad you're safe! <laughs> right on. So, who threw you in here? Huh? Who are you? Rather, what are you? I'm Teddy! So who threw you in? I don't know. I think... someone called my name. But my memory's a blur. I can't remember who it was. I'm sorry... um... Teddy? No new clues. Not necessarily. Now we know for sure that someone threw Yukiko-san in here. Hmm... Then it really isn't you guys. Just joking. Anyways, let's hurry back home. Yukiko looks exhausted. Thanks again, Teddy. Huh. Wait, you're leaving me here? Leaving you? What are you talking about? You live here. Well, yeah, but... I'm sorry, Teddy. I promise to come again. So be a good boy and wait here until then. My, it's getting crowded here. Why don't you and I go somewhere else? Come on, pretty please. Ah, you're giving me the creeps. That's it, you're stuck here for the rest of your life. Yukiko, are you alright? You're not hurt anywhere, are you? No. I'm just a little tired. Oh, 
I'm sorry, but I don't remember anything. Well, no worries. You're safe, and that's more than enough. But there's no mistake that Yukiko-san was, um, attacked the same way as the last two victims. And I think the one we saw on the Midnight Channel wasn't the real Yukiko-san, but her shadow. Maybe the things Yukiko-san was suppressing in this world took form in the TV. You know, Teddy was saying something like that. <sighs> it's no use. I'm just going round and round in circles. What kind of person could be doing this? Wait, can't we talk more about this some other time? Yukiko really needs to get some rest. I'll take her home. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Yukiko-san must be exhausted. We'll talk about all this some more once she gets her strength back. there. We got off work at the same time, so I'm giving him a ride back to his place. I thought we might as well swing by. Nice to meet you. I'm Adachi, the guy who's been your dad's slave since spring. I can still work you harder, you know. <laughs> a good one, sir. <laughs> uh... Oh, I almost forgot. You're friends with Yukiko Amagi, right? They found her safe and sound. Tell all your friends at school. Wow, someone thanked me for a job well done. I don't know what to say. But this doesn't mean the case is closed, though. We were just questioning Miss Amagi, but she says she doesn't remember anything that happened while she was missing. And we can't figure out her whereabouts during the missing period either. It's like she really disappeared. It's all pretty fishy if you ask me. Like there's something else going on. Ow! Stop blabbering, dumbass. <laughs> Sorry. Ignore him. He's just spouting some wild fantasy. Yeah, don't give it a second thought. Sheesh. He's a real pain sometimes. I'm hungry. <laughs> You're right. My stomach's growling too. <laughs> so you do have a softer side around Nanako-chan, sir. Shut up and sit down. Wash those hands first. Hmm. I should do the same.
Hmm. I'm sorry. Due to the weekend rainfall, clear skies seem unlikely in the area. A thick fog is expected to set in tonight and remain until tomorrow morning, with heaviest concentration in the Inaba area. Anyone planning to go out tonight should take care. Now for our hourly weather breakdown. 
More fog, huh? There's been a lot of that lately. Hopefully it's not a sign of more trouble. Uh, uh, uh. What did I say about changing the channel without asking? Have a great day, even during Golden Week, at your local Juness. Come see for yourself and get in touch with our products. Every day's great at your Juness. Every day's great at your Juness. Dad, they're going to be open during Golden Week. <laughs> I heard. Do you want to go somewhere during the long holiday? Uh, we can go somewhere? How about it? Got any plans yet? Then let's all go somewhere together! Junus, 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 Junus! <laughs> you sure you want to go to Juness? We can go there anytime. Come on, girl. Time for bed. It's late. Every day is great at your Juness. Oh, good morning. Yeah, I'll be coming to school again, so that'll be nice. I caused everyone some real trouble. I'm sorry. No, sorry isn't quite right. What I mean to say is thank you. My mother's back to work already. The maids are being really supportive, and I think things are going even smoother than before. I wonder if I was trying too hard. I may have been too caught up in the idea that I had to do everything myself. Ever since the incident, I feel like I can think about these things more calmly. But it's still kind of embarrassing. You guys saw everything, even the things I didn't want to admit. I'd like to believe that. Yukiko! Oh, it's Chie! Well, I'll talk to you later.
sorry to keep you waiting. The soap was yours, right, Chie? Thanks! Oh, that smells so good! These instant noodles are just the thing to help me through club. How much longer do I have to wait on this? It still needs a few minutes. So why are we here? Oh yeah, we were gonna ask Yukiko what happened. Yukiko-san, I hate to bring up stuff you'd rather not think about, but I need to ask you again. Did you recall anything about when you got kidnapped? No. I thought I might remember something if I let it sit for a while, but as time passes, it only gets hazier. I think the doorbell rang at the entrance and someone called for me. But when I woke up after that, I was already in the castle. I'm sorry. No need to apologize. But does this mean her visitor is the culprit? I don't know. If it's true, then that's one daring criminal. What kind of killer would ring the doorbell? The police are probably looking for witnesses, but I don't think we can expect much from them. <laughs> As if the culprit wore bright yellow clothes at the scene of the crime. I wonder why whoever it is would do stuff like this. We won't know until we confront them ourselves, but we can be sure of one thing. It's no coincidence that people keep ending up in that place. Someone on our side is definitely kidnapping them and throwing them into the TV. It's murder, all right. Oh yeah, we never told you. This guy and me are gonna catch the culprit ourselves. The police are out of their league on this case, but we got personas. Huh? Um... I'm helping out too! I can't believe someone would throw people into a place like that. I'm gonna sock whoever's doing this. Chie. Let me help too. I want to know why this is happening. Especially if someone hates me so much they want to kill me. I don't want to run away from myself anymore. All right, then let's all work together and catch this asshole. Agreed. But how are we going to find them? We don't have a single lead yet. I'm the third one to be targeted so far, but I have a feeling this isn't the end of it. If we had an idea of who might be targeted next, wouldn't we have an advantage over the killer? So we'll outsmart them, huh? Yeah, that might work. Okay, so let's see if we can figure out what ties the victims together. First, there was that announcer, Mayumi Yamano. Second was Saki Konishi, senpai. Third, was Yukiko Amagi. What do they all have in common? Bingo. How dare he target females? Now that's unforgivable. The culprit's gotta be some kind of pervert. Also, what about this? The second and third victims had some sort of connection to the first one. Hey, that's right! Yukiko and Saki-senpai both had connections to that announcer! That's true. Then, does that mean females connected in some way to Miss Yamano's case are being targeted? I think that's a safe assumption for now. There's another angle we can take, too. If another person disappears... You think they'd be on that Midnight Channel? That happened right before Yukiko was kidnapped, too! Yeah. It's hard to tell who at first, but what's important is, it's happened before the victims disappeared. Kinda like a ransom note. We still don't know why that happens, but we'll have to rely on it for now. The next time it rains. By the way, aren't those done by now? 
Oh, that's right. Chow time! Hey, could I try just a little bit of that? Just one tiny bite? Hands off the soba, pal. Go get your own if you want some. Okay, just one bite, got it? Do you want to try some? It's so good. The aroma, the flavor, and the texture all combined. This is perfect! Ah! What the hell are you doing? You ate everything! My fried tofu. I hope you guys understand what this means. Stop! I'm sorry! I'll buy you steak! It'll be on me! You hear me? The very best! Steak? My tofu. Come on, Yukiko! There's steak in it for us now! We can eat instant noodles anytime we want, right? Well, as long as it isn't too fatty. Okay! We've reached the verdict. You are hereby sentenced to buying a steak. What wouldn't be too fatty? Filet? Ooh, filet sounds nice and expensive. Filet, 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 filet mignon. Hey, you've got a pony up too. You're just as much to blame. Man, talk about great timing. We just started serving grilled steak today. We're doing our part to spread this town's specialty dish. Plus, we've already got an excellent grill. That's just a yakisoba griddle. Oh, well, steak is steak. It's far from a filet steak, though. Yukiko, are you okay with this? It's not too heavy for you? I'll eat it. I'm still mad. So back on topic, I wonder what kind of person the culprit is. If you focus just on the announcer's case, it seems like a revenge thing. Maybe it was her lover's wife. But Masuzu Hiragi had a solid alibi, didn't she? And it seemed like she was already separated from her husband. Really? You know an awful lot about this. Okay, what about the second case? Saki-senpai. She found the announcer's body. Assuming the same person killed them both, then why target senpai? Wait, you're saying Senpai and that Yamano lady knew each other? Senpai never told me anything like that. Maybe it was to keep her quiet? She could have noticed something that the culprit left at the scene. But the killer just threw the announcer into a TV, right? I don't think he would have left evidence the police, much less a high school student, would catch. Yeah, exactly. Man, I thought the countryside would be a snooze. But it's proving to be a lot more exciting than I thought. Oh, they updated the menu. Huh? Isn't he that detective? Hey, you were at Dojima-san's. <laughs> I'm not. Oh, wait. Hey, this is great timing after all. Dojima-san said that he'll be leaving work on schedule tonight. Could you pass that on to Nanako-chan? Yo, I'm Adachi, Dojima-san's gopher. I mean, his partner. Are you this busy every day? Huh? Oh, well, the public seems to be getting a charge out of these cases, but we can't leave it at that. Sorry to butt in, but could it be that the killer targeted Saki-senpai in order to silence her? Um, you sure get to the heart of the matter. Yikes. <laughs> of course, we're also thinking along those lines. She was killed right after the announcer's body was found. If the killer was trying to silence her, there might have been something at the scene only she would have understood. Which would mean that the culprit may be someone close to Miss Konishi. Nothing like that points to Misuzu Hiragi, so... Oh, I might have stumbled across something here. 
Wait, are you listening to all that? Crap, me and my big mouth. Uh, don't tell anyone I said any of that, or Dojima-san will flay me alive. <clears throat> Relax, kids. The police are on the job. Uh, see ya. You were right, Yosuke. The police are totally useless. Ah! My steak's getting cold! Could you shut up about the steak for five seconds? really is inside the TV. It's Teddy. Then it wasn't a dream. Are you feeling better, Yuki-chan? I did what you said. I've been a good bear. Oh, I see. Good boy. <laughs> oh, well, this bear's part of the reason we want to find the culprit. I'm one of the group now, too. Let's work together, okay? Yep. I was thinking the same thing. That's why I got these ready for you, Yuki-chan. Oh, so these are what everyone's wearing. Thank you, Teddy. You're right. It's just as if the fog doesn't exist. Hey, tell me something. How come you have so many pairs of glasses? Excellent question. Guess what? I'm the one who makes them. I've lived here for a long time, so I came up with some ways to be comfortable here. I see. But don't you need a pair? Ooh, good point. Another great question. Listen to this. My eyes themselves are lenses. You didn't know? Of course not. <laughs> Why are you being so mean? You act like you're not interested. I'm a really dexterous bear. See how smoothly my fingers move? What am I even looking at? Ow! Hmm? You dropped something. Oh, that's a pair I kind of screwed up on. Ooh. <laughs> Yukiko? <laughs> how do I look? <laughs> Do you like that one, Yuki-chan? I want to wear this one. It's even got a nose guard. Oh, no you don't! How very unfortunate. That pair doesn't have the right lenses in. Guess I should have made an actual pair. Aw, too bad. Here, Chie, your turn. All right, fine. <laughs> How'd it come to this? Yukiko-san? Hello? There goes one of Yukiko's laughing fits. I never thought she'd do it when someone besides me was around. These stupid glasses are useless for investigating. I mean, what the hell's this nose for anyway? Nice work, huh? That's what happens when you guys leave me here alone and I get bored. Well, I'm glad that she's in high spirits again, I guess. <laughs> oh, Chie, the look on your face. <laughs> it was so funny. I can't stop <laughs> Oh, oh, my stomach. <laughs> the fourth and the fifth. I think I might be able to get the fourth and the fifth off. Really? Really? What, you don't believe me? It's always cancelled. Um, not every year. I know you wanted to go to Jeunesse, but 
I wouldn't mind going a little further out of the neighborhood. Really? <laughs> Can we go on a trip? Uh, well, it might be okay to go on a trip once in a while. I'm sure it'll be crowded everywhere, though. Yay! <laughs> We're going on a trip! Hmm. All right, all right. Then we need to think of some place to go. How about you? You want to come along with us? Yeah, let's all go together. <laughs> Looks like Nanako wants us all to go. Let's bring boxed lunches. Hmm? Yeah, good idea. We're always eating side dishes for dinner. But I can't cook. And Nanako's not good enough yet to make them by herself. Hmm. Well, it'll work out. That's what we got this guy for, huh, Nanako? Yay! Box lunches! guys huh 
हाँ हाँ Whatever. He's here! Alright.
turn first. There's three enemies. Oh. Soda. Great, well Sensei. Go for broke. Good work, Sensei. That's one nice. so far. It's not going there. down. Beat the stuffing out of it! <laughs>
An Inaba Credit Union ATM to the north of town was destroyed today by an earth mover, and all cash inside was stolen. The vehicle, which was abandoned at the scene, had been reported stolen by a local contractor. Since the culprit was able to act quickly before the security guards arrived on the scene, the police have... <sighs> That's late. Hello, Dad? Yeah, I'm okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. He said to give you the phone. He can't take those days off. Hello? Sorry, but I'm gonna be late tonight. Make sure you lock up before you go to sleep. And about that time off on the 4th and the 5th, one of the younger guys got sick. And, well, that case he's handling, we can't just let it sit. Looks like I'm the only one who can take over for him. Sorry to spring this on you all of a sudden. Um, how's Nanako holding up? Would you mind comforting her for me? Thanks. All right then. See ya. Oh cool, you're home. Hey, if you're free today, want to go somewhere? Yukiko's coming too. How about you, Nanako-chan? Want to come? Um... Huh? I... I can come? Of course you can! Why'd you bring poor Nanako-chan to a place like this on Golden Week? Where else is there to go? I love Juness. Nanako-chan! But we were supposed to go on a real trip somewhere. We were going to make boxed lunches. Wow! You can make boxed lunches, Nanako-chan? Oh, so you're the family cook? Pretty impressive! Big bro. Big bro. Whoa, you can cook? Well, you do seem to be great with your hands. Uh, uh, never mind. I'm a pretty good cook too, you know. Probably. If you'd asked, I would have whipped up some buck lunches. Easy as pie. Yeah. Uh, let me think about no. What makes you think I can't cook? Let's have a cook-off and see for ourselves. My, my, doth the lady protest too much? And hey, I never said I cooked. But I have this weird feeling like I'd win anyway. <laughs> I can understand that. What the? Yukiko! Here, Nanako-chan can be our judge. I bet we'll make something that ranks up there with your mom's cooking, Nanako-chan. I don't have a mom. She died in an accident. Hey, Yosuke. I see. 
Um, sorry. I didn't know. It's okay. Even if I don't have a mom, I have dad with me. And now I have a brother, too. And I'm having a lot of fun today. I love Juness. Yeah? That's good. <laughs> we'll play with you anytime you want, Nanako-chan. Yeah, we should hang out more often. Come on, Nanako-chan. Let's go get a soda. Okay. She's a strong girl. Yeah, she makes me feel like I'm the little kid here. That's it. I'm gonna go get something for Nanako-chan, too! Do you want something, too? Hey, 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 hey!
the prime suspect in yesterday's ATM robbery in northern Inaba was arrested earlier today. The alleged thief is Pomena Sushin, a 26-year-old former employee of the company which reported the stolen vehicle. According to the police investigation, Pomena Sushin was... I'm home. Ugh. How many days is he going to call in sick? These rookies lately sure are... Welcome back! Nanako, I'm sorry I broke my promise again. Oh, um, my big bro and his friends played with me instead. I see. Thanks. Oh, that's a Juness bag. <laughs> What's in it? <laughs> Good eye. Well, today is Children's Day. So I brought you a present. Yay! <laughs> Ooh, a t-shirt. <laughs> it took me a while to decide what to get you. You like it? I got you one, too. Not that you're still a child or anything, but fair is fair. Don't mention it. I thought you might need one soon. Well then, let's eat. Yo! Damn it, I just fixed this thing. It's making squeaking sounds again. Huh? Yeah. Hey, by the way, I'm sorry about the other day. You know, about what I said to Nanako-chan. After hanging out with Nanako-chan, I feel even stronger that we have to solve this case. Yeah! You know, Chie and Yukiko seem different lately. They're a lot closer. Oh, yeah, I was just curious, but are you... I, never mind, you know, if we keep chatting, we're gonna be late. Oh, man, school's such a chore. And now my bike's messed up, too. The roads are much wider here than in the city, so I keep speeding. I guess that did it. <sighs> oh, well. Until I get my motorcycle license, I'll just have to walk. Why do the holidays have to end so fast? At least they were peaceful. I listened in on the housewives gossiping at Juness, but it doesn't seem like anything happened. And I haven't heard anything about someone disappearing suddenly either. You think Yukiko could have been the last of the victims? Hmm. I don't know. But we shouldn't relax as long as the culprit remains at large. I wonder. Will someone show up on TV again if it rains? We only knew a little more about who the killer might be. Eh, 
It's no good fretting over it now. If someone does show up on the Midnight Channel, then we'll deal with it. It's supposed to start raining soon, but I hope this weather holds through next week. You know, midterms. Ugh, you had to go and bring that up. I don't want to think about it. <sighs> I wish I had Yukiko's gift for studying. Hey, Yosuke! Why don't you have Yukiko go over some of the material with you? Hmm? Oh, that's right. Yukiko's ranked at the top on every exam. Maybe I should ask her for some private lessons. Uh, private lessons? Huh? What's wrong? Ow! What was that for? I'm just asking you to help me study. Oh, I'm sorry. You were talking about studying. I thought it might have been an off-color joke. Arian has had some strange visitors lately. If you thought it was a joke, then just shrug it off. Sorry, my hand moved without thinking. Jeez. Thanks a lot, Chie, for bringing up the whole studying thing. W what did I do? Uh, you're the one who made it sound creepy and wrong. Private lessons, huh? What? Then it's mostly my fault? Oh, I should start heading home. Welcome back.
Hey, Chie, I bought you a new copy of that Trial of the Dragon flick. It was the greatest punches version for 980 yen. If I knew then, I'd just replaced it instead of buying you grilled steak. This is clearly getting closer. Huh? What are you, scared of a little lightning? Quiet, you! I'd be a goner if even one of those things hit me. Ah! <laughs> You're freaking out way too much. Come on, shouldn't weather like this help with your kung fu training? A bolt of lightning would hit and it'd give you the inspiration for a new move. There was a scene like that in your DVD, wasn't there? You jerk! You don't even care how I feel! If lightning has to strike someone, let it be this guy! <gasps> huh? Is this a blackout? That's what you get for saying that stuff, Chie. Looks like I better hurry up and head to work. Depending on how produce sells today, I might get a little bonus in my pay for the week. This weather may keep customers away, but I gotta do my best if I'm gonna save up for a motorcycle. It's from my manager. Hello? Uh, Yosuke-kun? Hmm. Uh, some of the power in the store is out after that lightning strike. C could you come in early today? All the refrigerated shelves have stopped running. It's looking like we'll have to close up the produce section early today. Wait, what? But my pay! Anyway, I need you here to help deal with this mess. I'm counting on you! Goodbye! Wait! What are you looking at me for? Uh, why did this have to happen? Hey, Yukiko, can we just go home? Chie, do you know this story? A girl forgot her homework, so she snuck into school in the middle of the night, but she suddenly needed to use the bathroom. She ventured into the girl's room where all the lights were off. No one should have been there, but in the mirror... Hold it right there! What are you talking about? Huh? It's a ghost story. I thought you liked them. Yeah, but why tell it now? Thanks. I'm glad you're here. <sighs> Why don't you just have him escort you back home, Chie? Uh, are you making fun of me? Well, yeah. With how freaked out you are, can you blame me? Oh, the power's back! Come on, Yukiko, let's go home! Uh-huh. Yo!
at school yesterday. They said today is Mother's Day. My teacher told us that's a day when you give your mom flowers. I don't have a mom, so I don't know what to do with these flowers. Altar? Dad always puts food there. He said it gets to Mom in heaven. Do you think my flowers will get to her too? I did a really good job on mine. My teacher said they were pretty too. I wonder if my mom will be happy to get them. You should make a flower too, big bro. Then we can celebrate Mother's Day together.
it's finally over. Ooh, what a load off. I bet every student feels like this after exams are over. Hey, quiet down. So what did you write for number seven? The one about what that referred to in the sentence? Um, I put her sorrowful expression. Oh, crap. Then I got it wrong. I put the rice cakes on top of the table. Rice cakes? Wait, was that what the story was about? All right, I'm giving up on composition. I'm going to bet it all on geography. What did you choose for the tallest mountain in the solar system? Ah, seriously? I chose the wrong one. Oh, I put that one too. Whoa, you too? It's probably the right answer. Boy, I can't wait for our grades to be posted out in the hall where everyone can see them. Jeez. Hey, did you hear? A TV station's filming here in town. They're probably just doing more stuff about that hanging corpse case. No, it's not that. You know the highway nearby? They're gonna cover those biker gangs that hang around there. A friend of mine goes to the biker meeting sometimes. I heard it from him. Dude, what are you doing hanging out with a guy in a biker gang? Well, anyways... What do you think about tomorrow's group blind date? We were gonna meet outside, but it's gonna rain soon, right? Won't it be better to play it safe tomorrow too? Biker gang? Oh yeah, they raise a ruckus from time to time. I guess your place is too far away to hear them. We live right by the road. The noise can drive you insane. I hear some guys at this school are part of it too. Yeah, I know there are some rumors about a first year student here who's a total hellraiser. One of the guys working at Jeunesse said the dude's been a legend ever since middle school. Although, was he in a biker gang? Did... did you say he was a legend? Uh, it's not what you think, Yukiko. Yo. Uh-huh. All right. <laughs> Yo That's not it Okay <laughs> okay, let's... You're back. I see.
this sucks. Oops. Oh yeah? See ya. Young men recklessly riding their motorcycles, disturbing the peace of a quiet rural town. Our special report took a turn for the violent when one of the apparent leaders attacked the camera crew. The hell are you punks doing here? That voice. This ain't a show! Get bent! Still up to the same old tricks. Do you know him, Dad? Uh, well, I know him through work. His name's Kanji Tatsumi. He's quite a handful. He's been crushing biker gangs in the area since middle school, but I thought he'd got into a high school and started attending class. Huh. Man, that blur sure is pointless. It's completely obvious who it is. The guy's family runs a historic textile shop. I think what happened was he crushed the local bikers all by himself because the noise kept his mother up at night. It's a nice gesture, but he's way too violent. At this rate, his mother will have to apologize again. Oh, the weather report's showing on the bottom. It's going to rain tomorrow. I'll make sure to hang the laundry inside the house. Whoa! It started raining. I guess the weather report was right. That means the show's probably gonna be on tonight. I hope we don't see anyone. Yeah, that'd be best. But if we do, maybe we'll see some kind of clue that can point us toward the killer. Well, everyone, don't forget to check your TV tonight. Got it?
end. We will now hold a meeting on our investigation of the serial kidnapping slash murder case here in Inaba. Dude, take a breath. Oh, then does that make this place our special headquarters? Yes, exactly. Nicely put, Yukiko. Special headquarters? Hmm, that does have a nice ring to it. Anyways, as for what was on last night... I saw it too! I couldn't get a good view of the person's face, but it was a guy, wasn't it? So that's how I looked on TV. Hmm, wait a moment. Didn't all the victims have one thing in common? That they were females with ties to the first incident? That's what we thought, but we still don't know who exactly we saw. In my case, the image on the Midnight Channel changed after I was kidnapped, right? Yeah, the screen got clear all of a sudden, and the program looked like some low-budget TV show. Come to think of it, maybe Teddy was right. Maybe we were seeing the other Yukiko from that world. But last night, we couldn't clearly see whoever it was. Could that mean he isn't inside the TV yet? If so, then... I think that's safe to assume. If we can figure out who he is, can we prevent him from being taken? Yeah, and if all goes well, we might catch the killer in the bargain. But to do that, we need to know who the latest Midnight Channel star is. I hate to say it, but I guess we'll have to wait another night and see what happens. <clears throat> well, that means if my deductions are correct... Though the image was hard to make out, and we can't say for sure who it was, it was definitely a young male. But if that's the case, it goes entirely against our prior assumptions. Since we cannot identify the person at this time, we have no choice but to wait and see what happens. That's exactly what we just said. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny, Chie. <laughs> oh no! My, my funny bone! <laughs> Not again. Sorry. <laughs> this is how Yukiko really is, huh? Who'd have thought? By the way, about that guy we saw? I get the feeling I've seen him before. Pretty recently, too. Oh, you too? Yeah, I've been thinking the same thing since last night. Well, let's check the TV again tonight and think about it more tomorrow. <laughs> when are you gonna stop that, you crazy hyena? <laughs> That's a good one, Chie! <laughs> Welcome back. somewhere. He was on TV. He was on that special news report. He's one scary dude. He was even yelling at the camera to get bent. All right, so we finally have a lead. Let's all get together tomorrow, okay? Oh, I almost forgot. It's kind of off subject, but as long as you're on the line, mind if I ask something? It's something I've been meaning to ask for a while. So, uh, what do you think about Yukiko and Chie? I mean, 
Well, let's not mince words. Which one's your type? Oh, I had a feeling you'd say that. She's actually pretty interesting. I never knew she was like that. My image of her has changed completely, but I like her way better now. Hey, but don't worry. This is just between you and me, okay? See you tomorrow. The one who was on last night. It's that guy, right? Kanji Tatsumi, huh? He definitely didn't look like the social type. Now there is an understatement. Isn't he really scary? Did you see the new special the other day? Yeah, I saw it. You mean the special on biker gangs? I watched it too. It wasn't like that when he was younger, though. You know him, Yukiko? Uh-huh. But we haven't talked to each other in a long time. His family runs a textile shop, and we've been a customer of theirs for many years. So I speak with Kanji-kun's mother from time to time. Oh, why don't we go there now? We might be able to talk to him in person. Sounds good. At the very least, we can ask if anything strange has come up lately. I wouldn't want to run into him in a dark alley, but I'm pretty sure he won't fly off the handle at his family's store. All right, then let's get going. If things get rough, we're counting on you guys. Yuki-chan, it's so nice to see you. Well then, if you'll excuse me, ma'am. I'm sorry that I couldn't help more. It's all right. You've given me plenty to think about. Thank you. What's up with him, weirdo? Huh? Never seen him before. Yuki-chan, you're as lovely as always. Your features are starting to remind me of your mother when she was young. How can I help you today? Are you out shopping with your friends? Oh, um, well, actually... Hey, this scarf. I've seen this somewhere before. Oh, you're right. Where was that? Oh, it was that place inside the TV! That's right. That room with those faceless posters. Then it's that announcer's. Are you acquaintances of Miss Yamano? Uh, well, kinda. Um, did Miss Yamano happen to have a scarf like this? Yes. It was a special order she placed. She actually ordered a pair. But in the end, she said she only wanted the women's scarf. It left us with no choice but to sell this one separately. Oh man, there is a connection to the first case. What are we gonna do? How should I know? Hello? Delivery here for the Tatsumis. Oh, I'll be right there. I'm sorry, you'll have to excuse me. Oh, it's okay. We should get going. I'll come again, ma'am. Is that so? Well, then please say hello to your mother for me. It really is connected to the first case after all. But it's just a scarf. Would the killer target someone just because of that? Damn it, what's going on? Come on, let's talk outside. Kun. What? Quick, hide! You're not fooling anyone, you know. Shh, I can't hear what they're saying! T tomorrow's fine with me, huh? S school. Of course I'm going to school. Then I'll meet you at the gates after school tomorrow. 
Did he, did he say he was interested? He's a guy. And I'm a guy, but he's interested in me? Huh? What the hell are you pricks looking at? One on TV last night was definitely Kanjikun. Yeah, and I just realized something. Remember the common points we were talking about? His mom fits the pattern. She's a woman, and she knew Ms. Yamano. But it was her son who appeared on TV. So what does that mean? That's what it seemed like based on the TV image, but his mother fits the pattern more than he does. Oh, maybe it's similar to my case. If you think about it, my mother fit the victim profile more than I did. She was the one who dealt directly with Miss Yamano, but I was the one who was targeted. Does that mean it'll be the kid again instead of the mother? But if that's true, then the killer's motive makes no sense at all. It'd have nothing to do with silencing witnesses or revenge or anything. You think we're on the wrong track? Maybe even the first case had nothing to do with grudges or revenge. Or is there some kind of secret in the textile shop itself? I'm totally lost. But we can't ignore this. Hmm. Why don't we just go ahead and ask Kanji himself? We could at least see if anything odd's happened lately. He scares the wits out of me, but... Hey, wasn't Kanji making plans with that weird kid a moment ago? Something about meeting up at school? I heard he's been skipping school ever since the new year started. Doesn't that seem a little suspicious? Yeah, something did seem weird. It's suspicious, all right. There's something funny going on here. I can sense it. Sense? You sound like Teddy. Still, we might find some clues. All right, let's try staking out both Kanji and his family's store. We definitely don't want the killer getting ahead of us. That being said, Yukiko, can I have your cell number? Hey, was this your plan all along? Uh, no, <laughs> I got everybody's phone number except for hers. And the Y section of my address book needs some filling out. <sighs> While we're on the subject, could you stop calling me at night just to tell dirty jokes? You really sound like a pervert. Hey, I'm trying to have a conversation with Yukiko here. Hmm. Oh, that reminds me. I need to buy tofu on my way home. Oh, she didn't hear a word I said. Okay, then. The stakeout is set for tomorrow. Hmm. Stakeouts? Tailing people? <laughs> I'm getting goosebumps. Target arrived at school? Yes, ma'am. Visual ID confirmed. Target arrived in zone near the end of his mess break, with mother-issued rations in hand. Current status, in the bathroom, fixing his hair. The target was acting nervous. I left my position before he had a chance to pick on me. I wonder what kind of plans they made. It didn't seem like he knew that boy very well. Well, I think there's something more subtle. Oh, he's here! I didn't keep you waiting, I hope. No, I, uh, I just got here too. What in the world was that? Anyways, we gotta hurry after them or we'll lose them. 
Okay, then let's split up into two groups. One team will follow Kanji, and the other will stake out the shop. Roger that! How should we split the teams? Sure, that's fine with me. Oh man, they're almost out of sight! Come on, Yosuke! So I'm pairing up with Chie? Okay. All right. We'll need to pretend we're on a date to make it look natural. Uh, not in a million years. There'll be no need for that if we stay out of sight. Sheesh. Let's hurry up and go. I wonder if those two will be all right. Oh, um, that leaves us in charge of staking out the textile shop. So, shall we? <laughs> Sorry about the wait. This one's for you. Everything seems fine at the shop. I hope it stays that way. Do you think the culprit will come? then we need to keep our eyes open. It would be scary if the culprit did show up. But if they do, I'll do what I can to help you catch them. You all saved my life. I don't want to be the only one doing nothing. I mean, I'm sure there's something I can do. Oh, sorry. I went on and on without realizing. I, I guess I'm a little nervous. I've never chatted with a boy my age like this before. Chie, of course, has no problem getting along with guys because of her personality. But I think she's had more fun hanging out with you and Yosuke lately. <laughs> the same is true for me. Oh, you're right. We'll need to contact each other if anything happens. Man, this is weird. Yeah. We definitely stand out. No, I mean them! I get this weird feeling about them. Weird? What about them's weird? Um, I don't know how to put it. Maybe it's just my imagination. <laughs> hey, how do you think the others are doing? Beats me. For all we know, he's hitting on Yukiko as we speak. Yeah, no. He's not like you. Yukiko doesn't seem to be interested in that stuff anyway. <gasps> Wait, are you saying he's interested in her? Huh? Uh, I, I wouldn't know. Well, we don't really talk about that kind of stuff. <laughs> now I'm even more suspicious. You know something, don't you? I, I seriously don't know. It's not like we've been hanging out that long. What the hell are you two doing? Oh, well, you see, we're... We're just two crazy lovebirds. What do you mean, bird? Play along, bird brain. Didn't I see you guys yesterday? <laughs> Come on. It just so happened that we were walking behind you guys. Pure coincidence. Hey, our houses are just over that way, so we'll be going now. Um, look, we weren't planning on getting in you guys' way, and there's nothing strange about it either. <laughs> Strange. Why can't you keep your big mouth shut? Whoa, 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 wait. Damn it! Say what you think. 
you, you got it all wrong. Hey, are you listening, damn it? It seriously ain't like that. We regret to inform that our mission failed. There was nowhere to hide. Well, let's wait here a little longer. Maybe Kanji-kun will come home. Yeah. Huh? What are you guys doing here? You're those stupid lovebirds I just saw. We're not a couple! Why are you assholes following me around? Damn it, what the hell's going on? I ain't saying this is you guys' fault, but damn it! Hey, uh, mind if we ask something? Has anything strange happened to you lately? Huh? Strange? What's this strange stuff, huh? Are you saying that I'm strange? Huh? No, 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 I, I didn't mean... You shitheads better get the hell out of my face or I'm taking you down! What? Wait, why? I look like I'm joking! Uh, oh, too much running. Well, nothing happened today, so I guess everything's okay. But it's already been a few days since he appeared on the Midnight Channel. If this is anything like Yukiko's case, it'll happen soon. Then we can't let our guard down. I think we should come back tomorrow to check up on him. Looks like we got no choice. Let's go home. I'm wiped. Oh, welcome home, big bro. for Bad Bad Bathhouse. Tonight I'll introduce a superb sight for those searching for sublime love that surpasses the separation of the sexes. <sighs> I'm your host, Kanji Tatsumi, serving you this scandalously special sneak-in report. Goodness gracious, just imagine the things that might happen to me there. Woo! Well then, let's get this show on the road. Toodaloo!
place? That place that was behind him? What do you think it is? A superb site for those searching for sublime love? I just don't get it. Anyways, we better hurry and come up with a plan tomorrow. Given the pattern so far, Kanji's already inside the TV. I wonder what the Midnight Channel really is. Mm. At first, I thought it was one of those paranormal things, but when I gave it a try, it was real. Turns out it's actually connected to another world. If there's a rumor going around, that means a bunch of people are watching it. How did the rumor go? If you stare into a turned-off TV on a rainy night... No one in their right mind would try something that ridiculous, don't you think? Unless someone urged them to. But if you actually try, it does work. And not just once. If this rumor spreads and everyone starts watching the Midnight Channel... It could cause a huge panic. If Teddy is right, the missing people themselves create the stuff we see. So it's not random. It's specifically related to whoever goes missing. Huh. Yukiko had a show too, but she doesn't remember doing anything like that. Um, this might be a little off subject, but the culprit is probably watching the shows that come on, right? No doubt. He's probably sitting back and enjoying... Oh, wait a sec. I bet he is enjoying it. He's probably laughing his head off watching the show that comes on after he throws people into the TV! Oh, I get it. Yeah, it's definitely possible. Ugh. Now when I think of the killer, I get this image of a total sicko. I want to see everything about you, Yuki-chan! Oh, eh, eh! Wait, so if people saw Yukiko's show, do you think people were watching what happened to me too? Oh, that is it! That killer is dead meat! I'm gonna leave footprints all over his face! Guys, first we save Kanji, then we crush the killer! Finally, we crush the killer and send him to hell! Got it? Teddy, someone's here, right? Oh, yep. I think someone's here. You think? Do you know where he is? I don't know. We think it's a boy named Kanji. I don't know. What's wrong? Not feeling well? Well, I sniff and I sniff, but I still can't tell where the smell comes from. Aren't you thinking too much about too many things? I mean, last time you were wondering about who you really are and how long you've been here. Your head's empty to begin with, dude. Don't stress out over stuff too much. You're right. Whoa, he's seriously down about this. If you can't figure out where Kanji is, we're in deep trouble. We can't just wander around aimlessly in a place like this. I know what might help. You should give me a clue about this kanji person. It's just a feeling I have. I think I could concentrate better with it. Do you have anything that could give me a good understanding of him? Something about kanji, huh? I can't really think of anything besides all the rumors about him. Yeah, it's not like we know him that well. I just need some sort of hint. Something that tells me what he's really like. Why don't we ask around and find people who know kanji couldn't personally?
Yo!
that's not very nice. Thank you. Welcome back.
Let's go, Big Bro! Something's here! A, a fox? When did it... Whoa, where did this guy come from? Dude, it looks scary, too. Oh, this apron. I think I've seen it at the shrine before. Huh? Curious with leaves? Huh? Cooperate with us? Are you serious? So we want money in exchange for fixing us up? <coughs> What's with this guy? It acts like it understands what we're talking about. <coughs> it yipped again. Maybe it really does understand what we're saying. But when you think about it, that means the police on duty and whatnot didn't find this fox, right? If it followed after us, then it really is something. Huh? You think it really understands us? What should we do? Well, I'd feel bad if we trapped it. It doesn't look like it'll do us any harm. What do you think? Yeah, and thinking about what happened at the shrine, don't you think this curing would be a big help for us? Huh? Are you suggesting we take it into that other world? Hmm. Mm, I guess that might work. It doesn't seem like it's going to leave that easily either, and I definitely don't want it being all sulky and getting up to mischief in the store. Yeah, let's go! Oh, you found out more about Kanji! 
Uh-huh. A complex. Um, that's it? That's all I have to go on? You're working me to the stuffing. Oh, well. Then I'll open my nose up real wide and sniff real hard. Hmm. Oh, I think I found something. It feels like our target. Is this it? Follow me! Is it just me, or does the fog here seem kind of different? My glasses are fogging up. Man, it's hot in here. This place is like a... Come here, pussycat. Oh, such well-defined pecs. There's no need to be scared. Just relax. Wait a sec. I don't want to go. Is Kanji Kun really here, Teddy? The nose knows. We're really going in here? I can already feel the sweat rolling down my back. That's because it's so hot. That's a 
strong. Oh, enemy! Don't get hurt! Counting on you! Persona! Oh, that's some thick Persona. skin! Persona! There! I think I could get into this. Sensei! Right, Yosuke? You're hurt!
Good morning. Um, we are growing veggies at school. The teacher gave us seedlings and told us to try growing them at home. I asked Dad, and he said I could plant them wherever I want. I don't know where's good, though. The place next to the house? Mm-hmm. We don't use it, but it's our yard. Is that where we're going to plant the seedlings? Is this where we're going to plant the seedlings?
头。See you later. Welcome back. Yo!
Yo! Yo! Okay, let's head home. Oh, welcome home, big bro.
for your undivided attention. At last, I've penetrated the facility. These images are coming to you live from inside this steamy paradise. But I've yet to have any charming encounters. Could this hot fog be the cause? It's like steam rising from sweat. Mm, my body's tingling with excitement. This is so wrong in so many ways. I remember it being kind of like this on Yukiko's show, too. No, it wasn't like this. Those voices again. Wait, are they louder this time? These voices? I was wondering whose they could be since it's only the victim in here. Is it the people watching outside? You mean everybody who's watching the Midnight Channel? They're reacting to the show? Yikes! If people are watching Kanji-kun now, he's going to be a legend in a way he never intended. Well, it's really his shadow, not him. But normal people won't know that. The shadows are getting really restless. That elusive thing I truly yearn for. Will I finally find it here? <laughs> well then, onward and deeper to reach further realms of romance. Let's get going, damn it! Kanji-kun! That was his other self. It's trying to reveal his hidden feelings. It seems much worse than that time with Yuki-chan's shadow. At this rate, it might end up getting bare naked. <laughs> bare naked? Oh man, here it comes. Um, was I supposed to laugh? to go first! <laughs> Hey, 
Hey, congrats!
Yuki-chan seriously out to lunch! Just one enemy left!
Uh huh. All right. Welcome back. vegetables. Well, I'm excited to see them come in. Yo! Dream. 
Yo! All right. All right, let's go. here, right? Don't worry.
quite beat it. Persona! Yeah. So persistent. <laughs> Counting on you. It's not going yeah. down. Persistent. Just one enemy left. Throw down. Persona. Ooh, that went well. Oh, did I level up? For Yuki Chan. You leveled up! Excellent! Alright, I leveled up! Yay! I leveled up! Oh, did I level up? Not 
going down. Hey, congrats! Another level for me! Chan, you're hurt! Get some help!
Thank you. I'm sorry. Bihara. Girls annoy me. Hey, man. Let's go home. Welcome back. They look yummy. We've got veggies. 
later. Everyone here? Yeah, let's go! the charade. Isn't it awful to deceive people? To deceive yourself? What's so bad about doing what I want to do? And that has nothing to do with it. I'm what you really want, aren't I? Hell no! Oh, how I hate girls. So arrogant and self-centered. They cry if you get angry. They gossip behind your back. They spread nasty lies. They look at me like some some disgusting thing and say that I'm a weirdo laughing at me all the while. You like to sew? What a queer. Painting is so not you. But you're a guy. You don't act like a guy. Why aren't you manly? What does it mean to be a guy? What does it mean to be manly? Girls are so stupid. 
scary. I ain't scared of them! Men are much better. They'd never say those awful, degrading things. Yes, I vastly prefer men. Hell with that! What makes you think you could say that shit with my face? Why, you're me. And I'm you. You do know that, don't you? No. No. uh No way! There's no way in hell that you're me! <laughs> you're me, and there's no denying it! Kanjikun! Everyone, on guard! I am a shadow, the true self. I'm just being true to myself, and that's why I'll get rid of anything in my way! Are these Kanji-kun's true feelings? This isn't really him. It's just his emotions going haywire. This has nothing to do with you guys anymore. Didn't I just say I'm gonna get rid of you? Persona! <laughs> Counting on you! Persona! Protect me, Tomoe! Keep it up, Chie! Yeah! Persona! Yeah. Sweet, you can go! So big and strong! Cut it! Sensei, hurry and get rid of that poison! to go through with this. Get out of my way, or I'll crush you! Oh! <laughs> Yosuke's all poisoned!
Damn it. Kanji-kun. Wait, Yukiko, something's wrong. It's still coming at us! Kanji is still rejecting it! Well, I can't blame him with this many witnesses. Such a passionate approach. What? I think that you three would make wonderful boyfriends. Stop it! You got it all wrong! Enough! Stop! What the hell are you blabbering about? I don't care who! Won't someone? Anyone please accept me? Stop it! Accept me for who I am! Whoa, whoa! I really don't swing that way! I said stop it! I can't believe something like this is inside me. Kanji, you're... Yeah, I know. I've known all this time I had something like you. It ain't a matter of guys or chicks. I'm just scared shitless of being rejected. I'm a total pansy who tries to make everyone hate me. <sighs> Come on, get up. Anyone who looks like me, I know they ain't so weak that they can't take a punch. I already know that you're me. You're me. And I'm you, damn it. I feel great. It's like my mind's all cleared up. Hey, about what just happened. Yeah, you better. We'll explain everything later. You need to take a rest now. We'll be waiting for you at school. School? Sure, if I ever feel like going. I'll take this guy home. If anyone asks, I'll just say I found him somewhere like this. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Remember that Kanji Tatsumi guy I told you about? You know, the one who went nuts on that news special. His family's shop called in to report him missing. But now he's been found. I thought I'd let you know since you go to the same high school. Yeah. One other thing. Some people have seen you around that textile shop lately, I hear. It's not the kind of shop students normally visit. Just what kind of business did you have there? A friend? Oh, that Amagi girl. That's right. Her family's in, buys their stuff wholesale. <sighs> Fine. Just don't get yourself in over your head, okay? Are you fighting again?
welcome back. Hey! Sorry. Night. And now, the weather. The week ended on a wet note as rain clouds moved into the area. As a result, a thick fog is expected to form in the Inaba region later tonight.
Yeah. Uh. Really? See ya. Hi there. <laughs> Where'd the manners come from? Well, um, I didn't know you guys were my senpai. Uh, thanks a bunch. Though, I don't really remember what happened. There's some things we'd like you to tell us about. First off, who was that boy you met with? I really don't know much about him. I mean, I've only met him twice. Yeah, but you walked home from school with him. What did you guys talk about? Uh, well, he just asked stuff like uh, if anything different happened lately. But I don't know where my head was at. When I came to my senses, I blurted out that I wanted to see him again. To a guy? I, uh... I don't really get it myself. Girls are so loud and obnoxious, so, you know, I, I really don't like dealing with them. Guys are a lot more laid back. So, uh, I started thinking, what if I'm the type who never gets interested in girls? And I couldn't accept that, so I kept spinning around and around in my head. Well, I can understand the part about feeling more relaxed around dudes. I'm fine now. I mean, it was all in my head when you get down to it. I was the one shutting out that stuff. So, uh, our families run a textile shop for generations. Oh yeah, you, you already knew that. My parents are kind of weird. They, they say stuff like, dyes are one with the universe, and cloth is alive. And that's the kind of house I grew up in. So I've been interested in sewing and stuff since I was a kid. The second I say stuff like that, people look at me funny. Girls make fun of me, the people in the neighborhood treat me like I'm some zoo animal. So I was sick of everything. And when I got to my senses, I was running wild. Shit, what is with me today? I'm going on and on about myself. Forget all that. 
Man, I must look really lame right now. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> I've never talked about any of this stuff before. Guess I never had anyone to tell it to. I guess I wasn't really afraid of girls. I was just scared of people in general. But all that's behind me. Wow, I'm surprised. You're a good kid. Uh, don't, don't call me a good kid. <laughs> no need to get embarrassed. You're a big guy. You can take it. Hey, is there anything you remember after you ran into us the second time? You know, after you chased us away and said you were going to take us down? Huh? Uh, I went home. I was going to sleep it off in my room. Wait, I, I think someone came... To your house? Who was it? Uh, well, it was just a feeling I had. I, mean, I don't know if anyone actually came. Other than that... I remember some weird, dark entrance thing. And when I woke up, I was laid out on the floor of that sauna place. A dark entrance. Could it have been a TV? Huh? Well, now that you mention it, maybe so. Uh, why do you ask? Oh, no reason. I was just wondering. Did the police ask you anything? Well, my mom had called the cops to look for me, so they questioned me for a while. I told them exactly what I just told you. And they looked at me like I was crazy. So, like, are you guys playing detective or something? Mm, well, something like that. Anything I can do to help? If there's some bastard out there who put me through this, I ain't gonna rest until I make him pay. Seriously? Awesome! You'd make a great addition to our team. What do you say, leader? Thank you, sir. I'll put my life on the line for you guys. I'll do my best. Well, if we're going to welcome aboard a new member... Should we take him to our special headquarters? We're still calling it that? What? What's that? Come on, let's go. Man, you eat a lot. Were you listening to what we were saying? Huh? Well, sure, I was, I was listening. Ah, oh, close your mouth. Mm. So, uh... Wait, so someone's killing people with the TV? What, 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 is he beating them to death? No, they weren't being beaten with a TV. Were you listening at all? <laughs> oh, don't worry. He'll understand once he sees the place with his own eyes. But the way it happened was just the same as with Yukiko. The killer kidnapped him first, then threw him into the TV. Yeah, it's scary. That show's been pretty crazy lately, huh? Yeah, I keep wondering who'll show up next. I knew before I came on that he'd be the next one to appear. What's that dude's name? That first year who used to be in a biker gang? Who the hell do you think was next? His name is Kanji Tatsumi. And he wasn't in a biker gang. He's the one who beat the shit out of those leathered up pansies. So who are you, dipshits? <laughs> Boring. I can't stand it. Sure, they have no idea it's related to the murders, but still, how can they talk about their schoolmate like that? They're like onlookers at a car crash. As long as it's not happening to them, they're dying to see. Damn, this sucks. We don't even know who's going to be targeted anymore. This case disproved our assumption that all the victims are female. What was the other thing we thought they had in common? People involved in the initial case about Miss Yamano are the targets. How about that? Well, 
Well, both Yukiko and Kanji-kun were involved in some way or another. But that announcer was dealing with their mothers, not them. You guys saying you don't have any clues? Well, listen up, because I got something big. What's that? Okay, when I made my comeback at school today, there was an annoying brat hanging around. Turns out, he was snooping around about senpais and my disappearance. So I took this from him. I don't know what the hell this all is, though. Uh, and you took it anyway? she wasn't that well known until the incident it's just this guy's personal rankings nothing important what does the next one say i hear her album sales have gone up since the incident if she knows about it and she's using it to sell her songs that's pretty sketchy she has an alibi though i don't think this involves her let's move on What are these dates? April 11th? Oh, they found the first body on the day school started, so that would have been the 12th. The 11th is the day before that. I know I can't forget the day Saki-senpai's body was found. That was the 15th. So then what are these dates? And what does list of TV programs mean? What's Saki Konishi April 13th? Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Oh, yeah. I saw that, too. They were interviewing her because she found the first body. Then this part. Mayumi Yamano, April 11th. Is that the day she appeared on TV, too? Oh, she was on. I remember now. That was when the affair hit the news. Hey, wait a sec. Yukiko, didn't you get interviewed, too? When did that interview air? I think it was when I was absent from school. Um, it was the day after I met you at the embankment. I had my kimono on. Do you remember? I went shopping that day, so... April 15th. And right after that, I was kidnapped. Kanji, what about the television special you were on? Oh, yeah, that thing. Damn show made my mom go ape shit on me and... The date! Just tell us the date! Uh, I don't remember the exact date, but it wasn't too long before I met you guys. It's true, then. Everyone was on TV before they disappeared. So you think the killer's targeting people he sees on TV? I was so caught up with the news reports about the incidents that I didn't notice at all. Now that I think about it, when the killer failed with Yukiko, they moved to Kanji instead of trying again. Maybe this being on TV thing is some stupid rule that the killer's following. That's right. The killer could have targeted the same victim again. I think there's a definite connection here between the kidnappings and the TV broadcasts. The victims weren't just involved with the first case. They were also shown on the mass media. That must be it. But if so, what's the motive? Why kill someone just because they were on TV? Damn it. Now that I think about it, we haven't gotten anywhere. Why can't I be smarter? Dude, why beat yourself up? I think you guys are awesome. I mean, you guys noticed what was happening to me and even risked your lives to stop it. That's more than enough. You rescued me, too. We may not have solved the mystery, but we've saved two people already. That's true, but... What's more, everyone's deduction that Kanji-kun might be next was right on the nose. I know! We were so close! Huh? You knew before it happened? Damn. 
I wish you guys come a little earlier then. Well, if we know this much, I think we can outsmart the killer next time. Then it's a countdown to their arrest. Don't forget, it's always possible that Kanji-kun was the last target. Or so we hope. We've thwarted them twice already. Here's hoping the killers learn their lesson by now. Anyways, let's keep checking the midnight channel like usual when it rains. That reminds me. The school campout's next week. I hope it doesn't rain. It's for both the first year and second year students, so we'll see you there, Kanji-kun. Seriously? School, huh? What a drag. Yo, mind if I order another grilled steak? I'm gonna finish this one up while the next one's on the grill. We're, uh, we're going Dutch on the meal, right? Well, let's get going. I think our new teammate needs to meet Mr. Bear. Huh? What's up? Fine, whatever. I'll go for something cheap like ramen. Wait, or should I get a takoyaki set? Man, I can't decide. None of it. What? Oh yeah. Now that you mention it, I kind of remember this thing. Didn't think it was a bear though. Hey, why is it a bear? I don't know. Me neither. I've been wondering, too. It, it's kind of cute. M mind if I pet you? No touching allowed, mister! <laughs> hey, don't give me any lip, bear! <laughs> uh, by the way, I, I've been wondering. You were kidnapped too, right, Yukiko-senpai? Huh? Yeah, it wasn't long before you. So, like, that means you came out to everyone, too? Th that's uh... What was it like for Senpai... Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to hit you so hard. My jaw! I'll be more gentle next time. More... gentle? What a pair of dimwits. Oh yeah! Here's a present from me, Kanji! It's to celebrate you joining the team! Ah, oh, so these are the glasses you guys told me about. Hurry and put them on. Huh? Sure, but hang on, aren't these different from everyone else's? It, it looks perfect on you. <laughs> Damn, dude, it looks great on you. I had a normal pair ready for you, but Yuki-chan insisted on this one. She wouldn't budge. Yeah, real funny, you smartass. Why are you taking it out on me? Give me that! took my spare pair. Kanji, you must really like those. <laughs> oh, oh, my sides! This is the real one. It wasn't easy getting it to you. Why the hell did you bother making a spare if it's more useless crap? Damn it! I'll get you guys for this someday. <laughs> You're back. Oh, 
the instant noodles really hit the spot. You know, the rainy season's just about here. Isn't it a little early? Once it starts, it'll be raining every night. We'll have to keep a constant eye on the Midnight Channel. Crap, I didn't even think of that. Well, so it goes. <laughs> I thought you were worried about the rain because of the school camp out. Why are you so excited about that? That's right, it's the first time for you two. You realize the only purpose of the school camp out is to develop a love for one's hometown and young people, right? Yeah, they tell us that up front, so? Well, you see, the way we supposedly develop that love is by picking up trash off the mountain. Picking up trash? Develop a love my ass, that's slave labor! Well, the night's kind of fun. We cook our own meals with mess kits and sleep in tents. The four of us are in the same group. The same group, huh? Does that mean we sleep together at night, too? You wish! Guys and girls sleep in different tents! I'm warning you, if you leave your tent at night, you'll be expelled on the spot. And this gets worse and worse. I thought it was gonna be fun. It's only for one night and we disband before noon the next day. It doesn't last very long. Oh, we did have some fun at the river before going home last year. Do they let you go swimming? I think so. There's always someone who takes a dip, although we didn't. I see. So you can swim in the river.
Hey, guess what I just heard? When they're sitting in back of you, it's like a squeeze play. Come on, you know what I mean? Sorry, I got ahead of myself. What I mean is... I'm talking about how when there's a girl sitting behind you on a motorcycle, they press right up against your back. a lot thicker than I thought. Anyway, I think motorcycles are the hot new thing for guys now. Girls like guys who spend time outdoors, right? So I got you this. Want to get your license with me, partner? Well, I can't afford anything bigger than a scooter on my budget, but at least that'll let us get to new places. Don't you think we deserve that much seeing as how we're investigating the case? What's up, senpai? Hey, about the camping trip, you guys busy right now? Kinda. We're talking about motorcycles. Motorcycles? You gonna go stomp a gang? If you're bringing a war, I'll help. No, we're not bringing a war. What does that mean, anyway? We're just talking about getting motorcycle licenses. Licenses? You guys don't have yours? Huh? No way. Don't tell me you already... Nah, I'm still 15 and all. Then why'd you say it like that? Man, that reminds me. I'm surprised you picked a fight with that biker gang. How'd you chase after them? Eh, a bike's all I need for that. In any case, we can't let you in on our up-close-and-personal plan. Up-close-and-personal? What does that mean? Keep it down. Like I was telling this guy, what a guy needs nowadays to be a big man is first a motorcycle, and then... And then... A girlfriend. Why'd you bring that up? Well, I mean, I gotta get over her sometime. It's like Senpai was... Wait, no, this isn't supposed to be a serious conversation. Back to the subject! Don't worry about me. What you ought to be worried about is smooshes. You guys gonna get licensed for the big stuff? I mean, I know I came in late here, but if you're talking about taking a girl on a bike, you gotta be seen too, man. That ain't allowed on a scooter. I forgot about that. Shut up, this'll work out. As long as we have a motorcycle, the girls will come running. That's all the advantage we'll need. Now listen carefully. The reason we don't have girlfriends is because we're stuck here in this town waiting to meet someone. This place is so tiny, it's no wonder we can't find one. It doesn't matter if it's only a scooter. Some kind of motorcycle is just the ticket for us to get some chicks. Then, later on, we can get a bigger motorcycle. And that's when the up close and personal plan really starts. Up close and personal? Plus, you know, you and me have more of a city boy thing going on. If we're serious about this, we've got to expand our horizons to a bigger town. We gotta to take the initiative. There's no time to wait for a train that only leaves every so often each day. We'll roar up on our motorcycles like the badasses we are, and when the chicks come up, we'll play it cool. The pheromones dripping off of us will bring them around in no time. What, fe feral zone? No, we're not going to a cat house, you idiot. I'm talking about pheromones. My research shows that a motorcycle is the number one surefire way to increase a man's pheromones. Pheromones? Dude, that's how a perv would react. What did you say? Fine, then I'm in too. Get ready for Kanji Tatsumi to show his manhood to these chicks. I already told you, you can't. Anyway, don't tell anyone about this, got it? If other guys try to copy us, it'll end up diluting our pheromones. So, partner, make sure you talk to your uncle about getting a license, okay? Got it. Not you. I don't even know your uncle. I'm serious about this. 
If we have motorcycles, we can go all over. It'll be fun. Man, somewhere out there, the best days of our youth are ahead of us. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. Ah, you're back. Hi there. You want some meal, too? Fair warning, it's from the supermarket. Well, excuse me. It's delicious, though. I can't believe it was on sale. Sorry, but this guy eats instant noodles every day. That constant slurping got on my nerves, so I called him here. You don't have to bluff like that. You just wanted to eat dinner with a coworker, right? Don't be stupid. But eel was a great choice. Nanako-chan loved it, at least. I'd say she's eerily proud of her daddy. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Did my joke slip away? It is an eel, after all. Just eat your dinner. E yes, sir. Nanako-chan's such a good girl, though. She went straight to do her homework once her plate was clean. It's not every day you get to eat eel. You'd think she would have spent some more time savoring it. You think that because you slack off too much. You should follow her example. <clears throat> Way to hit where it hurts. What's the matter? A motorcycle? You mean a scooter? Oh, that's right. Kids your age can ride those. I don't know, though. Come on, don't be a spoil sport. It's no surprise he once went out here. I understand how you feel since I'm from the city myself. The trains don't run that often, and walking around everywhere is pretty inconvenient, isn't it? Right? It's criminal. You say that, but... That reminds me, I remember you telling me something once, Dojima-san, about some of the reckless things you did on your motorcycle when you were young. You moron. Think before you talk. And once you're done eating, hurry and... Ugh. It's me. Hmm. All right. We'll be there soon. Looks like I made the right choice to skip the booze. Adachi, you were the one in charge of that file, right? File? Oh, did that suspicious guy show up again? Would you keep your mouth shut? We're going back. Get in the car. Back? You mean to the station? But I haven't had my eel liver soup yet. About this license, did you decide on this yourself? No one talked you into it? I know it's hard without a way to get around, but two-wheeled vehicles can be dangerous. Do you understand? It's not that I doubt you, but allowing you to get one is something else. 
Don't give me that face. I, I know you're serious about this. First, you need a license. We can talk about this again when you have one. Well then, sorry to dump this on you, but I need you to look after the house. Yo, it's me. How did it go with your uncle? I've been on the edge of my seat thinking about it. Seriously? Then let's go get ours as soon as we can. I gotta hit the books. Let's make sure we both pass together. on the first try, just like we planned. Actually, it was pretty easy. I might have studied a little too hard. Hi, are you on duty? We just stopped by to get gas and, well, to take care of some minor business. Where did you guys go? Ready. I know it's just a written test to get a scooter license, but still, I wasn't expecting you to pass so soon. Oh well. Looks like I'd better think of a way to convince my sister. I can't say no now that you've gotten your license. Your enthusiasm is catching. Yes! You got the okay! I need to head home and read through the catalog. Well, see you tomorrow. Mind if I borrow you a sec before you head back home? Hey, Adachi. I just finished filling it up. Sorry for dragging you into this. This is my scooter. I had it fixed at the shop. It may be old, but it runs pretty well. I came to put gas in it, but I wasn't expecting to hand it over today, too. I'm letting you have it. You can tell? The local shops don't carry twist grips, so I had one of the repair guys at work help me out with it in secret. Uh, don't tell anyone that, okay? You're always so strict at the station. But you're a cool dad inside, huh? Shut up, Adachi. You always yell at me. Still, I wish we had a sleek means of transportation like that. Who knows when that suspicious guy will show up again? Hasn't he been using professional quality cameras to take pictures of people's houses from the Amagi Inn to around here? Looks like he knows the back streets, too. So a car won't be. Will you stop blabbering like that? Go back to the car. Well, anyway, I was around your age when I got my license, too. I took the test behind my parents' back. 
When my dad caught me riding a scooter later on, he gave me a good thrashing. <laughs> Don't tell Nanako about that, okay? Since I've already given the okay, I won't bug you about traffic laws. Just be safe when you're riding it. You do that, and I'll look the other way if you decide to ride it out of town. Can you promise me? Good. I'll hold you to that. You're back.
Oh, you coon. Thanks for taking care of him. Thank you. Oh, big fro! Hmm? Oh! Thank you. later. You're back. Hey.
Thank you.
All right, let's go home. You're back. waiting.
If you want, you can change the channel. Hello, Okina Station. That was easier than I thought. He actually followed us all the way here. <laughs> that was a breeze. It's no sweat keeping up with a couple of guys still getting used to their scooters. Psh, if I hadn't run out of gas back there, we'd have left you in the dust. I shouldn't have cheaped out on gas just so I could have more money to fool around with. You know, I notice every time I come here, there's a lot of people around. Yeah, if we hang out around here, I bet someone will come talk to us. Actually, uh, mind if I head off for a bit? <laughs> Since I came all the way to Okina, there, there's this craft shop? It, it, it's nothing, I'm just, just saying I gotta go buy some stuff. Anyway, I'm gonna go do my own thing for a bit, so you guys get started without me. Then why'd he come with us? You're right. Okay, let's get this plan underway. Sorry to make you guys wait. I couldn't decide which one to get. No luck, huh? This is so weird. I think someone's watching us from somewhere, though. Oh, hold on. I'm sure if we hang around a little longer... Dude, the sun's gonna set. Well, maybe there's some holes in your plan after all. Nah, you're fine. Your motorcycle looks cool, and you don't look so bad yourself. You said every guy needs a motorcycle, but that thing's a scooter. Does it, like, not matter what kind of motorcycle it is as long as you got one? Well, 
It's true that the ones I saw in the magazine were all big motorcycles, but that's just how it goes. There's always a gap between a man's dream and cold, hard reality. I can't afford an expensive one. A scooter's the best I can do. Senpai, can you give me 10 minutes? I can't keep quiet if you're getting shut out like this. I'll avenge you guys. This isn't a fight, you know. What are you gonna do to avenge us? Hit on some girls? Hell yeah, how else would I fix this? Come on, we have motorbikes and we failed. There's no way you could do better, right? That doesn't make any sense. I mean, after the day we've had, it's us who should be avenged. Now that's my senpai. Let's make this a contest. I'll show you clowns how a real man gets it done. Calm down. This is turning into something we've all got a stake in. I mean, do you realize what you're saying? This means we're the ones that have to approach the girls. That just sounds lame. And I doubt it'll go well for us. You chicken? That's not what I mean. All we gotta do is ask them to be our friend, and then make them say yes. Nothing to it. Well, I guess there's nothing to lose. That's the spirit, senpai. If I lose, I'll run around the block in nothing but my underwear and those gag glasses Yukiko-senpai had. Only girls count for this, all right? You're still stuck on that? Damn it! Hell if I'm gonna lose this!
How'd it go? Not as well as I hoped. I thought so. Oh, but I did get a phone number from some chick who said to give her a call. Does that count? A girl hit on you? What did she say? Something like it only costing so much for an hour. I don't know. What was she talking about? How dense are you? There's no way that counts. What about you? Did you get anything? Way to go, partner. Was it her cell? What kind of girl was it? Come on, you should call her up. Please, pretty please, please. How many times are you gonna beg? So you're gonna call her, right? Right? She picked up. Oh, Senpai's the man. Is that dude for real? Well, <laughs> that's the risk you take. All right, I'm up next. Last chance. You pulled it off, Yosuke Senpai? <laughs> of course I did. One phone number right here. Amazing. Man, it wasn't easy, too. She was crazy hot. I just had to push myself a bit and go for a sexy older woman. Time to give her a call. I hope you guys are ready for this. Hello? It's me. Yosuke-kun? Yep, the guy who asked you out on a motorcycle ride. Man, I can't wait. Huh? You know my name? Did I tell you? Of course I know your name. <laughs> we go to the same school. We do? Well, that's impossible. I mean, you... Wait. That voice. This is Hanako Otani. Who did you think I was? Uh, how did you get my number? Oh, God! I'm in such deep shit! D did I call the wrong number? One more try. Hello, it's me. Yeah, I know who you are. You really want to go on a date with me that much? The hell was that? It sounded like a fiend from the pits of the earth. Ugh, I could feel a chill go down my spine. Forget about it. For your own sake. This number is dangerous. It's better that you don't know what that was. Oh, you guys. Hanako-san! Why are you here? The countryside's no place for a girl like me. I was taking a walk when I suddenly got a phone call. <laughs> You're really into me, aren't you? A motorcycle date, huh? Well, if you want to take a ride that bad, I'll go with you. <laughs> Wait! <laughs> My motorcycle! Oh, what's with this scooter? It's broken. If you want to take me out, you've got to do better than that. The best girls don't go steady for nothing, you know. You need to make an effort. Am I cursed? Did I insult a gypsy or something? <laughs> Easy for you to say. I don't even have a way to get home now. Senpai, you fought well. I was totally moved by all that. Come on, hop on behind me. I'll get you back home safe. Whoa! Up close and personal! I get it now. So this is what your plan was about. <laughs> oh, you don't get anything! And you're freaking me out! 
And dude, it's against the law to have two people on a bike. It's okay, just put an end to this suffering already. Potatoes, onions, mushrooms, green peppers, and radishes? Are radishes the same as turnips? Curry's fine, right? It's practically our national food. We were going back and forth between ramen and curry, but I thought ramen might not be enough for you guys. Hmm, I wonder what kind of ingredients Yosuke likes. I get the feeling he's real picky. He's on another floor, isn't he? Do you want me to go ask? Nah, no need. Plus, he said he needed to get ready for something. Hmm. Ichie, you use potato starch for curry, right? Of course you do. 
Otherwise, the sauce wouldn't thicken. Then we need potato starch and some flour, too. There's different kinds of flour. Which one should we get? All purpose? Whole wheat? Hmm, whole wheat sounds healthy. Let's get that one. And here they are. Chili peppers. It's not curry if it isn't spicy. Oh well, let's just get everything that seems right. How about some kimchi too? Ooh, and some ground pepper. There's two kinds though, black and white. Whoa, way to go, Yukiko. The Amagi family sure knows their stuff. Let's get both, just in case. Oh yeah, we'll need some special ingredients too to spice things up. Hmm, I remember seeing something on TV about that. I think it was um, chocolate, uh, coffee, yogurt. <gasps> How about mint chocolate? Ooh, I love that stuff. I don't like coffee that much though. Oh, I can drink mocha, so let's get that. What about some seafood? That should make the sauce taste better. Welcome back.
Ugh, picking up all that trash was murder on my back. I can't believe someone threw away an entire bike. Damn it, litterers should have to deal with their own garbage. Anyways, time for dinner. Man, I'm starving. Dude, the girls cook just for us. Not that I expect much out of Chie, but Yukiko's got the full tradition of the Amagi Inn behind her food. You know it's gonna be out of this world. Huh? Why so generous all of a sudden? It's okay, man, just enjoy. I can't wait to dig in. Should we taste this? Huh? Only if you do it first. Oh man, here it comes. Uh, sorry for the wait. Um... We put a lot of love into it. Well, really? That's kind of cliched, but still awesome. Okay then, chow time. <laughs> hey! What the hell is this? I mean, what kind of... Curry's supposed to be, like, really spicy or kind of mild. This just stinks. And it's gritty, too. It's somehow both gritty and slimy, and it's got squishy parts in it. It's so freaking nasty, I can't even swallow it. Well, it just didn't mix too well, but it does offer a wide variety of textures. It's nauseating! Come on, it's not that bad. That's just your opinion. I'm telling you as a friend, don't do it. I wouldn't even joke about trying that slop. We're sorry. Sorry. What are we gonna do? Our group's the only one without food. I mean, if it was even slightly edible, that'd be one thing. But I'm not taking another bite of this mystery food X. <gasps> Something smells good. Hanako. <sighs> I don't have any choice. And besides, she owes me, considering what she did to my motorcycle. Hey, uh, Hanako, you wouldn't happen to have any extra curry left, huh? Come on, give us some! We're begging you! We're starving to death here! No way! I'm on a diet right now, so this is all that I made. It has to last me. All that you made? It's like a bucket full. Oh, I wonder if there's any way we can get something delivered here. But our cell phones don't get service up here. And dinner time's almost over. All right, back to your tents. Men's tents are this way, and the girls' tents are that way. Come on, people, look alive! Youngsters like yourselves should hurry up and get to bed after they eat. It's now time for us teachers to have some boo. I mean, uh, off to bed! Lights out! You guys are gonna pay for this. <laughs> Night. Damn it, I'm so hungry. And how the hell did you end up here? 
My teach threatened to hold me back a year if I didn't show. And the first year's ten is all quiet. It's like someone died. Well, if you were in there with him, I'm not surprised. Is it just you two in this tent? The other guys called in sick. Smart move. So it's okay if I hang out here? Hey, you're a stand-up guy, senpai. Don't worry, I won't make any trouble for you. They won't catch me unless we raise a ruckus. All right, all right, you can sleep over there. Dude, there's a huge rock under there. How am I supposed to sleep? It's gonna hurt like hell. Pipe down! Didn't you say you weren't gonna make any noise? Yo, senpai, can't you go just a little further back? Nope. There's a slope just past here. I'd roll down the hill in my sleep. If you don't like it here, go back to the first year tent. Hey, wasn't your teacher some guy called King Moron? That guy stopped me outside earlier and he pissed me off so bad I was about to lose it. He was going on and on about when I was in middle school. When he doesn't know shit about any of that. Not only that, he was bullshitting about how I'll be expelled immediately if I cause trouble. That ain't funny, man. Yeah, that guy set a speed record for jumping to conclusions. Check this out, right? I heard it from a guy in my class. He said that asshole was talking shit about the two girls who died. King Moron was talking about Ms. Yamano and Saki-senpai? It was like, it's no surprise that people who are unfaithful or run away from home meet a bad end. I don't know, maybe he was exaggerating. Everyone seems to hate that son of a bitch Moraoka. Damn, I could just picture him saying that. He never shut up about me either when I moved here last year. Not that I remember anything he said. Even if it's only a little true, it still pisses me off. The dickhead's a damn teacher, for God's sake. Now, nah, don't waste your energy getting pissed at that clown. Yeah, you got a point. Wait a sec. What are you eating? Animal crackers? What the? Those are mine! Damn it! I was so pumped about finding the penguin today. Penguin? The secret animal cracker! You were eating them and you didn't know that? Are you serious? Well, you should have said something. Oh, well. Oh, this isn't gonna fill me up. Let's just go to sleep. That's all you gotta say for yourself after taking my snacks. Kanji, don't you have more space on your side? And I can't sleep over there, or my back's gonna break. Oh. Okay. Uh, hey. Yeah? Why'd you come to this tent? <laughs> I already told you. Jeez, wrong with you. This is as good a time as any, so I want you to be honest with us. Uh, okay. Are you really, you know... Am I really what? <laughs> what I mean is... Um, are we going to be safe alone with you? What? What, what, what the hell is that supposed to mean? I already told you guys I'm not like that. Well, well, then why are you all hot and bothered about it? That's just more suspicious. Hell no. We settled this already, damn it. Right now I'm, well, how do I put it? Uh... Oh, God, don't trail off like that. You're freaking me out. I'm trying to tell you that I have no problem being around girls now. Can you prove it? <laughs> prove it? Because if you can't, we're going to be stuck here all night, half scared to death. <laughs> to hell with this. If that's what you really think of me, then I'm going to go hit the girls' tent right now. Uh, wait, well, that's a little extreme. You don't have to go that far. They'll expel you if they find you. Don't tell me you forgot. King Moron's got his eye on you. Yeah, like that stop a man like me. The dude's seriously going for it. Hey, man, you gotta stop him. You 
You think I'm gonna put up with this crap? I'll show you guys. To hell with King Moron. No one's stopping Kanji Tatsumi, damn it. Uh, hey, wait! What a putz. I declare myself not responsible for anything that happens. I get why we're the only three in here. I can't sleep. Oh, I'm hungry too. I should have eaten a little more of that curry. It might have knocked us unconscious. Sheesh. We can't sleep. We can't walk around. I wonder what Teddy's doing right now. Being alone all day is pretty rough when you think about it. You know, a while ago, he... <sighs> that does it! Yukiko, we're out of here! Where'd we go, though? I don't think climbing down the mountain is a good idea. Do you think she'd stop snoring if I covered her nose and mouth? No, 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 no! Yukiko, no! I can't take it anymore. <gasps> oh, who's there? Hey, are you guys still up? What are you doing here? This is the guy's side. Let us in. Don't be ridiculous. If King Moron finds out, we'll all be expelled. Go back to your tent. We can't. Are there any rotten apples out and about? Any indecent students out there? All right, hurry up and get in. So why are you two here? Well, it's Kanji-kun. He's out cold. I, I don't know what happened. He just came in and then, and then he, he fainted all of a sudden. That's all, right, Yukiko? Huh? Uh, yeah. So there was no way we could sleep with him lying there, and, you know, if we woke him up, he might have made a fuss. That's why we left him there. What? That makes no sense. He busted into your tent, then suddenly fainted. Listen up! Being insolent and being indecent are very different things. It's him! He's right outside! Hey, turn the light off. Hey, are you two in there? Answer me! Huh? Ah, so you're in there. Is Hanamura already asleep? Yes, sir. Fast asleep, sir. Don't get cute, Hanamura. Shut up and go back to sleep. <sighs> Ugh. I think I had one too many. I'm so sleepy. There goes a couple years off my lifespan. No joke! We were nearly expelled! Hey, this is you guys' fault! Well, what else are we supposed to do? Anyways, we can't leave now! We'll sneak out before the others wake up tomorrow! Is that good enough for you? What are you so pissed off for? You better not try any funny stuff while we're asleep. Is that clear? Hey, we didn't say you could... Damn it, you owe us for this. Looks like we're the only ones here. 
What's wrong? Got a stomach ache? No, it's just... I thought I got pissed and ran out of the tent last night. It's so weird. Was it a dream? When I woke up, I was in Yosuke's senpai's tent. It, it, it was a dream. Must have been a dream. Okay. All right, then. Let's get swimming. Are you seriously taking a swim? I'll pass. I'm still all stiff. What are you looking at us for? If you guys want to swim, go right ahead. You know, you two still owe us. Huh? Whoa, 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 whoa! We're not going in there. I mean, we do owe you, but... Oh, yeah! We don't have swimsuits with us! Man, of all the luck. Yeah, it really is unfortunate. <laughs> oh, I see how it is. We put up with your dinner, we save you from King Moron, and you won't even have some fun with us in the river. No, it's really too bad. It'd be no problem if I had just had a swimsuit. <laughs> Ta-da! I've got you covered. They're Juness brand originals from our brand new line of swimwear that just came in for the summer. I had a clerk friend of mine choose them for me. Pretty swanky, huh? Dude, that's just wrong. Did you have those this whole time? Come on, let's all go swimming. What should we do, Yukiko? It'd be no problem if I just had a swimsuit. You know, we really were looking forward to dinner. I wonder what would have happened if we didn't help you guys last night. We get it already. Sheesh, you just never let things go. All right, that's more like it. How far off did those two go to get changed? Come on, let's get in. Whoa, man. Stop staring like that. Hey. Where did that come from? Man, this is going even better than I expected! Kinda makes up for having to eat that mystery food X last night. And come on, you guys gotta admit I chose some good suits. These girls might be childish on the inside, but I bet they're gonna turn into some fine looking women before too long. Don't you think so? You guys cross the line. Definitely. <gasps> it's freezing! <laughs> you didn't have to push us in. Who cares? You were going in the river anyway. They brought this on themselves. Sheesh. Aren't they the worst, Kanji Kun? Hey, you've been awful quiet. Are you feeling okay? Don't tell me the injuries from yesterday are still... Uh... What? Ew! <laughs> that was close. What was that for? I didn't do anything! Yuck! Hey, what's gotten into you? Huh? Do you hear something over there? <laughs> so that's why no one else was here. Good thing we noticed before we went in. Senpai. Don't say it.
That concludes Rise Kujikawa's statement regarding her temporary leave of absence from the entertainment industry. We're short on time, so if anyone has any remaining questions, we ask that you please keep them brief. I'm Ishioka from Ladies View. It says here that you'll be recuperating. Are you facing physical problems? No, my health isn't an issue. Psychological problems, then? What? Rumor has it you'll be staying with your relatives, but isn't that in Inaba where the murders have been taking place? Huh? Um... Is it true that they run a traditional tofu shop? Will you be helping out with the family business? No more questions. This press conference is over. Clear the way, please! Is Rise-chan quitting her job on TV? Who knows? But if this is her hometown, we'll have to deal with everyone who's trying to get a glimpse. I'm tired of diets. Enough with going to the gym. Good thing there's something even I can handle. <laughs> calorie magic is made for those worried about their calorie intake and body fat. It'll slim you down in no time. Rise Kujikawa, huh? The one good thing about this town was that it had nothing of note. Now we get all the buzz. What's going on? Yo! Yo. Hey, there he is. You've been coming to school pretty often lately. What's up? It's this annoying thing called the mandatory attendance policy. But man, seeing you here kind of reminds me of the school camp out. I thought we were all going to forget about what happened. Oh, sorry. <sighs> eh, whatever. So hey, you guys see the news? News? Oh, that stuff about Rise Kujikawa taking a break from showbiz? I wonder why. She was just getting popular lately. Just goes to prove that being an idol is tough work. Huh? You don't know her? Dude, what's wrong with you? She's all over the media. It hasn't been that long since her debut, but at this rate, she'll be a top-class idol in no time. To be honest, I'm a fan too. She's such a cutie pie. A cutie pie? What are you, 80? But I think she used to live here, so she must have a lot of local fans. The news said she's going to her grandmother's tofu shop, right? Do they mean Marukyu? Marukyu? Marukyu Tofu. Our inn was serving their tofu until recently. Oh, that place in the shopping district. I pass by it all the time. Wait, does that mean I can meet Rise if I go to her tofu shop? Hey, aren't we getting a little sidetracked from the point here? Did you forget about the murders? You're the one who said the connection between the victims might be the TV. She could be the next target. Come on, it's not like Rise started showing up on TV just recently. Also, how could Rise be connected to the incident so far? I wondered the same thing, so I did some research. It seems that she had no personal interaction with Miss Yamano. They've just been on the same show once or twice. She's been an idol for a while now, but she's the talk of the town thanks to the news last night. And she is moving here after all. So if our assumptions are correct, she fits the pattern. She'll probably be targeted next. And if she is, that narrows down the killer's methods even further. What's that supposed to mean? <sighs> Kanji-kun, listen real carefully. If Rise is next, then that lets us rule out our theory that the targets have to be connected with the first case. And that means the killer's targets are people who have been shown on TV recently. Get it now? Huh. Oh. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, we have to keep a close eye on everything Rise does. Let's do it! Sheesh, he's all pumped up.
What's up? Sorry. See you later. You're back. Hey.
I see. Did you hear? It looks like Risei Kujikawa really is here. You know the tofu store, Maruku? The owners of that place have the same last name, Kujikawa. Seriously? Hey, I practically live next door. I've been hearing that there's a big crowd at Maruku. I'm not surprised. But was it really her on yesterday's Midnight Channel? Didn't she seem a little... different? It was her, no doubt about it. Her curves, her posture, even her beautiful slim legs. What's that look for? Anyways, I'm positive, right? Uh, are we going? I don't really care about celebrities, but it's not like I got anything better to do. Sure, I'll tag along. Sorry, but me and Yukiko have plans. Give us a call if anything comes up. Well, shall we get going? But let's be clear on one thing. We're not spectators. We're on an investigation, got it? Huh? Uh, Mr. Detective, did something happen? Oh, it's you guys. Ay, ay, ay. These gawkers keep streaming in with their cars trying to park in the middle of the shopping district. Why is that? Don't you know? Risei Kujikawa's here. Hey, did you see her already? Is she there? Which is it? Huh? We're asking why a plainclothes detective is here doing traffic control. Oh, uh, well, the Inaba Police Department isn't that big. We don't have enough staff. Well, I still have work to do, so I'll see you later. Dude, you managed to scare off a police detective on active duty! I wasn't trying to scare the guy. I just said what I was thinking. But you're right. It's weird for the police to come out like this. Hey, you think the police suspect that Risa might be the next target too? All right, clear out. Coming through. Hey, Adachi! Damn it, I told him not to leave his post. What are you guys doing? Hmm? 
Kanji Tatsumi. Are you friends with them? Like it's any of your business. If you say so. So I'll ask again. What are you all doing here? Hmm. Oh, um... Well, who wouldn't want to come check it out if they found out an Idol's family ran an ordinary tofu store? I'm a, a big fan! Hmm. Fine. But remember, she might be a celebrity, but this is her home. Try not to bother them too much. That cop's your uncle, huh? So, what the hell was that about? Are you guys under suspicion? Well, they did take us in once. But we can't just tell him everything, right? If we say anything about the other world, we only look more suspicious. They'll be watching us all the time. You got a point there. Ah, oh, man. There's no one in there but the old lady. Rosetta isn't here after all. I heard that she really is already here, but it might have just been a rumor. Well, it was fun while it lasted. A rumor? What? She's not here? Seriously? <laughs> you sound like the world's about to end. Shut up! Anyways, now that all those people are gone, we might as well check inside. I'll buy something. Oh, yeah, I can't eat tofu. So? Just get some ganmodoki. Ganmodoki? Is that the kind with the rice cake in it? There's no rice cakes in them. They're sort of like fried tofu patties with veggies and stuff mixed in and... Oh, okay. I know what you mean. I think I can eat that. Let's see here. Sure enough, the only one here is your typical old lady. <sighs> Man, why don't you just ask if she's in back? Excuse me! Uh, yes, may I help you? What the... then, who's that? What? <sighs> uh, are you Rise? Yeah, so? No way! Are you really Rosette? What do you want? Huh? Oh, sorry, um, some tofu, please? Tofu? Which kind? Huh? Wh which one's which again? If you're going to eat it by itself, you should go with silken. Moment's better for cooking. Depends how you use it. Uh, um... Kanji, order something! <laughs> Why are you making me do it? You already picked Ganmo a second ago. Dude here wants three Ganmodoki. Oh, I see. I'll go get them. Wow. She's nothing like she seems on TV. I wonder if she's just tired. Man, but it's really her! I'm so glad I came. Mission comp- Wait, we haven't done what we came here for yet. Um, uh, have you noticed anything weird lately? Weird? Like stalkers? Are you guys fans of mine? I wouldn't say we, but yeah. Dude here is a big fan. You little... Why'd you let that slip? Her curves, her posture, even her beautiful slim legs. You finished checking them out yet or what? Oh, you're doing this on purpose, aren't you? I didn't say that. I never said any of that. Maybe you know already, but it's been dangerous in Inaba lately. And that's why we've been investigating some stuff. Oh, yeah? Sorry, um, uh, let's see. Do you know about the TV show that comes on at midnight? I mean, it's not like regularly scheduled programming. How do I explain this? That thing that was on last night. The Midnight Channel, yeah? Oh, you know about it. Wait, what? You, you mean you saw it last night? I heard the rumors from some friends of mine. But that girl last night wasn't me. I've never been filmed wearing that swimsuit before. And the bust line. Huh? Mine aren't that big. Oh yeah, I see what you mean now. I mean, what am I saying? Um, I'm sorry. 
Don't apologize so much. You're funny. Hey, she smiled. What is that show about, anyway? Well, we're not too sure either. But you know there's been stuff happening here, right? We think the people who appear there are the ones who get kidnapped next. I know this is sudden, but we're not lying. Yeah, that's why we thought you should know about it. Huh, so that wasn't a dream. I was tired yesterday, but I couldn't sleep. And it was raining, so I decided to try that rumor I'd heard about. Hmm. All right, thanks. I'll be careful. Here you go, three ganmo. That'll be 600 yen. There's extra tofu in there for everyone. A little thank you for worrying about me. Oh, seriously? Thanks. Uh, Yosuke-senpai, you can't eat tofu, right? Want me to take yours? Hell no, I always eat what people give me. Thank you very much. Your receipt's in the bag. Seems like the crowds are thinning out, so we'll be leaving now. If it gets rowdy again, just give us a call at the station. Okay. Uh, hang on a second. I'm sorry, but there's some things I'd like to ask you. You do know that there have been multiple violent cases around here lately, yeah? Have you seen anyone suspicious around? Not really. It's been like always. Like always? Well, you're an idol. So I imagine you deal with folks like fans, paparazzi, and stalkers quite often. What made you take a break from showbiz? Does it really matter? I just needed a rest. And have you registered for school? I'm planning on going to Yasugami High. It was the closest. Well, I don't mean to alarm you, but... You do have some things in common with the recent victims. That's why... Well... I might be kidnapped, right? I've been told that before. Don't worry, I'll be careful. Huh? Someone told you already? It was three guys. They were wearing uniforms, so I think they were high school students. Did one of them happen to look... How do I put it? Did he look something like a, a gang member? Wait, you think she's talking about your nephew and his friends? Hmm, something smells here. The recent disappearances. Between those and the two homicides, there's too many questions with no answers. To tell the truth, I followed my detective's intuition and came here to warn her. How could high school kids who know less than we do beat us to the punch? Were they just making up an excuse to talk to a famous celebrity? Or... <sighs> Sir? Yasugami High, the second victim, Saki Konishi, and two other students who were missing for a while. I guess the investigation of the ones involved with the school hasn't turned up anything either. Are we going to be in trouble if this keeps up? The prefectural police will be coming soon. They're the least of your worries. Keep your head in the game. We sure have a lot of tofu. Yeah, it tastes great. You visited Risei Kujikawa today. What did you talk about? I told you to keep your hands off this. Listen, this is a job for the police. <sighs> Forget it. I shouldn't have brought it up. Yeah. Are you... fighting again? Of course not. Here, hurry and finish your dinner.
about it being Risei Kujikawa. The one on tonight seemed a lot creepier than the real Risei, but you could see her face clearly. There's no mistake. Let's all get together as soon as possible tomorrow. So about the Midnight Channel last night, that had to be Risei Kujikawa. It even showed her face this time. So now we know one more thing. The ones that the culprit's targeting are... Exactly! So we can rule out the assumption that all the victims are connected to the incident with Ms. Yamano. As for Risei... I took a peek this morning and she was still at the shop. So I'm guessing that TV show thing doesn't appear on the Midnight Channel until after the person enters the TV. Teddy said before that it might be the victim's own creation upon entering that world. I didn't understand at all at first, but now I feel it may be true. The one that appears on TV is your other self. Maybe the victim's true feelings are shown unconsciously. But we see them on the Midnight Channel before they disappear. You know when it's still really fuzzy and you can't tell who it is. How do you explain that part? Yeah, it always happens before the person disappears, like an advance notice. Or like a ransom note. But who are they announcing it to and for what? I don't know, ask the killer. There's a bunch of stuff I still don't understand. Is it possible that we see those images for the same reason? Huh? What do you mean? If the Midnight Channel shows the victim's true feelings, maybe it does the same for the culprit. Maybe what we're seeing is the culprit's intentions. Well, it's a possibility. The killer can throw people into the TV after all, which means they must have the same power that we do. So, when the killer thinks, I'm gonna attack someone now, that's what we see on TV? I don't know about that. Well, if we're gonna go that far with it, we might as well say that's the basis for that entire world. Like it's some kind of mix of the minds of the victims and the killer. Or maybe it's everyone's minds. <sighs> as always, nothing makes sense. Hey, Kanji-kun, you still with us? You haven't said a word yet. Uh, well, uh, um, well, um... You weren't sleeping, were you? Uh, of course not. I was, uh, <clears throat> lost in thought. I wish I knew what that world's all about. Teddy's explanations have so many maybes in them that I don't understand the first thing about it. Why would the culprit throw people inside the TV in the first place? They must know by now that people die when they're in there long enough. There's no doubt it's attempted murder. So the TV's a good way to do that, because the police can never prove anything about the crime. Murder, huh? So the killer's got a grudge against certain people? <laughs> well, I know there's a shitload of people who've got my number. How about you, Yukiko-senpai? Anyone hate you so bad they'd get rid of you forever? No. Uh, Yukiko? There's always a slight chance, and you just don't realize it. <laughs> but if we're trying to think of a common grudge someone would have against all the victims, well, I'm drawing a blank. Well, the good thing is we have another shot at getting ahead of the killer. We can leave the motive aside for now. Once we catch him, we'll make him talk. The only thing we can be sure of now is that Risei is in danger. Wait, we get to do another stakeout? Hell yeah! This time we'll catch him in the act! We gotta go with donuts and milk. You said it. There's no better meal than that for a man on a stakeout. Oh, and throw in some disposable diapers. For what? They don't even sell those here. We have them at Juness. Oh, too much information! You guys finished yet? Let's hurry up and get going. Huh? 
what brings you here? Oh, uh, well, I'm doing legwork. Uh, what did I do to deserve babysitting detail? I mean, it's nothing major. It's not like Dojima-san ordered me here. So, what are you kids up to? Buying snacks? We were just about to head over to the tofu shop to see Rise-chan. Oh, I see. Hey, I'm on my way there too. Oh, then why don't we go there together? Come on, he's a detective on active duty. Not a bad guy to have around. Don't stop, the culprit might get suspicious. But we walked past her like a thousand times already. Come on out, you bastard. We're ready for you. <gasps> Look! Uh, who's there? Hey, he's running away! Get back here! Stop running, damn it! Don't come near me! Shut up! What kind of idiot would listen to... I'll do it, you know. What are you gonna do if I get run over? What? No! If the suspect gets injured, the police will be held responsible. They'll get really angry and... Uh... I'll do it, I swear! S -s get out of here and stop chasing me! Hey, what should we do? How are we supposed to get behind him? Come on, let's just take him down. All right, on my mark. Look, over there, a Martian! Oh! How dare you assault an ordinary citizen like... Shut the hell up, murderer. We're taking your punk ass in. What? Time out! What do you mean, murderer? It's no use playing dumb. Oh, wait a second. I just really like Rosette, so I wanted to take a peek in her room. Look, see? All I've got on me is a bunch of cameras. Yep, you're the culprit, all right. No two ways about it. All right, I'll take it from here. We'll hear your story down at the station. <laughs> I've waited to use that line. Please, let me go! I didn't do anything wrong! I know for a fact it's not a crime in this country to take secret pictures! Hey, don't you understand what's happening here? You're under suspicion of murder. Come with me. We'll talk about this later. Wow, that went better than I thought. What a coup. I gotta thank you guys for all your help. Well done. Oh, sure. But you really should stop getting involved with this stuff. It's dangerous. I know Dojima-san was worried sick. Come on, let's go. Is it really over? The rest is up to the cops. Looks like the killer was a pervert, just like we thought. Wait, does that mean the case is closed? Seriously? Awesome! Hey, we should let Risa know the good news. Oh, hello. Would you like some tofu? Oh, uh, hello. Um... Oh, did you come to see Risa? She seems to have gone out, unfortunately. Huh? But wasn't she just here? She does that sometimes. She'll just wander out without a word. You must forgive her. She's quite worn out in many ways. She left without saying anything? Come on, you worry too much. She must have just stepped out. I mean, we caught the guy. Well, what are you talking about? 
We'll discuss it later. If you'll excuse me, I've got to take this guy in for questioning. Man, I can't wait to see the look on Dojima-san's face. She left without saying anything? Could that mean... Shouldn't we look for her? She can't have gone far. Yeah, I agree. I can't find her anywhere. What about you guys? None of the neighbors have seen her. Maybe we're just not looking in the right places. But where could she have gone? Damn it, this can't be good. I hope I'm wrong. Well, we did everything we can. No use griping about it. The weatherman says it's gonna rain tonight. So let's just keep our fingers crossed and tune in. wasn't crying. Everyone was having fun out there. You forgot about me. I was abandoned. We would never do that. I'm sorry. Were you lonely? I was bored. It made me all listless. I'm a useless bear. I don't even know what I am. I couldn't figure it out. No one would come visit me. Then I thought I heard voices from your world. They were all having so much fun. I was so lonely that I tried to cry. But I couldn't. Well, 
You are hollow inside. Shut up! Stop saying I'm hollow! Don't snap at me. This is your world, isn't it? You're the one who said you just want to live here peacefully and made us promise to find the culprit. Come on! I'm sure Teddy's just tired from thinking so much, right? When I'm alone, I think too much. It makes me even lonelier. I was so sad that my chest would burst and cotton would fly out. Can I try scoring with you two someday? Sure. Go right ahead. Can we please drop the whole scoring thing? Anyways, we wanted to ask you something. How's it been over here? Did a girl called Rise Kujikawa show up? Can you sense anything? Rise Kujikawa? Hmm. You can't tell? Your nose is kind of losing its edge lately, huh? I'm a pretty shabby bear. Soon, I won't be useful at all. Then I'll get thrown away. I can stay with you all? Okay, then we'll go look for something that'll help you search, like last time. I can't tell for sure, but I can kind of sense someone in here. I think I'll be able to find her. I just need some kind of hint. There's a lot of things I don't understand. Thank you very much. You're really kind, Sensei. I'll try even harder from now on. Waiting here.
Oh, everyone's here. I'm sure we'll be all right if we work together. Did you find out more about this girl, Rise-chan? Uh-huh. Her real self. I see. She's just like me. The delicate, sentimental type. Then... Hmm... Ah, there's something out there! Is this it? Did I find her? Follow me! What is this place? It's all dark. Whoa! 
is this a... Oh, like the kind you always find in resort towns. Oh, I think you're right. Ugh. Oh, but we don't have one. Our inn is not like that. Huh. So this is a strip joint, huh? Strip? Ah, I know what that is. It's the thing zebras have, right? Oh. Strip. Like a zebra, right? <laughs> right? It's so bright here. Even with the glasses on, my eyes hurt. Doesn't anyone get the joke? Okay, let's try one more time. Strip. It's something zebras have, huh? Can anyone check this thing up? Huh? Zebra? Uh, sorry, what are we talking about? I... I won't say it again. Let's hurry on. Come 
Chan, that was Come on. Good going, Kanji. Your blood must be boiling. Come on. Hasenga. Chie Chan is swatting them left and right. <laughs> Yuki Chan beat an enemy. Keep going. You mess with the bull, you get the horns. There's Sona! Ten barely a one. You did it, Sensei! Are you okay? Your health's low. It's Risa. But something's not right. It must be her other self. Hello, all you fans out there. Thanks for coming today. Today, you're going to see every last inch of me. What's that? You don't believe me? <laughs> okay, okay. Then why don't we... Oh, but you won't be able to see with all this smoke, huh? Okie dokie. Just follow me a little further in and I'll prove that I'm every bit as good as my word. Were we like that? That's going kind of far. Sheesh. The roar of the crowd is insane this time. Oh, it's making me feel sick. If people really are watching this, we gotta do something, and fast. All right, Risa Tears, don't touch that dial. When we come back, you'll get a good long look at the real me. We'd better move it! This is a thousand times worse than just hearing a few nasty secrets. The shadows are really getting aggravated. What we just saw is what that Risei girl is suppressing. She'll be in trouble at this rate. So, guess I'm on the rescue team now. All right, let's hurry up and go. Please, allow me. 
Here it goes. You're wide open. You it's knocked over. it down. Good idea, you yeah. can This will be a piece of cake for yeah. you, John. Couldn't finish it. Come on. Yikes, yeah. yeah, it's tough. There. I can't defeat it. <laughs> Are you all right, Sensei? Come on down. Damn, couldn't finish it. Come on! Right there! Yikes, it's tough. There! Yuki-chan beat an enemy. Keep going! Something's up with Kanji. <laughs> Come on down! Huh? What was I doing? Come on! Take it! Someone finish it off! Persona! <laughs> Are you all right, Sensei? Come on down! Huh? What was I doing? Come on! Yeah. Are you okay? Are you okay? Your health's low. <laughs> it's our turn first. There's three enemies. 
Persona! Yeah. Yeah. Don't tell me it's not working! Yeah. Yikes, it's tough! <laughs> Come on down! Yes, Kanji! Keep Get going. in there and do some yeah. damage! Persona! Excuse me, do you have any business here? Mm, as you can see, my master is currently away. If your errand isn't urgent, I regret to ask that you come back late. No, that won't do. This room is bound tightly to your fate. Nothing here happens without a reason. There must be meaning in our meeting here alone. Welcome to the Velvet Room. I am Margaret. I am the one who rules over power, invited here after my predecessor's sudden disappearance. You may be the first person who has ever been welcomed here by someone other than my master. The Velvet Room is inseparable from the heart of its invited guest. The shape of the room and its residence are selected by my master, based on the number of guests and their destiny. Shall we chat? I feel that is what I'm called to do.
Yo! All right! I'm sorry.
Is everyone... <laughs> First, there's three enemies.
Shoot! it.
Did I level up? John's showing no mercy. All right. All right, power up.
What is it? Huh. Later. Yo!
Oh, hello. It was nice seeing you. Oh, welcome home, big bro.
Oh, everyone's here. All right, let's go. Let's attack! It will end here! 
Chia Chan, you're hurt. Get some. It's over. There are three. Enemies. Careful. I think I can get it. Chan, you're hurt! Get some help! Chan, you're hurt! Get some help! Chan, you're hurt! Get some help! Chan, you're hurt! Get... <laughs> A rare monster! Beat the stuffing out of it! Come on! Take it! Awesome! Chie Chan is rampage mode! <laughs> Come on down! It ain't going down! <laughs> Come on down! Something's weird about Chi <laughs>
Are you all right, Con? Good afternoon.
Senpai! I'm sure we'll be all... with coffee. <laughs>
here too. <laughs> They're all watching. All eyes are on me now. Stop it. Oh, what's the matter? You want to show your stuff, don't you? How's this? Please stop this. <laughs> oh, she wants me to stop. That's so funny. As if that's even close to what you're really thinking, you little skank. You're me, and obviously I'm you. No, that's not true. <laughs> Come on, look. You can't tear your eyes away. This is me. This is who I really am. Not Rosette, the fake celebrity. Look at the girl right in front of you. I'm sick of being some airhead cliché who chokes down everything she's fed and takes it all with a smile! Rosette? Who the hell is she? There's no such person in this world! I'm no one but myself! Come on, look at me! That's not... I... Well then, I guess it's time to prove it. I'm gonna show it all off! Let my naked truth be burned into your brains! Stop! Stop it! You're... No! Don't say it! You're... Not me! <laughs> Here it comes! Now! I'm finally myself! Here we go! Ow! I am a shadow, the true self. And now the moment you've been waiting for, it's time for me to show you every last inch of myself. <laughs> and for our guests in the front row, I'll give you extra special, extra intense service. Yes, I was like this too. Oh, man. Oh, you're going to rush the stage? What an ill-mannered guest. Maybe you're looking for an experience that's a little more intense. Come on! Yeah. Persona! <laughs> Persona! Exclu- 
is it pain and you're still not satisfied? What a finicky guest. You might as well die then. Touching aloud. <laughs> Persona. Come on. Yeah. Persona. There. <laughs> Come on now. anticipating our every move. Uh, I'm completely useless. What the? That power, I think it's scanning us. Oh, this is not good. When you say not good, what exactly does that mean? Woohoo! Analysis complete. Okay, here comes my counterattack. See if you can dodge, hmm? Stop it! You gotta be kidding. Oh, how are we supposed to win? Are we going to die? No, you guys can't die! What can I do? Sensei. But how can I help? Am I going to be all alone again? No, that's not what I want. Shit, it's winding up again. I, I... Okie dokie, here we go again. Goodbye, forever. Oh shit, it's coming. My body's moving on its own! Why am I stepping forward? Wow! I... I feel like I'm going berserk! I'll do it! Take a good look at Teddy's last stand! This high energy reading... Is it coming from that weird thing? Teddy! What the hell are you doing? Teddy! Teddy! You idiot! You could have died! Did I... Did I help? You didn't just help. You saved our lives. Neat. I'm so glad. I didn't want to be alone anymore. 
Teddy! <laughs> what? What in the world? No! My fine silky fur! I was so proud of it! <laughs> Looks like he's gonna be just fine. I guess. Risechan. Where am I? I'm sorry. It's all my fault. Really? Thank God. Here, stand up. I'm sorry. You must have been in a lot of pain up to now. You're part of me, but I kept refusing to admit you existed. I was trying to figure out who the real me was, but I realize now that I was on the wrong track. There is no real me. It just doesn't exist. There's no real me? You, me, even Rosette. They were all born from me. All of them are... me. Risa-chan! Careful! I'm alright. Hey, you're the one who came to the store, right? Oh, yeah. And these guys came with me. I thought I recognized you guys. Thanks, everyone. We'll explain everything later, but for right now... What's wrong, Chie? There's... no real me. Hey, Teddy. No, get back. Something's coming out of him. Real? Me? <laughs> Such foolishness. What is that thing? D don't tell me. Is that the other Teddy? Teddy's hidden thoughts? I believe so, but it seems like there's more. I felt some powerful presence intervene. What? What's going on? <laughs> Whoa! The truth is unattainable. It will always be shrouded in fog. Though you reach through the murk and the gloom to grasp something, you have no means to know it is the truth. In which case, why? What sense is there in yearning for truth? Close your eyes. Lie to yourself. Live in blissful ignorance. It is a much smarter way to exist. What are you talking about? I don't understand a word you're saying! You're just making it sound difficult because I'm not that smart! How rude! Maybe you can't tell, but I'm thinking as hard as I can! It is those efforts that I am calling useless. You are hollow, empty. At your core, you know this. You just cannot accept it. So you seek an alternate form, a denial of your nature. You have no lost memories. If you have forgotten anything, it is this truth. Th that's... that's a lie! Shall I spell it out for you? You are but a mere... I said shut up! Teddy! It is the same for you all. You undergo suffering because of your search for the truth. This world is filled with thick, heavy fog. How can you find something when you know not what you search for? And 
thus, you invite more suffering upon yourselves. It is beyond my comprehension. Then I will grant you one truth. You will all die here. You sought the truth, only to find death. Damn it. How are we supposed to fight something like this without Teddy? It's all right. Get ready, everyone. Hey! Don't tell me you're fighting with us! You can't take it! I'm okay. I should be able to take that bear's place. It's my turn to save you all. See? 
Of you, Teddy? Even Teddy had a hidden side. I... I don't know who I am. I've thought a number of times that maybe there is no answer. But I'm here. I live here. Then I don't have to do this all on my own? Dude, we'll help you figure it out. I'm sure we'll find out about you as we continue investigating this world. You... you guys! I'm... I'm one lucky bear! <laughs> Is that... A persona? Persona? I can sense strong power from it. It's awesome, Teddy. Whoa! Are you all right? Oh, yeah. Your persona just awakened, too. I'm so sorry. You must be worn out. Yeah, let's hurry outside. Are you feeling okay, Risa chan We're almost outside. I'm all right. I'm more worried about Teddy. You okay there? We gotta go back for now. I want to be alone for a while. Uh, hey! My beautiful fur is all rough and coarse, and my nose hasn't been working too well either. So while I wait for my fur to grow back, I'm gonna train hard! Nobody can stop moi! Here goes! Ah. What's gotten into you? Don't talk to me, please. One more set. Another one. Leave the dude be. Comes a time when a man's got to stand on his own two feet. Uh, I'm not sure this is really one of those times. Well then, Chie and I will take research on home. Yeah, she'll need a lot of rest. We can talk after she regains her strength. Well, um, good luck, Teddy! Just kick back and wait for my wonderful comeback! Peace out! I 
they said this before, but I can sense something special about you. Sensei, there must be something that only I can do. That's how I feel when I'm with Sensei. That's why I'm gonna get stronger to find my special thing. there. Careful now, Dojima-san. Ow! Damn it! Who, who built a step here? That'd be the carpenter, sir. Come on, don't take your anger out on the house. That won't solve anything. Woo! I'm home! Not a call! I'm back! What? Welcome back. Oh, hi, Nanako-chan. Sorry, but could you go get his futon ready? Phew, I think he had a little too much to drink. <laughs> How else <laughs> am I supposed to deal with this crap? Friggin' fancy talking kid. I... I've been in this line of work since you were all learning your times tables. The Prefectural Police sent in special investigational support. Cause, you know, we haven't really made any progress on the serial murder since they started in April. <laughs> so this special support is supposedly a hotshot detective from a well-known private agency. But you should have seen the look on my face when I met him. He's only a kid your age. I hear he's a pretty sharp cookie, though. Oh, he's a brat like any other. Ain't nothing he can do to help. He goes on and on about deductions and deductions. <laughs> ace or no ace, the prefecture ought to be more careful about giving us brats to babysit. Con condescending bastards. <laughs> the kid said as long as he can be of assistance in solving a difficult case, he won't require a reward. Well, you can imagine the shine the higher-ups took to him after that. So we can't exactly turn him down. Godachi! <sighs> Sorry. Me and my big mouth. You run your jaw like this is all some kind of joke. It's your fault to begin with for jumping the gun and hauling in that peeping Tom. Oh, <laughs> um... And you? You can take your share of the blame, too. Always wandering around crime scenes whenever something happens. His futon's ready. All right, Dojima-san, up and at him. Nanako-chan got your futon all ready for you. Mm, yeah. mm. Ugh, sure does stink like sake in here.
Thanks for waiting. Well, let's go. That again. And now the weather. The week ended on a wet note as rain clouds moved into the area. As a result, a thick fog is expected to form in the Inaba region later tonight. Yosuke went over to check out the scene. He should be back soon. Yeah, it was murder, all right. The body was hanging upside down on an apartment's rooftop railing. But how could that... That's not all. The victim this time, it was King Moron. K King Moron? You mean that King Moron? Senpai's homeroom teacher? Why? What on earth is going on here? How am I supposed to know? But I talked to a guy there who saw it. It's true. There's no mistake. You gotta be shitting me. Ain't the killer targeting people who get shown on TV? I ain't never seen King Moron on the Midnight Channel or any other programs. Why? Why did this happen? I thought we finally figured some things out. Were they all just a big coincidence? Maybe the Midnight Channel doesn't have anything to do with this. Damn it! We came so far and now we're back to square one! Were we in over our heads, trying to catch a culprit that even the police couldn't find? Damn straight! We started this thing because the police can't tell their asses from their elbows. We give up now? And that shithead's gonna be on the loose forever. This ain't the time for bitching and moaning. We just gotta keep on keeping on. Kanji-kun. Huh. Big talk from someone like you, Kanji. What? What's that supposed to mean? <sighs> I know. We're dealing with a murderer here. 
but we've all risked our lives to get this far. No way we'll back down. And we promised the bear, too. Hey, that's right. Maybe Teddy knows something about this. Well, since moping around won't do us any good, let's go see him. Huh? There's staff here? Now that's unusual. Hi there. Did something happen? Ah, Yosuke-kun. Great timing. Did the manager tell you anything about this? There's been this weird mascot around our department for quite a while now. Is there some kind of campaign on today? Mascot? He said his name was, uh, what was it? Terry? Eddie? Well, there are no customers around, so I guess it's fine. I better get back to my station. Please don't tell me. Whoa! He's here! Ah, this really hits the spot. What the? I mean, how'd you? It took you guys long enough. I've been waiting. Teddy, are you okay on this side? How did you even leave your side? Of course I can come out. There's an exit. It just never occurred to me to do it before. But spending time with you all sparked my curiosity about this world. I did wonder if it was a good idea, but my feet started moving before I could decide. And when I thought about it, I had nowhere to go. And it was a waste to go back. So I waited here for you. Oh, someone asked for my name. So I told them, I'm Teddy. So that's why. Yeah, there's something we need to ask you. How long have you been here, Teddy? Did anyone enter the other world? I stayed until the fog settled in on my side, but no one came. You're positive. You really didn't sense a single person. I just said that I didn't. I was there all by myself, like always. <laughs> and your nose wasn't clogged or anything? Aren't you listening? I was utterly, totally, and 100% alone! That's why I came over here! But I can understand if you don't believe me. My senses aren't that good lately anyways. Oh, Sensei's heart is radiating pure kindness. Well, it's true that the Midnight Channel was blank last night. And even before that, Teddy says he didn't sense anything, right? Does that mean King Moron was never on that side? <sighs> What's going on? Hey, hey, I want to go somewhere. Huh? Now ain't the time, dude. You seriously don't plan on going back, do you? Where do you want to go, anyway? I want to give this to Risei-chan. It's for her. Risei-chan will probably back us up from now on. So I'm gonna fight alongside you with everything I got. Don't think of me as the same cute little teddy. I'm an all new model. I have a powerful attack, an unbeatable defense, and a winning smile. Today begins the new legend of Teddy. Wow, a new legend. People are starting to stare. Keep it down, will you, Ted? Come on, let's go somewhere else. Okay, just to make sure, I'm gonna ask you one last time. Nobody was over there except for you until the fog came back, correct? That's what I've been saying. He didn't show up on the Midnight Channel either. What's up with that? No clue. But I think we can be sure now that King Moron was never thrown into the TV. Then what? He was killed over here? Why not throw him into a TV like all the rest?
They never intended to. So you're saying he wasn't like the other victims to begin with? But why? Maybe the culprit thought he couldn't kill any more people by throwing them into TVs. I mean, we prevented his last three attempts in a row. Oh, I get you. That could be it. So they snuffed someone on our side this time to make sure it worked. Damn it. If that's true, then we have no way of preventing more murders unless we catch the killer. We need more clues. I wonder if Risei-chan's up and around yet. Yeah, we'll have to put our hopes on her. Ugh, it's so hot out. I'm taking this off. Wait, you're not talking about your head, are you? Cut it out! There's kids watching! Jeez, they'll be scarred for life if they see an empty mascot walking around. Have a little consideration, man. I'm glad you're back to normal, though. Your fur's all fuzzy again. Uh, can, I, can I... Can I feel it? No. Actually, I'm no longer a hollow bear. <laughs> I trained and trained, hoping to someday score with Chie-chan and Yuki-chan. And now I finally have an inside. Yeah, good job with that. Come on, can't we give it a rest with the whole scoring thing? Dude, you're hollow. Taking your head off isn't gonna cool you down. But I just told you, I'm not hollow anymore! <sighs> it's too hot! I can't stand it! <sighs> it's so hot! <sighs> That hit the spot. Hey, Chie-chan, Yuki-chan. Yes? Do you have anything to wear? I'm basically like a newborn at the moment. Teddy? Is that really you? Uh... Wait, did you say you're like a newborn? Then don't, don't take the bottom part off. You need some clothes, right? Come on, let's go look around. That's Teddy? He said he's not hollow anymore. So, like, he grew himself a body in there? What kind of creature would do that? I mean, what is he? <sighs> then again... This is hardly the first bizarre thing we've seen. And I gotta admit, it's probably better than him walking around in his bear suit. Oh, hey, weren't we gonna see about talking to Rise? I was so shocked that I lost track of what we were talking about. Let's head over to Rise's place. As for Teddy, he's with the girls, so he should be fine. Finally, the season for Topsicles again. Dude, how many are you going to eat? You're gonna get a stomach ache. Sorry we're late. How'd it take you that long to find clothes for Ted? Whoa. I is that you, Teddy? Oui, monsieur. How do I look? encourage him. I have to say, he totally blew my mind. But he's Teddy, all right. This guy had to make it a huge ordeal. Everything was new to him, so it turned into a big mess. He was so excited in the women's section that he started blabbering. Hey, you can't just go around doing whatever you please when you're in this form. Got it? Well, he can't help it. It's his first time in our world. All right. You don't need to get all mopey like that. I never said I won't forgive you. 
I'm so glad. I was worried that you didn't like me anymore. <laughs> oh, man. If you can behave yourself, you'll be pretty cute. Is he cute? What do you think, Kanji? Huh? What are you asking me for? Well, I was just wondering if he was your type. Oh, I get it. What you're really asking is, will you please beat the shit out of me, Kanji? <laughs> It ain't funny, Yukiko-senpai. Sorry. <laughs> You'll have to forgive Yukiko. She's helpless when she gets this way. Oh, please, everyone. Don't fight over me, baby. Shut up! You picking a fight with me? Jeez, oh well. Here, Kanji, get whatever ice cream you want. Just share it with Teddy. We're gonna head for the tofu shop. Wait here until we get back. Wow, you're rich. I can't just take this from you. Think of it as a welcome back party for Teddy. Just don't go around making a racket. Whoa, Yosuke, what's going on? You're acting like a real senpai all of a sudden. Oh, I get it. You might say differently, but you're still nice to Teddy. I'm glad Yosuke's developing into such a mature adult. Someone who doesn't let trifles bother him. What? You're worrying me, Chie. Oh, it's about Teddy's clothes, that's all. We didn't have the money for them, so we charged the rest to you. Charge? What?! You put it on my account? Ah, oh, what the hell, Chie? I never said you could do that. What else were we supposed to do? That stuff was expensive, even for Juness. You seriously charged it to me? Why would you do that? You know I just bought a motorcycle. I'm broke. So, if you're already broke, a little more debt isn't going to make much of a difference. What? Come on, baby. Stop fighting over... Shut up! This is your fault, you know! <sighs> you listen here, Ted. You better take really, really, really good care of that. If you put even a single tear in it, I'll make your next set of clothes out of the bear hide you took off. Yo, Teddy. Don't let it get you down. Let's go get some topsicles. I think they're going to be a while. Ah, I had a feeling you'd come. You're... Are you here to ingratiate yourself with Risei Kujikawa now? Jeez, why did the clerk even let them charge it to someone else? Huh? Wait, you're that guy we saw with Kanji. Precisely. I don't believe we've met since then. In fact, I don't believe I've ever introduced myself. My name is Naoto Shiragane. I'm investigating the multiple murders that have occurred here. Mind if I ask you a few questions on the subject? The latest victim, Kinshiro Muraoka. He was a teacher at the school you all attend, correct? So what? The public is focused on the fact that he is associated with the second victim's school, but in truth, that's irrelevant. What intrigues me is the inconsistency. This Moroka has never appeared on television. What do you make of that? How are we supposed to know? Well, we'll leave it at that. For my part, I'd like to solve this case as quickly as possible. I'll be keeping an eye on you all. Well then, until we meet again. Who is that guy? It felt like he completely saw through us. He even knew about the TV thing. Oh, hi. Risei-chan, are you okay now? 
Good, good. Are you all here to check up on me? Well, yeah. Oh, um, do you guys have a moment? There's something I want to tell you. Follow me. My grandma's taking care of the shop today. Huh? Sure, okay. Yeah, I remember being at my house. When I came to, though, I was already in the other world. Ah, Still no real information on the killer. We met this weird kid named Naoto a second ago. Oh. He's come to the shop several times. He asked me a lot about the incident. I didn't tell him anything about the other world, though. I figured it'd be a waste of time. Actually, he asked me about you guys, too, but... I just made up some stuff. Like, they found me unconscious on the roof at Jeunesse. Well, I guess that's close enough to the truth. Um, so... Hmm? What's up? Um, I really appreciate what you did for me. Thank you so much! I love you guys! Huh? Oh, you don't have to thank us. Dude, she's so cute! Man, it's finally hitting me that you're the real deal. You really are reset. Well, I know I sounded gloomy and all from stress, so I, I thought you might not like me that way. Do I sound weird? Oh, but I guess it sounds more natural this way to the public. I'm sorry. I've practically lost touch with what the normal me is like. <laughs> no need to apologize. Just do what comes naturally. I think everyone has multiple sides to them. You don't have to force yourself to decide on just one. <laughs> it sounds convincing when Yukiko says it. Huh? Uh, really? Mm, thanks. <laughs> I'm glad you're the first people I got to know here. Oh yeah, we almost forgot your present. The teddy glasses. Um, you don't have to take them, but... Well... Senpai, would you be struggling without my help? I can help you in that world, right? With my power. So wouldn't it be better if I joined the team? These are kind of like proof that you're one of us. I see. I do remember you all wearing glasses over there. Thanks, Senpai. Now I'm part of the team, too. I'll be going to Yasugami High starting tomorrow. But I don't have any friends yet, so don't ignore me, alright? I do owe you my life, so, you know. It's settled then. I'm counting on you. This sure is a rough time to transfer here, though. The kidnappings, King Moron's death. All that and exams are soon, too. Oh, exams. Now I'm depressing myself. I wonder if there's any chance they'll be canceled. I doubt it. They always hold exams, rain or shine. <laughs> I almost got killed by those monsters. Compared to that, exams are nothing. Alrighty then. Let's discuss the case some more tomorrow at our special headquarters. Yo, how's it going? Dude, Teddy ate five topsicles. Though if you count the ones I had before, well, that makes six. So I still win. No one asked. We're all done talking already. Let's go, senpai. Uh, when did you get so chipper? Do you go to Yasugami like Senpai? I'll be starting school there tomorrow, so I hope we get along too. Huh? Oh. Cool. Uh, what grade are you in? <clears throat> so where's Teddy? 
He's over there finishing up his fifth Topsicle. What are we gonna do with him? Well, I guess I'll take him home. Good evening. This is Nightline News. Our top story for the night concerns the latest developments in an ongoing story. The serial murder case in Inaba has claimed a third victim. The news shocked local residents, who have not seen another murder in three months, and assumed the spree had reached its end. The deceased taught at a local high school. Since his body was found arranged in a similar manner as the last two victims... What's wrong? Was it someone you know? He died? I'm all right. This marks the second consecutive death after Miss Saki Konishi's, where the target was involved with Yasogami High. Mr. Morooka was known for his strict teaching methods and is said to have had constant friction with his students. The police will be pursuing this line of inquiry and are planning to begin a large-scale investigation tomorrow. We now turn to our reporter at the scene for more details. Dad won't be coming home again today. Huh? Do it again! Do it again! Welcome. It's been quite some time. Do not be alarmed. You are fast asleep in the real world. I have summoned you within your dreams. How are things proceeding? Are you gradually drawing nearer to a solution to the mystery? Excellent. The season has changed, but your future is not yet closed. In time, a path will open to you. Our true reason for calling you here tonight is to provide a new form of assistance to help you achieve just that. Fusing personas. Have you been using our services diligently? The aid we will henceforth provide is an advanced form of fusion. I speak of the power to fuse four or more personas at once. I am quite certain that this will enable you to command even stronger powers. Now, your journey will soon reach its climax. And as a result, many challenges, which I cannot foresee at present, await you. Most interesting. <laughs> well, until we meet again, farewell. Yo! Hey, 
Hey, is that stuff about King Moron for real? It was on TV, right? It must be true. Good morning. I'm Noriko Kashiwagi, your new class teacher starting today. You all probably know already, but now that Mr. Morooka has passed away, I'll be taking good care of you instead. <laughs> okay, why don't we start off with a moment of silence for Mr. Morooka. Close your eyes, everyone. That should be enough. I'll do my best to fill Mr. Morooka's shoes. So, our regular exams are still on track for next week. As your principal said, it's times like these when the schedule is most important, Nori-chan. <laughs> oh, it must be tough for you. But that's what it means to become an adult, little by little. I already can't stand her. First King Moron and now Kashiwagi? How much worse can it get? Oh, and one more thing. That idol in our first year class, Ms. Kujikawa, was it? In person? <laughs> She's nothing like she seems on TV, so don't get your hopes up, okay? What's so great about an idol, anyway? Right, class? She's just a piece of inexperienced jailbait. What's up with her? Does she think she's Rosette's rival? She doesn't stand a chance against Rosette. I mean, I heard Kashiwagi is on the wrong side of 40. I bet King Moron would have been ecstatic to hear Rosette had enrolled here. Someone told me they saw him buying Risei's pinup book. That sounds kind of pervy. He annoyed the hell out of me, but I feel bad that he got killed. Oh, you know what? Rosette was on a strip tease show. Huh? A strip tease? Dude, if that was true, the paparazzi would have been all over it. I'm serious. But the reception went bad right when it was getting to the good part. It was on that midnight channel everyone keeps talking about. You actually believe that crap? How friggin' dense are you? Trust me, you were dreaming it. The rumor about the midnight channel is spreading further. We'd better wrap this case up quick. Anyways, let's meet up later. Don't make any plans for this afternoon. Ugh. Finals are next week. It's been a while since I failed any subjects. Yeah, if by a while you mean all the time. Shut up! What you've ever seen my scores? But Chie always has above average marks in the subjects that she doesn't fail. Hey, hey why'd you tell him? My scores just vary. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Reese John, you too. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not laughing at you. It's just, I thought it would take me a while to make any friends at my new school. Too bad we met under such awful circumstances. Oh yeah, what do you guys think about King Moron's case? He didn't show up on the Midnight Channel even once. If this person had been inside the TV, I would have sensed it. My nose isn't as sharp now, but I can tell that much. But they found the body on a foggy day again, right? They said on the news that that crime scene was just the way it was for that announcer and Saki-senpai. I really wonder about the culprit's motives. Why was Mr. Moraoka targeted? Hope it wasn't personal. Because there's way too many people who ate a King Moron's guts. But didn't you say it's people who get famous on TV who are targeted? If the killer's choosing targets by watching TV, I picture him as someone who doesn't know the victims at all. I don't think it's worth trying to figure out motives for that type. There are too many people who hold grudges against you for no reason, even if you've never met them before. Huh. You sound like you speak from experience, Rise-chan. But with King Moron, he didn't appear on the Midnight Channel or the regular TV. Arr, I don't get this at all. Man, two victims in a row from our school. That's got to set off the police's alarm bells. They're not going to leave any stones at school unturned. 
You know, to be honest, somewhere deep inside, I thought maybe King Moron was the killer. The news says that he was the second victim from Yasugami High, but we all know that's not the case. And I've heard him say more than once that so-and-so deserves to die. But now, I feel bad that I doubted him. He was a capital A asshole, but that doesn't justify killing him. And not just King Moron. I feel sorry for all the victims. I can't forgive the killer, no matter what! Well, we'll do what we can, for King Moron's sake, too. At this rate, you have to figure that the killer has something to do with the school, right? So why don't we split up and... That won't be necessary. You! There is no need to examine the case of Mr. Moraoka any further. Why's that? Apparently, the police have found a suspect. It would be best to let them handle the case from here. How do you know? I'm on this case as a special investigator, by request of the prefectural police. What? They found a suspect? Who is it? As to his name, I haven't been informed. I do know that he is a high schooler. It isn't public knowledge yet, but he isn't a student of your high school. It seems they are quite confident that this boy is the killer. They have testimonies directly linking him with the incident. I expect it's only a matter of time before he is apprehended. Soon this case will be solved and your town will once again be its peaceful, rustic self. The suspect is a high schooler? All right, so why come tell us? That's confidential info, right? Why run right here and spill it? Your game will soon reach its end. I felt I should at least let you know that. You don't deny, then, that you have involved yourselves in the matter? Well, no matter. I have no reason to say anything further. A game? Aren't you the one who thinks of this as a game? <laughs> care if you're a special investigator or an amateur sleuth. All you're doing is solving mysteries. What could you possibly know about us? You're the one who's playing a game here. One of the victims? She meant a lot to me. How could I possibly treat this like a game? Plus, we made a promise. Y Yosuke! A game. <laughs> that may be quite true. Why so understanding all of a sudden? Oh, I get it. I was wondering why you'd be wandering around like this when the police have a suspect. What, did they get rid of you now that they have their man? Is that why you came here? You were lonely? Detectives normally aren't involved with arrests, and we never harbor any special emotions regarding a case either. Still, it is rather unfortunate that people are only attentive so long as our services are required. But then... I'm accustomed to it. Hmm. Much about this case was perplexing, but its solution was surprisingly simple. Well then, I'll be going now. Uh, what was that about? He just said his piece and left? Hmm. He said they have a suspect, but is this really going to solve everything? <sighs> Who knows?
Sorry to keep you waiting. Well, let's go. Let's do this again. Thank you. Um...
in your bag. Sorry. No. What's wrong? Sorry. Thanks. Night. <laughs> hey, big bro.
See you later. Welcome back. back.
Really? <laughs> Sheesh. Whoa. Yo! All right! Welcome! Thanks, man. <laughs> You kidding?
It's all over. <sighs> I'm so sleepy. Yuck! Don't yawn in my face like that. Ugh. Hey, for the third question on the English test, which phrase did you choose? Um, oh, I went with used to. Oh, wrong again. So much for Chia going abroad. Heck, why leave Inaba? You have so much right here. You're so annoying. Yo. No more encores. I mean, bye everyone. Whoa, more losers? What do I need to know English for? I can always ask for a translator. How did you do, senpai? Wow, you're amazing. Enough about the exams already. What's going on with the murder case? Hmm. Why don't we head to our special headquarters? We haven't been there in a while. Mm, I'm kind of bummed. Not just because exams are over, but the whole thing with the police finding a suspect. I mean, we believe that only we could solve this case. And now? Well, we still don't know yet. They haven't made an arrest. So, we gotta sit on our thumbs. For crying out loud, it's nice to have a suspect, but where the hell is he? We're at the end of our rope here. You guys, did, did you hear what I said? Uh, <laughs> this case is as good as solved. Don't worry, kids. It's only a matter of time before we bring in the suspect. I mean, the guy's kidnapping people at random and slaughtering them. We won't rest until we bring him to justice. I gotta get going. Now, I'm really worried. On the other hand, if the police have a search warrant out for the guy, we should stay out of it. Yeah. Oh, uh, I just remembered. There was a question on the exam that I didn't get. I think it was... The chemical formula HCHO, used for silver mirror reactions. Its 40% solution is known as formalin. And the question was, what is HCHO? Oh, I see. I chose acidic acid. Duh, of course it couldn't have been vinegar. Hey, you had that question too, didn't you, Kanji? Shut up. Don't call me by my first name. Wow, kind of harsh, aren't you? I heard you got a nosebleed when you were around our senpai. Hey! Who the hell blabbed about that? Uh, anyways... Risa-chan, why don't you ask Yukiko to help you study? Hmm? I guess, but wouldn't you rather ask a senpai of the opposite sex? Senpai, I'm not a nuisance to you, am I? Damn! This girl's dangerous! But let's change the subject. Hey, any idea how Teddy's doing? Oh yeah, I forgot to mention it to you. Check this out. I let him stay at my place. In return, he's now our official store mascot. Ah, so he's hiding in plain sight. Reverse psychology, huh? Man, he looks like one happy bear. He kept saying that he didn't want to go back, so I made him a deal. Now, since I've got nothing better to do, I'm gonna go bug him. Ooh, I wanna go too! Can I... feel his soft fur? Hey, senpai? Now that I'm getting the hang of school, I wanna go out more and see the sights. But I tend to get recognized everywhere I go, so I'm a little nervous about going out on my own. And you seem like the type of guy who knows all the cool spots in town. <laughs> really? Woohoo!
if you ever have some time to kill, think of me, okay? Now come on, let's go pester Teddy. Teddy! Hey! Tonight, we have a special report. The topic is the bizarre serial murder case in Inaba, where the victims' bodies are discovered hanging upside down. Police have yet to announce any progress in the investigation since the discovery of a third victim. Our special report tonight is a summary of the events and the facts in the case thus far. They still haven't caught him? Yeah. Dad's working hard, too. Let's go, senpai. Welcome back!
Hey, why don't we go somewhere during summer vacation? My motorcycle's back from the shop. Hey, you guys have motorcycles? Lucky you. Your scooter's fixed? I'm surprised they got it back together after Hanako Senpai, was it? Did something happen with Yosuke and Hanako san? He's striking out with the ladies and got his scooter busted up. Whoa! Yosuke's after Hanako san? Uh, I'll back you up. I wasn't talking about anything like that. I was saying we should go somewhere over summer vacation, like the beach. It'd be a pain to go by train, but a motorcycle. Hmm, I haven't been to the beach in a long time either. The bright sun, the glistening waves, that luscious scent drifting from nearby stands, the dripping of meat juices. Is food all you can think about? Hey, why don't we get our licenses too? It's just a written test, right? We can't, we're too young. Oh, sorry, Kanji, but my birthday was last month, so I'm 16 now. Hey, that's cheating! Oh, but sitting behind Senpai sounds great too. I want to squeeze in close. Yeah, yeah, let me remind you that it's against the law to have two people ride on a motorcycle. But I think it's a good idea for you guys to get your licenses. It only takes about a week. It's supposed to be for work, but there's a scooter at the inn. We got one as a gift at the office that's just sitting around. I bet I could borrow it if I asked. I'd have to call my manager, though. Huh. Is this actually working out? How about you, Chie? A scooter, huh? It can be any kind, as long as it's lower than 50 cc's. Then I might be in luck. One of our relatives loves motorcycles. Maybe he has a scooter I can borrow. Wow, this might really happen. Let's all get our licenses and hit the beach together. Hold up, what about Teddy? Hmm, if he doesn't move around, he could pass his luggage. Uh, it's stretching a little. It'll be fine. If we can't get him on with one of us, we'll just strap on some wheels and tow him. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? Teddy? <laughs> On wheels? <laughs> Roller skates? <laughs> it's perfect! I've made up my mind. I'm gonna get my license. The beach, huh? I've gone before for pinup shoots, but it's been a while since I went for fun. Oh my gosh. Does this mean... I'll get to see Reset herself in a swimsuit with my own two eyes? Can you maybe not talk about her like she's not here? 
Hey, who are you looking forward to seeing in a swimsuit, senpai? Thanks! Don't worry, I'll make sure to bring along my best swimsuit. Anyway, looks like we're set on going to the beach. Yukiko, Chie, you guys should get your licenses too. Then you can ride motorcycles with us. Well then, let's do this! Yeah! Huh? Oh, yeah! you to have it, senpai. Good night, senpai. I see.
Thank you. Bye then. Oh, welcome home, big bro. Okay, Risa and Teddy are checking out the other side, so we'll go ahead and start the meeting. Now about what happened last night, you guys all saw it, right? Yeah, shit he said made my blood boil. That mumbling of his and those fish-like eyes pissed me off even more. Who the hell is he? Huh, truth to tell, I get the feeling I've seen him before. I was surprised when I saw how clearly his face showed on TV. 
So I called Chie, and while we were talking, it hit me. Maybe that boy is the culprit. It's just a hunch, but it makes sense. We've been told the suspect is a high schooler. The police are after him for the murder of King Moron. So to see that on TV last night, at a time like this? I mean, he even taunted the viewers, saying, try and catch me. Uh, so? All right. Let's say there's this high school student. We'll call him Shin. For some random reason, who knows why, Shin is able to enter the other world. Then Shin, again for some random reason, starts throwing people into that world intending to kill them. The police can't prove the other world exists, so it's the perfect crime. He can't possibly be caught. Now, imagine you're Shin, but after a while, people stop dying when you throw them in the TV. You don't know why. You want to kill King Moron, but the TV is out, so you have to do it personally. Now the police are on to you. As a result, you, I mean Shin, is a wanted criminal, and there's no place for him to run. So, you're saying he went into the other world to dodge the cops? Oh, so that's why he said, catch me if you can. <laughs> wow, senpai, you're smarter than you look. Jeez, you could piss me off sometimes. We still don't know why he targeted people who were shown on TV. But, if he had a personal grudge against Mr. Moraoka, that explains one thing. With a strong enough motive, wouldn't he forsake the untraceable TV method and try to kill Mr. Moraoka on his own? If you think about it that way, it sort of makes sense why Mr. Moraoka died without appearing on TV. But I wonder what that boy's going to do now that he's in there. With Teddy on this side, there's no way for him to get out. You don't think he's going to get desperate and end it all? He did look depressed, like it was the end of the world. No, I don't think that's it. The killer has to know that the people he threw into the TV have come back to this side. I can see missing Yukiko or Kanji, but Rise, a celebrity? There's no way the killer wouldn't know she's still alive. So that means he knows there's a way out of the TV world. As for the rest, we'll just have to ask him face to face. Hey, good timing. How did it go? Not good. There's not enough information to go on. But at least we're positive that someone's in there. I see. Wait, where's Teddy? He's still looking. All right. So we need to find out who that guy is. And if he is in fact the one the police are after. Once we figure that out, we just do our thing. That's right. If he really is the killer and he's escaped into the other world, the police don't have a chance of catching him. So it's all on us. Well then, let's get digging.
Yukon, let's go home. It was nice seeing you. Oh, you're home.
Big Pro.
Sensei, I'm all ready to go. Let's go, Sensei! That's him, all right. It's definitely the guy on the Midnight Channel. This guy came to our shop before. Was he spying on me? Oh my god, I really was being targeted. Damn it! Freaking punk! Hey, I've seen him before, too! Hmm... Oh, now I remember! Yukiko, it's that one guy! That one guy? Back in April, remember? He suddenly came and started hitting on you? Oh, him! The dude who got served by Yukiko in front of the school! Man, Chie, how'd you remember something like that? Well, that was the first time he talked to her, but I remember he was always following her around. Um, sorry, who are we talking about? The dude who came right up to you at the school gates and called you Yuki? Oh. Uh, really? Wait, did he kidnap Yukiko to get back at her for rejecting him? Um, I didn't really reject him. He came up to me while I was busy working and asked, Don't the biker gangs bother you? Just going on and on about how biker gangs can't do anything unless they're in a pack and stuff. He seemed to be the type who just keeps talking whether you like it or not, if that makes sense. I usually treat those people politely so they don't get offended, but I was so tired that I kind of ignored him. Was that why I was kidnapped? Huh? Wait, I I'm not a biker. Ugh, that damn special report. So that's why I got dragged into this. You know, I heard he's been saying stuff about that announcer's affair, too. Lots of muttering about how women who cheat on their husbands should be executed. Sounds like it's all coming together. Well, it's time for a showdown. Can you tell where this Mitsuo guy's at? I'll give it a try. Just a sec. We're so close to the killer. We can't lose him now. What is this? Some kind of game? Well, he did taunt us, saying try and catch me. I guess he thinks of all this as a game. Gotta admit, all guys love games. And all girls love Teddy.
Ichi. Persona! Yo! I couldn't do Count it. On you. Persona! Enemy defeated. Keep it up, you senpai.
All right, let's go home. Oh, welcome home, big bro.
Yeah. Yeah.
Yo! All right. Thanks.
couldn't quite beat it. Yeah. on the enemy side. You hit the enemy's weakness. That's great, Senpai. Ha, you really get me going. <laughs>
Be careful. Take There's an enemy immune to light. Go Do it again. Go shoot the Go! Kick their ass! Ah! It's over. Okay, Kanji, you seem low on health. Oh, 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 oh. 
big bro? you to have this. Good night. Bye now. you to have it, Senpai. Good night, Senpai.
That's everyone. Okay.
That's not good. Yeah. Yeah. Enemy down. Yeah, you so oh. Enemy down. Sense Here I go. It's showtime. Are you ready? Time for some cake. Yeah. Go, go, go.
You need to watch your health, senpai.
All right, we're all here.
counting on you. Persona! Thank you. Come on! Persona! Persona! There! Counting on you. Persona! Two enemies left. Don't lower your guard now. Come on! Take it! Yikes, it's Persona! Tough. Oh. Hey, congrats! darkness. Come on! Yeah! Enemy defeated! Atta girl! I couldn't quite beat. It's over! There! I couldn't do Counts it! Counts on you! Damn, it's not going down! Another level for me!
one. Don't let it get away. Come on! Priscilla! Couldn't quite beat it. Persona! Some thick skin. Come on! Take it! Couldn't quite beat it. Persona! You, Mitsuo? You better be ready to pay, you bastard! Wait, Kanji! Something's not right. Everyone gets on my nerves! That's why I did it! What do you think of that? Say something, damn it! <sighs> Nobody even thought of me after the first two people. That's why I went for the third one! I killed them! What are you all quiet for? Because I feel nothing. What are you talking about? Make sense, damn it! What the? Which one's the shadow? I have nothing. I am nothing. And you are me. What? What's that supposed to mean? I'm. I'm not nothing! No, if this keeps up... Who are you guys? How'd you get in here? Damn it, who the hell are you? What are you doing here? Shut the hell up. We came after you. Are you the killer? <laughs> of course I am. I'm the one behind everything. I don't give a damn what this imposter's saying. <laughs> you hear that? You have nothing to do with me! Get out of my sight! <sighs> that goes for the rest of you, too! Why'd you chase me all the way here? I'll kill you! I'll kill all of you! I can do it, you know. I can do anything! So you don't accept me? <sighs> what the... <laughs> ah!
Damn it, here we go again. Get ready, everyone. Once we beat him, this case is as good as closed. Is that thing supposed to be a game character? Jeez, how insulting can he get? Um. You'll have to destroy the outer shell first. Forming. Destroy it before that happens. Persona. Come on! Persona! Counting on you! Persona! There! Soda! Come on! Yeah. Wake up! <clears throat> Counting on you! <laughs> Come on! 
awake, huh? You've been a major pain in our ass. What the... You guys... Who the hell are you guys? <gasps> the police are after you. They think you're the one who killed King Moron and the other two. So, are you the killer? All the cases... All on me. <laughs> That's right. I did it! You piece of shit! And not just that bastard Moraoka! That stupid announcer! And the Konishi bitch, too! I killed all of them! It was all me! Where'd it go? What's going on? <laughs> it's gone. That frickin' monster disappeared. Take that, son of a bitch! <sighs> hey! He's exhausted. We need to hurry and get him out of here. Where am I? Why am I here? What the hell are you guys? S stop it! Why did the TV... <sighs> Hey, you seem confused from everything that happened, but we have a bunch of questions for you. First off, why did you do all this? Answer in ten words or less. <laughs> what the hell? Is that a costume? <laughs> what a loser. Get out of my face, you freak. F freak <laughs> Hold it, Teddy. You're not helping. Get off my back. I already told you. I did it. Why? How could you do such a thing? Three people are dead because of you. <laughs> Everyone's talking about it, right? It's a huge deal. And I did it. All of it. All by myself. You just wanted the attention? Then why did you target me and the others? How did you kidnap us? <sighs> Whoa, look who it is. <laughs> hey, Yuki. After all this time, now you want to talk to me? <laughs> what bullshit. Answer me. If you held a grudge against me, that's fine. But why the others? <laughs> what a joke. You're so desperate it hurts. I didn't care who I attacked. Everyone pisses me off. You what? Gotta be kidding me. You killed Senpai over nothing? You son of a bitch! I hope you're ready to get what's coming to you. <laughs> What, you gonna kill me? Kanji-kun! Kill you? It ain't gonna be that easy, you piece of shit. What you did can never be taken back. No, you're gonna own up to your crimes and pay for what you did. You ain't gonna be allowed to kick the bucket until you understand exactly what it is you've done. <sighs> Why, damn it! Why does she have to die because of this bastard?! Dude, the cops. Huh? What are you waiting for? Call the damn police! Yeah, you're right. Yosuke. Hmm. At least Adachi-san seemed happy. Well... I guess this means our work is done. He did it all to draw attention. Wow, I can't get my head around that. It's just wrong. I mean, not that it would have been okay if he'd had a better reason. I know. Don't worry. It's finally over. Let's leave the rest to the police. 
My world will be peaceful again now. Yeah, I'm happy for you. We really went through a lot. I like scoring with guys. Oh, come on. Will you ever let it go? What? Scoring with guys? Y you don't need to know the details. I'm sure you'd like us to forget the sauna incident, too. Right, Kanji-kun? Uh, w well... That's not fair. I wanted to see everyone else's, too. That's right. We three are the only ones who saw everyone's secret. Hey, so what was Yosuke's like? Come on, it's about time you told us. Come on, let's leave it at that. Speaking of which, nothing really happened in your case, huh? Really? Wait, really? Is there something special about Senpai after all? Sensei is the man! And now that the case is solved, we won't be calling you leader anymore, will we? Oh yeah, it's kind of sad. Hey, why don't we have a celebration? We always have a wrap party after we're done shooting. It's fun and it'll help give us some closure. Ooh, a party! That sounds great! Let's go all out! Oh, oh, I want to go to Yuki-chan's house! Gorgeous dinner, hot springs, table tennis, yukata, geisha, Fujiyama, full witness! You're right. Yukiko-senpai's family runs a hot springs inn. Hot spring that Yukiko Senpai bathes into? Hey, keep it to yourself. You're sounding like a creep. Well, it sounds like fun, but I don't think it's possible today. Oh, yeah, it's summer vacation. All the rooms must be occupied. We can't do a sleepover? Maybe next time. I promise. Hey, why don't we hit your place instead? Oh, but will your uncle get suspicious? Like, why are you all celebrating? Then it's settled. Nanako-chan can join in too. Oh yeah, if your uncle's a detective, he might not come home tonight. Nanako-chan might be getting hungry. Hey, then why don't we make dinner together? Wow, are you good at cooking, senpai? Well, sort of. What are you saying? Did you already forget the tragedy of the school camp out? Well, we already told you that was an accident. She's right. We just got a couple of the ingredients wrong. Guys, please don't do this. I'm begging you. I don't need another trauma to deal with. Hey, I'm a good cook, too. I'll make something for you, senpai. Ta-da! Teddy has a great idea! Let's have a cooking battle! The winner will be crowned Iron Cook Inaba! A cooking battle? Now I'm even more worried. Sure, that sounds like fun! Aw, but I'll win hands down. You sure you want to make it that easy? Dude, listen to me. For the sake of our stomachs, you have to cook something, too. Help us, partner. You're our only hope. Then you can represent the guys team. Nanako-chan will be our judge. I can be a taster, too. Teddy can be a tester, too. At the end, you're supposed to say that was delicious, right? Woohoo! I'm getting all fired up! All right, let us advance forth into the grocery section downstairs. Charge! Hello, Dojima residents. Oh, hi. Yeah, he said he's gonna be late today. Huh? Dinner? You're all going to cook? Ask Nanako-chan what she wants for dinner. She's just being modest. Ask her again. Well, um, an omelet. I want to eat omelet with fried rice. Okay, I'll be waiting. The 
fried rice omelet. An excellent choice, Nanako-chan. With a dish that simple, I doubt we'll get a second helping of Mystery Food X. Huh? What's wrong? N nothing All right, let's go get our ingredients. Uh, if they're all making the same thing, why are they splitting up to different parts of the market? Looks like you'll need all the help I can give you. Hey, what kind of omelet are you making? I'll go get the ingredients for you. Foie gras? It's a must-have for my special omelet. Don't worry, I'll let you have a taste. Ooh, or maybe I could spoon-feed you. <laughs> I heard last time you choked down something so awful that words couldn't describe it. It was horrible. You poor dears. Who would do such a horrible thing? Risei-san... This is going to be the only chance you get to gloat. Is that clear? I'll crush you with one strike. Whoa, you guys look like you're ready to enter the ultimate frying championship. Kanji-kun, that's alcohol. Uh, oh, it, <laughs> By the way, where's Teddy? Miss... Am I allowed to eat this? Of course you can, dear. Eat as much as you like. You're such a nice lady. Is this one cooked already? <laughs> this one's ready, too. Oh, my. Are you hungry for more? Here, I'll open this one, too. You're so beautiful. Oh, my. No. No, I mustn't. I've got a husband and a son. But I really want this meat, and I want you to cook it, miss. Oh, I couldn't possibly. The manager would get so upset. I'm gonna knock the stuffing out of that bear. Risei Chan was right. This celebration does make me feel like it's over. The case really has come to an end. <sighs> wow! It's really Risa-chan! I should go back over there soon. Are you going somewhere? Yep. The guys kept their promise. A promise? What if you made a promise with me? Could you stay then? A promise with Nana-chan? Um, a promise that you'll play with me. How about that? Sensei, you kept your promise with me. So I should go back over there. But a promise is a promise. It's not good to break them. Sensei! I promise with Nana-chan. I made a promise to play with her. Can I really stay here? It wasn't just my promise. Nana-chan made it with me. I'm really, really happy. Thank you.
Yosuke, I have a new promise to keep. So I want to stay here a little longer. Is that okay with you, sir? Huh? What are you talking about? You're not going anywhere. You can't just quit your job like that. In any case, if you left... It's ready! Incoming food! Out of the way, senpai! Whoa! Ow! Bon appetit! Well, well wait a sec. Asking Nanako-chan to jump in and try these for us is kind of unethical. Don't look at us like that! Oh, so it's our job to taste it first to make sure we can keep it down. Hey, that's mean! Then try mine first, Yosuke-senpai. It's guaranteed delicious! You don't mind me going first? Actually, I've been looking forward to yours. I mean, Rizette cooked it herself. Can you imagine how many guys would kill me if they found out? Well then, chow time! I, I can't give this to Nanako-chan. Ooh, it's so delicious that you won't let anyone else have a bite? Here, try mine next. I'll take this one. K Kanji, that's a lot. Hey, say something. Well, uh, how do I put this? It tastes really, um, boneless? What? That's not a word you use to describe taste. Does it taste good or not? Tell me. Not good, uh, that's for sure. It tastes like, like I'm eating plain oatmeal. It's pretty impressive that you put so many ingredients into a dish and it came out tasting like nothing. Your palate just isn't refined enough. I think it tastes good. <sighs> Nanako-chan. <sighs> okay. Try my next. Uh, I don't know about this, but I think it'll taste good. This time for sure. I'll give it a whirl. How is it? Wow, this tastes awful. You have to try this, Yosuke. Dude, not after you say that. Aha, uh -huh, I see. Well, um, it's a huge improvement over the curry. Yeah, thanks for the consolation. I feel so much better. I think this tastes good, too. Nanako-chan! Oh, yeah, they're right. They're totally right. It tastes awful. Try Rise-chan's! I bet you anything mine tastes better than hers! Senpai? Sure enough. One strike. Well, Yukiko and Chia's didn't taste good either. But at least theirs didn't cause any casualties. <laughs> 
it's a taste too subtle for kids. It's a mature flavor. You guys are just kids. I, I. Chan. Hmm, I knew it. Nanako Chan's the most mature person in this room. Crocodile tears. Oh, yeah. Didn't you make one too, Senpai? You did? Oh. Yep, it's good too. Are you full, Nanako-chan? We're still starving. If you're so hungry, then help yourself to an awful tasting omelet. Huh. Uh, I have a suggestion. You guys know about the festival they're holding in the shopping district, right? Why don't we all go? Oh, that sounds good. Whoa, does that mean the girls will be wearing yukata? A festival? We'll bring Nanako-chan along, too. I can come? Really? Yay! <laughs> that settles it, then. Festival food always tastes great for some reason, even if it ain't anything fancy. Whew. We'll finally be able to get some edible food for once. The weather. The week ended on a wet note as rain clouds moved into the area. As a result, a thick fog is expected to form in the Inaba region later tonight.
you, Coon. Let's go home. Wow, what a great spread. I've never seen so many pieces of fatty tuna. Well, if you're going to have a celebration, you can't do it halfway. Celebration? Ah, it's about this. Watch. I didn't care who it was. I was pissed off. I wanted to be famous. The suspect was often heard saying these things. The young suspect has confessed to being the culprit behind the recent cases, but he's shown no remorse so far. Because of several inconsistencies in the boy's deposition, some have called for a mental examination to be carried out. Until then, the police will be continuing their investigation to shed light on all the prior incidents. It was actually really tough to make a case out of this. All we had was the suspect's confession and some circumstantial evidence. But the lab found the perp's prints on the victim's clothes, so we made it stick after all. Man, isn't crime scene investigation something? Who would have thought you could get viable prints from cloth? There's no more scary stuff to worry about. You're safe now. Uh-huh. Man, that guy was twisted. A high schooler committing multiple murders and leaving the bodies like that. He was over the edge. Good thing we caught him. Now I can stop seeing suspects in every shadow. If the killer was still on the loose. Enough, Adachi. If you keep running your mouth, the sushi's gonna dry up. Oh, you're right. Sorry. Come on, everyone. Eat up. Well, since you asked... Huh? You don't like sushi, Nanako-chan? There's wasabi in it. Oh, that's right. I forgot to tell them to hold the wasabi. Here, I'll take it off for you. Which one do you want, hmm? Halibut. Excellent taste, Nanako-chan. As for me, I'll go for sea urchin. Hey, there's only one of those. Too late. First come... First serve.
Welcome back. Sorry.
big pro? Funny, I remember this festival being a lot more crowded. Is it because of the murders? Yeah, there ain't that many people here this year. Well, I guess you can't blame people for being scared. I haven't seen the reporters around either. And they sure are good at stirring shit up and then disappearing. Well, it ain't so bad to have thin crowds. What is important right now is that we go get some ikayaki. Ooh, I want to get some too. Kanji, what's ikayaki? Man, they're late. Why were they meeting up at Yukiko's house in the first place? They'll show up sooner or... Whoa! Isn't that them? Sorry we took so long. It took us some time to get dressed. You have to wrap towels inside so they're not as breezy as everyone says. It's kind of hard to walk. <laughs> Nana-chan, you look so cute. I'm head over heels for you. <laughs> Thank you. How do we look, senpai? Does the sight make your heart skip a beat? Ooh, that slipped out so naturally. Perhaps you're used to saying things like that? <laughs> well, I'm still happy to hear it. Kanji? What are you looking away for? Don't tell me you're ashamed to look. What are you, a monk? Th that ain't it! <laughs> you're so cute, Kanji. Hey, thanks for looking after her. They bought me cotton candy. Did they now? All right, then. You want to go over and do the target prank? Uh, I mean, game with me? I'll take care of Nanako from here. It's only a few times a year that this town gets charged up like this. You kids should go and have fun. Hmm, a summer festival. Hmm. A couple walking together at a festival. Unused to wearing it, the girl's yukata comes loose. Summer has begun. What kind of tagline is that? We gotta go two by two! Rawr. Two by two? See, I've been thinking. It's the summer, you're wearing yukata, and we're at a festival. It's just wrong for guys and girls to walk around in a huge group like this. We should couple up while we're here. It's the natural way of things. What, what the hell are you babbling about? I'm with Teddy. Come on, senpai. Why wear yukata in the first place? So we have memories we can remember fondly, right? So we should pair off right away! Risei! What a terrifying girl! You got a point, though. Good memories. Uh, I'm fine, too. Oh, what I mean is... Uh, count me in. <laughs> All right, you guys decide how we'll split up. Huh? Seriously? It's up to us? Uh, all right. Three guys and three girls. What should we do? Three guys? <laughs> Aren't you missing one? What? <laughs> Me, him, and Kanji makes three. What? You did that on purpose. Um, should I really do this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can barely look at him. No way. I can look at him. It'll be a cinch. Just you watch. Nah, you should bail, Kanji. It'd be best for everyone that way. What? 
You don't believe me? Well, I've made my decision. Hey, wait till we're done for that. I want Chie-chan and Yuki-chan and Rise-chan for my partner. That's not a decision. Dude, you're the one who said we gotta pair off in the first place. I ain't joking here, Ted. If you try and butt in on this... That's right, Kanji. This is serious business, and you're a true man. A true man wouldn't be prancing around with other girls at a place like this. Uh, okay. How much more can you butter him up? Kanji, this is a test to see if you can uphold your status as a true man. <sighs> now no one will be left out. Y yeah, you're right. Thanks, Teddy, you said it. Okay, count me out. Dude, come on, don't fall for that. It's decided. I'm going with all of you. Huh? What's going on? Oh, there are too many guys, so someone would have been left out. I just couldn't let that happen. What? You little... <laughs> I see. You're so kind, Teddy. We let them decide and this is what we get? <sighs> what a letdown. Oh well, let's go then. We fail, huh? An epic fail. Hey, Teddy! Why are you buying another idol's photo? Mine's in there too. Aw, oh, what's with this? Hey, Ted! Hands off my corn! Teddy, you got ketchup on my yukata! It's just the two of us. I kind of wanted you to pick me in front of everyone else yesterday. But there were so many of us and Teddy was there, so I knew it was impossible. Well, it's nice that we get to come here twice then, for the memories. Come on, let's go! First, we have to make a wish. Though, it'll be the second time I do it. What are you going to wish for? Thanks. Me too. <laughs> I bet we're both thinking of specific things on how to achieve this. I might have bigger, bolder plans than you. Hmm? Young lady. Aren't you that girl on TV? I get that a lot. Sorry, it's not me. A real idol couldn't walk around in public with a boy like this. Ah, uh, so I got all excited for nothing. Oh well, how about a candied apple then? One for your boyfriend, too. <laughs> so people do think you're my boyfriend. What should we do? Want one each? Or do you want to share one? No, that sounds like it'd be really hard to eat. All us vendors are handing out lottery tickets. You can turn them in for a chance to draw a prize at the Turee over there. <laughs> what? That sounds fun. Well then, I want two candied apples. Coming right up. Let's go look at the other stands after we're done eating, senpai. Okonomiyaki, huh? When I got one yesterday, it was huge, so I gave most of it to Teddy. Oh, but today you're here. Let's share one for real this time. I don't have very good memories with fish. I used to have guppies in my room before, but I was too busy to take care of them. Oh, but I'm sure they'll give us lottery tickets for playing, right? We can always just catch and release. Alright then, it's one draw per person. 
Let me go get it. I wonder what I'll get. I hope I can get something super weird so I can remember the day I got it. Now, close your eyes and draw your prize. Wow, amazing! Both of you won! The girl got fourth place. So, a cell phone strap. <laughs> what is this character? It's so ugly. Uh, wait, these clothes. My tour costume last year looked like this. Wait, is this? And the boyfriend has sixth place. A book. We saw a lot. Hey, Senpai. Honestly, you had other invitations today, didn't you? Even if you didn't, I'm sure there were girls who were thinking about inviting you. So, thank you for coming with me today. Well, see ya. I hope we can come again next year. Yes. Welcome back. Hey!
your motorcycle all gassed up? Remember how I mentioned how we should all go to the beach before? Why not go today? Right? When you think of the summer, you think of the beach. And vice versa. I'm sure suntan skin and a little accidental hand slipping is in our future. Oh man, I'm so excited! I'll go ahead and call up the others. See you later! Senses of a beast, remember? What? <laughs> hey, what are you saying? Hey, you? I was complimenting you. You call that a compliment, you idiot? What kind of girl wants to be compared to a big animal? Huh? <laughs> hey, dude, give me a break, will you? <laughs> Have you seen the map? This is crazy. <laughs> Wait for me. I'm... You know, I'm starting to get nervous. We're at the ocean, which means swimsuits, which means reset live and in person. What are the ramifications here? Am I using up my lifetime supply of luck with this? Whoa. Summer is awesome! Hey, were you checking me out, Senpai? Um, can we get going into the water? Chie-chan, Rise-chan, and Yuki-chan all win the Ladies of Summer competition! I'm surrounded by such beautiful mermaids. I feel like this could be my chance for a summer romance. Like that had ever happened. Where's Kanji? I bet he's still worn out. Riding all that way on a bike really did a number on him. Oh, here he comes. What's what? Your swimsuit! What else would I mean? It's your basic black. What? I'm not talking about the color! I mean... I mean... The, the whole thing! I'm seeing things I never needed to see! You're the only one saying stuff like that! Don't act like you're not egging me on! Wait, Kanji. How come you're not getting a nosebleed over me? Huh? Why would that happen? What? surprised they can get this worked up over just some swimsuits. Jeez, they're hopeless. I'm gonna go ahead and jump in the water. Chie-chan, Yuki-chan, let's be mermaids! Whee! Hey, he went in first! Come on, you two, let's go! Don't touch the bottom anymore! Let's go with that You're just low! Don't touch the bottom anymore! 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 Don't touch the bottom anym
Found a vending machine. I'll go buy some drinks. You want a soda? Oh! My string's getting undone. Hey, Teddy, watch the hands, pal. Aw, don't be so stingy. I think we're due for a wardrobe malfunction. What in the world are they doing? Whoa, 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 whoa. What now? Got you, you bastard. Busted. Hey, Senpai, this stupid bear here. Hey, 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 not cool. You listening, Senpai? Wait, hold it, time out. Uh, look down. Down? <laughs> Holy shit, the wardrobe malfunction was mine. You need to cover up down there, damn it! I give up! I give up! Hey, quit squirming! You run off and I'm toast! But if I don't run off, my dignity will be in ruins! Why don't we take a break? I need to put on more sunscreen. Gotta take a break to slake with steak! They're getting out of the water! Daddy, what gives? I'm done for. I'll go look for something. Sit tight. You're right. If I use this white seashell... Ah, no, that's too sexy. I can hear the harps. Stay with us, Ted. All right, Kanji, I found something. Wait, that's seaweed. Oh, there they are. Senpai! They're coming, just hide it! What am I supposed to say to this? Uh, we're, uh, reenacting the birth of Venus? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm ready to be born, damn it. Uh. Was this the best idea? Whatever else, it's giving me an itch. Uh-huh. Pretty busy day. I'm still itchy. At least we had a laugh over it in the end, right? And we found your swimsuit, too. Well, I never would have come to the beach if you hadn't invited me. <laughs> I guess it would be out of character for you. It actually might be more fun to try stuff that's out of character. Yeah. In a way, your nature is like a wall, after all. Surrounding yourself with high walls makes things simple, but... Simplicity isn't always a virtue. Oh man, what was that? Did I just get all philosophical there? Ouch! Just laying it out there, huh? I think it's fine. I look at that big ocean out there and think, man, why keep hanging on to all this embarrassment? Just let it go. So you don't deny that it was embarrassing, huh? barbecue on a stick for everyone else. But that's a prize only you would want to play for, Chie-senpai. Then the loser gets to smooch Teddy! Talk about kicking someone when they're down. Then instead of playing a game, why don't we do something else together? Good times never last Teddy long. Teddy in the sand. I wonder if our high school days will end that way, too. Oh no, my wrist is with all the doom and gloom. The case is closed, man. If anything, I'd say we're just getting started. That's true. 
Man, though, this motorcycle trip turned out way better than I imagined. Hey, I've got an idea. Why don't we go skiing during winter break? Wait till you guys see how awesome I am on a snowboard. Talking about winter already? Getting a little ahead of ourselves, are we? Yeah! There's lots of mountains around here, so there's got to be a ski slope somewhere not too far away. Oh yeah, tons of them. None of them are that close by, but it won't be too tough by scooter. Though we gotta stay safe. The roads look dangerous, we might have to change our plans. Man, I wouldn't have thought you'd be the one stressing safety. What's the point of trying to act cool when it comes to that stuff? Danger's danger, man. Well, you have a point. All right, now that we have a plan in mind for winter break, let's start heading back before it gets dark. We're all beginners at driving after all. We're going home!
Senpai. Senpai. Jeez, 
Senpai, you're a natural-born playboy sometimes. But I bet we'll run into the others at the festival. Yosuke Senpai would never pass up something like this. It kind of sucks, but maybe we should get together with everyone this time. Well, I'll see you tonight, Senpai. Big bro, are you there? I'm gonna play at Monachan's house. I'll buy some trash bags on the way back. Said we'll be going to the fireworks show once he comes home. It's at night, so I have to go with Dad, but he said he'll try and come home for it. Uh huh. I'll go with Dad, so we'll see you there. The crowd's pretty thin here. The riverbanks were packed. I'm surprised you found a quiet spot like this. Oh no, I knew about it. I pass by the mountainside a lot. Customers ask me about it too. I wonder if Nanako-chan will make it. I called and told her where we'd be before I left. Hey, where's Teddy? Not only was he hitting on girls nonstop, he accidentally put the moves on Hanako and she dragged him away. He ducked into his bear skin right away and acted like a bear, but he still got dragged off without a word. Whoa! Can we just leave him like that? Sure we can. His karma caught up to him. Aren't you being a little cold to Teddy today, Yosuke-senpai? When I think back to what he did this morning, no, I really don't. Truth be told, I wish I could send two or three more Hanukos at him. Dude, that would kill him. What happened anyway? I don't even want to remember it. He dug up some private stuff from my room and brought it to the Hanamura family breakfast. He was all like, Yosuke, what's this magazine about? Can you imagine the humiliation I went through because of him? It's your fault for having that stuff. It's not like I ever thought anyone would wave it around in front of my parents. Is this really what you want to be talking about with girls around? Huh? Is he not talking about his secret savings? Secret savings for a guy. Right. Let's just leave him be. Teddy? What a tragedy. My lovely fur is completely ruined. That's... Okay, that's worse than I was expecting. Anyway, people are going to stare at you like that. Hurry and take it off. But I'm like a newborn child inside. Just like your magazine from this morning, Yosuke. Quit reopening this morning's wounds. There they are. Big bro. Hey, Nanako-chan. Looks like Dojima-san made it in time. Yeah, Dad came home early. Yep. Sorry if I made you nervous. I didn't quite finish my paperwork, but I figured a dachi could handle the rest. Hey there, little lady. Want to launch some fireworks of love with me? How do you do that? Well... Cut it out, Teddy! Do you want Tojima-san to haul you in? Things are heating up down there. Does that mean it'll be starting soon? Really? Don't listen to him. <laughs> Messing with her, Teddy. Sometimes you're unbearable. Oh, Was that supposed to be a joke? <laughs> <laughs> oh, looks like this one's a doozy. Oh, you're right. <laughs>
That concludes our program for the Summer Fireworks Festival. Thank you for coming, and all of us here in Inaba hope to see you again next year as well. Man, that was amazing! Totally worth coming out here for. Because you got to stuff your face, right? So what? You were all munching on snacks, too. An extra-large steak bowl doesn't qualify as a snack. Did you have fun, Nanako-chan? Mm -hmm. I'm sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised. It's about time for you to be home in bed. I'll take Nanako back. Make sure you guys don't stay out too late, huh? Bye-bye, Nana-chan! Bye-bye! The fireworks were great, but... I don't know, it just feels like summer's just about over. Why'd you have to bring that up? I'm alright with that. When I'm working, I have to wear fall clothes during the summer so I don't get a sense of the seasons changing. But this year, I went to the beach and saw some fireworks. I even got to wear a yukata out to the summer festival. The festival, huh? Well, thanks to a certain someone, I don't have anything but bitter memories of that. Really? That someone is you. Well, I had fun. Oh yeah, you were good at that candy cutting. Wait, that's not what I meant. I was expecting something more... more bittersweet and stuff. Right? You take the long view too much when it comes to this stuff. Are you going to throw away the only summer you'll ever get as a second year just because it's a little less annoying? Hey, that's mean. You make it sound like we're annoying. Annoying? Am I really? Oh, sheesh. Yukiko's freakout switch just kicked in. It's your fault for being so insensitive, Yosuke! Huh, yeah. This kind of thing really doesn't come up with guys. <sighs> Yosuke, you really do only think about girls, huh? Like you're any different. Oh yeah, should we have asked that kid to come with us today? What kid are you talking about? Uh, well... Oh, him. Yeah, I guess so. When you think about it, we were working on the same case in a way. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we might not ever see him again. I'd hate to leave it with him like that. I said some harsh things. You know, I remember him saying something that sounded pretty sad. Then again, I doubt he's the type who'd accept even if we had invited him out to see the fireworks. I wonder if he's not here anymore. He seemed to be busy, so maybe he's already working on another case in some faraway town. Huh. Sorry, I didn't mean to be a downer. There's no point in wondering what might have been. He was a pretty good-looking guy, too. He might have been a roadblock in... Uh, other ways. Yosuke, you really do only think about girls, huh? Shut up! You don't have to say it twice! came down. Um, I got a call from Dad. He said someone gave him a watermelon. It's too big for us to eat, so he said you should call your friends over. Do you think Teddy and your other friends can come? Watermelon? Oh, definitely. I haven't had any yet this year. I'm gonna call up the others, so you better not smack it open before we get there. Um, Dad got a watermelon from someone, so he said we should call everyone. Man, a watermelon. Because of all the stuff that's gone down this summer, I completely missed out. So, where is it? The fridge? Gee, Kanji, they invited us over. At least show some manners. We gotta smack it open first. Huh? Are we seriously gonna do that? We can't eat it if it gets all crushed. But 
But doesn't it sound like fun? I want to do it too! I'll swing at it with everything I've got! The splattering fruit juice, bursts of joy, one night of love, the bitter sweetness of those days is the essence of youth! That makes no sense at all. And dude, will you cut out those commercial lines of yours? That's the essence of youth! I'm home. Whoa, that's a lot of shoes. How many people are here? Welcome home. <laughs> Let's split the watermelon open. Say what? Ah, well, you see... Come on, Nanako. Don't pout. Everyone came here to hang out, right? I'm really sorry. It never occurred to me you'd want to do that. Hey, Nanako-chan, let's do it again sometime. Next time, we'll do it right at the beach. Seconded. Whoa, does that mean we get another chance to see you in bathing suits? Oh, but there probably aren't enough days left. We'll have to do it next year. Next year? Will you play with me next year, too? Of course we will! You betcha! You betcha! Did you hear that, Nanako? Yep, thank you! Thanks for everything today. It's been a while since I last saw Nanako in high spirits like that. <laughs> the case is finally solved. Now for all the... <laughs> ah, never mind. Save it for some other time. You know, you really made some great friends. Morning. Oh, summer vacation's over already. Yo, guys. I got lost on my way here. The vacation was pretty long. Not that long. Sheesh. Good morning. Y you? You're that, uh, pint-sized detective. I beg your pardon? My name is Naoto. Please don't give people bizarre nicknames you make up on the spot. Um, you know this is a high school, right? My cooperation with the police has come to an end. However, there are aspects of the case with which I remain unconvinced. There are some family-related issues as well, so I've decided to stay here for the present. From today forth, I'll be a first year at your high school. And I felt that I should at least introduce myself to you all. I trust our relations will be cordial, senpai. Senpai? That detective boy's our underclassman?
Man, school's as dull as ever. With the case closed, the days feel so empty all of a sudden. Come on, Yosuke. Everything went back to normal. It's a good thing. I didn't mean it that way. It's just... Hey, we're stopping by Juness later, right? Why don't we ask Naoto-kun to join us? Oh, well, I just thought, since he doesn't know anyone yet, he must feel lonely. Didn't he say he came here to help out with the murder case? With the case closed, he's just an ordinary guy now. And if you think about it, that makes him a transfer student, just like us. Hello, senpai. Maybe he transferred here out of plain stubbornness, because he doesn't seem like he's only in it for fun. All right, let's see if he wants to hang out with us. A celebrity coming to school is already a surprise, but a detective is even rarer. I'm a little curious to see what his family's like, too. There's that and the fact that he's a detective at his age. Oh, speak of the devil. There's the little guy. You don't know the area yet, right? Come on, we'll show you around. There's probably tons of places to hang out that only we'd know about. That won't be necessary. I'm not interested in hanging out, and neither am I interested in you two. Huh? Hey, what did you say? What's with that attitude? We're just trying to be friendly. Jeez, way to make an impression. Yo, Naoto-kun, how's it going? Oh, um... <laughs> hey, guys. Sup? Uh, well, we'll be going now. So we meet again. May I help you? Hey, Naoto-kun! If you're not doing anything after school, want to come with us? Come with... you mean me? Perhaps another time. I have some things to mull over. Things to mull over? I must go straight home today. I promised my grandpa so. Grandpa? Oh well. That's that then. Let's hang out some other time. Man, did you see Naoto's attitude? He sure blew his debut at school. Is he gonna be okay at Yasogami? He is different, but he has this mysterious air around him that draws your attention. Whoa, Yukiko, I never knew. You like younger guys? No, that's not what I meant. Hmm. Naoto-kun said he has things to mull over, but he's gotta be talking about the murder case. He's some ace detective, right? I bet he's not satisfied, even though the case is closed. That's true, but... <laughs> this place isn't our special headquarters anymore. Uh, let's talk about something else. Isn't the class trip coming up soon? Um, where are we going? Tatsumi Port Island. I heard it's an artificial island that faces the ocean. It's a pretty big city. Huh? Port Island? I did tons of shoots there. It's just beyond the Moonlight Bridge, yeah? Should be lots of places to hang out there. Uh, actually, we may not have any time to goof off during this trip. I heard the school board is changing the trip schedule this year. The idea is we're going to visit a private school there, like to have local and urban students interact or something. It'll be all about studying and serious business. Oh, yuck. Ugh, they're totally missing the point of a class trip. What kind of place is this private school? I heard it's really good. They have nice buildings and everything. But it's closed on the day we're going there, so they're going the extra mile to make this work. They want us to tour some factories on the second day, and then we're coming back on the third day. That's no different from a social studies field trip. Uh, I didn't want to know that. Can't expect much from a school-sponsored trip, I guess. Well, we'll be around, so if it starts to drag, we can ditch. I'll show you guys around. But we're in different years. Oh, didn't you know? The excursion will be like the campout. They're going to combine the first and second years. 
Since student enrollment is down and they're low on funds, they've cut the excursion back to once every two years. Well, at least we won't be bored with you around, Senpai. Gosh, I'm trying to remember the last time I went to Port Island and I wasn't working. <laughs> this will be great! I wish I could be that positive about it. Doesn't this seem like a pain in the ass to anyone else? Some people were against the proposition, but it's been decided. Oh, and guess whose idea it was? King morons! It's just the kind of thing he'd come up with. No, King Moron! Why must you torture us from beyond the grave? No, King Moron! You don't even know who that is. Hey, tell me more about this trip. Where is Port Island? What's there? Get back to work, will ya? Well, even though the class trip is coming up, it's still a ways away. What should I do until then? Well, it's not like we got much to do here in the first place. Man is just an animal trying to figure out how to kill time through his days. Huh. You made that sound like you were being philosophical, yet it made absolutely no sense. S sorry. <laughs> waiting. again sometime. You're back. Hey.
Yo! What? Welcome back.
Just a little longer. Thank you. You're back. Hey. Ah. Uh.
Yo! <laughs> Let's go. You made me realize that. back. I see. Dad? bringing me into this world.
Thank you. Stay by my side. Welcome back. Hey! Ah. Sorry to bother you. Morning, senpai. Yo. So are you ready for the trip yet? This guy won't shut up about it. <laughs> Yosuke senpai hasn't even started packing. He's all like, was that tomorrow? What's up with that? You are way too excited about this. I mean, you're even worried about how many boxes of animal crackers to bring. We're only gonna be there for two nights, dude. Besides, I'm pretty sure they have convenience stores in Port Island. Are serious? I've never really left this place, so... Huh. I wonder if the murders here got as much play over there, too. Like that Mitsuo Kubo dude. They're still showing him on TV here. Every time I switch on the tube, the news is showing, like, what he wrote in his yearbook. It pisses me off, man. The freaking media is slapping together anything they can find to make the dude look like a born criminal. People think they can say anything they want about a guy who's been branded a criminal. It's just not right. I mean, I still hate the guy's guts, but I don't know. After getting involved with all this, I started to realize how off-base most rumors are. It's so messed up. Well, I gotta admit, the news can be pretty out there. Hey, it's Naoto. Yo, how's it going? Good morning. Oh, yeah. I I'm on duty today. <laughs> well, see you later. <sighs> He's the messed up one. Senpai. <laughs> Senpai. Hell? 
Ja. Sorry. What's up with this place? This school's way too big. Wait, if we can't beat them on size, we're totally sunk. Well, <clears throat> next I will explain about our fine educational institution and the reasons for its establishment. I'd like to start with a proverb. If a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. Oh, is this principal in love with his own voice or what? Chie, he'll hear you. <clears throat> Our school is closed today. But uh, because of this rare opportunity for cultural exchange, some of our students will walk you through these halls. First, though, a student body representative will say a few words. Thank you, principal. Welcome to Gekko-kan High School. My name is Chihiro Fushimi. I'm a third-year student and the student council president here at Gekko-kan. It's an honor to meet you all today. Holy crap, that girl's unbelievable. Yeah, you're right. She is cute. I gotta say, she's the most bewitching, bespectacled beauty I've ever beheld. You guys, stop overreacting. This is the first time our school has invited another student body for a true cultural exchange. To learn about others is to learn about oneself and is the first step on the road to self-betterment. This I believe. To ensure a worthwhile experience for each and every one of you, we will do our best to help you accomplish that. 
So let us enjoy our time together. Thank you very much. She beat me in every category. All right. Everyone get into groups with your classmates. Oh, no. Excuse me, could I bother you for a moment? This is today's schedule for everyone. Could you hand it out later, please? I forgot to do it myself. Sorry to be so disorganized. And you all came so far. No, I'm still struggling. Even with everyone's support, I'm barely pulling through. I used to get nervous very easily. And I once had a phobia of men, too. In fact, I didn't write the speech on my own. One of the former student council presidents helped me. She was the president my first year here, and she was amazing. I always looked up to her. I should call her later and tell her the speech was a success. Oh, I'm sorry. Listen to me going on and on about myself. I have to stop babbling when I get nervous. Um, your group is scheduled for a special lecture soon. The classroom is on the second floor. I have some arrangements to make with your student council, so please excuse me. Did I just hear her say special lecture? We came all this way to be lectured? Let's see, our class is... It's being taught by someone named Mr. Adagawa. The lecture is about Kabbalah. Kabbalah what? You don't know? It's a casino. So, when's our free period? Uh, ooh, we don't get one. We have classes all through today. Tonight and tomorrow we'll be staying at a hotel. We'll have free time tomorrow and the day after until we leave at noon. You gotta be kidding me. Come on, guys. Let's focus on our studies for now so we can enjoy our free time later.
All righty, here we are. The Seaside Clamshell Inn. We'll be staying here tonight. Is this really a regular hotel? So, what do you think? It was me who found this place. It just opened not too long ago. It's got that modern look. And the price was right. Personally, I think it was an excellent choice. We're staying here? I mean, the sign says hotel, but... It opened recently? Dude, this totally looks like a love... You there, don't just stand there. Keep marching in. Isn't there something funny about this place? Is there? We don't have these modern hotels in Inaba, so I can't tell. Um, this area is called Shirakawa Boulevard, and it's... That's all right, Rise. I don't think I want to know. <laughs> Faster than I expected. This is quite the hotel. If they were to meet me, I wonder... What would the look on Yosuke's face be? Oh, oh, who's that? Look, up there! <gasps> it can't be! Yeah! <laughs> Teddy! What are you doing here? The lonely bear inside of me went stir-crazy! If only I could detect people in the real world. How'd you get here? Do you have some special ability? Eh, I took the train. I swore off topsicles and saved up the money I got working at Juness. I knew where you were going thanks to Yosuke's trip guide. You guys have free time tomorrow, right? No use hiding it. I already know. How in the world did you make it here looking like that? I mean... Why wear the bear suit here? I almost got thrown in the trash a couple times. But I kept hanging on to the promise Chie-chan made to go on a date with me. That's what gave me strength to carry on. Uh, good job, Teddy. <laughs> did, did I promise that? <laughs> oh, yeah, I do remember saying that I'd go out with you someday. Whee! You remember, Chie-chan? Is it okay with Yuki-chan and Rise-chan, too? Let's all go together, then. Is that all right with you? Mm. It's a deal. I've been here before, so I'll show you around tomorrow. I guess we can go shopping first, and I know a great place we can hit later on. Ooh, shopping! That sounds great! <laughs> The other students don't know Port Island that well, so they're just going to go wherever the school recommends. Well, I guess a shopping spree beats a factory tour. All right, we're in two. <laughs> Leave it to me. Now, before the fun starts, we got to deal with this guy. Can't you sleep outside for the night? That suit should keep you nice and cozy. Cruelty to animals! You don't know how much trouble I went through to get here! I took the slow train all this way! Do you hear? The slow train! Now, now, you kids aren't bickering about your room allocations, are you? Oh, crap! What's the matter? Oh, what's this giant teddy bear? My, it's so big. Go on, hurry on inside with it. By the way, these rooms are amazing. Every room has a waterbed. But uh, don't flip the wrong switch when you're turning on the lights or your bed will start spinning. Anyways, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Yeah, but I'm exhausted. For so many reasons.
<laughs> Whoa! So this is a club. Woo! I'm totally ready for this! There's nothing like this back home. Is it permitted for high school students such as yourselves to be here? What? Dude, look who's talking. You were here before we were. That's right. I guess if the first years came on the trip, you'd be here too. The clientele here seems above board, so I don't expect there'll be any problems. Huh? You're leaving? Why don't you join us? Are you... asking me to stay? Uh-huh. We didn't get to chat last time. Uh, I... it's just that I had some matters to attend to that day. Well, you're free now, right? I was really eager to talk to you. I'm curious how someone my age is working as a detective. How about it? Mm, very well, if you insist. Huh? What's up? You look a little red. Th that's not true. Wait here. I'll go reserve the area upstairs for us. Okay. Wait, what? Reserve? Yep. Don't worry. I think I can pull some strings. Uh, <clears throat> What's wrong, man? Stomach pains? Mm, that ain't it. Are you sure this is all right? Isn't it expensive? No worries. Two years ago, when I had a secret show here, the power went out in the middle of it and the gig was cancelled. They still owe me from then, so they're willing to put this one on the house. <laughs> well, in that case, I'm gonna order more! Woo! I'm not gonna hold back either! Dude, you sound even weirder today. Oh! You're so cold, Kanji! <laughs> Kanji! 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 I conjecture that something's up! <laughs> That's a great one. Man, you're already in high gear. <laughs> conjecture? <laughs> uh, she's looser than usual, too. Hey, wait a sec. Are these liquor? Uh, I told them to give us soft drinks. They're non alcoholic. Mm -hmm. I told them. Really, I did. Really. Oh, sheesh. I was wondering why it's so hot. Is this seriously booze? <laughs> but the smells. King's game. Times like this. Adults play the king's game. It's the law. <laughs> What's their problem? They make me act like a ditz, call me resent and stuff, and then say I'm a kid? It's so obvious. Those rap parties get a lot better after I go home. Morons! I am gonna play the king's game now, and ain't no one gonna stop me. Yet another side of Risa exposed. I wonder if she knows what she's saying. Kanji! Get the chopsticks ready! What? Why me? The king's word is law! Chop chop! It, it's already started? Um, what's this king's game again? Okay. One chopstick makes you the king if you draw it, and the others have numbers on them. The king picks the number and says what that person has to do. But who has which number is a secret until the king gives the orders. Senpai, you're such an adult. You tell him. Y Yukiko, where'd you learn this stuff? Come on, everyone draw.
Okay, so who's the king? Teddy's is red. Red! Is Teddy the king? Uh, we're already doomed from the get-go. I, the king, command thee to smooch the king without delay. Smooch! Smooch! Please, God, grant me a girl. Number three! Ah! I'm at number two! No take backs! Smooch! Smooch! Kanji! So you were after my fuzzy fur! Okay, but it's my first time. Be gentle. Whoa! Ow! Hey, quit that! Don't make me flatten you, damn it! Ah! No! Hey! Help! Oh, only the first round and two contestants have dropped out already. Huh? Is it that kind of game? On to round two! Who's the king? Phew, someone decent. No crazy orders this time. That's not how it goes. If the last king demanded a smooch, then the next order's gotta be more extreme. T.A., don't be such a party pooper. <laughs> hey, the person who gets picked should have to rest their head on the king's lap. Nah, make him sit on his lap. Oh, or they could have to hug him. Better than that, a piggyback ride. Come on, King, who's gonna do what? Three girls here and I get chosen? The king's order is... Absolute! <laughs> A piggyback ride? Not cool, man. Not cool. Ha-ha! Yeah! Uh, you've had enough, right? Please, show some mercy. the queen you didn't even draw a chopstick all right then let's have someone talk about something really embarrassing that they'd never want to tell anyone hmm let's see oh no token i choose you she's breaking all the rules just ignore her naoto no no that won't be necessary one stipulation, though. If I do this, the rest of you must reveal something as well. Okay. No particularly embarrassing experiences come to mind. Would discussing my life be fair game? It's the rare situation like this that gives me call to speak of such things. Damn, way to kill the mood. The Shiragane family has been detectives for generations now. We lend our powers to the police from time to time. For generations? Wow, it's like that guy from a movie I watched before. What was his name? Kuzu Noha? In days gone by when there were no crime scene investigators, consulting detectives were considered more valuable. Thus my grandfather still has a strong connection with the police and looks after me, despite my youth and inexperience. 
but investigators nowadays are well-versed in science and medicine, so I must further my studies. That sounds tough. Uh, that's it? No punchline? <sighs> I fear you may be looking to the wrong person for that. That's so embarrassing! Isn't Hautukum embarrassing? <laughs> I want to go home. Oof, I'm sleepy. Well then, it's your turn now. Straight answer, please. What is your true involvement with the murder case? You know, you're so good at killing the mood that it's almost funny. Well, we go rescuing people who've been kidnapped by jumping into the TV. And then we do stuff like Persona with our personas and beat the crap out of shadows. You idiot! <sighs> Are you making fun of me? It's true! Persona! Gee, someone put these two drunks to bed already! I see now that you had no intention of telling me the truth. But I'm curious, how did you become so inebriated? This isn't alcohol. Good one, Naoto! No. I confirmed it when I first entered. No alcohol has been served here since a rash of drunk driving last year. Huh? Does that mean we're all just drunk off the atmosphere? Who cares? <laughs> it feels so good. Good night! Hey, senpai! How the hell are we gonna get back with two passed out drunks? <sighs> Well, this is giving me a big headache. Is this what a hangover feels like? Teddy's still totally okay. <laughs> Let's keep drinking till morning. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on. As I said, you haven't been drinking alcohol. Are you a pack of imbeciles? something this place serves the best ramen in town when we were filming a lot of times I came here instead of eating box lunches hmm you're not hungry um what happened last night I don't remember much about it oh I think the two of us fell asleep quick I heard it got pretty wild though I see I don't remember at all <laughs> Ah, oh, this flavor never changes. I couldn't come here too often because it's high in carbohydrates, so being able to eat as much as I want is like a dream. Ooh, this is delicious. It has an interesting taste that makes you hungry for more. See? See? Another bowl, please. Keep the noodles hard. Um, I'll have the hug of curry bowl. The Haga Curry Bowl's a normal menu item now? Oh, I should have asked. Oh well, this is just as good. Hey, is it okay for you to be out in the open like this? Sure, no problem. See those signing boards? My autograph's up there too, but the cook doesn't give me a second glance. That's just how it is over here. Plus, I'm barely wearing any makeup. Oh, you're right. There's a lot of autographs on display. You know what I think? The reason they don't notice you is because this bear sticks out like a sore thumb. I guess if he wore that over here, he'll have to go home wearing it. Isn't it all steamy inside from the ramen? Huh? Where's my bowl? You didn't eat it, did you? You didn't finish, so... 
<laughs> I was going to finish it. Hey, didn't you just order more a second ago? How many have you eaten? I don't know how to count. You little liar. Give me that check. Let's see here. One, two, ten bowls? Yuki-chan's makes it eleven. <clears throat> I was going to finish mine. There, there. I'm sorry to interrupt, but it's close to the meeting time. Oh, already? I thought the trip was going to be a bore, but now that it's over, I actually had a good time. Hey, let's buy a souvenir at the station. I bet Nanako-chan will be expecting one. All right, let's get going. Come on, Teddy, we're leaving. Yo, hey, Ted. Don't make me rub your fur the wrong way, you little... Dude, hey, he ain't moving. Is he hibernating? Hey, don't, don't tell me. It's not because he's been in our world too long, is it? Are you serious? Teddy! <clears throat> My tummy's heavy. Leave it behind. I ate too much. Can't move. Someone carry me. I mustn't be late for our rendezvous. Please excuse me. Oh, Yukiko, wait for me! Hey, I really can't move! And I don't have the money for a return ticket! Farewell, Teddy. We shall leave you here, along with our memories of youth. You're back. We just missed each other, huh? Look! My big bro got me a souvenir. Hey, nice. Did you remember to thank him? Of course. Huh. I guess that came out of your own pocket. Thanks. You went to Tatsumi Port Island, yeah? <laughs> I guess the city was no big deal for a guy like you. By the way, if the first years went along with you, Naoto Shirogane must have been there too. You talk to him much? He's mature for his age, but he's still a year younger than you. Try to make friends with him, will you? He's a cocky brat, but he's honest. The higher-ups are losing their patience with him. It doesn't matter if his argument holds water or not. At this rate, he won't accomplish anything but getting himself booted off the team. Adults can be a selfish bunch. Oh, sorry. You must be tired. Why don't you take a bath? Oh, but don't forget to take your stuff upstairs. Nanako, can you get the bath ready?
Welcome to Nightline's special Night Watch Report. A suspect in the murders in Inaba was safely arrested recently. But what few people know is that the mastermind who brought him to justice was a high school detective. Tonight's report will focus on this detective prince, Naoto Shirogane, whose handsome looks are sweeping the nation. Thanks for being on the show. No, no. The pleasure is all mine. Oh, his uniform's the same as yours. First, congratulations to you and the police for your recent arrest of the culprit. It was well known that there were a lot of mysteries surrounding this case, and you did a great job clearing them up. I'd hesitate to say that the matter is cleared up as such. It's true that our suspect was behind Mr. Moraoka's unfortunate death, but when I cast my eye over the case as a whole, I detect a few things that seem out of place. Oh? Like what? Unfortunately, I cannot divulge details at this time, but this matter claimed the lives of three people. Hence, I believe even the smallest inconsistency must be investigated. I... I see. I have to say, this is a surprise in light of the police's official statement. Now for our next segment, The Detective Prince's True Identity, where Naoto-kun tells us a little bit about himself. Amazingly, the Detective Prince has solved a whopping 24 cases, Sixteen of them were... There's a detective at your school? When I'm older, I'm gonna go to your school, too.
Yo. Hey, did you see the show on TV last night? Now Tokun was on. That thing about the detective prince solving the case? Come on, we're the ones who actually caught the killer. But the police were the ones who identified the suspect, and he was cooperating with them on it, right? So it's true that he helped solve the case. I'm kind of surprised, though. I didn't think he was the type to go after the spotlight like that. Good morning. I've been waiting for you all. There's something I needed to discuss with you regarding the case. Discuss? Dude, we'll be late if we talk too long. Hey, where's your uniform? Could you please indulge my current theory on the matter? What is it? First, as regards commonalities between the victims, all of them were kidnapped before they were murdered. The victims were all locals who had been the focus of recent media attention, becoming suddenly well-known. That is the most likely scenario. I don't believe there's anything intrinsically unique about the victims themselves. Haven't you all come to the same conclusion? Then allow me to state my point. Will you admit that a number of you fit these identical circumstances? There was a long interval between the second and third deaths in this case. But after I applied the aforementioned criteria, I discovered several similar disappearances had taken place. Yukiko Amagi, Kanji Tatsumi, Risei Kujikawa. All of you disappeared shortly after being shown on TV. Either you escaped death somehow, or you faked your own disappearances in order to divert attention from yourselves. Since some of you had ties to the victims, there came a point where I suspected one of you must be the culprit. You thought one of us was the killer? Oh, you can't be serious! This was a prior theory, since discarded. Putting together everything I've learned until this moment, I believe exactly the opposite. You aren't the culprits. You may, in fact, be the only ones with the means to pursue the true perpetrator. Seen as a joining of forces between the rescued, everything falls into place. Of course, this is all speculation. There is, in fact, a flaw in the theory. It doesn't account for the third incident, Mr. Moraoka's murder. He has never been broadcast on television, and neither did he ever disappear. We must also consider the condition of his corpse. The first two victims are still listed with an unknown cause of death. But Mr. Moraoka died of an easily identifiable blunt force trauma to the occipital cranium. The police have not satisfactorily resolved this discrepancy, yet they are desperate to close the case. Further action will be necessary to obtain some sort of decisive evidence. Further action? What do you mean? Well, whatever the outcome, the evidence should come to light. You said something interesting to me not long ago. Hey, where are you going? This is not a game for me either. Naoto-kun? Are you going to wish for something too? M me? <laughs> Thank you. I'm wishing for everyone's health. For Chie, for you, for the others, and everyone at the inn too. And I'm wishing to become a woman worthy of you. Finally, I wish for everyone to be able to smile together. Let's begin our prayer. I've decided not to leave Inaba. 
I never really objected to being the inn's manager per se. I just didn't like the fact that it wasn't up to me. I felt that my life was on rails, and I thought running away was the only choice for me. But no longer. I want to protect the family inn. After all, it's near to my heart. Um, thank you. I think it's because of you that I realized this. Because you were always by my side. you this before um why why are you always with me I is it okay for me to ask you you like me <sighs> uh um I feel the same way so... I thought my heart was going to stop. Um, stay here with me. Just a little longer. Now then, first off... Sorry, but can you go call Nanako down here? Take your time. You told me to go over there. Uh, well, today is a special day for us. A special day? That's right. Today's the day when you, me, and him become family. What about before? Uh, well, anyways, it's the day that we become a real family. Happy. All right, let's eat. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, sorry about making you go along with this. Huh. You're a nice guy. I felt like I needed to do this to draw the line, and I wanted Nanako to know. She has to know how important my daughter is to me. <laughs> She's looking more and more like Chisato. Her smile, her strong attitude. It was hard for me to even look at Nanako's face, because she reminds me so much of Chisato. Chisato died because she went to pick up Nanako. There were times when I'd come close to believing that, but even then, I can't count the number of times she saved me just by being there. If I was living by myself, I would never have thought about taking you in. I think I was scared. Scared to have someone else around. I was afraid we'd become a family. And then I'd lose it all again. I was running away by chasing a guy who'd run away himself. <laughs> it was almost funny. I've been scared this whole time. That's why I used revenge as an excuse to not spend time with her. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was. Running, regretting, that crap all ends tonight. I'm not going to lose the things that are important to me. Never again. That's the strength you've shown me. Thanks. notice what exactly is the midnight channel anyway did it have anything to do with the murders Ugh, this is so frustrating hey what do you think did you recognize who appeared just now now though why would he show up on tv now that you mention it i wonder what he thinks about the midnight channel Ugh, i don't get this at all it's gonna keep nagging at me i can tell I'm sure the others saw it too, so let's get together tomorrow and talk about it. Night. So, about the Midnight Channel last night. I wonder who that was. I talked to Teddy and he says no one's entered the other side. Well, yeah, the killer's been caught. Yeah. Huh? What's up? Come on, get with the program. You saw the TV last night, right? So? It's got nothing to do with us. The killer's behind bars, man. You guys are overreacting. She had that shit Nalto said didn't make any sense either. So there's no use getting all worked up about it. Huh? Nalto-kun? Ah, uh, no, well, how do I put it? What, were you out of it because you were still thinking about what Naoto said? <laughs> so you're still hung up on all that stuff. That's... I ain't hung up on it. It's okay, we all understand. Just don't go overboard, man. You little... I said that's not it. I got stuff to do. I'm out of here. 
stop bringing that up, Yosuke. You know he doesn't think it's funny. Oh, what? What? Did something happen between Kanji and Naoto-kun? Well, that aside... Is it me, or does the town seem kind of strange lately? Everyone is in high spirits for some reason, and they all talk about other people, but never themselves. Really? I don't think it's anything special. Now that the murder case is solved, people feel relaxed, that's all. That's how society is. They all just want to get in on the latest trend. People get excited fast and lose interest even faster. It goes round and round. And there's no underlying reason for it. I don't know. It still seems a little too weird. It's like they're all afraid of something. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I just had this feeling. Huh. It's gonna rain again tonight. We should check the Midnight Channel just in case. Welcome back. Last night on TV, that was Naoto Kun for sure. What's the verdict, Teddy? Is he really in there? I do smell someone. It's just like before. Nothing's changed. Like before. Of course! That's why Naoto Kun appeared on the news so suddenly. He said something didn't seem right and that he wasn't convinced. He also believed that the people who are kidnapped appear on TV first, remember? Wait, you're saying he's using himself as bait? We came to the same conclusion he did, about how people who become famous through TV would disappear. Could he be trying to prove the theory by using himself? You mean he got kidnapped on purpose? That's crazy! He could be killed! He said, this is not a game for me either. It's all my fault. I'm the one that said that to him. 
idiot! Why the hell didn't he just tell us? He knew we'd stop him if he did. Instead, he left us clues so we could figure it out and... I know! That son of a... But, but what about the killer the police are holding now? Mitsuo did kill King Moron, right? I get it now. I remember Naotoken mentioning this. He said it was strange that the police were able to identify the cause of Mr. Moraoka's death. Then is King Moron the only one Mitsuo killed? That'd explain why there were no signs of King Moron being thrown into the TV. The killer didn't change his methods for King Moron. It just seemed that way because it was done by someone else. Then whoever kidnapped Naoto-kun, that's the real killer? But, but wait a sec. Didn't Mitsuo say he was the one behind it all? Why would he take the blame for someone else's crime? Isn't that weird? And they said on the news that the culprit confessed to the other murders too. There's also something else that's been bothering me, but, um... To hell with someone who's behind bars! If we don't get off our asses, that stupid Naoto's gonna die in there! We gotta go find him! Someone's definitely in here, and the world seems to have grown larger. That's amazing, Risei-chan. There's no way my nose can pick up that much. Shall I give you a massage? Don't bother her. It's the same as last time. I know he's here, but I can't tell where. I need something that'll help me understand him. I need some clues. Without that, I have no idea which way we should look. Damn it. There's too much we don't know about that kid. But if we don't do something, he's gonna... Hey, snap out of it! This is just like all the other times. Let's not panic, keep an eye on the weather, and do this like always. We'll save him no problem. First, we need to look for something that'll help us locate him. I, I know. I, I wasn't panicking. We know he's over here. So all we gotta do is get him out. I'm sorry I couldn't find him. All I need is some kind of hint to help me understand him better. Then I could find him for sure!
Okay, that's all of us. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Did you find out more about Naoto-kun? I see. So he's being stubborn about the case. But it seems like it's rare for Naoto-kun to get so worked up over something. Okay, I've got a good feel for him. I think I can do this. It won't take long for me to find him with my persona, so be ready to follow me once I do. What is this place? It's all sci-fi. Hey, doesn't it remind you of those secret hideouts in live action shows? Oh yeah! <laughs> I used to watch Featherman all the time when I was a kid. I hear that those are really tough shoots. A lot of the actors do their own stunts, like jumping through fire themselves. Well, it's every man's dream to do that stuff. Yeah, I can understand that. They're action-based, like kung fu movies. And just the phrase secret hideout has this exciting ring to it. Actually, when I was a kid, I had my own secret place near the mountain by Yukiko's house. I'd pretend that a legendary kung fu master was teaching me special techniques. What the? Got it all wrong. But hey, so this secret hideout thing, it came from Naoto's mind? I guess our proper boy detective isn't as grown up as he looks. All right, let's get going.
run. Don't let it get away. Persona! Persona! There! So persistent. It's so <laughs> stubborn! Persona! I wasn't expecting that from you, Kanji. So stubborn! Enemy defeated. Keep up the good work, Kanji. <laughs> I can't defeat the <laughs> I can't defeat Come on, yeah. Bastard's perfectly fine! Yukiko Senpai, your defense is down. There! It's so stubborn! Yeah. It ain't going down! <laughs> It ain't going down! Last one! Go for it! No way! Four more enemies are here! It's over! There! Yukiko Senpai? Boy, I'll it get looks it good next time! Pathetic! Whoa, Kanji! That was great!
Yeah! Out of my sight! I climbed the stairway! Yes! I leveled up! Yukiko-senpai? You don't look so good. your health, Senpai.
to watch your health, Senpai.
want you to have this. Good night.
So, this is your room. Oh, oh uh, sorry. I didn't mean to look around. It's just that this is the first time I've been to a boy's room. Oh, you sleep on a futon, I see. I use a futon, too. <clears throat> um, sorry. I don't know what to talk about. Anywhere's fine. <laughs> I I'm fine with anything. You don't need to worry about me. Oh, yes. I'm still studying. Cooking and job licenses. I don't plan to leave anymore, but I thought I might as well. I'm glad I realized sooner. If I'd struck out on my own, I know I would have regretted it. I wanted to become completely self-sufficient, but I think I was being presumptuous. I have the inn, I have my family, I have the waitresses and chefs. I am who I am now because I was raised by such a kind group. When I think of it that way, my problems aren't just my own. That's why I'm going to stay here. By my own will. from that shrine to protect you. I want to, but... I'm staying here. This charm will protect you in my place. Then we'll always be together. Um... I love you. much at me. Can I say it again? I love you.
I see. I'm sorry. wanted to run away from all of that. I wanted to look the other way from my entire life.
from me to you.
Don't let it get away. Come on! Yuck! Whoa, Chie Senpai! <laughs> you just can't on defeat you. it! Persona! It's not working. What is you this? Yuriko Senpai, your defense is down. Persona! Yeah. I can't 
one. Don't let it get away.
Is that so? Thank you. Then Maybe so.
牌。I see. Oh, welcome home. 
home, big pro. Thank you. Later. Really? All right. telling you this because I trust you.
You're right. Whoa. <laughs> All right. Yo! Yo! Is everyone here? Ah, oh, it's about time you arrived. 
Dealing with this child has been quite a pain. No! No, no, don't go! It's useless speaking with you. I need to go back now. Why? Why are you leaving me here? Why am I always left alone? It's so lonely. I don't want to be alone. Nautokun. You wear the same face as me. It's as if you're implying we're one and the same. But the difference between me and you is... Why delude yourself? I am you! These childish gestures are no mere affectation. They're the truth! The fools all say it, don't they? You're only a child. Keep out of our business, kid, and so forth! No matter how many cases you spend hours cogitating over, no matter how many crimes you solve, you're a child in their eyes! It's your brain they're interested in, the gray matter locked up in that skull. As long as they need it, you're an ace detective, but once you're done, it's back to the playpen with you. You haven't the means to deal with society's two-faced nature. You're just a lonely child. Naoto. I want to be a grown-up. I want to be a big boy right now. Then they'll see who I am. I... I want a reason for me to stay. That's enough. I can find my own reason for living. Ha! <laughs> I'm telling you that's impossible. You are but a child. How can you change that essential truth? Stop it! At your core, you admire the sort of strong and cool men who populate detective fiction. But in trying to emulate them, you must know that in truth, you're nothing of the sort. You're a child. There's no avoiding first principles. Admit that you're a child, and admit that there's nothing you can do about it! Now then, our analysis is complete. Let us begin the body alteration procedure! You have no objections, do you, Naoto Shiragane? Stop it! Naoto. Such a cool, manly name. But a name doesn't change the truth. It doesn't let you cross the barrier between the sexes. How could you become an ideal man when you were never male to begin with? Wait, what? Did he... did I hear that right? He's not a guy? I won't throw a tantrum. That accomplishes nothing. <laughs> How often I've heard those words from the adults. Throwing a tantrum won't solve anything, now, Tokun and other such bilge. They made you cry, didn't they? Yet here you are, mimicking those same men. What exactly are you trying to justify? What? It's all right. You needn't suffer anymore. That's why you're undergoing this body alteration procedure to begin with. You throw a tantrum, but it fails to change the situation a single bit. I can quite understand the feeling. After all, I am you. That's not true! Don't say it! It's okay. Let the kids spill the whole thing. If not, Nato's just gonna keep hurting. We'll just do our job and kick the Shadow's ass, yeah? <laughs> As if you know anything about me! You'll kick my ass, huh? Fine! Go ahead and try, you lizard-brained imbecile! Save the discussion for later! Here it comes! I am a shadow, the true self. What? Are you sick of yourselves too? Very well. Then let's begin the special operation. Bring it on, man. I'll pull you through this. Have you made up your mind? Then let us commence. T 
Ichi. Persona. Counting on you. Yukiko Senpai, are you okay? Persona! Can you stand? Counting on you! Persona! Persona! Counting on you! No, no, that will never do. Patience must lie still for me to drill proper holes into them. Your offense has 
has been lowered. Can you stand? Yeah. Throw down! Persona! was a girl. <sighs> Are you awake? Where am I? I remember you all arriving and... That's right. You saw everything. <sighs> I lost both my parents in an accident. I was still young, so my grandfather took me in. I was inept at making friends, so I spent my time reading detective novels in my grandfather's study. When I grow up, I'm gonna be an awesome hard-boiled detective. My parents were proud of their job. I had no qualms about following in their footsteps. An inherited occupation can feel stifling to many, but I welcomed it. I yearned for the day I could be a detective myself. Perhaps I inherited that desire from them as well. I was always alone. Seeing that, my grandfather must have believed it was his duty to help me realize my dream. I secretly aided my grandfather with his clients. And before I knew it, people started calling me Junior Detective. 
At first I was delighted, but not everything went so smoothly. What was that you said about you're only a child? Not everyone welcomes my collaboration when it comes to solving cases. My status as a child was sufficient to offend many of those whom I worked with. Were that the only issue, then it would have resolved itself with time. But though I will one day change from a child to an adult, I will never change from a woman to a man. Do you not like being a girl? Is that why you always dress like a boy? My sex doesn't fit my ideal image of a detective. Besides, the police department is a male-oriented society. If they had the slightest concrete reason to look down on me, no one would need me anymore. You don't know that. Hey, you must know already that what you yearn for isn't to become an adult or become a boy. <sighs> You're absolutely right. I'm sorry. I kept ignoring you, pretending you didn't exist. But you are me. And I am you. You've always been inside me. What I should yearn for, no. What I must strive for isn't to become a man. It's to accept myself for who I really am. In any event, you're a devious bunch. I can't believe you kept something like this hidden for so long. <laughs> no wonder the perpetrator has eluded the police. But it's apparent now, this case is far from over. That's right, and you proved it now, doll. Anyways, we can talk more later. We need to get you out of here. Hey! Hey! Sheesh, she really put her life on the line for this. But without her efforts, we'd never have realized that the culprit is still at large. You're too freaking reckless, damn it. I never doubted that you'd all come for me. Although the reality turned out to be far beyond what I'd imagined. <laughs> what a dumbass. You're no genius at all. We were tearing our hair out over you. So you did worry about her, Kanji. Oh. Shut up. M mind your own damn business. I'll take her home. I don't think she can go back by herself. It's all right. I can. No way, Missy. Don't think that doing everything on your own is the adult thing to do. Come on, let's go. Grab on. Hey! Welcome back. Uh, sorry, we got off early today. Come on, take a seat. They found Naoto-kun. Oh, uh, do you know who Naoto-kun is? He just up and vanished without a word. But it looks like he's back now. Way to put a scare into everyone. Heesh! Hmm. You don't seem surprised. You didn't already know he was found, did you? Ah, uh, you really ought to do something about that habit of yours, Dojima-san. They go to the same school. Rumors spread fast out here, you know? But man, why'd Naoto-kun disappear? I guess he can be a little difficult. Maybe he got sulky after being given the boot and ran away from home. But I tell you... I was shocked to hear that he up and vanished like that. If there'd been a fourth kidnapping and murder, we'd be back to square one again. Adachi... You know what sucks? 
We still don't have proof that the Kubo kid murdered anyone besides Mr. Moraoka. How are we gonna make a case like this? I wonder if Dojima-san's instinct is right. Maybe there really is another perp out there. The real one. Adachi, how many times I gotta say it? Quit running your mouth like that! Well, sorry. All right, see here. Don't worry about the case. Just go study like a normal student. If you don't... <sighs> I'm going to bed. Sorry, I killed the mood there. But yeah, I can totally understand why Dojima-san's worried. Just leave the case to us police. You know the problems it could cause if something happened, right? Like, if it happened you were mixed up in it. We'd be real worried. Are more scary things gonna happen? No way, Nanako-chan. Everything's alright now. We caught the bad man, so no more scary things will happen, right? Everything's just fine. Okay. Anyways, your dad's just a worry ward. Leave it to me. You might not know to look at me, but I got the most brains in the whole police department. Oh, was that too hard to understand? Did you get it? Well, now that Dojima-san's gone, I should get going too. Good night.
What's up? Oh, hello. Thank you. <laughs> then I'll see you again. back. Hey. Uh. You know, I just looked outside. Let's take a walk in a bit. There's somewhere I want to go with you and Nanako. Oh, and here, have this. It's the same kind that Nanako and I use. This is your personal mug. Write your name on it later. No problem. Take good care of it. We're family. So I'll fill yours and Nanako's mugs anytime. Don't forget that. Ready, Dad? Yeah, let's go. Let's go, big bro. at night but it's fun with you and big bro don't fall in why'd we come here well you've been saying all the time how you wanted to come here right let's come again on a nicer day we can have a picnic yeah yay can i go closer to the river the fish might be sleeping all right all right watch your step okay look on her face. I haven't seen it in a long time. <laughs> I 
I'm going to keep up my search for the criminal who ran over Chisato. This time, it's not to escape from anything. I'm just doing it because I'm a detective. Seems I forgot something as basic as that. You made me remember what's important to me. I owe you for that. This town is my town. It's the place where you and Nanako live. That's why I'm going to live on, protecting this place. As a detective, as a father. What's wrong? Detective Dojima? I I'm sorry to bother you while you're off duty. I don't sweat it. Who are they? Oh, it's that group of juvie thieves. You know, the one that's been the talk of the town? Thieves? Those punks. Dad, are you going? Yeah. Arresting the bad guys is my, I mean, your father's job. Sorry, but take care of Nanako. Yeah. Don't you know who I am? I'm Detective Dojima of the Inaba PD, feared by punks and thugs citywide. Don't you two worry about me. Head on home, okay? All right, stop right there, you punks! Cool. Let's go home. I need to get the bath ready. Oh, and let's make a late night snack. I'm hungry. I see.
And now, the weather. The week ended on a wet note as rain clouds moved into the area. As a result, a thick fog is expected to form in the Inaba region later tonight. Are you feeling better now? Yes, thanks to all of you. I'd like to thank you once again for what happened. Don't mention it, but hey, your uniform. Huh? Ah, uh, yes. After contemplating the matter, I went with what I've been wearing thus far. There's no need for you to... Hey, it's the Detective Prince. That's no Prince. I heard he's a she. Huh? You serious? If he's a she, then... Uh, oh, crap! Uh, I'm kind of disappointed. But then again, there's something neat about it. Yeah, if you look at it a certain way, doesn't she seem pretty cool? My, my. Rumors spread so quickly. Thank you. But it doesn't bother me at all. There's no need to worry on my behalf. So please, treat me as you did before. That aside, I'd like to discuss the case with you all. We're dealing with a kidnap and murder case perpetrated by someone lurking in this very town. And it isn't over yet. Let's go over the finer points after school.
first, I heard the doorbell ring, but when I opened the front door, I saw no one there. Just as alarm bells sounded in my mind, someone grabbed me roughly from behind and covered my mouth with something. Immediately afterward, I was put into something like a sack and most likely carried on the culprit's shoulder. Wow, how could you remember all that? The culprit seems to have used a chemical to incapacitate me, but luckily I wasn't completely unconscious. I had been expecting a trick along those lines, so I was somewhat prepared. And of course, I was desperate to gather as much information as I could. No wonder you're an ace detective! That ain't something to be proud of. You are too damn calm about all this. Judging by their actions and body type, I'd say the culprit is definitely a man. I heard no conversations or voices, so I believe he is acting alone. It's after that that things get murky. I felt a single impact, which I assume is when I was thrown inside the TV. But the time from kidnapping to that point seemed too short. It was a matter of minutes. So you were immediately thrown inside the TV after being kidnapped? Oh, could there have been a TV on the side of the road? Regrettably, my memory from there on is a blur. I see. But man, the killer came right up to the door and rang the bell? That's just crazy. I finally understand why you all testified that you couldn't recall much of what happened. Such a bizarre experience with mental and physical fatigue on top of it, it's only natural to be confused. And going by the surrounding circumstances, my kidnapping and everyone else's were near identical. There is no question that the culprit is the same in each case. So, that Mitsuo boy who said he killed King Moron... Everything makes sense now. I can't say for sure until I gather more concrete evidence. But Mitsuo Kubo's only victim was Mr. Moraoka. It was a copycat killing that mimicked the true culprit's method. No wonder King Moron's death broke the pattern in so many ways. The question remains, though, as to how Kubo learned of that world. That's it! That's what was bothering me! Mitsuo could enter the TV, right? Then why didn't he kill King Moron that way? I believe he didn't understand the other world as well as the true culprit. Even though I can now enter it myself, it wouldn't occur to me to use it for murder. And remember, the previous corpses left no sign that their deaths had anything to do with the other world. After Kubo became wanted, leaving him with nowhere to run, he probably thought for the first time, what if I put my entire body into the TV? The bizarre condition of the corpses that caused such commotion is probably because they died on the other side. It's a simpler explanation than figuring out why the killer would risk disposing of the bodies in such a way. Which means their inexplicable condition of being hung on a foggy day wasn't due to the culprit making a statement. Much of our speculation could be tested if we could ask Kubo in person. However, I've unfortunately been taken off the investigation. And I highly doubt that the police will believe any of this. They wouldn't admit that it wasn't Mitsuo in the first place. Once you've said something on TV, it's not easy to admit you were wrong. I believe the primary cause of my dismissal was because I raised that possibility to them. The police won't readily concede that they made false charges, all the more so if the accused is a juvenile. In fact, the overwhelming sentiment with the police force is to end this case with his arrest. Even if it's possible there's another killer? Those dickheads. I had a feeling that would be the case. Not that I trusted him in the first place. But, uh, Naoto, if you were that calm when it happened to you, couldn't you have, you know... I'm not saying you should have caught him, but isn't it kind of sad for an ace detective to go down that easily? Um... Um... To tell you the truth, I was really scared. I'm sorry. It can't be helped. None of us could resist the culprit either. Don't forget, Naoto-kun is younger than us, and she's a girl. Oh yeah, that's true. I keep forgetting when I see her talking like this. You know, Naoto? What is it? You got balls. For a girl. Regardless, I have no doubt that the culprit will continue with his attacks. 
We can only watch and wait for him to make the next move. But this is no longer a mere job or someone else's affair. I want to know the truth of why we were targeted. Please allow me to join your effort. Thank you very much. I'll do my best, leader. Since I'm the king of the geniuses, I knew it would work out this way. Ta-da! Now Chan's glasses. Thank you. They told me about you, Teddy. I can sympathize with your drive to find yourself. If I may help in any way, let me know. Wow, what a nice girl. <laughs> oh, you're cute. You're the student who started working here today, right? I'll show you something fun the next time you're here. I'll see you again. Excuse me. Do you have time after school today? Did something happen? No. Rather, I'd like to have a doctor examine Teddy. A doctor? You mean a vet? The normal kind, actually. If you're free, I've scheduled a checkup for him after school today. A thorough physical examination might be a good first step in figuring out what Teddy is. And I thought it might be a good idea for the rest of us to get checkups as well. We should see if the fog over there or the power we've gained have had any negative effects on our health. Since you all have been active on the other side far longer than I have, you should definitely be examined. Negative effects? D don't drop scary stuff on us like it's nothing. But yeah, I never even thought about that. I've arranged to have Kanji-kun and Rise-san looked at as well. Wow, you're on the ball about all this. Are you sure you're not an adult? Her height's a big giveaway, though. Well, I'll see you all after school. That was just an ordinary checkup. I was kind of looking forward to getting into some gigantic machine and being spun around. Was there really a point to this? The doctors look confused too. Oh, they're back. I'm very sorry for the wait. I'm very sorry for the wait. So did they find out anything about Teddy? They did indeed. They found out that they can't tell anything about him. I even had them take an x-ray, but nothing came up on it. No matter how many times they tried, it would always be too blurry to read. A visual examination and standard palpations indicated that he seems perfectly normal. 
Since the machine could be malfunctioning, they told me to try another hospital if we're still worried about him. I felt bad for making them go through all this. So he is different. Oh my, what should I do? They took a look at everything inside me. She just said they couldn't see anything on the x-ray, you dork. But at least they didn't find anything wrong with them, right? Man, we know as much about Teddy as we do those personas and shadows. Oh yeah, I tried looking them up at the library and on the net. Persona means something like another personality. And I think they listed shadow under the related terms. Shadows are shadows. I think there's something that comes out of people. Um, I can't really explain. I performed my own research after the incident. Persona and shadow are common psychological terms. Of course, the ones we are familiar with don't quite fit those definitions. This is what was written in an unofficial project document that I happened to come across. A shadow is suppressed power, and when controlled by one's ego, it becomes a persona. It becomes a persona? What does that mean? They're, they're basically the same thing? Well, then again, all those shadows we beat the shit out of did turn into personas. Who cares about the details? It doesn't matter what they are. If they get in our way, I'll crush them. Still, I couldn't find any information on how they're related to the other world. <sighs> There's so much stuff about us that we don't have a clue about. There's some things we do know, though. Mm-hmm. I got a bunch of awesome data with me. It's kind of embarrassing that I'm the only one who had personal details shown to the world, so... Ta-da! Nowadays, information wants to be free. Therefore, I'll break the ice by announcing the results of everyone's physical exams. What? No, you won't! Give them to me now! Ooh, first place in the shortest legs division is... Huh, who would have guessed? It's not me, is it? Hey, what kind of things did they examine anyway? Look, if you're gonna blab at all, you might as well tell us the girls' measurements. What? Are you a complete nutter moron? Sure, go right ahead. My profile's been public knowledge for ages. Oh, but my bus size is two centimeters smaller than they print. My agency insisted. No, don't say mine! Ah, I bet guys won't care what size you are, senpai. And having modestly sized breasts like yours would definitely make it easier to wear a kimono. What? Oh yeah, Nalto-kun's in here too, huh? Um, let's see. Nalto-kun's is... Huh? Is this... For real? Wait, isn't this measured wrong? Uh, anyways, the important thing is that according to the examination results, nothing's wrong with our health. So we won't be needing these anymore. I'm going to go shred them. Uh, well, thank goodness everyone's healthy. Y you're right. Let's go home. After all that, they found out nothing about me. I wonder what I really am. Yeah, thanks, Sensei. If you don't hurry, we're going to leave you guys behind! You're back.
Nice work. I'm Sayoko Uehara. Nice to meet you. See you again. Why are we getting together on the roof on a day like this? Yeah, what's this urgent business about, Yosuke-senpai? Seriously! I was busy handing out flyers at Juness! Hey, I saw you hitting on girls just outside the school gate! Was there some kind of progress in the case? I need you guys! You have to help me! You're the only ones I can rely on! Can you please keep this weekend open? This weekend? Does this have anything to do with that event at the Inaba police station that's been canceled? What are you talking about? The idol Konami Mashita was scheduled to be the honorary chief this Sunday. Oh my gosh! The famous Kahneman is coming all the way out to the boonies! So she's taking on jobs like that already? I have been seeing a lot of her on TV lately. I didn't know she belonged to the same agency as you, Risei-chan. I mean, if she's coming to Inaba now, the agency's obviously trying to use all the fuss about me to their favor. So what's the big deal about that being cancelled, Yosuke-senpai? There was going to be a big sale at Juness to take advantage of the event, but now it's down the tubes! It's not a joke! The police took forever to decide on cancelling the event. My dad's really in a fix now. He worked so hard to put this whole thing together, and I can't stand to see him like this. I can't just let it go. I heard that the police couldn't prepare for the event because I had gone missing. I'm sorry. This is my fault. No, it's not your fault. Don't blame yourself. But yeah, it does seem like that's what happened. Okay, so you called us up here. What do you want us to do about it? From the way it sounds, I gotta say... I don't think we can be much help. I want everyone to help me with a bunch of different tasks. Um, Risa-san, well, if you could, you know, do an event at Juness. You want me to substitute for Konami? So there's no way? <sighs> Is it really that bad? I don't know. I may be his son, but I'm still only a part-timer. 
but my dad's being awfully nice for some reason. I think it's possible that he might get fired if this thing falls through. If that happens, I might have to transfer schools again. <laughs> Seriously, what am I going to do if that happens? Singing and handshakes only. No autographs and nothing that I can't do as a high school student. Otherwise, I'll get in trouble. And I'll only do it if you all get on stage with me. What? Wait! I'm no idol! It would be troublesome if people came to try to recruit me to be an idol. Me too! I already have an exclusive contract with Juness. I don't think you guys are worrying about the right things here. But if you're gonna sing, what are we supposed to do on stage? I need a band, of course. I'll make this very clear. I can't use pre-recorded tracks. Whoa, whoa, there's no way we can pull off something like that. I have some experience playing the keyboard. My grandfather suggested that I take piano lessons when I was younger. I have one that I can bring as well. You're up for this? This incident is a result of my actions, after all. I will do whatever I can to help. Naoto, thanks. If it's music you need, I have a guitar. I've never really played it, though. Oh, wait, I accidentally bought a bass once. I think it's in storage. How do you accidentally buy something like that? I bet you just thought it was another guitar. Hmm. I should have some kind of musical instrument at my place for dinner parties and such. Some kind of instrument? Oh, boy. Then it's decided. I'll look for a song I can sing that can use a band arrangement. You guys get instruments and find a place to practice. Got it. Try to pick an easy one, okay? All right. Now that this is happening, I'm getting fired up about it. Let's go ask if we can borrow the music room at school. So, what are we going to do with these? I just grabbed whatever I could find that wasn't being used by the symphonic band. What is that? It's a gong. Well, duh. I'm pretty sure he meant to ask, what is that doing here? I thought Chie might want to play that. You know, it sounds kind of Chinese-ish. <sighs> um, I don't think that's going to really matter in this case. Yosuke, try holding these! Huh? I see. Yeah, you do look like that when you're fighting. Try summoning your persona while you're holding those. All right. Persona! Wait, I can't summon it here. I'll choose this then. <laughs> look, look! Isn't this like my fan? I think she's convinced we're playing for a dinner party at the inn. Come on, we need stuff like guitars instead of little backup instruments like these. Hey, I'll play the guitar. Why don't you take the bass? I can at least teach you a little bit. Oh, I never thought I'd hear you call me that. Check out these moves. I've got mad air guitar skills. Well then, since you two and Natsu-kun have decided what to play, let's put Kanji on drums. Hey, hey, why don't I get to pick? If you're up front, it'll look like a metal band. I think you'd be good at the drums. You're always hitting and stomping on things, after all. How does that make any sense? <laughs> then I will take over all the charming percussion accoutrement. Hey, baby. I lay down the passionate beats that flow from my soul. Uh, so that leaves Yukiko and me? You two. Um, how about the chorus? There is a part for that. Singing? No, 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 can do. We'll hold something. Let's see, what looks easy? Oh, doesn't this at least look like a band? Yeah, I don't think it looks bad at all. It's not doing 
doing anything. Is this thing broken? I'm blowing, but the air goes right through. That's how it is for everyone when they start out. Anyway, we don't have much time, so let's start practicing. What's with all the tadpoles on this paper? Oh, yeah. I don't know how to read music. <laughs> Guess I'm gonna have to transfer schools after all. Once more from the top. One, two, three, four. That wasn't me, I think. That wasn't me either. I mean, I can't get any sound at all out of this. A hip and young audience yearns for the element of surprise in music as well. A bizarre sound suddenly rings out. An overturning of the expected cliches found in today's sound. You get it? Oh, I get it. That means Teddy did it, doesn't it? Huh? That reaction overturned my expectations. Why don't we take a break? We've been at this since morning. Good idea. My fingers are all stiff. Nice follow-up now, Chan. I think I'm falling for you. Let's just ignore this bear. Are we really going to manage this? I'm starting to get the feeling that it's impossible no matter what we do. There's just not enough time. I... I want to play in a band! If it's over, then it's over for Yosuke, too! That means it's over for me! And I can't bear to face that! <laughs> I don't want to know that you're only doing this because you're selfish. But you've got a point. If we give up, it all ends there. That's right. Everything would have been for nothing if we give up now. Real brawl doesn't begin until you got your back to a wall. Uh, we're not talking about a brawl here. I'll do it too. It's not just about Yosuke now. I'll simply feel angry at myself if I give up. Don't worry, Yosuke Senpai. I agreed to do this, so I'll do it. I didn't say anything pathetic like, I'll do what I can. I'm going to get a huge crowd no matter what, and they will go home satisfied. Please, I just need your help to do it. Wow. Now that's how a pro delivers a team-boosting speech. <laughs> well then, should we resume our practice? All right, let's do this. I did it! I did it! So this isn't broken after all. Okay, let's try putting your music together and I'll sing along. Well, wait a sec. Can't we get a little more practice before we try doing that stuff? Playing for the real reset. I mean, I'm all for that. Don't think of it like that. I'm seeing how hard you're trying and I don't want to just sit and watch you practice without me anymore. Here goes. One, two, three, four. sound pretty good? Oh, that was actual music! 
Yeah, it felt good. It seems there's hope after all. The band has practiced hard and overcome many obstacles that dared face them. But now is their time to truly shine. All they have to do is discard whatever remaining fear holds them back, and a lifetime of public adoration awaits! Hell no! We've already been on a TV show. A midnight one. I was discarding my clothes more than I was discarding my fear. For me, it was like discarding my public image anyway. C come on, everyone! Let's cheer up, okay? And you! You have a bunch of stuff lined up, but you're still only playing the tambourine! <laughs> Haven't you heard the phrase, a clever bear conceals his claws? I'm gonna play a special little bear formance of my own and charm all the girls. That saying's about a hawk, not a bear. And don't even think about it. We don't have the skills to ad-lib. Do you understand me? We're doing this exactly like we practiced. Got it? What? If you don't, then I'll make sure you pay for all the topsicles you've eaten during breaks at work. Just like we practiced. Got it? Well, let's take it from the top one more time. Keep up that energy that we had before. You're back. a lot bigger than I expected. Don't say stuff like that! You're making me even more nervous! Uh, our costumes okay? I mean, I mean, they're just our normal school uniforms. Even worse than the winter ones. What else could we have done? It's not like we have any costumes. The clothes we've been wearing all summer won't work as costumes, and since we'll be changing wardrobes tomorrow, it works out. Oh, crap. I, I can't stop my legs from shaking. You'll be hitting the skins more than a bare-knuckle boxer! You, you shut your stupid bear trap! I don't need to hear this! You've been on TV before, right, now, Tokun? Aren't you used to this? You haven't said a word, though. The last time I played for a crowd was a piano recital when I was young. Doing an interview on TV is much easier. Even if I make a mistake, I'm the only one who gets embarrassed by it. You're saying doing interviews is easy? That's crazy, too. Oh, I can't take this much longer. Don't you get nervous, too? Wait, you are? Sensei's face is like a waterfall! Uh, what are we supposed to do? Huh? Did someone just... Everyone, can you gather around for a second? Yeah, got it. Your hearts are all racing, right? So is mine. But that's the power behind a live performance. Don't think about doing everything exactly right. The crowd's here to have fun, so we need to have fun first. Risei John. When I say who's ready, you say we are, okay? Be thankful for your fans, your friends, and yourself. This is a full-blown, one-time-only performance. Now who's ready? We are! Fired 
up and ready to go. Now listen up. We're sticking to how we practiced, okay? asking for an encore. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't think about that. We only know one song! What do we do now? There are only two things we can do. Ignore them and leave, or play the same song over again. Maybe we can have Risha explain our situation and they'll go easy on us and let us replay that song. I saw that guy before. Ready? Yeah! Crowd surf! This is the best part of being a live performer! Stupid Teddy! We can't play without him! Hey! Hey! Why don't we all dive into the crowd? They might just carry us out of here and we can escape this awkward situation! Stage dive? Actually, if all seven of us jump in, there'd be trouble. Then what are we gonna do? Do we have any other way out? If you want to do it that much, then just the guys do it. Uh, all right. I'll show you what it means to be a man. They just dodged out of the way. How? I didn't know it was possible to stand on your own face. Welcome back.
Chan. Hi, Teddy. Hey, greetings to you. Greetings to you. Looks like you're having fun. Yo. Wow, everyone's here. So many people. Why did everyone come here? Exam study group. Times like these, I'm jealous of Teddy. It seems like a dream that we had a live concert here only yesterday. That was so much fun. I didn't think the crowd would get that excited. But enough of that. Let's start with proving the trigonometric identities. Oh, jumping straight into math? Ours is the section on trig functions, right? The one where we find the area of a triangle given two sides and... Huh? You find the area of a triangle with... You know... That thing. Um, base by height by two. If you don't mind, shall I teach you? Oh, are you as smart as I thought? Could you, uh, lend me a hand too? Oh, um, I wouldn't know where to begin with second year's subjects. Ah, uh, what's up with that? Useless after all. Don't call me useless! <laughs> I think I've figured out what buttons to push to get Naoto Kun riled up. You're pretty cute when you're angry. What? What are you talking about? That's it. I quit. This just ain't my thing. To hell with the exams. It's time for my animal crackers. Oh, can I have some too? I want to find the penguin. Hands off the penguin. It's mine. Ugh, forget it. I can't think. Teddy says he doesn't know who he is. <laughs> That's so weird. My life on this side is really fun. But the more I feel that way, the more I want to know who I really am. I've surfed the net, read manga, watched TV. I even went to a place called the library. But I still can't find anything about me. Dude, I'd be surprised if you did. Still, I'm starting to get an idea. An idea? Oh... Isn't this your first time sharing a theory about yourself? I lived in that other world. That world was my reality. But now, I have a feeling that it was born from the minds of people on this side. And over in that place, filled with shadows, I think I was some sort of special being. A special being? I don't remember anything from back then, though. Maybe it's that amnesia thing I read about in a book the other day. It's true. There are some aspects of the other world that make it seem as though it's rooted in human thoughts. Still, there's no point in applying the principles of logic and deduction to a place like that. But the fact that you existed in such a world from the beginning adds credibility to your theory. There is little doubt that you are a special being on the other side. If you yourself know nothing about it, perhaps it's true that part of your memory is missing. Tell me, what is the earliest memory you can call to mind? It's from a while ago. I've always lived there, as far as I could tell. Then it started to get noisy, so when I happened to bump into Sensei and Yosuke, I asked them to do something about it. I see. If you've always been on that side, you'd have no sense of time or days. Oh, that's right! Nanako-chan's completely clueless about all this. I'm sorry, Nanako-chan. We didn't mean to leave you out. Hey! I think Teddy must be a king. I read in a story that a king was all alone inside a forest because of a bad guy's curse. Isn't that what happened to you, Teddy? A king? Well, when you put it that way, it sounds about right. Teddy? A king? <laughs> I can see him wearing a cape! <laughs> Sheesh, Yukiko, you go into laughing fits in front of anyone now. Can we not talk about Teddy being a king? Huh? 
What's with that face? Teddy really was a king. There were all these other kings, too, and we all... Hey, he's talking about what happened at the club. Quiet, you, not in front of Nanako-chan. Am I really a king? Mm, then what am I? A prince? I have this fuzzy feeling that I'll find out sooner or later with your help, Sensei. Nice work. <laughs>
Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's so. Senpai. The hell?
Later. You're back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See you again.
<laughs> hey, you... <laughs> huh? <laughs> Senpai! Welcome back. Finally over. Hey, about question eight. I pulled an all nighter last night, so I'm ready to collapse any second now. I'm gonna head home. See you later.
thinking about finding answers to the questions I had before. He and Mom are the ones who gave me life. Then, what can I do for the people who gave me this life? For the people who have supported me? I've been thinking about it all this time. I'm not going to run from my own life anymore. After all, I'm the only person who can live it. I'm sorry, and thank you. Um, can you take this? You gave me the opportunity to start walking. Are you sure? You're okay with me? Jerk, are you going to make me come out and say it? You know exactly what I mean. for you. I'll protect you all from the madness of this world. I'll take you to a place where you can be at peace. Yes, it's much more peaceful than here.
Don't rescue anymore. Is this a warning? No punctuation or capitalization. Aw, oh, what a cliche. Ain't this just a prank? The kind of stuff that only happens in the movies? Did you show this to your uncle? Senpai, Dojima-san is trustworthy. But it may be best to keep this to ourselves. He will ask why you received such a letter, and if he were to put you under surveillance, our hands would be tied. If this letter is real, what's most important isn't what it says. It's the fact that it was delivered to the Dojima residence, addressed directly to you. This means the culprit knows in great detail who has been interfering with his crimes. And of all of us, he chose to deliver his message to the Dojima residence, home of a police detective. I'd have this letter checked at a crime lab if I could, but even then I doubt they'd find anything. The text is a warning while the subtext expresses the culprit's confidence that we can't use it to pinpoint his identity. So it's useless to tell the police. In fact, that would make things worse. Cross your fingers, it's just a prank. I think the chances of that are slim. This message is too specific, too perfect to be a prank. But how could the killer know so much about us? Could he be watching us from somewhere? Teddy's been saying for a while that when we're over there, he senses someone watching us. Wait, every time we went to the other side to rescue someone, did we end up on the Midnight Channel ourselves? I don't know. It seems like no one else knows what we're doing. I haven't heard any rumors about us at school. Even the people who I know check that channel haven't said anything. The only gossip I heard was about the people who disappeared. I see. Come to think of it, how the Midnight Channel works is still a mystery. Let's put aside for now the matter of what that world truly is. There's too little data to go on. For now, we need to keep in mind that the culprit knows who we are. As long as we're all aware of that, it will be enough for now. Yeah, guess there's no use thinking about stuff we can't understand. Freaking out over speculation is just what the killer wants us to do, right? Yeah. All right, mind if I change the subject then? The culture festival's just around the corner. What's our class doing again? Oh yeah, it hasn't been decided yet, huh? I heard we'll be voting on it soon. But aren't they still gathering ideas? Whoa, I think Yosuke just got hit with a bolt of inspiration. Whatever it is, it'll be out there. I'd bet my lunch on it. Hey, Senpai, have you decided who you'll be going around the campus with during the festival? My schedule's still wide open, you lucky guy. She just had to say something.
Well, as you all know, next week is the Culture Festival. And as you also know, we still haven't decided what our class is going to do for it. <sighs> you guys don't care, do you? We are going to decide based on the suggestions we have so far. Please vote for one of them. Here they are. Break area, video room, and study room. Wow. Sounds like whatever we pick, we don't need to put any effort into it. Talk about lack of motivation. Yeah, but the easier the better, right? Oh, one more. Um, group date cafe. Hey, who put in a suggestion like that? Was it you, Chie? Yeah, right. Why would I do such a thing? What's a group date cafe? Who knows? But I doubt anyone will vote for it. Our class is actually a pretty serious bunch. Yeah, it's just a joke idea. You gotta have one weird one mixed in, you know? Ah, figures! We'll be passing around the vote sheet. Just circle one of the suggestions. All right, time to count the votes. Uh, the first vote is group date cafe. Second vote, group date cafe. Huh? Seriously? Third vote, video room. Fourth vote, group date cafe. Group date cafe, group date cafe, study room, group date cafe. Place? What are we gonna do? Don't ask me! This is your fault! I do wonder though, do all those people who voted for it realize they have to run it themselves? I've never been on a group date before, so I was a little curious. What the? You voted for it? Yeah, I thought it would be sad if no one voted for it. But Yosuke's the one behind it! Hey, it wasn't just me. It came in first place. The public agrees. Well, since the majority rules, we'll be doing the group date cafe. But what does that even mean? Is it like speed dating? Can we really pull this off? You'd all better pitch in on this. Actually, would the teachers be okay with this? Dude, how could Kashiwagi say no? Miss Kashiwagi's busy getting ready for those two notorious pageants. That's why she's leaving it up to us students to decide what to do. Yeah, right. She just dumped it in our laps because she didn't want to bother. Group date cafe? Are we going to get any customers with this? Seriously, what is a group date cafe? I voted for it and I didn't even know. Oh my gosh. How the heck's this going to turn out?
Think. Feel. See you later! You're back! you to have this. Good night. Hello. Call me mom. He's actually a sweet boy. 
<laughs> I was blind. No, I wasn't even trying to see him for myself. Maybe I was just afraid of facing him. You're right. Utah, let's go home. Then... Home. Welcome home, Dad. Sorry. Man. It's fine. It's fine, okay? Nanako. Please.
Good morning. Yo! It's quite all right. Excuse me. Huh? Huh? Thanks for waiting. Well, let's go. Welcome back. Senpai.
well. Later. You're here. Nice work. Yo! Planning it, Kashiwagi's gonna be in it? So that's why she agreed to plan this event. Wow. 
Wow, there's a lot of signups here. I'm surprised so many people took an interest. Whoa, Rise Kujikawa? Seriously? Oh man, trust a celebrity to kill the fun of it all. I bet she'll draw a huge crowd. Wow, Yukiko-san's finally entering. If this was any other year, she'd win for sure. Now she's up against Rosette. It's gonna be a culture festival to remember. Huh? Rosette's entering? She's gonna take part in something like this? Maybe I better think more seriously about saving a seat. Look, Chie's entering too. She's actually pretty close to my type. Actually, I hear she has a lot of secret admirers. Naoto's that boyish, girlish, whatever, right? You know, she's, uh, pretty cute. <laughs> Dude, you sound like a pervo when you laugh like that. But to be honest, I think she's cute too. <laughs> Yo, are you free for lunch? I don't know why, but Chie asked us to come to the roof. She looked pretty serious. I wonder if something's happened. Oh, and Kanji's coming too. Just say no, right? Like it was just a joke. We wouldn't be so pissed if we could do that! With Kashiwagi planning this year's event, even those who got entered by other people can't back out! Seriously? Must have been something in the fine print I overlooked. So it was you! Oh, crap! Hey, do you want us to take part in the beauty pageant? Well, yeah. I mean, you guys know how popular Yukiko is here. And on top of that, we have an idol and a detective prince. What's the point of having a beauty pageant if all these incredible heroines aren't going to take part? So where do I fit in? Oh. Well, excuse me for not fitting in. Hey, you want them to be in it too, don't you, Kanji? Huh? I ain't interested in that stuff. Naoto-kun, Kanji-kun says that he really wants you to be in it. What? Well, I, I, I didn't say nothing. What about you? You want them to be in it, right? Oh, I thought you might be a little jealous not wanting me to show off to other guys, but I guess you're not that uptight. Hey, you guys are inching onto the bandwagon with Yosuke, aren't you? So long as there are people looking forward to seeing me, I might as well put on a show for them. Of course, there's no need to involve my agency in this. That's right! That's the way to go! Teddy's looking forward to it too. Actually, I think he was more excited than anyone. It was him who was pushing me to sign you all up. Oh, so Ted's behind this too! <sighs> We're in an awkward position. If we can't refuse, I suppose there's no sense in arguing the point. But it seems ill-fitting for someone like me to get up on stage. I wonder if there's any way I could take it up with the school authorities. Um, I don't think it's a problem at all. I, I mean, just do it, you know? Seriously. Dude, looks like your blood's boiling even more than usual. <laughs> Silly Kanji, just tell her you want to see her on the stage. So, is it a deal? The four of us will be in the beauty pageant? What are you saying? Um, I beg you, please be in it. If you do, my, uh, doubts will finally be cleared. Come on, make me a man! Doubts? What are you talking about? Look, just, just do it, damn it! I mean, you're an ace detective, aren't you? What? <laughs> 
What does that have to do with a beauty pageant? <laughs> We're back! I'm so tired. Where'd you guys go? Over to Jeunesse. We had to go get some paint and cloth. Oh, for the decorations. Thank you. Did you have them write you an invoice? Yeah, I think they understood what it was for, so they wrote it without us having to ask. There's some things I want to go over about the day of the event. Is this about the group date cafe? Yes, since Yosuke is leading the executive committee. Wait, what? It was your proposal, right? Are you serious? Well, all you have to do is the reception. After people sign in, have a few guys and girls sit facing each other at a table, conduct a short session first where they ask each other questions. After about half an hour of that, it'll be confession time. Get them to select the number of the person they like. If the other person accepts, that makes them a couple. Hey, Yosuke, you listening? <sighs> yeah, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, if we roll up this bit of cloth, won't it kind of be like a ball? Yeah, okay, I'll be the catcher. Why the catcher? Hey, Yosuke, want to be the batter? <sighs> ah, I don't give a damn anymore. I'm in. Watch me slam that ball right back into your face. Hey, you guys better get serious about this. Welcome back. Hey, it's Yosuke. We're expecting great things from you. <laughs> <laughs> They're doing the cross-dressing pageant again this year? Man, they never learn, do they? Ooh, some people have signed up already. <laughs> Man, what idiots would want to be in this thing? Let's see, Yosuke Hanamura... Me?! Wait, and Kanji Tatsumi? You're on here, too! Wow, there's a lot of contestants. Didn't we only get, like, two people last year? I heard this year, even if someone else signs you up, you can't back out. Well, that's not cool. Hey, but what if they did sign themselves up? Ew, what a disturbing thought! Seriously, that's really wrong! Someone else signs you up? It's them! They must have done this! Damn good explanation for this. For what? For what, my ass? For signing us all up in the cross-dressing pageant. It was you, wasn't it? Oh, that thing. Risei-chan started saying, let's all have fun with this. So 
I didn't really have a choice. And Kashiwagi seems happy too now that there's more people involved in it. You little... This is cross-dressing! Cross-dressing! Well, you're the one who started it! It's because of you that we can't back out of the beauty pageant, so it serves you right! That's beside the point. Don't worry. We'll make you absolutely enchanting, okay? That's not what's important here. It's about a man's pride, damn it! Whoa, are you serious? Yeah, yeah, this has nothing to do with pride or any of that. You know already, right? Once someone signs you up, you can't back out. If you got a problem with that, go talk to Ms. Kashiwagi. <laughs> There's no way she's gonna listen. Why are you giving up? I ain't doing this, period. Kanji-kun, are you still okay as far as the mandatory attendance policy? I don't think it would be wise to disappoint a teacher too much. You are a scary gal. You know that, senpai? Just leave it to us to dress you guys up. Risa chans with us too. There's no way you won't turn out pretty. You're positive we'll be pretty? I guarantee it. Hey, why are you suddenly fine with this? Well, if we gotta do this, might as well go all the way with it. There's nothing manly about being a woman. I seriously refuse. Kashiwagi's sure gonna get angry if you don't show up. Maybe you and Kanji-kun can be classmates next year. Why is this happening? We all end up in the same boat without our consent. What kind of joke is this? Uh, the exact same joke you pulled on us? If we gotta do this, might as well go all the way with it. <laughs> oh, you're home! with group dating. Oh. oh, this is so embarrassing. There's not that many people passing by here in the first place. I think we need some shills to drum up interest. Shills? Uh, who? Who else is here besides us? Isn't that kind of sad? Do we have a choice? We need customers to get the ball rolling. If there aren't many people passing by, we have to get the attention of the ones who are by any means necessary. But there's only five of us here. Yo, how's it going? I came to check up on you... guys. Perfect timing! But now we've got four guys and two girls. Eh, you guys are cross-dressing tomorrow anyways. Why don't you can sit on the girls' side? I'm not gonna... There you go, Yosuke. You'll be our girl. Are you serious? Well, let's get started. You guys can start now. Mm. Uh, will someone please start? Uh. 
Actually, what the hell is this? A mock group date? I mean, we're on a group date! <laughs> you don't have to talk like a girl. So, what are your hobbies? Man, you're enjoying this, aren't you? I like, um, martial arts in general. Uh, mainly watching them. <laughs> Yikes, this is really embarrassing. My hobby is, um, defeating shadows? That's not a hobby! Oh, oh, yeah, sorry. Okay, then we'll ask you a question next. Um, um... What type of girls do you like? Well, getting right to the point. I guess, uh, cute girls? Man, this is lame. Oh, now it dawns on you? Your turn. What type of girls do you like? Oh, me too. You get this urge to care for and protect them? Don't think they asked you, Yosuke-senpai. Your turn, Kanji-kun. Oh. Uh. Well, I, uh, well, I, I, I guess someone who's, uh, kind of mysterious and, uh, looks strong, but actually kind of. Yeah, I really wonder who you're talking about. You guys are all wonderful, but I think you'd be the most reliable. I mean, you idiot, don't make me play along. <sighs> Senpai, how are you doing? Market, the group date cafe is officially a failure. back. standing there. Come on, hurry up and sit down. Come on, Kanji-kun. Over here.
Don't worry, I won't hurt you. What about me? It turns out I'm entering this too. I must win this contest to see my dream realized. He seemed bored, so we signed him up as a last minute contestant. So you're making him suffer too, huh? Well, if he's been signed up, there's nothing we can do about it. Now, Tokun, can you lend us a hand? We'll leave Teddy to you. Me? The Nauto Teddy team's unstoppable! Well then, um... First, I need some dazzling makeup. You're right. Then I'll go borrow a makeup kit from someone. Wait! The battle begins by choosing the right equipment! Ooh, we gotta use fake eyelashes, right? Y yeah bring it on! <laughs> so it begins. Ladies and gentlemen! We now begin the second day of the Culture Festival with the ever-popular Miss Yasugami Pageant! Let's get right down to it and introduce our first contestant! She's a runaway express train who's in a born and bred and can kill with both her fists and her looks! Presenting Kanji Chan of the first year class three! <laughs> This is wrong on every level. Now, don't rip me apart for asking, but what would you say is your best feature? My eyes. <laughs> Whoa! A conventional answer from this all too unconventional beauty! After such a strong start, I don't know how much of a chance the others have, but here's our second contestant! An eloquent heiress of the noble Juness, she's pure disappointment from the moment she opens her mouth. Presenting Yosuke-chan of the second year class two! <laughs> And here I thought Yosuke-senpai would be able to pull it off. Dude, it's terrifying. I can just imagine someone like him sitting across from me on a train. Now, you look ready to win in that outfit. Do you often dress like this? Hell no! Uh, <clears throat> like, no way! <laughs> With this, <laughs> laughing stocks up here. What did you think this was about? I've already had about enough of this, but there's still more to come. Up next, our third contestant. She has the mildly bitter tang of the city, and she's made more girls cry than there are stars in the sky. Presenting our transfer student who's been breaking hearts in the second year, Class 2! <laughs> Senpai, why are you doing this? Whoa, I thought he was cooler than that. Sounds like your entrance is causing quite a stir. Did you sign yourself up? Hey, 
and now's not the time to reveal stuff like that. Damn that Kashiwagi. How dare she tear away our innocence like this. Now I'm scarred for life, damn it. Our last contestant is a random, unaffiliated entrant. She's a friend of our other beauties. Calling herself king of the TV world, she's a cute, sexy little number. Give a warm welcome to Teddy Chan! Give me your heart. That's a boy? He's so cute! I'd hit it. And the winner of this year's Miss Yasugami pageant is... The random contestant who won everyone's heart, Miss Teddy! Our champion, Miss Teddy will receive a very special prize. Later this afternoon, we will be hosting the Miss Yasugami pageant with actual beauties this time. Your reward is a position as an honorary judge in that pageant. Woohoo! An honorary judge? That's one lame prize for what you gotta go through. Not everyone can get that excited over a judge position. Seeing him so happy kind of makes me happy too. Yeah, he's like over the top innocent. Well then, Miss Teddy, how does it feel to have won the pageant and become a judge? <laughs> the long awaited day has finally come. I decree that one of the judging criteria later this afternoon will be... Ta-da! A swimsuit competition! What the hell? Over my dead body! Oh, I didn't bring a swimsuit. That bear needs to be disappeared. Well, I doubt he has the authority to declare that unilaterally. <laughs> This is great. I love the direction this is going. Dress yourselves up as well as you can, you little brats. Is she the rival woman on a soap opera? Wait, is Kashiwagi serious about winning this? Mr. Teddy dropped this off. He said that they're swimsuits. Hey, we don't need them! <laughs> My mature charms will win the day. I brought my own swimsuit, of course. I brought my own, too. What's with these people? Hey, let's, let's not do this. What's that? Getting cold feet? Wise of you to back out of a fight you can't win. You call yourself an idol, but you're just jailbait with no brains, no guts, and especially no figure. What? There's no way their type would be crowned Miss Inaba. Why not just let them back out? <laughs> oh, and I suppose you think you're gonna take the crown, you little snoring pig! <laughs> snoring? What are you talking about? Your face is as foul as your mouth, and your brain's as rotten to boot. We went through hell because of you! That's it! Now I'm pissed! Oh, you're going to challenge me? It's useless. Don't waste your energy. Let this be a warning to the others, too. Ugh, <laughs> you're going to lose. Now's your last chance to run away. 
run away? Why the hell would we run from someone like you? Well, we did kind of run away last time. That's what I'm saying! We gotta stand our ground and get our revenge for that! How can we cower and hide when they're picking a fight? Yeah. Right, Reese chan Now, Jokun, we won't run from this, right? Huh? Me too? Why are you letting yourself be so easily provoked? There's no way! Absolutely no way that I'm wearing a swimsuit. You're not going anywhere. But that's not all for the Culture Festival's main event. There's still more to come in the Miss Yasugami pageant. The judging continues. Can you hear the crowd going wild? Now for our next contestants, Miss J. Sasanaka of the second year's class two. Come on out, J. from class two, Miss Yukiko Amagi! Hello, my name is Yukiko Amagi. Um, my family runs the Amagi Inn. If you ever find yourself in the area, please give us a visit. Our hot springs are open to the public year-round, so whenever you're in the mood to enjoy them, please drop by. <laughs> Alright, that'll do nicely. Next up, a very familiar face from the first year class to Miss Rise Kujikawa! student of the first year's class one, Miss Noto Shiro Gane! Hey, Kanji, here she comes. Hey, shh, pipe down. I, I'm Naoto Shiragane. It's hard to believe I'm up on a stage at a pageant like this. This is beyond my wildest imaginings. I, I really don't know what to say. C can I step back now? And with that, all six uniquely beautiful contestants are on stage! Now, let's have our special judge, Mr. Teddy, ask them some questions. Ahem. I am Teddy, the honorary judge for this pageant. Please keep in mind that if you anger me, you will be at a disadvantage. Well, uh, Miss Chie, do you have a boyfriend? Ms. Yukiko, have you ever smooched anyone before? 
Huh? Stop it! Ms. Naoto, where are you ticklish? I beg your pardon? Can I stay at your house next time, Rise-chan? What kind of a question is that? Anyways, I have a surprise announcement for you all. Wait till you hear this. For the first time ever, this year's pageant will feature a swimsuit competition. And it's all thanks to Mr. Teddy here. We'll take a brief break while our contestants put on their swimsuits and be back in just a few moments. Sound like a dirty old man. Chie Senpai is cute though. Uh, I'm sorry. Sorry for what? This is great! Wow. Yukiko Senpai. She is exactly how I imagined she'd be. Fine by me. And the fewer rivals I have to crush, the better. Oh, well, I had a feeling that would happen. Too bad, Kanji. Huh? Uh, no, um... Well, yeah. But don't you think it was brave of her to at least show up in the first round? Yeah, you're right. Well, it's about time we voted. Who are you going for? Is that allowed? Thanks for waiting, everyone! The results are in! Looking at the way the vote went... You guys out in the audience had a hard time picking a favorite! Lots of different opinions, with every one of our contestants having their own enthusiastic supporters! On the other hand, it looks like you girls were all thinking the same thing. And so, there's a clear winner! Grand prize goes to... Miss Noto Shira! Present Miss Naoto with her award now, but it looks like she stepped outside. She won, even though she dropped out of the last part. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Man, losing to Naoto. Well, I guess I didn't appeal to the girls that much. Oh well, I think it's enough that we beat those two hands down, Senpai. <laughs> How could I lose a beauty pageant? <laughs> Miss Kajawaki, <laughs> I can't believe this. <laughs> no, neither can I. Oh, <laughs> <Hanukkah>. Miss. <laughs> 
Me escalló aquí. Ah, good thing we found you. I've got to make a business trip to the prefectural office, and I won't be back until tomorrow. Shame it had to fall during your school's culture festival. Nanako and I were both looking forward to it. Sorry to dump this on you, but could you show Nanako around? Would you like to walk around with us, Nanako-chan? <laughs> Can I? Thanks. Then I'm gonna get going. Yeah, you have fun too, Nanako. Okay, Dad. Hey, Nanako-chan, why don't you come over and stay at my place tonight? Huh? 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 What did you just say, Yuki-chan? Ugh, a celebration at your inn? Is that okay with you? Uh-huh. I promised you guys a while ago, so yeah. Hell yeah! I'm down! Can I boil eggs in the hot springs? Oh, I should call my grandpa and let him know. It's just one night, right? Come on, it'll be fun. Everyone will be there. Can I? Let's go! I want to spend the night! <laughs> Hot springs, you cut off, flushed skins. Are you sure it's okay? I mean, isn't it still the busy season? We've had fewer visitors this year. There are some open rooms, too. Oh, okay. Might as well, then. Man, when was the last time I stayed at Yukiko's place? Oh, we're in different rooms. Well, duh. It's one thing if they were next door, but they're so far away. Yukiko said there weren't that many open rooms, so they're up on another floor. First thing they're going to do is take Nanako-chan to the hot springs. <laughs> is it one of those girls and guys together springs? I don't want to take more than one bath if I don't have to. Why don't we take a dip before we hit the sack? Yeah. By the way, what's up with this room? It looks pretty expensive. Oh, you thought so too. Normally a room like this wouldn't be open during the busy season. I was trying not to think about it, but you don't think something happened here, do you? Senpai? What are you all quiet about? Now that you mention it... That freaked me out. You answer it, Kanji. What are you freaking out for? Hello? Oh, I see. Cool, thanks. That was the front desk. Said the hot springs should be pretty empty right now. Wow, Amagi in. Great service. Broke out in a cold sweat. Oh, come on then. Let's go wash it off. I can't wait to take a bath with everyone. We'll all face the same way and wash each other's backs. And we're going to sing songs while looking at Mount Fuji, right? Man, everything on this side is so fun. It's all thanks to you for bringing people over to my side. Thank you, Sensei. The 
Avengers here. Son? Come on, <laughs> just get inside. <sighs> Jeez. Oh, I see. So, the truth comes out now, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh. What? What's gotten into you all? <laughs> <laughs> staying over at someone else's place like this? Aren't you scared? No, it's lots of fun. At home, I'm always alone until Big Bro comes back. Oh, uh, I see. But I'm good at staying home alone. I always do what my dad tells me, like not opening the door for strangers. Wow, I bet he's so proud of you. Hey, Nanako-chan, do you want to swim around? Can I? I've been swimming here since I was young. Do you still do it? Huh? Um... Why are you hesitating? Come on, let's race to the other side. Whoever loses owes everyone a fruit milk. I want lemon soda. Uh, what? Me too? Check out my dead man's float! Wow! You're good! Oh! What a giant spring! I'll show you all my teddy paddle! Ow! What the... Huh? You guys! W w why are you guys here? they caught a glimpse. Oh, it's actually the guy's turn to use the springs now. I got the times mixed up. <laughs> Are you serious? Aw, oh, crap. I think we went too far with them. Uh, what should we do? Oh, it'll be fine as long as we keep quiet about it. This'll just be between us girls. Do you want to race again, Nanako-chan? Damn it! I checked again, and sure enough, the hot spring's supposed to be for men at that hour. They're so evil. Evil, I tell you! 
I don't know why, but my head's all bumpy. <laughs> Those are lumps from the pails whacking you in the head. You got lumps, man. <laughs> hey, uh, guys, did you, uh, see anything? No. None whatsoever. Damn it. I lead a cursed life. Let's just go to bed. Hold it, senpai. Do you hear something? <laughs> What was that? <laughs> I heard it too! D don't tell me. I is there one here? One here? W one what? Dude, what are you talking about? <laughs> this room! It's the one that announcer was staying in before she died. My mom was talking about it. Oh god, you said it! I was trying to block it out and you had to go and say it! So that's why there's talismans here. Yukiko, that witch tempted us here knowing full well. Damn it. First the hot spring, now this. We've been completely suckered. <laughs> oh, crap. There's no way I'm sleeping through this. I've made up my mind. I'm going to Yuki-chan's room. I can't sleep soundly unless I'm watching everyone's sleeping faces as I drift off. Sleeping faces? Are you gonna sneak into their room? You can't be- <sighs> Hey, what should we do? Damn, that was fast. Dude, seriously, I can't stay here! Alrighty! It'll be a surprise awakening for them! Good morning, everyone! It's a surprise awakening! No, a surprise break-in! This is Teddy, reporting in! When did you put that on? I feel awkward without it, so I always bring it. Stop talking like that! Oh, check it out, a hairbrush. Ooh, and it's got long strands of hair on it. You're really into this, aren't you? Damn straight. It's time I got revenge for the camp out. Hey, good point. All right, I'll get my revenge too. A, a toothbrush! Holy crap, my heart's pounding. But what about Nanako-chan? Don't worry, Nanako-chan is a magnanimous girl. Well, well, that's true, but try not to wake her up. She's not part of our revenge scheme. Oh, I finally reached the futons. They're fast asleep. Excuse me. Yuki-chan, I'm scared of the ghosts. All right. I can do this, too. It's time to prove I'm a man. Cheer, senpai! Be gentle! Huh? One, two... Where's the rest of the futons? Hmm? What's going on? Ugh. Sheesh. Ugh. Oh, my! So that's how you guys are! Ah, uh, you should have said so. Mmm, such naughty boys. <laughs> ah, be gone! Holy crap! D don't touch me! We were crying our poor eyes out until now, you know. We thought there were no men who appreciated our beauty. All right, boys. I'm all yours. And not a word about this to anyone. <laughs> Come here, tiger. <laughs> oh, this feels great. I love, love, love being able. 
able to take a bath any time I want. How's Nanako-chan? Fast asleep. Hey, did you know Miss Kashiwagi and Hanako-san were staying in the room next to ours? Those two seem to get along really well. I'm surprised. They come and stay here now and again. Usually they come to cry when something breaks their hearts. Huh. I guess they were really devastated from losing to Nautokun. Please don't bring that up again. Well, they do make a good team. hurts, but I'm finally done. Ooh, perfect timing. We really are a well-oiled machine, huh? But man, that costume's a good fit for you. It's so natural on you that it looks like your everyday outfit. Of course, I'll put mine on once things get underway. I wouldn't ask you to do it if I wasn't going to do it, too. Anyway, you were a lifesaver. Thanks. Then again, as long as he's here... It looks like he's having fun. Guess he's like our store mascot now. Huh? Hey, uh, Yosuke-kun, uh, what's going on here? Oh, there you are! These are the decorations for the Halloween fair. Huh? <laughs> Come on, Yosuke-kun. That got canceled a while ago. What? Hmm? I uh, thought you were there for the morning meeting when they announced it. <laughs> oh, well, maybe you were still groggy since it was so early. Well, I'll be counting on you to clean this up. This, this is amazing, though. Did you two uh, do all this yourselves? Well, if you're going to work this hard, maybe we should have gone through with it. Stop looking at me like that. You're only making it worse. Today. Now for our next story. Mr. Kozai of the Environmental Concern Society visited a local elementary school to investigate the effects of the fog. Thick fog has appeared frequently in Inaba over the past few years, and the cause of it has yet to be determined. There's been much conjecture on the origin of this fog, and some are concerned about its effects on the human body. Town officials believe it highly unlikely that the fog could be harmful. One official suggested that the concern is largely tied to public anxiety in response to the recent murders. On hearing about the phenomenon, Mr. Kozai visited the local elementary school to investigate its effects. He interviewed the children playing happily in the fog about their health and any anxieties they were facing. Oh, that man came to my school. 
Upon completing the investigation, Mr. Kozai issued a statement. In this day and age, one must stay aware of even slight changes in the environment and react politically. Today, I talked with a young student who spoke her own mind, free from the influence of those around her. It was an attitude and an example that we as adults can learn from. Our primary concern should always be to protect these children's futures. On that note, Mr. Kozai ended his statement. The assembled parents applauded, but some raised concerns that it was a show to attract voters in the next election. <gasps> My head hurts. Big bro, are you going back home in spring? It's going to be winter soon. If it snows, can we make a snowman? We can play a lot. Let's play all the time until spring. Thank you.
Yep. Welcome back. You're here. Hmm. 
I'm sorry. Senpai! It's late. Did he forget his keys? It was the delivery man. He was asking where Mr. Takahashi's house is. Hello. This is the Dojima residence. Oh! Hi, Dad! Uh-huh. All right. It's okay. I know it's your job. Uh-huh. 
Uh-huh. Big bros with me, so... Okay. Bye. Dad says he's coming home tomorrow. But I'm not lonely. You're here with me. <sighs> it's cold today, too. Wanna bring out the kotatsu? Dad said we could pull it out if it gets too cold. That'll make it nice and warm. Okay, I'm turning it on. What? It's not coming on. It looks like it's broken. We can buy one? At Juness? Yay! <laughs> when you have some time, let's go to Juness. I watched the Midnight Channel last night, as you suggested. To think a master of deduction and evidence would strain her eyes over an urban legend like this. And yet, I definitely saw someone. Could any of you tell who it was? Uh, from a fuzzy picture like that? No way. How about the regular TV? Has anyone become famous around here lately? Hmm, I can't think of any offhand. I suppose there was that politician who visited to quell the rumors about the fog. His statement was read on TV. But the chances of him being the one are slim. He returned immediately to the city after his inquiry. Hmm. Huh. What's the matter? Oh yeah, they stuck you at the midnight shift for falling asleep on the beds and housewares. I told you to use the TV in the electronics department, right? Did you remember to check it out? How rude! I made a promise with Nanako-chan, and I'm serious about living. From what I saw, wasn't the person on TV last night pretty small? I don't know. It was too blurry to make out any details, including how tall or short they were. It was probably just a dream, or your imagination. Either way, though, did you sense anyone in that world? Nope. No one's come so far. Then we might have to wait one more night and see. Yeah, I guess so. Good thing it looks like the rain will keep up all night. Don't forget to check again later on. Hey, I'm back. Welcome back. Dad, the Kotatsu's broken. Can me and Big Bro go buy a new one? The Kotatsu? Oh, it's already that season, huh? Yeah, the weather has been odd lately. All right, I'll leave it up to you. Get whichever kind you want. Is that a letter? It's for you, but...
What the hell is this? Not often we get letters with no return address on them. So, I was right. Be straight with me. You're involved in the case, aren't you? What are you up to? So you're not going to be honest with me. I've been treating you like family. That's why I never questioned you on this. But I see that was a mistake. I should have intervened much earlier because I care for you. I will have the truth from you today. D Dad? We'll continue this somewhere else. But I'm not letting you leave until I'm convinced. This is for your own good, got that? It's all right. We're not fighting. We'll be right back, so don't wait up for us to get to bed, okay? I'll hold on to this. Now speak up. What have you gotten yourself into? What was that warning letter about? Why would you be sent something like that? Persona? People going inside a TV? <sighs> I thought you'd finally tell me what's really going on here. Enough! That's enough! I guess half a year wasn't long enough for you to trust me like your old man, but I'd hoped you'd open up to me a little. <sighs> it's a shame. Stay here for the night. Whoa, sorry. Dang, go inside TVs and personas, huh? Well, you can't blame him. I mean, sure, I want to believe you. And I know Dojima-san brought you here and asked you those questions because he wants to believe you too. Plus, you know, you'll be safe here. He probably freaked out once he saw that letter and thought he had to protect you. Like what a father would do for his son. I think he cares for you a lot. So, yeah... Don't take it so hard. You know, Dojima-san started looking into people involved with the first case again. Guess he wasn't satisfied with the way the case wrapped up after all. That's why he's even more sensitive about this and that. <laughs> I better shut up now before I get chewed out again. All right, I'll be just outside. If you need anything, let me know. Why do I have to pitch in with stock duty? It's because I'm not working hard enough. There is no getting around it. And you're proud of that because... Why am I taking care of you anyways? I shouldn't have bought you this. Hang on to it, okay? It's your own cell. <laughs> I've entered the information age. We'd get worried if we couldn't reach you. It's just a cheap kid's model, though. <sighs> Thank you, Yosuke. So to use it, press this button. Uh, scrap that. Watch, I'll show you how I use mine. He's not picking up. It's raining right now, so I was going to remind him about the Midnight Channel. Does he not hear it because he's out? Uh, I want to go to Nanachan's place. I promised to play with her lots. We're not going. And go put those snacks back. It's already dinner time, so save them for your next visit. Oh, I get you. If he's out, that means Nanako-chan might be home alone. I feel bad to think of her staying home all alone. We could go take her some dinner, 
Please, 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 please. Okay, okay, I hear you. Jeez. So we can go? Sweet! You're so mature, Yosuke. My heart just skipped a beat because of your thoughtfulness. Hang on a sec, I'll try calling again. He's still not picking up. Oh, duh, I forgot to try his home line. Hey, Naraka-chan? Um, is your brother home? No. He got a weird letter, and Dad saw it and got angry. He took Big Bro to the police station. Wait, 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 what? He got taken to the police station? Stop blabbering and let me talk too! Good evening. <laughs> this is your Teddy speaking. Let's get together and eat snacks again! Weird letter. We'll go check up on your brother and dad. So don't worry, okay? Wait, was it another warning letter? Did he get a second one? And Dojima-san saw that, so he took him to the station? Teddy, give me the phone back. I need to call the others. Poor thing. I'll put you at ease soon. Wasn't that Nanako chan on the Midnight Channel just now? How could it be her? I know what you're thinking, but Nanako chan does fit the pattern. She wasn't seen, but she was heard. What? Do you remember the politician who visited a local school and made the news several times? In those interviews, he always quoted a particular student he spoke with. The child became well known while remaining anonymous. That girl was Nanako-chan. A reporter who took interest in this released her photo and interview using her real name in today's evening paper. But even before that, this is a small rural town. Her identity must have been circulating for quite some time. Oh my should have realized it much sooner. But I was hung up on the idea of people who were shown on TV. It didn't occur to me that this would qualify. What, what are we gonna do? Nanako-chan's home alone right now, isn't she? I'm on my way there as we speak to check on her. Yosuke Senpai is heading to the police station. He said he called Kanji-kun too. They'll explain the situation there. All right, I'll join them right away and I'll let Yukiko and Risei-chan know. Yes, please do. Hmm? What are you guys doing here? Hey, what do you think you're doing? I didn't say you could go in there. Nanako-chan's missing. What? What do you mean? N Naoto's on the phone, calling from Nanako-chan. I mean, your house. Shirogane, you there? What the hell's going on? I'm at your house right now. The front door is open and there's no one inside. I'm afraid that Nanako-chan has been kidnapped by our serial killer. 
Surely you must have known, Dojima-san. The case isn't over yet. This is the KJ Customer Service Center. The number you have dialed is unavailable right now. The phone may be switched off or outside our coverage area. Nanako. Tajima-san. Is this true? Has Nanako really been... Why? Why, Nanako? Um, it's probably because the media... What are you doing? Traffic Division, Ota speaking. There's been a kidnapping. Get your man on it immediately. Start with checkpoints along the highway. Checkpoints? Um, could you explain the situation a little more? Quit griping and get to it! The victim's a seven-year-old girl. My daughter! Your daughter? Wait, what about the scene? What makes you think this is a kidnapping? That's... look. This could be connected to that multiple murder case. Connected? <laughs> but we caught the killer. How long has she been missing? Have you received any notices or ransom letters? No, but... Damn it, there's no time for this right now! Um, all right. I'll try contacting each of the departments. Even if you tell them this is connected to the murders, we can't prove it. And everyone on the force thinks this case is over and done with. Where are you going? I'm gonna go look for my daughter! If this is connected to that murder case, the top brass won't accept the facts until it's too late. I'm not gonna wait for those clowns. But do you even have any ideas or leads on who took her? If they used a car, there's no way- Shut up! That's why I'm hurrying! <sighs> what am I gonna do? Dojima-san's run off half-cocked. Adachi-san, we'll go look for her too, so please, let him go! Huh? You know I can't. So what's going on? Whoa, hey! If I let all you guys in here, then I'm really in trouble. Besides, we don't even know if this thing's... Quit your bitching! Now ain't the time for that shit! The hell are we sitting here for when this guy's family's in danger? You gonna own up if something happens? Huh? Kanji-kun! I know how you feel, but if you don't tell me what's going on, there's really nothing I can do. Ah, so you agree to release him once we explain the situation? Very well, then. No, that's not what I meant. In any case, if we run out blindly, we'll have no idea where to begin. Let's all take a moment to stop and sort out the situation. Perhaps this will help Adachi-san understand as well. There's no doubt in my mind that this is a kidnapping by the same culprit who was behind the others. Now, consider that the front door at Nanako-chan's house was open. I examined it and found no trace that entry had been forced. You mean, Nanako-chan opened the door herself? Precisely. The culprit didn't sneak in. He came boldly up to the front door and pressed the doorbell. Like how it was for all of us. Um, for all of us? But the circumstances are different for her as compared to us. Remember what Nanako-chan said when we were at the hot springs? I always do what my dad tells me, like not opening the door for strangers. So is the killer someone Nana-chan knows? Senpai, do you have any insight into this possibility? Eh, probably not. Dojima-san pretty much keeps to himself at the station. The only one Nanako-chan might know would be me, his partner. Uh, I've been here this whole time, of course. Hmm, I don't think we can limit ourselves to people Nanako-chan knows. I agree. Then let us change our perspective slightly. We know for certain that the culprit must be using a large screen TV. Huh? TV? What? Each victim was taken at a different scene, yet was thrown into a TV almost immediately after being kidnapped. I would go as far as to say that it took place in front of their houses. Therefore, the culprit must be taking a TV with him as he goes. You think he's using a car? 
Given the efficiency of the culprit's methods, I would assume a vehicle larger than a sedan. However, no unusual vehicles have been sighted. I'd expect someone to notice, since most of the victims vanish during the day. So it's someone Nanako-chan knows who has a car, but it's a car that can't be seen? I think we can rule out the possibility that no one happened to see the vehicle. Especially since it's happened so many times now. A car no one would notice? Is there such a thing? What would it be? Come on, think bigger! Hey, yeah, I think I remember now. There is a car that no one would notice. The delivery service. It was a delivery truck. One came to my house. No one looks twice at a delivery truck, no matter where it's parked. And if it were a local company, it'd be the same delivery man every time, so he's not a stranger to Nanako-chan. She must have received packages from him during the times she was home alone, meaning we wouldn't know his face. Hadachi-san, is there anyone who fits this profile? A profile formed by a bunch of kids talking it over? Uh, let's see. A delivery company, huh? I don't know. Take it from a detective. I think this is going to be a lot more difficult than... Hey! Maybe you're not too far off base. Dojima-san put this stuff together to reinvestigate the first case. The murder of that announcer. And there's a delivery man mentioned right here. I better go tell Dojima-san. After resigning from his last job, he took up the family delivery business. Before that, he was a council secretary, Taro Namatame. The Anka singer's husband. All we know about him is his occupation, but I'd say that's enough of a lead to tell us where to go next. The address is, it's not far from here. I give him the clue and he still finds an excuse to chew me out. Is he gonna be okay? The killer's not just a normal guy. Nana-chan! Adachi-san! If there's been a break in the case, I'd better hurry to the scene. I'll just have to hope nothing happens here while I'm gone. I didn't see anything. Adachi-san. Let's go to Namatame's place. Dojima-san's probably on his way now. Is that smoke? An accident? Oh. Dojima-san! Are you alright? Where's Nanako? Hello? We need an ambulance. Quickly, there's been an accident. One adult male is injured. That's right, I should call backup too. We gotta find Namatame. Nanako. Where, where's Nanako? <gasps> what happened? I was on my way to Namatame's house. When I saw him drive past me, I gave chase, and he... Damn it. Where's Nanako? I'm Namatame. Find him. Uh, please. But how? Oh yeah, 
Maybe there's clues in the truck. Wait, you can't. We need to preserve the scene. Then allow me. If it rains again while we wait, the information we need will be lost regardless. Look! There really is a TV in there! Yes, large enough for persons of any size to fit through. I also recovered a diary from the driver's seat, most likely kept by Namatame himself. I learned the existence of a new world, thus I must save people. Save? The hell does he mean by that? <gasps> this... it's a list of the victim's home addresses. Mayumi Yamano, Saki Kanishi, Yukiko Amagi, Kanji Tatsumi, Risei Kujikawa. Even the victims who survived and were never released to the public are written here. I note that Mr. Moraoka's address is absent from the list. Wow. And that settles it. The last date is today's. I can't believe such a small child appeared on it. I must save this child no matter what. Is that about Nanako-chan? I managed to take her to safety. The police have been active lately. This will probably be the last time I write in this diary. I've done everything I can. It's clear now. He used the same trick on all the victims. He'd just ring the bell like he was making a normal delivery, then throw the victim into the TV in his truck. Namatame is the killer! We need to go save Nanako-chan! Here, let's use this TV and... Wait a sec! We don't know where we'll enter through this one. What if we end up somewhere dangerous? It doesn't seem like it's going to be foggy tomorrow, so we should go in tomorrow, the same way as usual. But... If we fail, who's going to save Nanako-chan? Saving her will be our top priority from tomorrow forward. We'll leave Namatame's whereabouts to the police. Dojima-san. You guys. Are you all right? I almost look like hell right now. <clears throat> Nanako. She's my reason for living. If I lose her, I might as well be dead. Uh, she must be so scared right now. Waiting for someone to save her. And here I am. She needs me most. I'm... I'm helpless. What kind of a father am I? I can't even protect my own daughter. Dochi, my son. If anything happens to Nanako, I'll make Namatame pay. You can save Nanako, right? I trust you. Please, save her for me. You're the only ones I can turn to right now. Please. We will rescue Nanako-chan at any cost. It may take some time, but you must put your faith in us and wait for us to return with her. Nanako-chan's on the other side, right? Definitely. There's no mistake. The police should be pursuing Namatame, so let's focus on saving Nanako-chan. Yeah, we're the only ones who can. We'll save her no matter what. I often thought it might be impossible, but we finally cornered the culprit. We made it this far. We won't let him take Nanako-chan's life. Yeah, this is it. Let's go all out and get it done! I made a promise with Nana-chan. I said that we'd play again, and that everything would be okay. I promised her that. Regardless, we must do whatever we can with what we have now. This is something only we can accomplish. Come on! We can do this, guys! No 
problem. Yeah, we do this the same way as always. All we gotta do is find Nanako-chan before the next foggy day and get her out of there. Nothing to it. Let's keep calm, be careful, and get it done. All right. Look at this thick fog. Does this have something to do with all the fuss about the fog lately? Something's weird in here. I think all the commotion in town has been affecting this world too. Well, we need to hurry now. Rise, can you tell which direction Nanako-chan is in? I sense her... that way. Wow! What's this warm feeling? Senpai, we need to save her! Let's go! Chance? It's so beautiful. It's like a storybook vision of heaven. Like heaven, huh? Deep down, Nanako-chan must really miss her. I'm sure she does. She's only a child. We have to do everything in our power to rescue her. Of course! We're gonna rescue Nana-chan no matter what! We can find Namatame later and give him what's coming to him then. First, we need to rescue Nanako-chan. Senpai, keep it up. <laughs> Come on now. I wasn't expecting that. Persona. Sweet. Someone finish this one off. Oh, so persistent. <laughs> Here. 
Give me a sec. I'll do a quick scan. <laughs> it's so puny. Use electricity on it.
Oh, a rare one. Don't let it get away. <laughs> Senpai, are you okay? There we go. <laughs> Couldn't Let's finish go. it. I couldn't do it. What more of a <laughs> Come on now! Come, Sukuna, Hikona! Enemy down! Whoa, no, no, so awesome. Come, Enemy it's defeated! Over. Don't stop now, no. Yukiko Senpai, you're on the roll! So persistent! <laughs> Yeah! It's quite so tenacious! I couldn't do it so persistent. One enemy to go. Keep it up. It ain't going to. Oh, it's quite. I can't defeat it. Persona. Enemy reinforcements. Work well. Five of them. You're outnumbered. Soda. <laughs> Don't worry. Here goes. <laughs> Come on down. We can oh, stand ready. Bring it on.
Another level. Gotta keep at it. It's level up time.
Thank you so much. give you this. I was scared, but I've learned Thank you so much. I want you to have it, Senpai. Good night, Senpai.
This should be everyone, right? Uh Chan's voice. Mom, where are you? Why did you disappear? Why did you leave me? No, <gasps> come back. Are these Nanako Chan's feelings? But I'm not lonely. I have Dad with me. I know he's always late coming home. And he never plays with me because he's so busy. He can't cook or do laundry either. He tries to be nice, though he is a little scary sometimes. But I love him. Big Bro is with me now too. So I'm not alone. I'm not lonely. Little kid. Telling herself she's not lonely so she doesn't fall apart. You idiot, we'll ruin everything if we act all sad. We gotta greet her with a smile. Nana-chan. What's the matter? Something's not right. There's someone here besides Nanako-chan. It was faint at first, so I couldn't tell for sure. But there's definitely another person here. And whoever this is, their power's getting stronger. Could it be Namatame? Did he duck in here after being cornered like Mitsuo? Perhaps so. It seemed as if he was particularly determined to kidnap Nanako-chan. But why? If he's the real culprit, he must know the dangers of coming into this world. I don't know, but if it is him, he may have entered from a TV near the site of the accident. Perhaps even the TV in his truck. Which means Nanako-chan may be in grave danger. We must hurry.
makes you be weak. Hmm, this one's weak to... Yo, you need some... Come on! Nice, Chie Senpai! You hit the enemy's weakness. Just... Is everyone ready? Get set! Let's do this in style! I did it for you! What do you mean, an act? Sorry.
got that? It's my life. You guys have nothing to do with it. Sorry. Get off. Thanks, man. <laughs> I'll do it. Yo!
Um...
weakness. Enemy. Yo, you need. Ha! Don't stop! Come on down! It ain't going down! There! Yukiko Senpai beats the enemy in <laughs> Come on down! What do they think would happen? <laughs> More power for me? It's level up time. You all right, Teddy? Your health's low. to darkness. Persona. Two enemies. We got it. Is everyone ready? Get set. Now we're talking. Go! Knock them out! Persona! <laughs> They're so up! It ain't it's going so down! <laughs> Is this for real? Four new enemies. Hmm, now what could you be weak to? Ooh, this enemy's weakness is... <laughs> you hit the enemy's weakness. Go to town, senpai! <laughs> Down. Nice You're doing well. Senpai. You hit the enemies. Don't work.
I really did like you back then. Is everyone here? Let's go, Sensei! Oh. 
You mustn't go! I'm going to save this girl. Taro Namatame, it's definitely him. Then he did come in here. So you're the killer! Let go of her! Ah, uh, <laughs> you're the ones I saved. Don't worry, I'll save this girl too. Huh? Is this dude hide or something? Quit talking shit and let go of the girl! Don't, don't come near me! <gasps> Nanako-chan! Calm down, Kanji-kun. We can't predict his behavior. We have to keep him talking. If we can discern his intentions, perhaps we can somehow deal with him. To save them. People needing to be saved appear. That's why I put them in the TV. No, we must pull his attention away from Nanako-chan. You put the people you saw on the Midnight Channel into this world, am I correct? They all want to be saved. Did I ever ask you to save me? You didn't save us, damn it! It was the exact opposite! If I hadn't put you in the TV, how would you have ended up? How would we? Are you trying to say we wouldn't have been able to face ourselves? What? But we nearly died! Yes, exactly. You kidnapped them. Yes or no? Yes. Why did you target local residents who became known through the media? Why do these people appear on the Midnight Channel? On rainy nights, on TV, they signal me to save them. You keep saying save this and save that. Are you saying murdering people is your idea of saving them? Murder? No, I'm saving them. How's that different, huh? All you're doing is killing people. <laughs> if you want to think that, go ahead. I know. You chased us all the way here to kill. <laughs> well, too bad. I'm gonna save her. <laughs> you asshole! You're not gonna get away with this! Shut the hell up! <laughs> what a wonderful world! An unknown, unreachable place filled with pleasant fog. I'm a savior! It's filthy over there. So many evildoers. That's why I'm going to save them! I'm a savior! A righteous hero! Is that... a shadow? John. Let's do this. Now, Senpai. Nana Chan. Nanako Chan. Nanako Chan. Bastard! How dare you! Give her back. I. I'm going to save her! I... 
I'm going to save her! Don't interfere! <laughs> There's Sona! Persona! Yo! Counting on you! <laughs> Come on now! Persona! Throw down! Persona! You get the horns. Come on down. Throw down. You're really low on health.
is injured. This is bad. Electric attacks are more effective now. <laughs> <laughs> Come on down! Persona! There! Throw down! Persona! Hehe! <laughs> <laughs> is injured. This is bad. Don't give in. Please get back up. anywhere this place must not be good for her we need to carry her out quick we should take him with us as well yeah we can't just leave him here I guess Nanako-chan hang in there <laughs> What are we gonna do? She's so small. And she was stuck in there for so long. And then there was that weird fog. Damn it! The police and paramedics will be here shortly.
Nanachan still small, so her other self didn't appear like everyone else. And she got caught in all that craziness. I hope she'll be okay. I mean, are the doctors going to be able to help her? <laughs> I'm worried about Nanachan. But there's nothing more we can do for her. A delivery man named Namatame. The possibility of Nanako-chan being targeted. If only I'd been more thorough in putting the facts together, then Nanako-chan wouldn't have had to go through this. That goes for me too. If I hadn't stood there like a lump in front of that bastard, Nanako-chan might have been okay. I hate myself. Why do I always panic when it matters most? I couldn't do anything either. I should have noticed sooner that something was wrong with that guy. Why did I waste time listening to what Namatame had to say? If I hadn't tried to engage him in conversation, and we'd rescued Nanako-chan immediately, this wouldn't have happened. But I still... All right. Enough of this pity party. Is standing around and whining really what we ought to be doing now? Feeling pathetic, consoling each other? That gonna solve anything? We gotta believe in her. So stop rehashing what's already done. Get it together, Naoto! Sorry. You're absolutely right. This is all that bastard Namatame's fault. And he's behind bars now, right? And it ain't like we were too late for Nanako-chan. Yeah, that's true. I'll come see Nana-chan every day so she'll get better faster. That's all we can do right now. Gee, Kanji. You sounded cool for a second there. Huh? You guys still here? Adachi-san, um, did they find out anything? Dojima-san speaking with the doctor now, but they can't say anything definite until they run some tests on her. Not just Nanako-chan, but the perp too. Who knows when we'll be able to hear his story. Well, it's getting late, so hurry home. The last thing we need is for you guys to collapse too. He's right. We should call it a night. Nanako-chan's gonna be fine. Acting all gloomy won't help anything. When Nanako-chan's out of the hospital, what should we do to celebrate? Dude, isn't it a little early for that? Why don't we reserve Juness and have a party there? A party at Juness? Uh, that makes no sense. Nana-chan, she'll get better, right? Yeah, I do believe in her. Let's all have fun with Nana-chan when she comes back. Thanks. I almost forgot how to keep a happy face. But with that out of the way, I'm feeling all hungry. <laughs> hey! Where did everyone go? Don't leave without me!
Good job. Goodbye now. We're waiting. <laughs> well, let's go. Awesome.
And now, the weather. The week ended on a wet note as rain clouds moved into the area. As a result, a thick fog is expected to form in the Inaba region later tonight. Look at this. Namatame is in today's paper. I wish we could have done it sooner. Isn't the fog kind of thick this morning? And it's so chilly. <sighs> it rarely gets this cold in November. Oh, it's you guys. Perfect timing. I just got a call from the hospital. They said that starting today, it's okay to visit Nanako-chan. So she's getting a little better. Thank goodness. Oh, is that today's paper? So you already know about him. Well, the perp's been caught, so yeah. He's still mentally unstable, but we're slowly piecing together his story. This is still a secret, but I guess it's okay to tell you guys. You know that diary we found? There were entries about Miss Yamano Miss Konishi in it. Looks like Namatame had been making advances on Miss Konishi. Of a bitch! Yeah, well, I'm gonna head to the hospital now. Dojima san's recovering too, so I need to go over a few things about this case with him. Yosuke. Sorry, I'm alright. Namatame's been caught. He can't hurt anyone now. But forget him. Let's all go visit Nanako chan after school. Of course! Let's tell the others once we get to school. Nanako, everyone's here to see you. Big bro. Dojima-san! Ugh, how many times does this make it today? I understand that you're worried about your daughter, but you still need your rest, too. <clears throat> Sorry. Um... Are your injuries that bad? Hmm. Well, my wounds have just closed up, and it seems I have a couple of fractures as well. I'm sorry. I'll wheel him back to his room immediately. What are you apologizing for? 
It's almost time for your checkup, so make sure you're back in your room before then. Big bro. <sighs> yeah, I'm so glad. Her condition is stable for now, but, uh, I never thought I'd say this as a doctor, but we still can't figure out the cause of Nanako-chan's symptoms. That's why we can only administer temporary treatments to alleviate her current pains. But she's not in danger anymore, is she? She's regained consciousness, but we can't let our guard down yet. All we can do for now is to monitor her condition closely. <sighs> Adachi, how's it going with Namatami? Well, he's awake now, but he's in no condition to tell us anything useful. We only get a little time each day to interrogate him, so we're stuck until his strength recovers. I see. I should get back to work as soon as possible. Hopefully by then, Nanako will be out of the hospital. Um, I think Nanako-chan can get more peace and quiet if she stays here. It's so foggy out. And there's been some weird rumors going around. Seems like no one knows why there's so much fog in town. It's true. The number of patients complaining about fog-related health problems has increased, which is quite unusual. I can't say for sure that it has no effect on the human body. It certainly could be a psychological effect. People's anxiety over the fog could cause problems. But as far as the fog's chemical makeup... Well, that's not my field, so I can only speculate. What concerns me is that transportation of our medical supplies has been delayed due to the fog. Fog-related health problems. Well, that's just ridiculous. Anyone who says that is just blowing smoke. Isn't this weather strange? How could it be lasting so long? I've never seen anything like it. I wonder what's causing it. It's so creepy. I heard that a friend of mine's son got sick from the fog and collapsed. You know how sensitive children are to that sort of thing. I heard something too. They say an old man was driving through the fog and got into an accident. What? Did he lose control? Well, he'd never been in an accident or even gotten a ticket before, so something seems off. Isn't that scary? I've even heard there are experts saying it's poisonous. I wonder if that's true. Do you think it's, you know, because of that global warming thing? This town's changed a lot over the years. I wish the government would step in and do something about this. Oh, I agree completely. If we're going to pay taxes, I expect the authorities to do their jobs. The fog is poison! It's a gas filled with viruses! Don't inhale the fog or you'll die! He's not the first one like that I've seen lately. Poisonous gas, though? Oh, I'm sure it's not true. Oh. Hmm. Is something wrong? Oh my. I... I think I'm coming down with something. You... you can't be serious. <laughs> oh, that's right. I needed to do some grocery shopping. Well then.
Business has been so slow lately. What you doing? Yeah. Senpai. to have this sim later senpai Yeah.
Senpai. I hated this place when I first came to Inaba. You can tell how small the town is from up here, but looking at it now, it's a nice town. <laughs> mm, not as much as last time, but I still feel lonely. I want to tell Saki Senpai something that what's important isn't where you are. This town I hated so much, now I love it. I mean, there's still nothing here, but I have family and friends and you. The important things are never far off. They're all around you. And I always wanted to be special. I thought my life would finally have meaning if I was special to someone. That's why I was really excited when I got my persona. But I really didn't need it. It's not what you have or what you can do. 
just being born, living your life. Before you know it, you're already special to someone. Yeah, like you. You're special to me, you know? Let's see if we can find everyone's house from here. There's Juness, and that's the main street, so my house is there. The one with that funky roof. Meaning yours is... Goodbye now.
I'll see you later, senpai.
Yo! Man, this fog just won't quit. The weather report said it might start snowing soon. But what's going to happen if it snows with all this fog? Whoa! Where'd you guys come from? Wow, that's quite a crowd you got there. We ran into each other back there, so we came together. The fog's so thick that sometimes you can't see your nose in front of your face, so everyone's forming groups now. It's definitely been weird lately. It's so cold, too. Visibility's so bad, it's scary. Can I stick close to you, senpai? Oh, this girl never changes. It really is hard to see anything in this, though. It's just like on the other side. Oh. Guys, put on your glasses! It's all clear. Oh, what the hell's going on? These glasses are meant to help us see through the fog in the other world. But putting that aside, no glasses would improve one's visibility in a fog under normal circumstances. Then, um... Could the fog from over there be leaking into our world? Huh? Well, you, you guys think that's it? I was kind of expecting you to ignore it as Chie being random again. <laughs> it's, it's just a thought. <laughs> hey, 
Anyways, today's the last day of exams, right? Let's get them over with so we can meet up at the special headquarters after school. <laughs> wow, we haven't used that name in a while. Here's a story about the fog. Um, some specialists are raising concerns that this fog may consist of harmful substances. More and more citizens are calling for an investigation into the cause of the fog and the facts about it. Though the government has begun its preliminary investigation, many feel that the causes will be hard to pinpoint. Oh, is this fog really dangerous? You hardly ever see people walking around town anymore. Or here, either. Everyone's too scared of the fog now to go outdoors much. It does seem a lot like the fog on the other side. But beyond that, I'm clueless. There's another item of note here. A summary of Namatame's career with details about the case. The suspect was having an affair with the first victim. It seems she was killed due to relationship troubles. Also in April, Miss Saki Konishi's body was discovered. The police are looking into a motive for the murder. In July, a boy living in Inaba performed a copycat murder. The boy was initially thought to be the culprit behind all the killings, but later suspicion was thrown upon Namatame. Last month, the suspect attempted to kidnap a seven-year-old girl of Inaba, resulting in his arrest. It seems Namatame is still confined to his hospital bed, so further interrogation has yet to commence. So it's finally over. A lot of stuff's happened, but all that's left is for the police to build a case for Namatame, right? Whether he confesses or not, it was him who did everything. Getting him convicted is up to your uncle. But the stuff he was saying was so obviously nuts. If he says anything about the TV world, he might be considered mentally unstable. Also, I heard before that if the police don't have enough hard evidence, it's difficult to build a case. Yes, there are many such cases and culprits. It's the eternal conundrum for crime investigators. So even if they're caught, the law can't do shit? It's a possibility. Hell's up with that! We all know he did it! You can't just let a maniac who thinks he's saving people by killing them run wild on the streets! They better not dismiss something this serious because of some mental issues. Saki-senpai. No, not just her, or that announcer. Even King Moron is his fault. If it weren't for what he did, nobody would have tried a copycat killing. It's his fault Nanako-chan's in the hospital right now, too. What's the matter? A Katatsu? Oh, then why don't we go check them out right now? I know Nanako-chan would be psyched if she came home and found a new Kotatsu. Dude, why didn't you tell me sooner? The winter season's coming up and we just got a bunch of them in stock. All right, off to the houseware section for Nanako-chan! If we're getting a Kotatsu, we better get some oranges to complete the set. It's a cliche because it's true, damn it. The best compliment to a Kotatsu would be a heated rug. Dude, that much juice would kill the breaker the moment you tried to microwave something. Oh yeah, you've never used a Kotatsu before, huh, Ted? It's nice and toasty. Can I still stay here? You kept your promise to me, so I should be going back. But I don't want to go until Nana-chan gets better. Of course you can stay. How many times do we have to say this before it gets through to you? Nanako-chan would be sad if you weren't there when she wakes up. But I couldn't save Nana-chan. Don't be silly. We saved her together. 
We caught the killer, man. We couldn't have done that without you. Teddy, you shouldn't talk that way when Nanako-chan is still fighting. You guys... Can I really? That's right, you're just by yourself at home now, huh? Hey, why don't we pick out a Christmas present for Nanako-chan while we're at it? Oh, that's a great idea. I'm sure she'll be out of the hospital by then. All right, but none of this charge it to Yosuke stuff this time. Seriously, we're clear on this, right? Oh, come on. Why would we do something like that? Dude, the clothes you got for this guy? I almost pissed my pants when I saw the receipt. How many days do you think I had to work to pay that off? Well, I can't help it if Juness overcharges for things. Ugh. Well, I guess you gotta expect that. It's not like Chia-san's ever had the occasion to help a guy shop before. What? What did you just say? Come on, baby. Don't fight over me. Stay, Stay out, out of this! this. <laughs> Let's leave them be and think of a present for Nanako-chan on our own. But what would a girl her age want? What do you think Nanako-chan would appreciate most? That's not really for kids. It's still pretty cute, just like the real thing. <laughs> All right, as soon as Nanako-chan's out of the hospital, we'll have a party at your place. Yes! And we'll bake the cake! Of course! Let's make it a cake to remember. Oh, no, you're not! Are you trying to send Nanako-chan back to the hospital? This is Adachi. Um, I want you to stay calm and listen to me, okay? Nanako-chan's condition suddenly got worse. The doctor wants you to come to the hospital immediately. We'll be waiting. Come on, let's go! Doctor, this fog is poisonous, isn't it? Isn't it filled with viruses? They said so on TV. Isn't there a vaccine or something for it? Calm down, please. That's just a rumor. Don't tell me to calm down. You're lying. We know you have medicine for this. Are you just going to stand there and watch us die? Why would we do something like that? What a commotion. What the hell's that supposed to mean? Can't you see how much pain she's in? All we can do right now is monitor her condition closely. <laughs> Dojima-san, you need to return to your... I don't give a damn about myself. Do something about Nanako. <clears throat> Dojima-san! Just save her. For God's sake, please save Nanako. We'll do our best. I must ask you to step outside for the time being. Nanako. Hey, can't you do something? This all has to do with the world you came from. Can't you figure something out? I'm thinking, I'm thinking, but... Damn it! What does this have to happen to a little girl like her? Why'd it turn out like this? Nanako-chan's gonna be okay, right? You guys still here? How is Dojima-san doing? His wounds opened up again. They're treating it over in his room now. Any luck with your investigation on Namatame? Um, about that. I won't mince words here. 
We're gonna have a hard time making these charges stick. What's that mean? I talked with the guys at the station, and it'll be next to impossible to find them guilty in court. Especially given the reason why we took him off our list of suspects for the first case. Oh yeah, something about him having an alibi. Yeah, that, and the whole angle about him putting people into TVs, there's no way that'll stand up in court. No one would believe that. What the public wants is when, where, and how Namatame killed these people, and Dojima-san knows it. Well, ain't you calm about this? I'm just telling you the truth. And you call yourself a cop, huh? If you want to see that stuff so bad, we'll show you! Hurry up and bring a TV here, damn it! Hey, stop! What the? Is Nanako Chan's family here? Hurry inside. Please talk to her. What's going on? No. Nanako chan. Daddy. <laughs> Nanako chan. Nanako chan. Can you hear us? Do you understand what we're saying? Your big brother's here with you. Just hang in there. <laughs> Where's Dojima-san? We're calling for him right now. How's Nanako? Nanako! <clears throat> Nanako! I'm sorry, sir. No! <laughs> Damn it! Damn it! Nana Chan. We did everything we could, but we still couldn't figure out what caused this. Dojima-san, what's with that look? Huh? What's wrong, everyone? Hmm? Huh? Wait, is, is Nanako-chan... But then, where did Dojima-san go? His room isn't that way. Wait a sec, that's the way to... Transported into the same hospital? For crying out loud, he's the suspect in the case! What are you getting mad at me for? This is the biggest hospital, and he's in no condition to be moved. I can't tell you that. 
Just tell us where he is already. Dojima's son's on his way, ain't he? You don't know what he's gonna do there if we don't stop him! Kanji-kun, you don't mean... Uh, hold on. Just what are you guys talking about? Cough it up! Where's this room? <clears throat> Top floor in the second surgical ward. Furthest room back. But there's a police guard. I... I was always watching over Nana-chan, and I still couldn't save her. It happened in my world. Even though I was the only teddy in that place, I... I still couldn't do anything. I... <laughs> to speak to him like we said without permission permission who gave him permission to kill nanako tell me that huh the hell with you all why is he still alive when nanako's dead give me back nanako give her back she's she's all i have she's uh, the only one in the world Call a doctor! Let go of me. I need to... Holy crap! Dojima-san! Quick, get him to his room! I'll go alert the doctors! Dojima-san... Was he seriously gonna... His only daughter's dead. Nothing would have surprised me. Dojima-san probably knew that there's little to no chance Namatame would be convicted. Damn it. He killed Senpai, and now Nanako-chan. And the bastard's gonna walk away without paying for what he did. That's not right. <laughs> Why? Why is he the one that gets to go on living? <laughs> I... I was scared, so... I... I... You have your life, and now you want your freedom, too? It's your fault that Nanako Jones... I... I didn't. I... Twelve o'clock. Is it the Midnight Channel? Hey, isn't this... I failed to save her. It's, it's because, because you got, got in my way. way. Another Namatame? How? The real one's right here, and we already beat his shadow! No. Come to think of it, Namatame never faced his other self. And we didn't witness his shadow returning to his body as a persona, either. Perhaps that's why we're seeing this now. What the...? I failed. But it wasn't my fault. And the law can't touch me anyway. What? Is that what Namatame's really thinking? Then he wasn't deranged or anything. He knew what he was doing. To hell with the law. I will never forgive what you did. This, please, stop. Huh? Stop what? We ain't even done anything yet. Or do you want us to do something? Something fitting for a bastard like you? K Kanji. <sighs> Do whatever, whatever you want. want. You hate me because the, the child, child died, died, don't you? I don't care either way. Living or dying makes no difference to me. But you, you're different. <laughs> you can't do such a thing. You wouldn't dare, right? 
I will continue saving people. It's my mission. Mission? My god. Please, stop. He wants us to stop. What should we do? What do you mean? We can't let this bastard do whatever he pleases. Still, what are you going to do? No way I'm gonna walk out of here doing nothing. I... I understand, but... This must be a luxury suite. Most hospital wards don't have such large televisions. Why, with something like this in the room, this man could escape at any time. Although once he enters, he may find there's no way out. Wait a second. You don't mean... Are you... serious? You're just gonna turn your back and walk away? That's... but... What... What's gotten into you guys?! This is crazy! How can we do something like that?! Chie! Everyone, listen to me. If we're gonna do this, now is our only shot. We won't get a second chance. At this rate, the guy's gonna get off the hook, and he'll go around saving people again. You just heard what this bastard's really thinking. If that happens, it'll be just like Nanako-chan and Senpai. Who knows how many innocent people will die this time? I can't let something like that go. Someone close to me died. Her killer can't be convicted. And now I'm gonna let the same thing happen again? There's no way I can do that! It's just wrong, isn't it? But... but... Yosuke... All we have to do is push him inside the TV. That's it. We do that one thing, and this is all over. J just p push him inside? If any of you want no part in this, just leave the room. I'm not gonna force you to stay. As for me, nothing can make me forgive this bastard. But before we do this, I want to hear what you think. What do you want to do, leader? We don't have time to wait! If we don't do this now, the cops will come back! What are you trying to say? Something we don't know! What don't we know?! But we just heard the guy's true feelings on TV! What didn't you understand?! Well, what is it?! I already told you there's no time to waste! Are you even getting at something here, or are you just stalling? Missing? Like what exactly? Damn it, I've heard enough of this bullshit! Give me a straight answer! Are we doing this or not? That's all I give a damn about right now! He's right. Let's all calm down for a second. I'm perfectly calm. Hey, what did you mean by we're missing something? What's there to miss with a sick bastard like him? Hey, let's all take a deep breath. After what happened to Nanako-chan and seeing Dojima-san, we're not thinking straight right now. Fine. You're right. We should calm down and think rationally about this. I realize now that we've heard almost nothing from Namatame's perspective. There's no denying that this man brought great harm to Nanako-chan. But other than that point, the rest comes from our assumptions based on watching the Midnight Channel a moment ago. I won't deny that we were blinded by the heat of the moment, trying to impute all responsibility to him rashly. But... Yeah, the guy's not saying anything. Whatever reason he had, there's no doubt about the fact that he'd been throwing people inside the TV. It was him who put Senpai through that misery. 
How can we possibly understand someone who says killing people is the same as saving them? Failing to understand and failing to listen are rather different things. <laughs> Truthfully, not all the hitches that were nagging at me have been answered yet. We'll have to see what he can tell us about them. Though it appears he's in no condition to do so at the moment. True. Dealing with him right now might not solve all the things that are bothering us. Damn it. But you better remember this. I'll do everything I can to stop him from repeating what he's done. Anytime, anywhere, anything. Jeez, how the hell can you stay so calm, man? Then again, that's why you're our leader. <sighs> All right, let's go ahead and think this through as much as we need. If we leave any unanswered questions behind, We'll just be lying to ourselves. Yeah, that ain't gonna cut it. All right, I'm convinced. <sighs> Thank you. I'll think as hard as I can and try to help. We all know how you feel, Yosuke. <laughs> Come on, we've accomplished this much together, haven't we? Right, together. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Sorry, and thanks. doing you can't be in here oh crap we were keeping an eye on the suspect the police officers outside seem to have their hands full helping dojima san if namatame were to escape it would be a disaster for the police's reputation and their trust in you adachi san oh i see we'll tighten security from now on and I'll arrange for him to be transported out as soon as possible. So, if you guys can keep quiet about being in here, I'd really appreciate it. How is he, Doctor? He seemed to be extremely agitated a moment ago. He seems fine for now, but he really needs his rest. Outside, everyone. Doctor's orders. Understood. We should go, too. Let's get back to Nanako-chan's room. So what's this thing we're missing, huh? To tell the truth, there's something that's bothering me too. Why did he start killing people in the first place? Well, he said himself it was to save them, right? So he killed his lover in order to save her and kept going? The police speculated the first murder was related to the affair, so they called in Namatame for questioning. But everything in his testimony and his bearing no matter what they looked at, they found nothing suspicious. If he truly is twisted enough to believe that murder is a means of saving people, I think that would have shown through. Maybe he faked it real well. Or maybe he started out with a normal motive and got a taste for killing after the first time. No, if that were the case, his motive for killing that announcer would be even more inexplicable. Namatame and his wife were separated at the time. Both Misuzu Hiragi and himself testified that she had discarded him. 
Hiragi also knew about Yamano beforehand, and Namatame was shocked to hear of Yamano's death. Their relationship was known and was not strained to the point of murder. There's simply no motive in the affair angle. The police invested a great deal of effort into investigating this point. Therefore, we have no convincing motive for Namatame to kill Mayumi Yamano, although her name was written in Namatame's own diary. His reason for killing her. It's still possible that he was crazy to begin with and no one realized, right? Uh, I don't really get any of this. Oh, this is so confusing! Hey, we could hear you in there. This is a hospital. Maybe you should quiet down a little. Oh, there you are, all of you. Please come with me immediately. Huh? What's going on? What are you waiting for? Hurry, go! Where am I? Is this Teddy's world? This doesn't quite feel like it, though. I remember being at the hospital. That's right, Nana-chan. I... I couldn't do anything. Why do I even exist? I couldn't keep my promise. I lost my reason to be there. Th that's it. I remember now. So, it was true. Guys! Sensei! What should I do? Oh, there they are. Nanako-chan came around. Huh? What did you just say? Nanako-chan's alive? Are you serious? It's very rare to be resuscitated after one's heart and lungs fail, but it does happen. But until I know why she collapsed in the first place, I can't say for sure how well she'll recover from here on. Still, Nanako-chan's a fighter, and she's trying desperately to stay alive. So, so this isn't a joke? You're actually telling the truth? Nanako-chan... <laughs> oh my god... I... I... <laughs> this is amazing! Miracles do happen. I'm so glad. I... I didn't know what I was gonna do! <laughs> You all should go home for the night. I'll speak with Dojima-san tomorrow about Nanako-chan's treatment. It's rather chilly outside. If it starts snowing, be careful not to catch a cold. Wait a second, where's Teddy? I noticed he didn't come with us when we went to Namatame's room. <laughs> You're right. That's weird. I figured he wouldn't move from Nanako-chan's side. Teddy... Where did you go? Oh yeah, he has a cell with him. Wait, I shouldn't use mine inside the hospital. I'll try calling him up once we're outside. Couldn't save. I couldn't save. Why? Mayumi. And that girl too. I couldn't save them. Huh? Hey, what's the matter? Feeling guilty all of a sudden? Sheesh. I can't reach him. 
Did that stupid bear forget to charge the battery? We took a quick look around the hospital, but there's no sign of him. I wonder where he went. Oh, it's snow. Hey, you're right. Wow, it's been a while since I last saw real snow. It doesn't look that pretty, though, because of this fog. I guess this makes it the first snow of the year. <sighs> it's freezing. Let's go home. Hey, Yosuke, if you find Teddy, don't forget to contact us, all right? I know, I know. Let's meet up at the special headquarters tomorrow. Man, that Ted. I hope he just went back home by himself. He's probably fine. But I'll hurry home just in case. Well, see you tomorrow. Welcome. It's been quite some time. Do not be alarmed. You are fast asleep in the real world. I have summoned you within your dreams. Now then, your journey has taken you quite a distance thus far. Do you believe you'll be able to successfully solve this mystery? Splendid! The precise destination of this vehicle, ah, that too is getting rather hard to judge. If we continue driving blindly, we may end up leading you further away from the mystery that you must reach. Well, why don't we take a moment to look back on your journey? It was for that purpose that I summoned you here tonight, Margaret. You gave me the opportunity to start walking. I was scared, but I've learned my lesson now. I won't just try and escape into my own personal time. We are experiencing the words engraved into your memory during your journey. Failing to understand and failing to listen are rather different things. All right, let's go ahead and think this through as much as we need. If we leave any unanswered questions behind, we'll just be lying to ourselves. I'll think as hard as I can and try to help. Come on, we've accomplished this much together, haven't we? Right, together. And it seems you have comrades with you as well. Those heading in the same direction through this dense fog.
will be parked for the moment while I confirm our current heading. As I mentioned previously, this year will signal a great change in your life. Though there isn't much time left, it can be worth your while to take the time to stop and reflect. People are like water flowing in a river. There is only one stream, but all who pass through it are affected differently. Some travel fast, some change their course, experiencing countless events as they travel down the river of time. Just so. The state of this room reflects the scenery of your heart. Perhaps this may be a time for contemplation rather than action. Teddy's missing. I looked all over the neighborhood, but I couldn't find him anywhere. Yeah, me too. He was acting all weird lately. Risei and the others are checking inside the TV to see if he's gone back to the other side. We're meeting pretty soon, so will you come with me to Juness? No use, man. We can't find him. No luck for me either. I didn't sense anything over there. The fog's so dense it might be affecting my readings. I wish I could do better. I'm sorry. The Ted. Don't tell me he really went back to his world this time. We told him over and over that he could stay here. I guess that's all we can do right now. He plays dumb a lot, but he's attached to us deep down. He wouldn't disappear without saying anything, right? I'm worried for Teddy myself, but let's trust in him and await his return. Right now, we must concentrate on the case. It won't be long before Namatame is transferred to another location. We must hurry, or we will miss our only chance to get his perspective on this. You know, I've been thinking about the case since, but something just doesn't seem right. Let's quickly review the facts. Of all the victims, only two were killed. Miss Yamano the announcer, and Saki-san. From the documents we found in the car, we know Namatame had some sort of dealings with them. After that, there were multiple attempted murders in which we were targeted. It was only when he took Nanako-chan that we caught him in the act, identifying his modus operandi in the process. I wanna hear you put it like that. Sounds like the dude's guilty. As a result of Namatame's arrest, the police admitted that Mitsuo Kubo was a mere copycat killer. Back up to yesterday. Remember when you said Namatame didn't have a motive to kill the announcer? That's what's bothering me. Right. Either he's completely nuts, or we're misunderstanding something. You lost me. She's trying to say that if Namatame is sane, then there may be facts in the case we don't know about yet. Sane or insane? Sounds like a play I saw before. When he talks about saving people, what does that actually mean? I don't think there's any doubt that it includes kidnapping people and throwing them into the TV. Could he mean saving them through death? He did call himself a savior and said that the other side is a wonderful world. So they'll be saved if they die? What a bunch of crap! The bastard should have gone and saved himself! What do you think, senpai? If you think about it normally, it's gotta be him. <laughs> but there ain't nothing normal about that world anyways. There's something I've been wondering about for a while. When we first encountered him, he said, You're the ones I saved. Don't worry, I'll save this girl too. So, um, if he saves people by killing them, did he save us too? Wouldn't he actually have failed to save us? You raise a good point. 
If he thinks that salvation comes only through death, his words to us make no sense. And another thing, the Namatame who appeared on the Midnight Channel said he failed to save Nanako-chan. Well, maybe he really was trying to save the victims by putting them inside the TV. C come on, don't get all quiet like that. You guys know I just say the first dumb thing that pops into my head. <laughs> the possibility that he truly intended to save us. But he's still the one who threw in Saki-senpai in that announcer, right? Sure, we haven't nailed down his motives, but that doesn't change the fact that he killed them. Or what? You think someone else was involved? What makes you think so? Morning letter. Oh yeah. Whatever happened to that thing? If Namatami's the killer, he must have been the one who wrote it, right? Let's review them. Yes, that's right. Isn't that kind of odd? Would someone who thinks he's saving people by killing them write stuff like don't rescue or kill? Yeah, and the will be put in and killed part doesn't make sense either. If the killer was writing it, wouldn't it be more like I'll put in and kill? Hey, could this mean... Yeah, it's almost like someone else wrote this letter. But only the killer would write such a letter and deliver it to Dojima-san's house, right? If someone else wrote it, that could only mean... Dear God, since this is such an unusual case, I was absolutely convinced that other than the Kubo incident, there was one culprit. So Namatame really was trying to save his victims? Everything is exactly the opposite of what it first seemed. In Namatame's parlance, Failing would have been the first two cases when the victims died. If he had used his method twice and failed both times, he would hardly have continued using the TV. And yet he did. It all seems to suggest that someone else wrote this warning letter while observing the entire case. Someone else? Then it wasn't Namatame that killed Saki-senpai and the announcer? We can't say for certain yet. We urgently need to speak with Namatame face to face. How though? After what happened yesterday, they said they're going to tighten security. I have a plan, but there's no time to waste. Let's hurry to the hospital. Hey, this place is off limits. I'm a consultant with the police. I'd like a few words with Namatame-san. May I go in? This is Unit 252, requesting confirmation on an ID. Name of Naoto Shirogane. Huh? Ah, understood. I see. Well, you're on the list. I can give you a few minutes, but I'll have to record your conversation with him for security purposes. Not that I expect you'll get anything coherent out of the guy. He's been spouting nothing but gibberish. I'd like him to accompany me as well. He has no identification, but this is an emergency situation. And he's here in Detective Dojima's stead. Huh? Detective Dojima sent him? I wasn't informed of this. I'll vouch for his identity. Well, I guess it's better than dealing with the man himself. We have our hands full with the transport procedures, so the last thing we need is Detective Dojima running wild. Detective Adachi is busy somewhere, too. This is Unit 252. Huh? I see. Has something happened? There's something about a suspicious object out in the lobby. Ah, uh, well then, this works out nicely. You should back up your colleagues downstairs. We'll keep watch over Namatame-san. A disturbance in a hospital lobby, after all. It sounds serious. 
If anything happens, hit the nurse call button. I'll leave the rest to you. Understood. Please be careful. I knew they were undermanned, but I didn't expect it to go this smoothly. Wow! There's nothing much inside that suspicious object, so he won't be gone long. All right, and now's our chance to talk to Namatame. Namatame-san, there's something we'd like to ask you. <sighs> it's tempting to think that you were the culprit behind this entire case. And to be honest, there are many in this town who hope you are. But we are here to learn the truth. So please, answer our questions. Huh? They were killed. I couldn't save them. Huh? Me? Hmm. No. If nobody saves them, they'll be killed. That's why I put them in there. Then tell me if my estimation is correct so far. After discovering the Yamano and Konishi incidents, you realized an appearance on the Midnight Channel meant certain death. Thus, to save her from that fate, you kidnapped Yukiko Amagi. You couldn't let her be killed, so you threw her into the TV preventing the killer in this world from reaching her. And you repeated the process, as more individuals appeared on the Midnight Channel. It all falls into place. His body is weak, but his mind is sound. He's trying to tell us the truth. Yeah, but if the stuff he's saying is true... There's another killer who murdered the first two victims? Indulge us in a few more questions. I have no idea. I want to know that too. What are you talking about? I didn't know. I never thought it would be that kind of place. As I thought. You... believe me? Did they find him? Did they find the one who did such cruel things? Mayumi... Please calm down. Our ability to find the culprit rests on you. We know about the other world. In fact, we're the only ones who can fully understand what you have to say. Only... you? We did blame you for everything at first. But now I think we can accept whatever you got to tell us, as truth. Please, tell us everything you can, calmly and slowly. You're willing to listen? Do my story? After my affair with Mayumi became common knowledge, I returned to my parents' home, as if to run away from the scandal, and I started drinking heavily to drown my anxieties. I hadn't been able to reach Mayumi at all, and that didn't help either. 
Mayumi, where are you? She'd been disgraced on all the afternoon shows and forced to resign from the program she was on. I caused her so much trouble. I wanted to at least apologize to her, but I couldn't even do that. I lost the will and energy to do anything. Then, one day, the rumor I heard some time ago came back to me. Since I had nothing better to do, I sat down blankly in front of the TV and watched my own reflection. And all of a sudden, there was Mayumi. Mayumi? Is that you? The Mayumi inside the TV looked as if she was calling to me for help. Mayumi? Mayumi! When I reached out unthinkingly to touch her, my arm disappeared into the TV, as if I had dipped it into a pool of water. I was so shocked that I lost my balance and nearly fell face first into the TV. I was so scared. I couldn't understand what just happened. I thought maybe I'd gone insane in the end. I decided to think of it as just a dream, and I went back to the city the next day after finishing work. The next afternoon when I got to work, I was fired on the spot, as I expected. That wasn't what broke me, though. It was Mayumi being found dead. And not just that, but it had happened in my hometown. I was dumbstruck, but later on, I remember the image of Mayumi I'd seen that night. Was it not a dream? Could it really have been an SOS from Mayumi? I hadn't touched another TV because the first time was so terrifying, but I decided to try it again, and I confirmed that none of it was a dream. So that image, was it something Mayumi showed me, calling for help? That's how I felt. And eventually, you learned of the Midnight Channel. I remember that when Mayumi was alive, she was chasing a rumor about some bizarre TV program. I'd heard about it before, but I thought it was just an urban legend. But then Mayumi appeared on it, and later turned up dead. The more I thought about it, the harder it became to believe that the two events were unrelated. Soon after that, I came back to Inaba to answer the police's questions. I'd lost my job, and I wanted to know the truth of Mayumi's death for myself. Then, on another rainy night, someone else appeared on the Midnight Channel. It was a girl. She looked like she was calling for help, just like Mayumi. The first thing that came into my mind was, maybe this girl will be the next to die. And that was Saki-senpai. I'd been following all the news about Mayumi, so I noticed right away that she was the girl who found Mayumi's body. And if my hunch was right, she'd be the next victim. I didn't want her to die the way Mayumi did, so I desperately kept watching. I was consumed with the idea of rescuing her. Then, little by little, her image on the screen came into sharper focus. It became sharper? <sighs> How did you find out it was her? After I came back, my father couldn't bear to see me in such low spirits and gave me a job with the family business. I met that girl when I delivered a package to the liquor store. After agonizing over it, I decided to meet her and told her to be careful. But that same night, on the TV... She looked as if she was being engulfed by some black shape. She was writhing in pain. That's why I warned her. Why won't she pick up the phone? Come on, please! The next day, they found her dead. I knew she was going to be murdered, but I couldn't save her. I blamed myself thinking there must have been something I could have done. There was no one who depended on me, 
Nobody at work. Not even my wife. Mayumi was the only one who accepted me for who I was. But she was murdered. And the same person killed another girl. I was... I was beside myself. I couldn't forgive myself for doing nothing. You really did love Miss Yamano. Yes. From the bottom of my heart. Before I was married, my wife made it big in show business. I was happy for her, but it put a strain on our relationship. I think I can kind of relate. It was around that time when I met Mayumi. She was interviewing our candidate for the next election. She was a big-name announcer, but she only worked with local stations, and her attitude towards work was similar to mine. We both came from Inaba, so she was easy to talk to. I knew it was wrong, but I couldn't help getting intimate with her. She gave meaning to my life. Soon after Saki-san was found dead, yet another girl appeared on TV. That was you. She'll be kidnapped next. And murdered. I can't let her end up like Mayumi and that other girl. This time, I'm gonna do something. My opponent was a murderer who left no clues to his identity. I thought hard about what I could do to protect her from someone like that. I'll never convince her. If she gets suspicious and they arrest me, who'll save her then? The girl inside the TV looked as if she was smiling at me. And that's when it hit me. I apparently had the power to go through the TV screen to the other side. Then, what if I put her into the TV and give her shelter there before the killer gets her? What are you trying to tell me? That it's safe over there, is that it? The girl inside the TV seemed to smile at me again. And I thought, no matter what kind of place it might be, it's better than being slaughtered. Once things calm down, I could just let her out again. If she's inside the TV, there's no way they can find her. It felt as if everything was starting to come together in my mind. Could it be that Mayumi gave me that power to prevent any more victims from meeting her fate? Was it my mission to save people? But there was a big problem. If I explained the situation to the victim, they wouldn't understand. I had already tried that and failed miserably. It seemed the only thing I could do was to take them away. If that was my mission, I'd just have to do it. Or so I thought. Mayumi, please lend me your strength. So, since you thought people who appeared on the Midnight Channel would be killed, you kidnapped us in order to save us. Mission? Give me a break! You never stopped and wondered about any of this? I thought I was the only one who could help them. I did call the police, but they didn't believe me. I knew the area well, thanks to my job. I had a large truck, and I could move around without suspicion. I thought my job as a delivery man would be the perfect cover for my mission. I thought no one else could do it. But are you telling me that I wasn't saving them? If a person is still within the TV world when the fog appears here, they will die. Beginning with Yukiko-san, the people you thought you had been saving were, in fact, in mortal peril. It was my friends here who really saved us all. I had a feeling that was it. When I went after that little girl and entered the TV myself, for the first time, I had some doubts about myself. You refer to Nanako-chan, correct? The police were after me, so I had to get away. But I still felt I needed to do everything I could to save that poor little girl. That's why I went in after her. But the TV world was completely different than I imagined. Such an abominable, grotesque place. I knew that the three of you who I saved went back to your normal lives, so I didn't realize how terrible that world was. I never knew. You couldn't even get out of that place on your own. 
No. That's a cowardly way to put it. I'd probably already begun to realize that it was a dangerous place. If I hadn't, I wouldn't have gone to see you all. See us? Wait, are you talking about the concert we did at Juness? Yes. I wanted to know why the ones I saved were all hanging out with each other, and how much you remembered. But in the end, I couldn't bring myself to say anything and ran home. I must have felt too guilty. <laughs> but all the doubts and anxieties I'd been unconsciously suppressing exploded out when I entered the television myself. I thought I was going insane. I probably did. And you know the rest. When I came to, I was lying in a hospital bed. You really were trying to save people. But I ended up doing just the opposite. Oh, what a fool. I always wanted to enter the world of politics and become useful to society. But after losing my job and the woman I loved, all I had left was this power. I convinced myself that world was some sort of sanctuary, and I secretly believed myself to be a hero. <sighs> I never doubted what I saw on TV, and believed everything was as I wanted it to be. I didn't think for myself at all. That's why I couldn't protect them. I'm to blame for all of this. I suppose so. But the things I've done are too serious to be brushed aside like that. I have no intentions of running away from my crimes. I'm prepared to face the consequences. Kidnapping is already a serious crime. And on top of that, I put all those lives in danger. I'm sorry. The Midnight Channel and the Other World? You can hardly be blamed for failing to understand them properly. We must apologize to you as well. Had we let our emotions blind us to the truth, we would have piled all the responsibility on you. I guess from your point of view, people did stop dying once you started saving people. The more you did it, the more you really believed you were preventing their deaths. I'm such a joke. I'm sorry. I'm getting a little tired. What, what are you all crammed in here for? My apologies. We'll be leaving now. Wait. I beg you, please find whoever's behind this. You children are the only ones who know about that world. It's all clear now. He never committed any murders. It was another party who threw the first two victims into the TV. Get out of here! I told you, he's almost ready to be transported. We can't have anything else happen. Sheesh, I better not see you rascals here again. Nanako-chan looks like she's in pain. She's fighting for dear life. This was the last place we saw Teddy, right? He was so worried about her. How can he flake out like this when we have to find the real killer? The police consider the matter closed. We'll have to do all the investigation from here on out. Let's revisit Saki-san and Miss Yamano's incidents and see if we can turn up fresh details. But it's been over six months. Wouldn't the trail be cold by now? I know, but we can't give up. We're the only ones who understand what's really going on. And you never know. People might remember some things now because they've had so much time to think about it. Let's split up and talk to people all over town tomorrow. We'll meet up in the evening to discuss our findings. I hope we can find out something about Teddy, too.
I'm seriously pooped. This stuff's a lot harder when you don't have a badge to flash. I walked around all day and didn't hear anything good. It was the same for me. There was absolutely no talk about the case whatsoever, let alone the true culprit. Ditto for me. Actually, in my case, I kept getting bombarded with questions and couldn't get them onto the main subject at all. <sighs> the killer must be pretty good to have pulled this off without being seen by anyone in this small town. What should we do? Well, one steak bowl, please! That's not what I meant. But then again, I guess we might as well take a break. I'll have a crab and egg fried rice. I'll have roast pork ramen with extra noodles. Oh, now that our tummies are full, let's share what we learned, even if it wasn't much. So, to sum up, there really was no new information. The end? The police had an unusually large number of officers in their initial investigation of the first two incidents. To find facts that even they overlooked would be difficult indeed, now that over half a year has passed. There wasn't a single report of suspicious persons being witnessed to begin with. Miss Yamano had ardent fans, whereas Saki-san didn't. But otherwise, the conditions are the same. You know, every time I tried to ask about the case, everyone ignored me and kept ranting about the damn fog. Yeah, that or the Midnight Channel. I asked around about Teddy, too, but no one's seen him. Gee, I wonder where he could have gone. Do you have anything, Naoto? Any new, uh, deductions? <sighs> Without any new data to work with, there isn't much I can do. But there must be someone in town who meets all the criteria for this case. The killer must have a connection to both Saki-san and Miss Yamano, as well as be in a position to observe our actions periodically to some extent. Finally, it must be someone who could approach Senpai's house without arousing suspicion. <sighs> I need some fresh air before I give it more thought. I'll be outside. It's snowing. No wonder it's chilly. Ugh, it's freezing out here. Maybe this will help clear my head and get my deductive muscles flexing. Hey, is it snowing? Too bad the fog's so thick. The snow just gets lost in it. What's the matter?
What about him? Detective Adachi. Hmm. A member of the police force. That is an interesting approach. It would certainly explain the lack of witness reports. It's the same reason no one ever reported seeing Namatame's truck. This is a small town, so everyone must have known who he is. And since he's a detective, people definitely wouldn't have thought of him as being suspicious. In fact, he could use his position to his advantage and hide critical information. Huh. Well, if you think of it that way, I guess it's possible. But we're talking about Adachi here, right? I mean, really? Adachi? He's your textbook lousy detective. Are we really on the right track here? Actually, regarding Detective Adachi, I'm not sure how to put it, but there's something that's been bothering me about him for some time now. Yeah? Hmm. Perhaps it's just my imagination, so I shouldn't speak to... <sighs> it's cold. I think we've cooled down enough here. Let's go back in. Adachi-san? That can't be. I mean, he said he came to escort Miss Yamano and... What? Was he at your inn when the announcer was staying there? When Miss Yamano was staying at our inn, the media were swarming all over it. That's when Adachi-san arrived, saying he'd been assigned to guard her. He told our waitress that fame could be rough. Guard her? He didn't spend the night there? Huh. I wonder if he knew Ms. Yamano. I don't know about that, but I heard he did call out to a girl in my class. I found out this afternoon, but I thought, you know, that's just how cops are. So I didn't think it had anything to do with the case. Detective Adachi also questioned Saki-san, the one who found the announcer's body, on numerous occasions. I heard it was because there was so little information about the case at the time, but... It's certainly unusual to question someone with as strong an alibi as hers multiple times. Then you think he had something else on his mind? And that something is what connects those two victims to Adachi-san? Come to think of it, we've been running into that guy a lot, in all sorts of places. And every time he'd tell us what the police were doing before saying, Oops, I said too much and clamming up. Was that all to throw us off the trail? It would be no problem for him to drop that warning letter into your mailbox, either. Not to mention the fact that he can destroy any evidence that might point to him. Then... Is it really a duchy son This is still only a tentative theory. We should work to confirm it as soon as possible. This is Naoto Shiragane. Something has occurred to me about the case, and I'd like to get Detective Adachi's input on it. Huh? The transport? It's right now? Right, I, I see. Thank you. What was that about a transport? Detective Adachi is headed to the hospital to prepare for Namatame's relocation. We must head there at once. guys doing here? Hey, do you know where Dojima-san went? They told me he snuck out of his room again. I assure you, we've made it clear to him several times that he needs to stay put, but he keeps going off on his own. Jeez, with Namatami finally relocated, I was looking forward to going home. So, he's been relocated. I've been wondering... You seem to be in a terrible hurry to get him out of this hospital. Uh, oh, well, yeah. I mean, we can't leave him here with Dojima-san and Nanako-chan around. Didn't you guys think so, too? Hey, what are you doing here anyway? Nanako-chan's room is in the other wing. Don't you think you should leave before Dojima-san finds you? If he catches you, he'll start pestering you again. Adachi, where's Namatami? There's been a lot of noise today for some reason. 
Dojima-san, what are you doing here? Namitami's already been relocated. I was looking for you so I could tell you that. You did what? Who authorized that? There's still more I need to ask him about. G give me a break, Dojima-san. Those first two murders have been bothering me. His motives are shaky and his alibi is rock solid. We closed a lot of loopholes on the basis of his testimony. But that part's still nagging at me. Is this more of your detective's intuition? He's already been relocated. It's no use hassling me about it. And you kids should really get home too. You're gonna get in the way of police business. What's gotten into you today? It's odd to see you taking work so seriously. Come on! I'm always given 110% when it comes to the job. You should get back to work too, Dojima-san. Your current assignment? Get better as soon as possible. Mm. What are you all doing here? We came to confirm something with Adachi-san. Why wouldn't I question her? She discovered the announcer's body. But she didn't know much about it, so I only talked with her once or twice. The time the announcer went missing? I can't say for sure offhand. It's not like I saw her or anything. That was months and months ago, too. My memory's kind of hazy that far back. Was that all you wanted to ask? Well, I hope it helped. Warning letter? The one that was delivered to his house. It's in police custody now, correct? Uh, I don't really remember. Hey, what do you mean you don't remember? I gave it to you to take down to the crime lab for processing. You're telling me you forgot? <laughs> I'm sorry. Your accident was right after that, and what with one thing and another, it sort of slipped my mind. Uh, besides, that thing was just a prank, wasn't it? Jeez, what are you asking me all this for? For crying out loud, what's this all supposed to be about? Dojima-san, you really need to get back to your bed. That's why your wounds aren't healing. And you all need to go home right now. Do you have any idea what time it is? I'm going back. I need to get to the station and report in. Just one more thing, please. We know for certain now that the first two murders weren't Namatame's doing. Someone else killed them. Adachi-san, do you have any idea who that might be? I have no idea what you're talking about. Cause we think it might have been you. What? That's ridiculous. We already know Namatami's the one who put them all in. What did you just say? Put them all in? What's this... Putting them in business. Do you know something about the method behind their murders? Don't tell me that all that talk about TVs and whatnot from before was... I see. Now I finally understand. To tell the truth, Adachi-san, I've been fixated on something you once said. Before, I didn't know why, only that it sounded a wrong note to me. Do you recall when I read Namatame's diary? At the scene of Dojima-san's accident. At the time, I said, even the victims who survived and were never released to the public are written here. And in response, your words were, Wow. Then that settles it. How, I wonder, would that settle anything? At the time, the police had no idea that there had been other attempted murders related to the case. You had no reason to say such a thing. After all, there are countless examples of people disappearing for a few days. Yet when I read the list of names, you raised no objection. Odd, that. What do you say to that, Detective Adachi? I don't know. I said I'm busy! Wait, you son of a bitch! Adachi! Ah, oh, damn it. Adachi! What the 
I swear he ran this way. Damn it! Where the hell did he go? Did you find him? I contacted security. Nobody's seen Adachi, and there's no record of anyone leaving this area. So he must be still in this ward somewhere. He's still here? But we looked! We didn't find him anywhere! That bastard. <clears throat> Dojima-san? For heaven's sake, what are we going to do with you? Sorry. I got carried away. Do you even want to get better? If you keep this up, there could be lasting damages. Have you forgotten how much trouble it caused you last time? You're right. Sorry. You've got to find Adachi. I need to square this away with him. Please. He hasn't left this ward yet? I don't think he would, but could he have... Yeah, I think so. If he's the killer, he can go through, right? You mean he went in through here? We searched every inch in the direction he ran off. There's nowhere to hide. I don't think we could have missed him. He was cornered. It's highly probable that he escaped there. If he does indeed turn up on the other side, that should prove beyond a doubt that he is the true culprit. Damn. So I guess we were right. What do we do now? I think it's too dangerous to go in from here. We're not 100% positive he used this TV, and on top of that, we don't know where it might lead. Let's go in from Jeunesse, like always. It'll be fine. So long as we're ready for him, we'll crush that jerk in one strike. Where am I? Sensei? Why are you here? I see. How mysterious. There are so many things I don't know about. But I did realize something. I've been thinking all this time about who I really am. But I couldn't find the answer. I was no one from the start. Humans live in the other world, and shadows live in this world. From the beginning, that's all there was to it. I was just a shadow in that world. You're always so kind, Sensei. I figured something out. That day at the hospital, I realized that I really can't do anything. As soon as I thought that, I lost consciousness. Then when I woke up, I was inside the fog. Shadows can't stay in the human world. They aren't allowed. I walked and walked, but there was nothing all around me. Just when I started thinking that I couldn't go anywhere, I heard the noise of a car. And then I was here. I remember lots of things now. My world is a place shaped by human thoughts. One day, a shadow living in that world awakened to human emotions. But humans and shadows are completely different entities. 
So he made himself forget that he was a shadow. He wanted to forget. He wanted people to like him. And that's how he came to look like this. <laughs> I really am stupid. What the other Teddy said before, in the end, it was all true. No matter how much I search for myself, I have no self. There was no me to begin with. I'm just a shadow that took a different form so humans would like me. It would have been better if I had never remembered. But I did. I'll probably turn back to a regular shadow soon. Oh yeah, Sensei, one day, when you meet Nana-chan in heaven, apologize for me. Tell her, I'm sorry I couldn't do anything. Tell her, I'm really sorry. Huh? Really? Nana Johns. Wow, that's wonderful. I'm so glad. Glad that I could at least hear that. <laughs> My heart feels so much lighter now. I'm starting to feel sleepy. What a strange place. It feels so soothing. It's not like my world. Something just feels so nostalgic about this place. Could this be your dream world, Sensei? Aha. Uh -huh. But I wonder why I met you here. What am I supposed to do now? But I don't know what to look for or how to find it. No matter how hard I think, there's too many things my little brain can't understand. But I do understand one thing now. I'm glad that I met you, Sensei. But I have to get going. This is your place. It doesn't seem like somewhere that I'd be allowed to stay. Goodbye, Sensei. It seems the words in your memory weren't the only things you summoned here. This is a room for guests who have an ego that can be nurtured. Shadows, mere fragments broken off from the ego, have no place here. The water's strength has moved a single stone that had stopped, returning it once again into the flow. Mmm, very interesting. Well now, 
It's about time we departed once again. This vehicle is still on its journey. There is no reason to tarry here for long. Margaret? We're ready to go. Let us depart. <laughs> ah, you are every inch the guest I had anticipated. Now it's time for you to return. <laughs> I am even more intrigued now as to where this is all headed. We'll be waiting for your next visit. How did it go? Did you find Teddy? No, and no one's seen him either. Oh, that annoying little furball! Just when we're at a turning point in the case, too. We have no choice. Let's pursue Adachi for now. Whoa. Look how dense this fog is. It's gotten even worse than before. What the? There's this malicious aura everywhere. It feels completely different from the last time I was here. I think we'd better hurry. Give me a sec to try finding Adachi. Does this mean both this world and ours are getting messed up? Our glasses work on the fog on the other side. It can't be normal. And I heard more people are falling ill because of the fog. I wonder what's going to happen. I sense him. Adachi's definitely in here. Are you serious? Which way? Hold on. So he did come to this side. Well, that settles it. There's virtually no doubt remaining that he's the true culprit. Once we capture him, solving the mystery of this world and the rest of the case can't be far behind. Then... Maybe we'll find out where Teddy came from, too. Man, where is that bear anyway? Well, I can say for sure he's not here. And I know Adachi is here, but I can't track him down myself. Gee, Ted, why aren't you here when we need you most? This place... Uh, I see. I came back. But it really doesn't matter. I'm completely useless. Nana-chan, I'm so sorry. Teddy? It is you, Teddy. I heard... your voice. You said... hang in there. I heard... my big bro... And everyone else, too. <laughs> Nana-chan! Oh, hold on! I'll get the doctor! It seems she's asleep again. Um, Nana-chan told me that she heard my voice. She heard me say, hang in there. It could be that her frankly miraculous recovery was because everyone's voices reached her. Even unconscious, people are capable of hearing others' voices. My voice. And theirs too. Everyone. In any case, there are too many things we don't understand about her condition and what caused it. We're doing our best. But it's difficult when everything about her illness is a total unknown. Unknown? Well, if anything happens, please send for me. If I'm an unknown being, then the way I can change is unknown too. So all I have to do is make them not unknown. Nana-chan's doing her best. Sensei and the others are probably fighting now too. I... I'm just a shadow. But Nana-chan cheered up when she heard my voice. So what if I'm just a shadow? There must be something I can do. I can't just give up thinking about things. That's why I came back here. Right, Nana-chan? Ooh. 
Right. I need to get back to the others. Hang in there, Nana-chan. I'll be back soon. It's no use. I can only tell that Adachi is here, not his exact location. Rizu-chan! If only Teddy was with us. Didn't he say his nose is practically useless now? And could he even help us find that bastard? <laughs> nope. He'd be no help at all. But he was always there to support me whenever. That bear's a loud mouth, but he's nice to have around. He's always so full of energy. He's lighthearted and always optimistic. I'm alright. I just got a little dizzy. The fog's so dense, it's hard to see through it. Why don't we call it a day? It won't do us any good if you collapse. I agree. If Rise-san became fatigued, even if we found Adachi, our capacity in battle would be reduced. Moreover, it's almost nighttime. We should return to our world for the present. Damn it! We came so far to run smack into a dead end! I know he's in there, too. What's wrong with me? My powers are completely useless! Teddy? You little... Where the hell were you? Uh, I'm sorry. You idiot! Bad bear! Bad! You're so late! Who do you think you are? <laughs> um... Risei-chan, are you faking? No, stupid! S sorry I want to help you all again. You know how much trouble you caused, you dumb bear? Where the hell were you? I'm sorry. I figured out a lot of things. Stuff about me and that world. I wanted to tell you all. A shadow? You mean you're one of those things we've been fighting? Yup. Just like the ones you all know about. Shadows are suppressed human thoughts given form. Everyone has them inside. Wait. You say you're a shadow, but you didn't attack us. And you kept telling us from the start that you wanted to bring peace and quiet back to that world, right? But in the end, I was just an ordinary shadow. Nothing special about me at all. I did everything I could until now to try and make my world peaceful. But instead, the weird fog started seeping out into this world, too. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. If I really was special, then maybe... It's no big deal. I mean, we weren't expecting much from you in the first place. And about you being a shadow, we pretty much figured you were something like that anyway. Huh? Uh, what are you saying? Here I am pouring my heart out to you and you say you thought I was something like that anyways? No normal person would think such a pretty bear could really be a shadow! So what's the problem with being a shadow? It's true that you may have been born that way, but you now possess the power of persona. A shadow is suppressed power. Once controlled by the ego, it becomes a persona. Doesn't it follow, then, that you must have developed an ego? Whether the ego masters its shadow, or the shadow awakens to its ego, the only difference I see is the order in which the process occurred. Oh! Teddy's practically human, then! Uh, I'm the same as humans? You keep trying to figure out who you are, just like all of us here. You can't do much on your own. You really aren't that special. See? What's so different between you and us? <laughs> Thank you! I'm so glad I met you guys! 
The rest of us were pretty much a group of misfits to begin with, too, right? You fit right in, man. I beg your pardon? Who are you calling a misfit? Isn't that just you, senpai? Hey, that's not something a detective would say. Or an idol, either. Gee, stop crying, will ya? Now's not the time for that. While you were gone, we figured out who murdered the announcer and senpai. It was Adachi. Huh? Adachi? That total goofball? Whoa! I didn't notice at all. Looks like I'm pretty blind to that sort of thing. Hmm. But you all know him. If you can't find someone like that, I don't think I can help you. Like I said, we're not expecting much from you. Well, the main thing is, it's hard to get pumped about this without someone nice and fuzzy around. Yeah, what Kanji said. Uh, okay. Thanks, guys. All right, now that the band's back together, let's take it from the top, starting tomorrow. It's been a while, but I'll do my best to look for him, too. Leave it to Fuzzy. give it a try, but if Risei-chan couldn't find him, I really doubt someone with a dried-up nose like me will be much help. Hmm. 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 I do smell a dachi baby in here, but the fog is completely covering up his scent. Teddy, you can't do it either? When you look at me with those eyes, I get this feeling. I've got to sniff him out no matter what. This is my time to shine. <laughs> oh, I'm getting something. <laughs> Teddy? Hey, quit wandering around. You better not flake out on us again. I sense it from this away. Is it Itachi? Um, how do I put it? It's kind of hazy, but at the same time, it feels like I've got a whopper on the line. I don't get it. Very suspicious. This definitely smells, but that's weird. If I remember right, that's where Sensei, Yosuke, and Chie-chan came from when I met them for the first time. When we first... where was that? Oh, you mean that creepy-ass room where all the faces on the posters were cut out? Yep, there's someone there! Teddy, you really are amazing! It was just dumb luck. It's because that's where I first sensed Sensei and the others. That's why it kinda smelled over there. Oh, I see. Wait, did you say it smelled? Wasn't that the room where Yosuke had to go to the bathroom and... Huh? You're saying... He beat his pants there? Ew, I don't want to hear it! Oh, you lie so bad! Dude, I did not piss my pants! She had quit spreading random rumors about stuff like that! Uh, well, it happened so long ago, my memory's kind of fuzzy, you know? Okay, guys, enough fuzziness. Follow me, the master of fuzzy logic. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard you crack up in a while, Yukiko. 
Though I really wonder sometimes about your sense of humor. her first and she just had to run off and have an affair who's there oh it's you guys you're very persistent I don't know what you're talking about you're not lying your way out of this one damn it just being here proves it answer us you're the one who threw Ms. Yamano into the TV aren't you It was an accident. She started struggling. What else was I supposed to do? I called her out to the lobby because I wanted to ask her something, and then she started getting hysterical on me. Who are you? And what's this something important you called me out here for? What they say on the news isn't true, is it? All that talk about you having an affair and whatnot. It's all a lie, right? Why do I have to explain myself to you? I see. So you don't deny it. You caught my eye. But it turns out you're another worthless bitch. What's wrong with you? Don't make me call for help. <sighs> shut up. Shut up. Shut up. I think you need to see what it's like to fear for your life. It'll get your head straight. <laughs> what are you going to do? <coughs> she, she fell in. <laughs> wow, so people can go completely inside. Good thing for me no one else was around there in the middle of the night. That happened in our lobby? I learned about the Midnight Channel through some rumor. You hear a lot of fishy stories like that on the Force. But it was pure coincidence that I touched the screen and discovered my power. I burst out laughing when I found out. I knew right away that this was going to be interesting. So you tested it out on Mayumi Yamano? Nah, it was nothing like that. I'm a very sincere fellow. I was just trying to punish the stupid bitch a little for betraying me. Yeah. Putting them inside the TV was never the plan. But you know, both Mayumi and that dippy high school girl struggled for no reason. Then you were responsible for Saki-senpai's death! Saki? Oh yeah, her name was Saki Kunishi, or something like that. At first I just called her in because of work-related stuff, her being the one who found Mayumi's body and all. And naturally, if there was any chance she'd seen something, I'd need to know, right? So I was all set to be a nice guy to her, and then that bitch. What's this about anyways? Didn't you call me in for more questions? Well, we'll get to that. But you know, I saw you this afternoon. You were getting pretty cozy with that Namatame. Huh? So I'm not good enough for you. Well, I know how to deal with girls like you. No! God, these high school girls today. This world's gone straight to shit. When I was in school, I wasn't allowed to do anything but study my ass off. I was supposed to be the best of the best, and instead they stick me in the boonies. But I guess I got this sweet power to make up for it. <laughs> Life's not so bad after all. Get on your knees and beg, and maybe I'll let you out. <laughs> yeah, like that'll happen. <laughs> As if I'd walk into a death trap like that. It was a lot easier the second time. High school girls are thinner, you know. Lighter. 
You son of a bitch! Come on, give me a break. I didn't know it was dangerous inside the TV. It's not like I was trying to kill them. I mean, I'm sure they hit on Namatame, not the other way around. The council secretary will one day rise to public office himself. Mayumi and that high schooler were just gold digging. They got exactly what they deserved. I didn't do anything wrong at all. Shut the hell up! You knew from what happened to Mayumi Yamano that people die in here! <sighs> so what if I knew? Nah, he called the police in the middle of the night, just after they found that Saki girl's body. The rest of the force had their hands full with the double homicide, and it happened that I was the one who took the call. Namatame said the police refused to take him seriously. You were responsible for that then. Oh, quite the contrary. If anyone else had taken the call, sure. But I actually did believe him, you know. Huh, that's the pattern to the two deaths so far? And now you're seeing a girl in a kimono on that weird program, and you think she'll die too, is that right? Namatame-san, do you seriously expect us to believe something like that? But, but it's true! If there's any way the police can protect her... Listen, there's no way the police are going to make a move based on a fantasy story like that. <laughs> it does sound interesting, though. B but Oh, I have an idea. If you really want to save her that much, why not do it yourself? Like, you could shelter her somewhere. Some place where no one could find her. Where no one could find her? Save her yourself. You can do it. I'm busy, so I'm hanging up now. Bye. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Of all the people who could have received Namatami's call, it ended up being me. Talk about luck! All I did was give him a little push, and he completely bought into his vision of this world. The more people you guys saved, the more he'd kidnap. Both sides had the best of intentions, so the game of cat and mouse would never end. <laughs> it was awesome. You gotta be shitting me! Why? What reasons could you have for doing that? <laughs> reasons? None, really. I could do it, that's all. And it was fun. I guess that's my reason? You murdered people just for the fun of it?! Come on, all I did was put people in here. I didn't murder them. And Namatame did most of it. I had nothing to do with any of you. You're just dodging the blame! Yeah? Then how would you prove it? He put people inside TVs? <laughs> you think the police are that stupid? <laughs> what a jerkwad! I do admit, though, I never thought you guys would manage to track me down. I like that. Games like this gotta have surprises or they get boring fast. It's like when I dealt with that Kubo kid. That was fun, too. Then, you mean to say that Mitsuo Kubo's disappearance was your doing as well? I did sense something odd in his course of action. If he had special powers and wanted attention, why resort to a regular copycat crime? But that wasn't the case. Kubo had no such powers. In fact, he was thrown in by you. Am I correct? It had been a while since I last put someone inside the TV, so I really got a kick out of that one. Why did you do that? And how come Mitsuo didn't say anything about you? <laughs> you think that didn't occur to me before I did it? Come on, I'm a detective. I led him through to a room at the station with the TV, switched off the lights, and did it quick while he was still startled. As long as he didn't see me push him in and no one else did either, no one would believe him even if he survived. Of course, I don't think the Kubo kid ever figured out what happened. <laughs> Wait, the police station? Yeah, he turned himself in pretty quick, actually. This was back when we didn't even know enough to issue a search warrant. But the other officers decided it was just a prank, so they pawned him off on me. I didn't blame them. I mean, a kid coming and saying, I did it all, it was me. Who'd believe him? But it looked bad. I didn't think anyone would come forward and take the blame for all the incidents. 
The police were desperate to pin it on anyone. If this kid really did it, they might have announced the case was closed. And if that happened, Namatami would stop saving people. I couldn't let that happen, or the game would be over. That's why I told the others I sent him home. I came up with the idea to put him inside the TV on the spot. The game would be over? You threw him in just so your fun wouldn't end? You gotta have some excitement in life, don't you agree? But then you guys put your foot in it yet again and ruined my fun. Thanks to you, Kubo was arrested again, and everyone acted like he was the true culprit behind it all. <sighs> Couldn't they see how badly he copied the crime scene? It worked out in the end, though, because good old Namatame kept saving people. I guess the guy started to develop some kind of messiah complex, huh? <laughs> what an idiot. This is all a game to you. How dare you murder people? Murder Saki-senpai for such a stupid reason! You bastard! I'll never forgive you! You can keep your forgiveness. Our world will probably become just like this place soon enough anyways. Didn't you notice? The fog's leaking out. Everything on that side's pretty much screwed. The two worlds will merge soon, and then there'll be no difference. No sides anymore. What the hell's he talking about? This isn't his real body. The real Adachi is somewhere else. But this guy feels different from an ordinary shadow. It doesn't seem like he's going berserk. <laughs> wow, you can tell that much? This me is just around to greet you guys, and thank you for wasting your time by chasing me in here. I'd say this world has taken a real shine to me. I feel like it's giving me everything I've ever wanted. And the monsters don't attack me at all. Maybe they can tell we have the same goal. The Shadow's goal? By the end of the year, Inaba will disappear completely into the fog. Soon, this place will be reality. I'll be in this world, so if you want me, come and get me. This world has a mind of its own. We'll see which of us it favors. Keep your bullshit to yourself. It's about time you shut the hell up. We'll finish this right now! <laughs> what a jump! Didn't, Didn't I just, just tell, tell you the real, real me is somewhere else? else? I'll be I'll expecting you all. We'll put an end to this. Get back here, you! <sighs> that stuff about the world's mind and how this place will become our reality. Was he serious? The rest of his confessions were consistent. We'd best proceed under the assumption that it's no lie. It felt like... He's gained some strong power after coming here. Not only that, maybe he got taken over by that power. So what he said about the two worlds becoming one, that's really gonna happen? Didn't he say that it would happen by the end of this year? What happens then? I think he means this world will engulf the human world. The people in town are acting weird. It's like when the shadows that emerged from people went berserk. If the fog gets even thicker, and this town is completely shut off from the outside world, then the other side might become full of shadows, like over here. You mean everyone's gonna turn into shadows? Damn it! Damn that bastard! Why? We went through so much to get here! And now it turns out he was pulling our strings this whole time? Yeah. It's about time we finished this. I don't want to feel this way ever again. There's a path we can take now. I sense Adachi's presence from that direction. He's taunting us. Bring it on! Let's go kick his ass right now! Wait, I suggest we prepare ourselves first. We can't let him stab us in the back ever again. We must face him with all the power at our disposal and defeat him without fail. I'm a little worried what he means by the end of the year, but now's not the time to freak out. Let's get prepared. Let's get over prepared and leave footprints all over his stupid smug face.
I can still do it. This is for you. All right, let's go home. Yeah, well, I quit pretending. Mm hmm. <laughs> what? What? Thanks, man. <laughs> Really? Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.
Hey. Yo! There's something I wanted to tell you. Somewhere deep down, I didn't trust you. No, it's more like... I was jealous of you. I thought you were like me, coming from the city to the countryside. I thought you'd be bored out of your mind here. But as soon as you got here, you called your persona, became our leader, gathered people. You're a hero. I like you for that, and I'm proud of you. But I guess I was jealous at the same time. I didn't know it either. When I called you special, I thought some more about it. I think out of everyone, I wanted to be acknowledged by you the most. So, I want you to hit me. Give me a good one. Knock out all this crap inside of me. I want to be equal with you. I want us to stand shoulder to shoulder. So come on. I don't have a reason to hit you. Uh, I got it now. If we're equal, then I guess you're right. Okay, here I come. Take your best shot. Oh, your punches are brutal. I was seeing stars there for a second. But thanks, man. I don't know how to say it, but that sure beat words. You can have this. If you start bleeding, put that on. You know, we should fight more often. Phew. The sky's so high up. Is Saki-senpai watching us? Is she smiling at us? Senpai, I'm going to live without lying to myself, without deceiving myself. Days like today, days like before when I did nothing, they're all important days. They're all days you didn't live to see. I'm going to live them here. This is my power? The power to protect what's dear to me, huh? <laughs> Just what I wanted. 
Let's keep at it so we can live every day with a smile. Leader. Well, we're all counting on your partner. <laughs> Thank you. Now what?
Another level for me! You be weak. This enemy's weak to darkness. <laughs> Come on down. Two more to go. It's we got it. I live for this part. Um, you're 
weaknesses. Don't give up. Try you. Manji can't use his persona. <laughs> <laughs> Enemy Let's down. Score, please. Show them what you can do, Kanji. <laughs> Enemy defeated. Work, Kanji. <laughs> That's amazing, Yuki. Yo, I'm not working it out. This can't be. <laughs> Senpai's been poisoned. Can someone cure him? <laughs> That's great, Senpai. You really got to. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that from you, Kanji. All right! Another level for me!
okay, Kanji? You seem low on... Senpai.
What should I have? Heck, maybe our shop should do something like this. How about a ganmo kebab? Or a tofu croquette? Well, if it isn't, research on. Um, you're the deputy mayor, right? Good afternoon. I heard the news. You know, about the upcoming film. Hmm? You haven't heard yet? You know Kanamine, right? Konami Mashta. They're gonna be filming nearby, right? I hope they stop by Inaba, too. Oh, I know. Why don't you ask? Kanamin. I don't have anything to do with them anymore. But wait. How many are coming? We only have small bed and breakfasts around here. Got it! They can stay at the Amagi Inn. All right. I need to go tell that manager guy I was just talking to. Oh, Risei-chan, nice to see you. Inoue-san, what do you want today? I'm down here scouting film locations, so I thought I'd come see you. I wanted to hear your answer one more time, face to face. Are you sure you're not coming back? <laughs> I... 
I'm not going back. <laughs> I see. Okay, I understand. Well, now I can focus on my new job. I signed up as Konami Mashita's manager. Remember how we were talking about doing that movie? They picked Konami as your replacement. We're gonna sell Konami. I have every confidence she'll be just as popular. No, even more popular than Rosette. I see. Although, Konami is an ordinary girl. We have to polish her so she sells. <sighs> but you had that spark. You learned fast, adapted well to new situations, had that smile that could be as strong or weak as you needed. And those acting skills of yours, you were like an old pro. You could have reached heights most girls could never dream of. Yeah, that's what I think anyway. So, I just had to hear it from your own mouth. Well then, goodbye. Stay healthy, okay? After he made me answer? He never told me any of that when we were still working together. Acting skills? Of course I have them. What the heck? Telling me all that stuff now? It's too late. <laughs> hey, why am I crying? <laughs> There's no reason to cry. There's nothing to be sad about. Nothing. Senpai, I... I don't know why I'm crying. <laughs> I can't. My eyes will be all swollen tomorrow. I... I lost everything. I don't know how, but... I lost everything. I'm scared. I'm sad. What's going on? Senpai, please, stay here. Stay by my side, Senpai. everything. There are people who need me, right? all messed up. I need time to think it all over, about how I feel now. I don't want to lose anything more. Goodbye, senpai. Yo.
Hello.
Senpai. Later. Oh. 
<laughs> Will you take this? I give you the person I was when I was here. What's right? What you should choose to do in life? The answers to those things lie within you. So long. Good morning.
Senpai, I thought about it. Why my mind just went blank when I heard about Konami. I mean, I ran away from showbiz because I was tired of being an idol. So I shouldn't have had any problems. And yet, I felt so angry about it. Why do you think that is? Yeah. You knew all along, huh? <laughs> but really, that's how it was. Rizet's name in lights, idolized by the masses. That was me, too. I didn't want to lose that me. There's no way to become someone else. I ran away from my plain, gloomy self. Then I ran away from my idol self. Right now, I'm the homicide detective self, I guess. I would have run away from that as well if I didn't realize. I've been trying to become how I wanted to be. I pick a role. When I'm through with it, I continue chasing the real me by picking another role. When in fact, those roles are all me. I don't want to run away anymore. I don't want to search somewhere else for myself. I'm gonna hang in there as the complete me. I came to this town. After all, it's where I met you. <laughs> I have to go home now. <sighs> I wish time would just stop. This is everyone, correct? Don't!
work. Throw down! Persona! That's some thick skin. <laughs> Persona! The hell are you looking at? You be weak. I should work well. You can win this guy. Persona! Okay!
into darkness. Do that. it. That's amazing. On you. Some... That's some thick skin. <laughs> There's some... It's not working. Persona! It's over! I can't defeat it! Whoa, Kanji! That was great! Someone else's turn! Down and die already! Last one! Go for it! There! I couldn't do it! Someone else's turn. Go get him. Go. Another level for me. I leveled up. Another level. Gotta keep at it.
Wow, I'm surprised you made it this far. Allow me to confirm the crimes you've committed thus far. You had suspicions that this world was dangerous, yet you threw Mayumi Yamano into the TV. Knowing full well that Miss Yamano died here, you did the same to Saki Konishi. <sighs> Not only that, but you duped Namatame into taking over your murder attempts while you watched like a spectator at a game. When the disappeared stopped dying, you sent a warning letter to ensure more victims. Even when a copycat killer arose, you had the gall as a detective to eliminate a suspect under investigation. Two people died in the last six months, and a young girl is now in critical condition. But that's not all. If at any turn something had gone wrong, many more would have succumbed. All for some foolish excitement, like a criminal reveling in the chaos he creates. Yeah? So what's your point? All I did was put people in here. It's the world that really kills them, isn't it? This world reflects people's thoughts. Which, oh dear, does that mean the real culprits are everyone on the outside, including you? To hell with that! You did that stuff knowing full well those people were gonna die! If that's not a crime, then what is? <laughs> You're so self-righteous. How can you say that? Aren't you a police officer? Out of everything you could have been, didn't you specifically choose to join the police? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Just because someone joins the police doesn't make them some kind of agent of justice. You know why I applied? So I could legally carry a gun. That's all. You'd be surprised how many are like that. I thought it would be fun, too, but to tell the truth, that was a wash. Everyone around me was such an idiot. I made one tiny mistake, and they all got on my case and sent me out here to Nowheresville as punishment. I was bored shitless and wondering what to do next when I discovered this power. For crying out loud, why a bastard like you? A gift for having to put up with this lame job out in Nowheresville, I guess. I did that stuff because I could, and it got interesting, so I watched. That's your reason? You can't be serious! You really don't care what happens to our world? Let's be honest. There's nothing great about the real world, is there? It's just dull and annoying as hell. No one accepts that's the way things are. They're just stuck with it because they can't deny it either. Those who actually succeed in life, they just happen to be born with a magic ticket called talent. If you don't have it, you can either accept or deny that fact until you die. That's your only choice. Once you realize that, all you have left in life is despair. The ultimate game over. Wouldn't it be better if that kind of reality was wiped away? That's complete BS! Brats like you are so damn naive. You piss me off. Listen, you might have hopes and dreams right now, but that's only because you know nothing about reality. One day you'll see, you'll be faced with a boring reality that boxes you in, no matter where you go. You're the only boring thing here! If you want to disappear, go ahead! Stop dragging us into it! <sighs> Stop yelling, punk! I understand you're all afraid and gotta act tough to cover it up, but jeez. I'm telling you all this based on my own experience in life. Think about it for a second. Once everyone turns into shadows, they'll still keep on living oblivious to all the things around them. So how's that different from the way it is now? No, this'll make things much easier for everyone. Easier? What the hell are you talking about? Come on, how many people out there actually think about what's real or what's right and wrong? Next to none, I bet. It's useless to think about those things in the first place. You don't get anything out of facing reality, and there's no way to change it either. I mean... What could be more boring than brooding over things you can't change? It's better to just ignore them and believe only what you want to believe in life. Doesn't that sound a lot easier? It would be awesome if everyone's life could be that easy. No matter who you are, your lifespan is about 80 years or so, right? Then it'd be easier if we all just became shadows. No need to hold back anything. No more pretending we don't see things. Honestly, we don't need our world anymore. Better to let it be swallowed up and for mankind to turn into shadows. That's what all those people who are scared to death really want. So it's my duty to see that they get it. Nobody wants anything like that! It's just you, dumbass! 
Jeez, don't you remember what it was like when your shadow came out? It must have been enjoying life far more than you. Be careful! I don't know what's happening! You all saw shadows as mere monsters, didn't you? These things move on pure instinct. They go wild because you defy them. You annoying little brats are the ones who are wanted in the new world! Speak for yourself! Living is too painful for you, but you don't want to die? Of course no one would understand. It makes no sense. You're just throwing a tantrum like a kid who can't have his way! People can't live alone. If you give in and sever your ties to human society, it will naturally become hard to live in it. Yet you refuse to face life and admit your fault, running from your own humanity like a coward. And though you claim to find life troublesome, you cause nothing but trouble for many others. Your twisted logic is that of an immature, egotistic brat. Shut up! Stop trying to act all tough! You guys can't even stand on your own! Unless you deny everything I said! Stupid teenagers! You have no idea what kind of shit I've been through! Favored by the world, my ass! I'm gonna say it flat out! You're just a worthless criminal! Here he comes! This'll probably be our last battle. Let's hit him with everything we've got! The world is about to change! Your existence won't belong there! I thought I could just leave you be, but you're like a plague! I'll have to get rid of all of you! I wish we could get rid of you, but we'll make sure you pay for what you've done! Shut up! Get lost! Get the hell out of my sight! I can't believe he's the one! That bastard! We can't lose, no matter what! Throw down! Persona! Persona! <laughs> Come on down! Damn brats! Shut up and let me finish you off! A persona? Can't be. Throw down, persona. Persona, there. <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> You're up! Time for a counterattack! 
gonna disappear soon, no matter what. I didn't have anywhere to go back to anyways. Everyone's gonna become shadows. <laughs> what the- All humans will become shadows, and I shall descend upon the united world as the master of order. Descend? Order? What's with this guy all of a sudden? What's happening? Guys, this isn't a dachi. It's someone completely different. Both this world and yours will soon be enclosed in a fog that never lifts. It will be the peaceful world that mankind has longed for. Who are you? I am Amino Sagiri, one who rules the fog. One awakened by man's desires. Do what you will, but your world's erosion cannot be stopped. It is an inevitability. You played your part well, stirring up the will of the masses into madness. But that will soon come to an end. Mankind will soon become shadows and live on in the darkness of the fog, oblivious of their reality. What the hell are you? Why are you doing this? I am the one that shepherds humans to their true desires. Though their hearts longed for peace, it could never be attained. So they tore down the wall between image and reality. Indeed, this is the outcome desired by mankind. And mankind's desires are my desires. That is why I decided to expand this world. You're saying you're the one who created this nasty-ass world? This is part of the sea of unconsciousness that exists within human hearts. A hollow forest born from bloated desire and false imagery. Humans view things as they see fit. They wish not for truth, but rather prefer the undesirables be hidden in fog. Still, humans fear what they cannot see. That brief yearning for truth becomes a ray of light which breaks the fog and torments the shadows. That's why they attack and kill whoever's nearby at that time. Oh, 
hollow forest, then this place isn't simply affected by people's hearts. It actually exists inside them. Mankind abandoned its pursuit of truth, placing itself in the depth of chaos and falsehood. Thus, my strength has grown, and the fog will not lift. Your world will be engulfed by the hollow forest. Will you shut up already? We'll just use our power to beat the heck out of you and it'll all be over. It was I who made it possible for you to bring about this destiny. I bestowed power onto those who could brave the hollow forest. That is what allowed you to come in contact with this world. And you all have done very well since. Bestowed power? Contact with this world? You mean the power to enter the TV? Then the Midnight Channel, was that phenomenon also your doing? Humans fail to see things as they truly are. They choose to see only what they wish. I acted only in support of this. A world filled with desires, viewed through a window from which one sees what one wishes to see. Humans departed from reality of their own volition, craving more false images. A window that shows people what they want to see. So that's why those who got famous suddenly appeared on the Midnight Channel, one after another. It was all in people's minds. I have to say, it must be true. The Midnight Channel we saw in Namatame's hospital room, that kept bothering me since. What we saw there wasn't Namatame's true intentions at all. Then it came on because we were all thinking, this person must be the killer, he can't be forgiven? <laughs> we let ourselves be deluded. Exactly. The more false images one yearns for, the more one stops yearning for reality. And so the forest grows on. That is the expansion of this world. Enough talk already! Long story short, you're the one behind all this! Yeah, I don't know who you are, but you're going down! People want to become shadows? Their desire is your desire? To hell with that! When did we wish for that crap anyways? We kept fighting and fighting like morons to get where we're standing! Yes, that I did not foresee. The ability to master your own shadow that emerged to kill you and use its power. A new and uncertain facet of mankind. Is it worthy to put my trust in? Or not? It must be tested. you want so far, but that'll end when we crush you! Precisely. Then we know what we gotta do now. I don't want people to turn into shadows! We'll defeat it for sure! I'll back you up with everything I've got! This thing has no right to exist! This act which goes against your world's wishes. Now, let everything vanish into the sweet fog of illusion. This is the end. This time, it's all over. Let's finish off ugly here. We ain't about to let a gross-looking eyeball do whatever it wants. Let us begin. Persona! <laughs> On you. Persona! 
It's over. There. <laughs> You're so Sentai, are you okay? Yusuke Senpai, your agility is down. Counting on you. I can still do this. Persona! <laughs> You're so dumb. Ruin wishes for the fallen to lift. Why act against the wishes of your fellow man? Consider, is that truly just? Come on down! Go! 
Kanji's been hit. Someone help him. Ooh, you're up. Time for a counterattack. Hold on. Throw down. Persona. <laughs> Come on down! Persona! are strong. Power comes from the heart. You have proven to me human potential. Very well. I will lift the fog from the place where you will return to. Mankind's desires are my desires. If mankind so wishes, I will return at any time. I am always at your side, watching. Well, don't wait up! We'll keep that from happening no matter what! Time will show the path humanity takes. Children of the new potential. You think... It was controlling Adachi-san? Who can say? I believe it was at least partially his own intention as well. <clears throat> so that's it, huh? <clears> hmm. <throat> Fine. Live however you want. If you think. 
you have the power to change the future, then go right ahead. Everyone has the power to do that. <laughs> Get out of here. The shadows will finish me off. Just leave me be. You came to kill me in the first place, didn't you? No, dumbass. If we leave you here dying, and a dead body eventually appears, then what? What's that accomplished for anyone? Your stupid game's over. We're taking you back. Live and face your punishment. That's how it works in our world. Right. I'm sure that's the outcome Dojima-san wishes for as well. Greetings, Shirogane-san. We got word from Detective Dojima. He's wanted on suspicion of murdering Mayumi Yamano and Saki Konishi, right? Correct. Understood. We have an ambulance waiting downstairs. Should we have them bring the stretcher up here? An ambulance? Detective Dojima assumed one would be necessary. He wanted the suspect to be carefully taken into protective custody. It... Well, it was a personal favor to him. They were partners, after all. Then yes, please have them bring up the stretcher. Understood. for real. What's up, senpai? Did you think I was crying? It's just so bright. It's been so long since the sky was that blue. It's finally over. Hey, don't get all sappy. We did this together. But, well, this means... We've won. Huh? What are we doing? Ooh, what's this? Everyone ready? Here goes! We did it! Woohoo! Why didn't you guys say it? You all joined in when Risa John did it! Um. I think that was a little too hard to get on the spot. Which part did you mean for us to say? The woohoo part! Can we just do it over? Man, having to redo something like this kind of kills the fun of it. All right, Chia, do that weird call again. Not if you're going to call it weird. <laughs> um, people are beginning to stare. I don't think we should stay like this much longer. My hand's getting kind of sweaty. Sheesh. Fine, then. It's all yours, Sensei. You don't need to explain it again. Sheesh, then I'll say it. Everyone ready? Here goes. We did our best. Woo! Woo! Dude, 
Aren't you supposed to do this before you start something, not after it's over? Huh? Who cares? <laughs> My parents booted me out of the house tonight. I was helping out like normal, but my parents said I was bothering them. They're being overprotective. I can go out on a date without any help. <laughs> but I like them so much. Oh, thanks for the cake. It looks really delicious. By the way, I have a present for you. I know you won't be staying in Inaba forever. I want you to take that when you go, for me, since I'm going to be staying here, in this town. Hmm. <laughs> I should stop talking about gloomy stuff like that. We've solved the case. I want today to be fun. Hmm. I've been wondering why I like you. It's not like that. Ugh. Um, what else do people do during Christmas? The inn is always busy during this time of year, so I've never spent a Christmas night like this before. I've never had a boyfriend either. I'm so happy that you're my first boyfriend. Hmm. Hmm. It's not the first time I've had that thought. Hmm? Um... Huh? Can I... stay here tonight? Uh, I told my mother that I'd spend the night at Chie's place. So I can stay here without anyone minding. I... I love you. So the case is closed for reals this time. I think we can safely leave the rest to the police. Adachi has confessed his crimes, so I'm sure Namatame's presumed guilt will be re-examined as well. I see. Then that really wraps it up. What do you do now, Teddy? You're not going back over there, are you? You better not, you dumb bear. You don't know how much you worried us last time. I won't suddenly disappear like that again. Damn straight you won't. Man, just stay here, all right? Hey, it's me. Good news. It looks like they're letting Nanako come home for a bit. She's awake again, and she's got a good amount of strength back, too. If all goes well, she might be able to leave the hospital for the time being. And as for me, they said I just needed to see a doctor regularly. So I'm planning to come home with Nanako today. Sorry I had to stick you with all the housework. I'll make up for it somehow. Anyway, see you later. Really? Nanako-chan's coming home? I'm so happy for her. 
Me too. I'm really glad. The fog's all gone over here because everyone tried so hard. And now Nana-chan's gotten better. Nanako-chan tried hard too. She... She's such an amazing girl. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, thank heavens she's okay. <laughs> Where are you touching? Uh? Well, one thing's certain it's party time! Let's throw a big Christmas party for Nanako chan! A party, you say? I'm sure Nana-chan will be delighted! We'll need a cake, then. G guys please say you're not gonna... Huh? We're gonna make one. Of course we're gonna make one. I've already researched the ingredients. Hey, wait, wait a sec. Whoa there! That's way too tall an order for you! Let's go to the grocery department! Come on, Natto-kun, you too! But I've never baked a cake. Don't worry, neither have we. It's so warm. So this is the fabled Kotatsu. I was really looking forward to the new Kotatsu. Yeah, you talked about it all the time at the hospital. Nanako needs to go back for a full checkup early next year, but if they don't find anything wrong, they'll let her go immediately. If I'd gotten better sooner, we would have been able to buy the Katatsu together. Sorry. Okay. Next time, let's go together. Sorry for the wait! Oh no. The Christmas edition of Mystery Food X is about to be served. Bring it on. I'm ready. Got my insurance card and everything. <laughs> it's a cake! Hey, this is bigger than I imagined. Well, wait, Nanako-chan! I'll be the first one to... No! It's delicious! It tastes really good! Th that can't be... No... Has she lost all sense of taste? Did you guys really make this? Huh? Of course we did! Does it actually taste like something? It's not hot, is it? How is it, Kanji? Hmm? It, it's amazing! You know what they say about true talent not needing to show off. Turns out we had good taste in cooking after all. <sighs> then again, this one was our third attempt. Hey, Yosuke! Chie-chan and the others really are talented chefs. Three stars for sure! I impossible! This... Actually tastes good. Wait, I didn't already pass out, did I? This isn't a dream, right? Um, Nana Chan, guess what I have? Ta da! A Christmas present for you! Oh, it looks just like you! I wish I could have made it look better, but I thought it'd keep you company at the hospital, Nana Chan. Oh, and it's made from 100% pure teddy fur. I'm a guy who's all about using all natural materials. I isn't that nice of him, Nanako? Teddy fur. Uh-huh. Thank you, Teddy. I have to thank you all again. Adachi confessed to the two murders. He insists it was him who hung the bodies, too. There are still things that are unclear about his story, but he's most likely going to pay for his crimes. Anyway, this was one strange case. 
If what you said about a world inside the TV was true, then everything might make sense. But I still don't believe it. Some things in this world just can't be explained. Like Nanako. She made a miraculous recovery, and now she's as healthy as ever. Back in the day, my own senpai on the force told me something. There's an underside to everything that you can never see. This case has made me think about a lot of things. You've helped us out so much. <laughs> it was meant to be the other way around, really. There isn't much time left until spring, but I hope I can do some catching up until then. That's right. You're only here until spring, huh? Senpai, you're going back? It won't be the same without you. Sensei, are you going somewhere? Don't forget, there are people waiting for you. When you get home, show your parents how much you've grown this past year. And then if they're okay with it, you can come back here at any time. Come on, spring's a long ways off, right? Let's have all the fun we can until then. <laughs> hey, don't get too carried away. My sis would kill me if you got yourself held back a year. Oh, but then you wouldn't have to go back, huh? Wow, if that happened, I'd be in the same grade as Senpai. Yo! You're back. with Chie. Have you checked your TV? Nothing came on, right? I mean, there was no glow or anything. It's definitely raining outside, though. Does this mean the Midnight Channel's off the air? I'm being serious here. Now that we beat that Amino Sagiri, the case is completely over, right? <laughs> awesome. Sorry, I didn't mean to hound you for an answer. I just felt nervous. But it's finally sinking in. All of us together. We did it! Man, all these things are coming back to me. Like, when I put you on the spot and asked you to be our leader? <laughs> what am I getting all worked up for? The others must all be super happy right now, too. I bet Chia is practically crying her eyes out. All right, I'll call you again later. Seriously, though. Thanks.
Sorry. Whew. Sorry to keep you waiting. Wait, huh? Is it just you here, senpai? Seriously? This is the time we all decided on, isn't it? I was watching TV at home, but it seems like I fell asleep. When I woke up, that New Year's show, Toshi Koshi Kuru Toshi, had already started, so I rushed out here. Sorry we're late. Hellos! I'm sorry, Sensei. It's all Yosuke's fault. Ah, you're such a good bear. Me? It was 100% your fault. But I am sorry about making you wait. We had an emergency at work. Everyone had to refill all of the lucky draw bags. We just finished a second ago. Because a certain someone just crammed a bunch of stuff into the bags without checking any of the prices. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. Talking about you, you little... Moving on. Hey, Sensei, where's Nana-chan and her dad? You doofus. You can't come out on a cold night like this. Dojima-san and Nanako-chan just got temporarily released from the hospital for the holidays. They aren't healed yet. Well then, where's everyone else? Why are only the guys here? D don't tell me. Is this going to be some lame guys' night celebration? N no lovely girls? Hell no. But man, they're late. They should have gotten here a while ago. What if they're all meeting up at Yukiko-senpai's house first? You know, like to put on their kimonos. K kimonos? Did you hear that, S -s Sensei? Kimonos! Aren't you getting worked up about this a bit too early? Huh? You're the only one who's not psyched for kimonotion! Why are you turning this on me? Although I must say, seeing Rizet in a kimono would be quite a sight. Oh, maybe Naoto's in one too. Okay, now I'm starting to get a little... I'm sorry about the wait. Sorry. We went to buy some heating packs and ended up running late. We're sorry. Huh. Uh, what's with the non-reaction? What? Oh, where are your kimonos? Why would I be in a kimono? We aren't going to be out long enough to bother with putting one on. See, that's what I thought. I told you all that from the beginning. Ow, my ears! You got your hopes up on your own? Don't take it out on us! A girl has to save her best outfits for the moments that count the most. Huh? A kimono's one of a girl's best outfits? Wait, you're implying that you're out of our league. She wasn't implying. My heart just froze over. Um, shouldn't we be more mindful of the time? If we don't hurry, we'll have to do the countdown here at the entrance. Oh no! We're going to miss the two-year shrine visit! This is my first time being with friends on midnight of New Year's Day. I'd always just spent it with everyone at the inn until last year. Actually, I'm glad we were all able to celebrate today here peacefully. Yeah. All right, everyone, let's get going. <sighs> Staying still makes me cold. They're handing out Amazaki over there. Uh, uh, not till New Year's. Hey, how huh? long till next year? Uh. Oh. oh, it's almost time. Okay, five, four, three, two, two one. one. <laughs> Happy New Year! I'm glad we're here together. New Year's here. Finally, the New Year. Let's make this year a great oh, happy new year, both year of you. Partner. Thank you. <laughs> no, you're so Nope, none for you, Rise. What? And the same goes for you, Yukiko. Oh, come on, just let it go. <laughs> <laughs> it's snowing. Wow. Wow. I told you it was cold. Do you think the snow will pile up? This is what they call a white New Year's, huh? No one calls it that. 
It's a new year, but you're still Moranji. What? Moranji. Oh. What? Hey, hey, what are you nodding for? <laughs> <laughs> Moranji! Shut up! group has crossed the big show of bridge and they're using their final kick as they prepare to hand off the runners for the next leg wait for their turn to don the sash and run this relay point was changed in 2009 ah there you are all right are we ready then happy new year happy new year Happy New Year to you too, big bro! We'll probably still be a bit of a pain for you, but may things go well this year. In any case, you've changed over this past year. You've got a man's face now. I didn't see you while I was hospitalized, and that's what made me notice. I feel relieved, since so much happened. Though... It is odd for me to say that, since I'm the one that caused you such trouble. <laughs> Dad, can we eat yet? All right, let's dig in. Man, I can't thank those guys working the holiday at Jeunesse enough. I wandered over there and they even had New Year's food. Thanks for the food! Let's eat. Nanako, what do you want to eat? I'll get it for you. Sorry to keep you waiting. Were you waiting long? I hope not. I couldn't decide which kimono to wear since I thought you'd notice the smell of mothballs. How do I look? Although, I'm always wearing a kimono, so it might not be all that different than usual for you. Thanks. I really like this color and pattern. I don't wear any kimonos that stand out when I'm helping out at the inn, so I don't get many chances to wear this. Many people talked to me on my way here. A lot of them were our regular customers and our suppliers. I guess they thought I was working since I was wearing a kimono. They all told me it must be tough to have to work today. I think this is the first time I've been hiding something from everyone in the shopping district. But for some reason it felt... Exciting. And my heart's pounding even more right now. What wish will you make today? Me too. I feel really happy right now. Please heed our earnest wishes, God. Do you want to draw fortunes? got a small blessing. Looks like I'm a step behind you. <laughs> that might not be so bad. I do like your back, after all. Oh, I shouldn't say that. We're only talking about fortunes right now. Our visit to the shrine went by in a flash. Enjoyable times always end so quickly. The night comes so much faster when I'm with you. 
I never thought such things before. When I'm with you, I experience so many new things. Do you want to go to a cafe or something? Oh, but it's still the first three days of the new year. Cafes may not be open. Are you sure? If it's not a bother, then all right. <laughs> Although, with my kimono on, that might not be such a good idea. I might mess it up if I'm too excited. <gasps> That's not what I meant! Nanako-chan will be there, so I was just thinking about playing with her. She was all alone at the hospital. Oh, hey, why are you laughing? <laughs> That's it. Let's just go look for a shop that's open. You're back. Looks like we got a lot of snowfall this year, huh? Hey! I want to make a snowman! A snowman, huh? I'd help you make one, but the doctor told me to avoid bending over so that my back would heal up. What about you, big bro? Yay! Nanako, don't get too worked up, alright? You'll get sick and have to stay at the doctor's for a long time. Okay. If you get cold, come right in. Can you promise that? Uh-huh. Big bro, that's amazing! How did you get it so big? I think you two have done enough. Let me help now. I think I can take it home from here. Yeah? Just watch and learn. <laughs> You're not the master of snowmen in this house yet. There. Still needs a face, though. We should draw one for it. We're gonna draw a face? Hey, big bro, I want it to look like Teddy. Can you make the face look like Teddy? It's a Teddy man! <laughs> it looks so cool! You're pretty good. Good for you, Nanako. Thanks, big bro. If we don't go in soon, you'll catch a cold. Aww, already? I'll make you something hot to drink. Well, it'll just be coffee. Okay, make it sweet for me.
Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! All right. Happy New Year! Happy New Year!
Welcome to the Velvet Room. Ah, I remember now. I have something I must tell you. Marie has left this room. I suppose that means that her purpose here has come to an end. From now on, I shall take on her role. Is there anything else I may help you with today? You're back. Happy New Year! Oh, wait, I already said that. I hope we get along this year, too! But I already said that! <laughs> Sorry to drop by unannounced. I thought about calling you, but we were already in the area. Thank you for inviting me in. You've got to wait for him to actually invite you in first. Sheesh. Do you have any plans during the break? If you don't have anything lined up, why don't we go skiing? There are a lot of mountains in the area, and it seems that there are a lot of little ski resorts around here. It'll be a cheap trip because it's local. And the snow quality's supposed to be pretty good, too. What do you think? All right, I knew you'd say that. Chia and Yukiko said that they're free, too. So I'm going to start making serious plans for this. Yukiko's usually busy during this season, too. If she's free, I'm pretty sure everyone else should be able to come. Ooh, another overnight event. I'll leave ski tracks of love under the frigid sky. Hey, Yosuke, do we have a plan for our second chance at a surprise sneak in? Why are you assuming that we're going to try that again? What happened last time was bad enough. It ain't over till it's over. That doesn't make much sense. I mean, stop bringing that up. We're talking about skiing here. Skiing? Ah, you guys are here. Hello. Sorry for barging in. Oh, and Happy New Year. Oh, yeah. Same to you. Well, we're going to go now. Sorry, but I'm leaving you to fend for yourself for a while. We should be back by the middle of the month. Are you going on a trip? Nah, we're headed to the hospital. Nanako was only allowed to leave the hospital for New Year's. I need to take her back. Seriously? I'm sorry, I shouldn't have mentioned stuff like skiing at a time like this. No, that's, that's okay. Nanako's getting better, but the doctor wants to be sure, just in case. I'll be going along for physical therapy and to keep her company. But I'm all better! You don't want there to be any germs hiding away inside you, do you? Don't worry, I'll be with you. It won't be for much longer, okay? Well then, sorry, but I'll have to count on you to look after the house. See you, big bro! Poor Sensei. Are you all alone at home again? I know! I'll stay here with you until Nana-chan and Pops come back. Stay? Wait, do you plan on moving in? Don't be stupid. He already has to do all the housework. I can't saddle him with some burden like you. Sensei, your life with me will be priceless. Wowee! Now that's my sensei! You're agreeing just like that? Man, I'm no kanji, but you seriously are an easygoing guy. Now that that's decided, I'm gonna go get my bare longings and some snacks. Man, he's out of our control. Look, just let him spend one day here at least. If he bugs the hell out of you, you can send him back to me whenever you want. And think about that ski trip. I'll send you an email once I've got all the details worked out.
猫。You're late. See ya. Of course. Yo! in Senpai's room. Seems quite clean for a boy of his age. Um, there doesn't seem to be anything lying around that he wouldn't want me to see. Now then, where could the goods in question be hiding? I'll ask the man himself. So, where do you hide them? Huh? Oh, <laughs> 
don't... I'm sorry. Um, it's not that I wanted to know. I, I just got kind of embarrassed, so... You meanie. Senpai, you're leaving in the spring, right? I've made up my mind about something. You see, I'm thinking of going back into showbiz this spring. I am Rizad, after all. And when I consider it that way, I think I can have more fun working. I know how hard it is for a star to make a comeback after an entire year's absence. But even then, I want to start over from the beginning. Do you remember the fan who gave me that letter? I'll do it for her. For my old manager, Inoue-san. For my family, everyone. You. And for myself. Senpai, this... I want you to have it, Senpai. It's the one we took at school. I look really normal, don't I? But even then, I signed it Reset. A reset without a fake smile. Senpai, I won't make the same mistake. There's no such thing as a me who isn't me. So I won't run away. I won't try to be someone I'm not. There's a lot of reses inside me. I won't try to change them. Instead, I'll let people know that those reses exist. That's the me I want to be. <laughs> you're watching me, I'll do my best. So, um, well, I'm happy doing anything if you're there with me. Well, <laughs> oh, come on. I've confessed my love hundreds of times on TV. Why can't I do it in person? <sighs> I'm sure I can hang in there as long as you're watching me. Because, um, you're special to me. what I'm doing, I am me. I can say that for sure now. And the strength to say so, it was you who found it for me. I'm going to like the me you found. After all, I like the you who found her. Senpai, I love you. I love you. <sighs> Senpai, keep watching me. So I won't mess up again. Look at me. <sighs> um, well, I... I've never gone through this kind of thing, so... Um, if we were on a TV set, this would be a wrap. So, uh, what am I supposed to do after this? <sighs> Welcome home!
Thank you. I'm sorry to ask you here so suddenly. It feels a bit awkward going home today. Well... It's actually customer's day for me today. That's a day when the inn's employees take turns being customers. We've done it every now and then for a while, but I decided to participate this time, too. I wanted to see from a customer's point of view if our inn is truly satisfying, so I asked them to sign me up. You, you think so? I was embarrassed. I played customer once before, too, but it made me a little uncomfortable. It was strange having Mother and everyone say things like, Welcome to me. That's why I wanted to stay out of it a little longer. <laughs> but I brought this on myself. I told everyone at the inn that I hadn't planned to take over as manager, that I wanted to leave Inaba. I thought it would be me finally coming clean to everyone. But they all just laughed and said they knew already. It made me realize how small I was. I was surrounded by good people, but I didn't understand that at all. I had myself convinced I had to bear my problems alone. I lied to myself, and looked away from small opportunities, and only put my efforts into leaving it all behind. But after making so many good friends like you and Chie, I realized something. If I'm going to take one step at a time away from here, every step I use to run will take me somewhere I don't want to be. And if I keep averting my eyes, one day I might find myself blind to everything. When I open my eyes, I see how vast the world is. If I was alone, I think it would be incredibly scary. But fortunately, I'm surrounded by kind, supportive people. Now I hope I can grow into someone that can support them in turn.
see, so I can still change. Ever since I fell in love with you, I felt myself changing into someone completely different. I keep finding sides of myself I never noticed before, and I love every one of them. It would make me happy if you did too. Please, continue to stay at my side. Sensei's home.
Was it okay to come out today? Did you have anything you needed to do? You remember when I told you before that I had a number one fan? A girl who was being bullied and would send me letters? She sent me another letter. She says she's going to stop being my fan. She's made friends with someone, but her new friend is a fan of someone else. It seems she was told something like, I'll quit being your friend if you stay a Rosette fan. She did say that she'll be cheering for me in her heart, but she won't be sending me any more letters. You mean you, Senpai? <laughs> you really are kind. Relationships between people are difficult, aren't they, Senpai? There's something like a mutual respect between her and me. I don't even know what she looks like, but I know she has a pure heart. I also know that she's persistent, but when another person enters the picture, things suddenly get complicated. Throw in four or five people and it's pure chaos. There's no malice involved, and it's no one's fault. Yet, we end up hurting each other, becoming lost. It, it makes me so tired sometimes. That's why I want to keep trying my best. I mean, I am an idol after all. Thanks. An idol isn't some doll in a window being held up for public display. I think it means somebody who can endure things and stand their ground, no matter which way they're pushed. Even if that girl doesn't write me letters, I bet she'll still watch me if I'm on TV. I can be her strength, as well as many other people's strengths. Even though many things may not go my way and I may be troubled, swept off my feet and get lost, I won't lose. I have to protect the smiles of the people who are precious to me. That's the resolve I found after meeting all of you. inside of me that I didn't have before. I've learned so many important things from the people I hold dear to me. Senpai, I feel like my heart is about to burst. I'm so excited about the future now. Hardship and sadness and everything, it can all be changed into the power to take a step forward. I'm still just getting started. You and everyone else, you're all gonna keep changing too, in your own ways. That's why I'm not scared of a long-distance relationship, either. When I'm lonely, my love for you will grow stronger. And when I smile on TV, I'm smiling for you. So you smile too, Senpai. And tell me you love me every once in a while, okay?
Sensei's home. Freezing. All right. What kept you? <laughs> you can have this. Night. Yo! All right! It's been a while since I last talked to you one-on-one -on -one like this. It's been pretty busy in the department I work in. I'm still doing that consultation thing, too. I caused you some trouble, too, with that mess at Juness. Really? <laughs> That's good to know. Back then, I was constantly irritated, wondering why that stuff was happening to me. I was overworked just because I was the store manager's son, and on top of that, tons of people took me for granted. I thought no one was thinking about me. But that's not how I feel now. I took a roundabout way realizing this, but one constant in my life is that people rely on me. I thought before that I was shameless for being like that, but I just don't mind it. When I'm doing things for other people, it helps me try harder. When Nanako-chan was kidnapped, didn't you think I was surprisingly on top of things? Now that you say it like that, I feel pretty lame. In any case, I tried pretty hard at the time. Of course, I was serious about wanting to save Nanako-chan and solve the case. But mainly, it was because I thought you were going through some tough times. When we were debating dropping Namatame into the TV, I was just seeing red. I was so overwhelmed with hate and wanting to blame everything on him that I stopped thinking for myself. I think the same could be said about what happened to Juness. People just think about their own interests. But if I ignore them and say it's none of my business, 
I won't get anywhere. I'll forget what's important, and I won't be able to be proud of myself. I won't be able to say I did my best. I want to keep pushing myself like that. I want the people I care about to be happy. Is this for real? There's a lot I'm grateful for from this past year, but the biggest thing, I think it was that I met you. If you ever lose your way, I'll go knock some sense into you. It won't matter if you're at the ends of the earth or in somewhere dark and bleak. That's what partners are for, right? Sensei's home. Yeah, it's me. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, 
Welcome back. Me to you. Come on.
Welcome home. Senpai! <laughs> All right, Senpai! you to have this, senpai. Let Sorry to keep you waiting. Huh? Let's go. That wasn't bad. I wouldn't mind doing that again. Senpai!
Thanks. Welcome back!
love you. Just a little longer. Welcome back. Kisses. Oh, don't be so shy. Smoochy, smoochy. Come on, please. Yeah! My pheromones are too powerful. I came on too strong. Stop, break, cut. It's all a mistake. Today's the day Nana Chan comes back. So I've been practicing hard to greet her. Oh, I know. Sensei, what does it mean to glomp somebody? I found that in one of Yosuke's books, and I'm pretty sure it's romantic. Sensei, I knew I could count on you. Oh, it's a bear hug. I can do that. My heart's beating so fast. I feel like I'm being swept away. What the hell are you two doing? Big bro, I'm home. Oh, Teddy's here too. Nanachan, you're all better! Easy there, Nanako. You don't want to get hurt again. Nuh-uh. The doctor said I'm all better. <sighs> well, she's been so strong this whole time. Who am I to argue? I owe you a lot for this, so I've gotten us a fancy dinner for tonight. Look, we bought sushi, and it says premium on the package. That means it's super fancy. I call the Harami and Kohara. Okay, well, I was able to say hello to Nanachan, so I guess I'll be going now. You're going home already? Now that you're home, Sensei won't be lonely anymore, so... Plus, I'm not a family member. Sensei, so I can stay here? You're Big Bro's friend and my friend. Friends can stay here. Right, Dad? Don't worry about it. It's just sushi. We're celebrating today. Pops, I'm such a lucky bear. Shinier than usual. It did cost a pretty penny. Mmm, yeah, that's good stuff. Mmm. Big Pro, I love sushi. It's so good. Oh, shoot. I forgot to ask them not to put wasabi on it. Here, Nanako, I'll scrape yours off. Which do you want? Maybe we should have split it into separate portions first. 
It's so good, so good, so good. Yo! Yeah. Chan. Thank goodness you got better. Thank you. I feel great now. I can go home and live like normal. Right, Thick Bro? Yeah, I can go to school and help out around the house like I always do. <laughs> I think you're even more energetic than before. Man, am I glad you're okay. When you went missing, I swear that was the most scared I've ever been. Plus, uh... Um, I don't really remember what happened. I'm sorry. Nanako-chan. Yosuke, you need to practice not sticking your foot in your mouth. I mean, seriously. Sorry. You can't blame her for not remembering. It was the same for us. Besides... It's better that she forget. That's right! Nanako-chan is better now, and that's all that matters! Oh yeah, is Dojima-san coming by? Dad, he went to work today. We'd just be bothering him if we asked him to come here. We're supposed to be celebrating, not having him buy us lunch. Because I'm sure that's what he'd do. Nanako-chan, aren't you bored just sitting and talking here? No, it's fun being with everyone! There's plenty of snacks, too! Nana-chan, let's go see all the food tasting stands! The kind ladies will cook you anything you want, right in front of you! No, they don't. I know they're always yelling at you. 
What about tag then? You run around and then these scary guys come after you. It's so thrilling. That's store security. Heck, your whole idea of fun is just pissing people off and no running. That'd be fun to play hide and seek in a store this big. Hide and seek? I'm good at that. Both the hiding and the seeking. Oh. Big bro, did you come find me? Wait, that's... Monaco-chan? Do you remember? Not really. But I remember everyone coming for me. You are all cool, like those heroes on TV. Nana-chan. <laughs> I was able to become Nana-chan's hero. Don't cry, Ted. I'm, I'm allergic to people who cry. <laughs> I see. You remember. Then let's do it for reals. Juness, hide and seek. Really? Is that okay? We still have time before the special announcements. Plus, there's no need to run and hide and seek. If I tell my manager, I'm sure he'll let us use the electronics section. That's my boss! I'll be rooting for you when you write your apology! If I get permission, then I won't have to write one. This is so exciting! Nanako-chan, which part do you want to do first? Um, both! All right, winner gets meat! Why are you betting? None of this makes sense. <laughs> Welcome back. Yo.
Shall we go home now? Welcome back. Good day. Yes. Yes. See you again. Oh, welcome home, 
come, Big Bro. Senpai! Yeah. Smoke yeah. The other day I went to visit Dad's grave. It's the first time I went on my own. I had a lot to tell him. How was it? I, well, I felt like I could finally face him. A little late, though. <laughs> Dad told me something right before he died. If you're a man, you have to become strong. Felt like he was telling me I wasn't a real man. Pissed me off. So I changed my looks and pushed myself away from people. Fighting gangs, thinking I was keeping mom safe, and even trying to catch the killer. I was just being stubborn. I thought all that was how I was becoming strong. That I was really making up for all the trouble I caused. I was drunk off my power. But that wasn't it. That ain't what dad meant. I still don't really get what being strong means, but I'm going to start by not lying to myself. No more being scared of everyone, hiding my hobbies, staying away from people. Anytime, any place, I'm going to bust right through as my own self. That's the way to deal with that other me in the TV world. As long as there's someone like that snot-nosed kid to accept me, I ain't afraid of nothing. Sir, it's all thanks to you. Oh yeah, I'm gonna put those dolls of mine up for sale at the shop. They were a big hit with that kid and his mom. They called me just to say thank you. <laughs> I got a kick out of that. You're back. I want you to have it, Senpai. Good night, Senpai. Thank you. 
Well, let's go! You're back. Senpai. I'll see you again. home.
Yeah. Snowflake. Yeah. Sorry for barging in like this. I thought it'd be a good place. Oh, first though, there's one more thing I figured out. Reese stopped by our store the other day. She said the dolls were cute, so I told her I made them. Then she said that was creepy. Kind of stung, but I kept on showing her the other stuff I made. And in the end, she said, maybe you're an amazing guy after all. Pissed me off the way she said it, but that aside, I get it now. This is what he was talking about. Just been throwing in the towel all this time. Of course no one could understand me. I've been keeping my distance out of fear. So I decided that I do things my way, no matter how tough. But it ain't just about hanging out with guys who understand you and telling the rest to get bent. You gotta make an effort if you want people to understand you. I wasn't even trying. Not just about my hobby, but like, when the police suspected me, it didn't even cross my mind to try to tell them my story. I let them think whatever they want. And because of that, you, Ma, and that kid all got dragged into it. I didn't put in the slightest effort to try and make them understand. It's easier for me to act tough. So from now on, I got two rules. Rule one, be myself. Rule two, Get people to understand me. I want you to have this, Senpai. This thing's me being me. Now I can say it straight out. Huh? That other me is me. This? For reals? You're my hero, dude. And my best bud. So as far as getting other people to understand me, today I'm holding the Oven Mitt Puppets 101 class right here. Don't worry, even you can do it. It'll be real cute. Believe me. Sorry.
Hello. mom died, I was lonely, but I'm not the only one who's sad that mom's not here anymore. Dad, he was lonely too. I'm sorry, Dad. Good day.
I'll see you again. Welcome back. Yo! Senpai! Yeah. Sorry for barging in like this. I wanted to talk to you, or, well, more like I wanted to ask you something. You know, well, uh, it, it's about a present. What would be, uh... Oh, okay, let me start over. I want to give someone a present. I don't know what they'd like, so... I thought I'd ask for your advice. It, it, it's for a woman. Um, I want to give it to Ma. Well, you strike me as a chick magnet. I thought you might know all about what women like. I am... Begging you, I have no idea what to give her. I want to be damn sure Mom's happy with it. I should tell you, Ma went to the hospital. Oh, it was just for an exam, though. She's out already and doing totally fine. But the tests seemed like they were rough on her, so I want to give her something like a hospitality award. Stop teasing me. I went to go visit her while she was there. It was hard for me to see her in that hospital, though. When I was there, Ma looked at me and said, you've changed. She said, your father and I are proud of you, son. If 
funny, huh? I ain't too bright and I keep causing her all this trouble. She says she's proud of me. I mean, I'm, I'm the one who should be proud of her. She raised a punk like me without a single complaint and worked herself to the bone and no one thanked her for it. I just, I feel like I need to give her some encouragement now and then. <laughs> Getting kind of leaky here. I'm always right though. I have changed. It was because I got to know you guys. Until I met you, I was so mad that people saw me as some weirdo that I tried to get back at anyone who looked at me funny. I wasn't holding my head up high. I wasn't proud of myself. But getting to know you better made me realize something. I don't think it matters what kind of guy I am. As long as I can hold my head up high, Ma's going to be proud of me. Still, I want to become someone that Ma and you guys can be proud of. So I'm going to spend my life keeping myself in check to make sure I don't lose my way again or start lying to myself. This must be another me, huh? And I'll keep changing however I want to from here on out. I, I want to fight for others instead of just for myself. I'd rather die protecting something that matters than worrying if I can win the fight. I think that's the way to be. And one day, I hope I can be strong enough to protect you too. It takes a hell of a strong man to say that, Sensei. I've got a long way to go. Well then, let's make that gift. My present to Ma. I got some tools for you to work with too. It's cold out now, so maybe something warm for when she goes to sleep would be good. Hey, how about a crocheted hugging pillow you can put a hot water bottle inside? I'll call it a, a warmy yarny. <laughs> if we work together on it, it'll be a masterpiece. Ma always seems to like it when I tell her stories about you, so she'll love this. Man, I'm glad I asked you, senpai. Wasn't this a great idea? All right.
You're back. Huge, so wide, so salty! Wait! The salt was actually me sweating. It's tough to skate against the wind. Wow! The winter sea is really cool, too. Coming here with everyone was fun, but it's exciting to be here alone with you, too. This must be the true charm of the winter sea. Sensei, over here! Let's do that thing people are supposed to do on the beach and run around in the surf! Come on! Try and catch me! Sensei, why is the sea so huge? The world. I know what that is. It's where everything is, and everything in it is connected. The sea's sparkly. I didn't know anything about anything until I met you and everyone else. Fun things, feelings that make me want to cry, how the sea is so beautiful. I didn't know anything, and I never thought about wanting to learn either. I can feel all kinds of things in me now. All these feelings created after I met all of you. I think that's my life. It's these different feelings that keep me going. There's still tons of things I don't understand. And I don't know what I'm going to do from here either. But I've decided that I'm going to do the best with this life that I can. Even though I was scared... I took a step forward and discovered such a wonderful, shiny world. That's why you too, Sensei. S -sen sensei! <laughs> Beep! 
because you're going away soon. I want you to know, Sensei. But I felt like if I told you, then you'd leave for good. <laughs> Do you get what I'm trying to say? Do you understand this tremendous love I'm professing? <laughs> but I'll be okay. It's sad, but being sad is part of life, too. I've made my decision to stop relying on you so much, Sensei. I will now enter the independent Teddy chapter of my life, so that this time I can be your Sensei. came out I'm an all new model now Teddy version 3 or is it 4 maybe I should study counting first oh but even though I've entered my independent phase I'm still gonna have Yosuke take care of me I'm not that independent yet back.
Hello. That isn't it. Welcome back. Welcome back.
Hey, you're pretty good. Dude, you too. Is this really your first time snowboarding? Just gotta keep your balance, right? Whoa! <laughs> You gotta open up your stance. Do you get it? Come on. It's it's easier said than. Huh? Whoa! Damn, that hurt. Oh, oh, so sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you owe me a date. You won't win. down this slope a bunch of times now. Hey, what do you think of my snowboarding skills? I bet you're head over heels with them. Well, yeah, but only because we were falling down all the time. Teddy kept crashing into me. It's not fair that Kanji gets to keep skiing with Nao-chan. I'm completely against one-on-one -on -one personal lessons. So you were doing it on purpose, you bastard! You guys are completely ignoring my lines, huh? So this was your first time skiing, Naoto-kun? How was it? I can barely even stand upright. Kanji-kun is teaching me, but it's not going as I'd hoped. I keep going in the wrong direction or falling over without warning. I hope I do a little better tomorrow. You don't look it, but you really don't like losing, do you? Should we go up one more time? What? I'm too tired. My legs are giving out on me. My fur's all frozen, too. I feel like Frosty the Snow Bear. We've got tomorrow, too, so let's call it a day. Aren't you hungry, Chie? I didn't even notice it until now. I'm super hungry! What are we having for dinner at the lodge? I think soul cooked in non-regional style. That non-regional part caught my attention. So, it's a non-style style? What is that supposed to taste like? I think you would only call it something like that if you weren't all that confident about your food. I doubt the chefs would appreciate hearing that from you guys. That's so mean. I remember you yelling about how delicious that cake we made was. I wasn't yelling. And that cake was only good because Naoto helped you. That's not true. It was thanks to the cookbook. I don't care which it was. And you guys should have been using a cookbook in the first place. There's something more important at hand right now. Soul is a fish, right? What about some real meat? Meat! How much of a carnivore are you? I don't think I saw any real meat dishes on the menu. No beef? Or pork? Or even chicken? She's got a point. And considering how much we've been skiing, I could use something with a lot of protein. Neat. Has the day finally come that you all want a little taste of Teddy? No, we never do that. Bear meat is pretty gamey after all. You're so cruel, Yuki-chan! Teddy's still in the bathhouse? We saw these college girls while we were having dinner. He said he was gonna hold out in the bath until they showed up. Sheesh, what's he up to now? 
You say that, but I bet you wish you were there with him right now, don't you? What? That's the worst. Wouldn't you rather spend time with us? I mean, me rather than people like that, senpai? Dude, how awesome is it that we all get to stay overnight like this? And it's co-ed. So why don't we... No. But I didn't suggest anything yet. Sorry, were you going to say play cards? Why don't we go night skiing? I've always been impressed by people who can do that. Then we'd have to take another bath afterwards. Honestly, I'm already exhausted from snowboarding all day. Then why don't we do what people usually do when they get together at night? Tell ghost stories. I don't know. Isn't that usually a summer thing? Yeah, um, I think I'll have to disagree too. Huh? Could it be that you're actually scared of ghost stories? Stuff like in those stories actually happens in the mountains. That one time during shooting was enough for me. What? Stop it! Oh, our inn has a lot of spooky stuff, too. Once, we asked a customer how he liked his room, and he said the restroom was too dark. But his room didn't have one. And sometimes when you take pictures in that room during Obon, they don't come out right. Oh, that's pretty creepy. Oh, and I heard that Haniwa are occasionally found in the mountains around here. They say this entire area could have been a grave site long ago. Folklore has little valid scientific evidence, but is a result of cultural significance and strong story elements. Any ancient burial ground is likely just the site of a t t temple. So, um... You're scared too? Yes. This is starting to get pretty good. How are you in scary stories? Oh, so you got any special stories of your own up your sleeve? I can't believe you guys. I'm having no part of this. I'm plugging my ears. Would it be scarier to only hear bits and pieces of stories like that? Shut up, Moranji. Why are you pushing so hard for us to tell ghost stories? You stop calling me that, damn it! Well, I'll start off then. Yukiko can go last. Her stories are off the charts creepy. Let's see. It was over three years ago. A friend of mine in middle school told me this. It seems his sister went to a pretty prestigious private school, but she ended up running with the wrong crowd. Supposedly, she and a bunch of other girls were bullying another girl in their class. He said that she'd come home every night and laugh over the phone with her friends about the kid they were harassing. One day, she suddenly came home with a pale face. Ever since then, she started locking herself up in her room. No matter how much he asked what was going on, she'd completely ignore him. But he could hear her mumbling. She'd keep saying to herself, It's my turn next. My friend got worried, so he went to ask his sister's friends what was going on. But it turns out, all her friends had passed out for mysterious reasons and had been taken to the hospital. He was so scared that he didn't know what to do. That night, at around 11.30, suddenly his sister started screaming in her room. He ran into her room, and she was covering her ears and repeating, She's calling me! I can hear her! But my friend couldn't hear anything. And soon, his sister rushed out of the house. The next morning, she was found unconscious outside the school gates, just like her friends had been. In the end, she was taken to the hospital and recovered. But when he asked the people at school what happened, it seems the girl they were bullying was dead. They said that the girl must have become a spirit that haunted them one by one. That's impossible. Your story is full of inconsistencies. Wait, but I think I've actually read a police report like that. That's not denying it. You're supporting it. Wait, did she die? I think she turned up okay. Well, that doesn't matter. That wasn't bad for a leadoff, right? Well, you're next. What do you have in mind?
You're gonna do this to us too? It sounds realistic when you tell it. So? So? And then? Ooh, one time at the inn there was this. Zip it! What was that? I heard something. I heard something just now. That was unusual. It, it's just our imaginations. Anyway, keep going. You can't just end it here. That'd be even scarier. Whoa, that's freaky. Something about a nose that long? Ah! Uh, uh, blackout? Oh shit! Something just went past me! I told you I didn't want to do this! Why didn't you listen to me? Someone get the lights on! I can't take this anymore! Hurry! Uh, hang on! Where's the switch? How dare you to think you're eating all the snacks while I'm gone? I'm gonna curse you. Get him? Yeah, let's finish him off. I'm sorry, Teddy. Only people have human rights. Oh, babes, what's come over you? Why are you so mad at me? So it was Teddy. Damn it, he freaked us all out. And, and, what happened after that? All right, time to hit the snow. Someone's full of energy. You guys were up talking all last night, too. How do you know about that? Don't tell me. It's no surprise that they heard you, considering how loud you were. I told you over and over, the walls were thin. Uh, oh, so that's all. I thought he might have been peeping. We were talking about some pretty risque stuff in there. Sorry, Kanji. Did you get a nosebleed all over your pillow? Shut up. Who'd want to listen to you hens clucking all night anyway? I think I would. Just a little. I may have done a little listening. I heard things about Nao-chan's size and Yuki-chan's shape. Stop lying, Ted! We didn't talk about anything like that! Wait, what about my shape? Have I changed somehow? You're letting him get to you. You're being manipulated. Geez, forget about it. Let's just enjoy our day skiing. Let's go, senpai. Hold it right there. Risei-san, don't you think you're being a little too, you know, you've been hogging the same ski partner way too much? Huh? But it works out so nicely. You and Yosuke-senpai are both on snowboards. Teddy and Yukiko-senpai keep taking the steep slopes and won't slow down for me. And Kanji seems to want to be with Naoto-kun. Hey, what are you getting at? So, it's only natural that I'd pair up with Senpai yesterday. He and I will take it slow. You don't have to worry about me. Come on, Senpai! Let's go! Our logic is 100% ironclad! Showbiz people have amazing ways of persuading people. Why are you impressed? <clears throat> the, the reason we're on this trip is for all of us to make some good memories of spending time with Senpai. In other words, we should all be trying to have some skiing time with him. Oh, crap, you're right. You're right! I, I want to make memories with Senpai too! Sometimes when you say things, I wonder if you have some hidden agenda behind them. Then I'm not snowboarding today. I'm switching to skis. Hey, that's no fair. I want to leave my ski tracks of love with Sensei too. Um, hey! 
Why don't we let Senpai decide for himself? Be honest and just make the call. Whoa, wait a sec, everyone. I don't like where this is headed. Some of you sound like you're out for blood. Let's all enjoy the slopes together, okay? Th that would be best. I concur. <sighs> Thanks for not answering before I could get that under control. No prop. You've got a partner who understands your needs. <sighs> well, let's go enjoy the slopes. Surprised. I didn't think there was anything you weren't good at, Naoto-kun. How's it going? Do you think you're ready to start going for real? No, not at all. Quit freaking out about it. Open up your legs and point your toes in or else you're gonna speed up. Come on, keep your balance with your knees. B but if I stand with my feet further apart, I I'll fall down for sure. Like I keep saying, you'll be fine. Even if you do slide down, I'll catch you. You're so nice, Kanji. You never said anything like that to me. I already know how to ski. I don't have to teach you. Well, if I ever do need someone to teach me, I definitely want someone nice like Senpai to do it. Right, Senpai? They're doing that today, too? It's more like falling than skiing. Maybe they just don't know how to stop? Well, they ain't dead yet, so I guess they can stop somehow. <laughs> It's Chie Senpai and Yosuke Senpai. Yoo-hoo! Those two are looking good. I'm so jealous that they can snowboard. People who are good at it can look so cool. But I'm definitely more into skiing with you right now, Senpai. I feel bad that we're in other people's way, so shall we get going? Please, wait. Can you stay with me until I reach the bottom? I have no idea which way I'll end up going. Okay, last one there's a rotten egg. See you at the bottom. Wait, weren't you listening? I can't turn or stop. Don't worry, someone's going to be there to catch you. Right, Kanji? Huh? That's what... Uh, right! <laughs> oh, you getting so fired up about. I don't really see why you're so intense about this. If you're gonna catch me, then I'm gonna jump right into your arms. Um, I can trust you then? Well, I'll be counting on you. Jeez, you're too nervous now, Tokun. You just need to ski straight. What the hell's he doing now? He's not even wearing skis! <laughs> I think I'm going to walk. Welcome back. Yo!
Well, what should I do now? I'm gonna hang out here for a bit longer, but I don't know what to do. I don't like there's anything for me to do at home anyway. Oh, I got it. I'll go up to the roof or something. I'm, I'm gonna be behind the school building. You know, just because. Most of the girls are already gone. Hey, man, all these guys are obsessed with chocolate. If they want candy so much, why don't they just buy us some themselves? Are you serious? This is the one day you shouldn't be buying chocolate for yourself. Yeah? Man, you're clueless. Whatever, I know I'm getting some for sure today. Part-time workers at Juness? The important thing is that I have any at all. Right, Chie-san? Yukiko-san? I see you've got some big bags with you today. Wow, that's not the sound of desperation or anything. Yeah, I do have some. Right, Yukiko? Oh, yeah. Oh, sweet. I like candy. What makes you think it's going to you? It might be for me. Don't be so desperate. And I brought some too. Oh, are you guys handing out chocolate? Great timing. Here you go, Chie Senpai, for always being so hardworking. Why me? Because today's for giving out chocolate to the people you like, right? It's a great day to say thank you to all those people in your life, not just your romantic partner. Wow. Putting a new spin on things. She's so thoughtful. Must be all those years in showbiz. Hey, what about him? I'll give him his chocolate later. I've got some stuff to take care of right now, but I'll call you soon. Does that mean... I feel like everyone's super curious about who I'm going to hand my special chocolate to. If I do it now, it'll be embarrassing. So, see you later. Well, I have some other people to give chocolate to. Bye! Wow, her ability to avoid personal drama is impressive. Oh, Natokun! What are you all doing together? What's that supposed to mean? Today's a huge deal. Ah, uh, I see. Well, if you'll excuse me. She never breaks a sweat. Oh well, Kanji. Guess we're spending time with each other today. Sure, why not? I totally feel like we missed the train here. Attention, everyone! I have chocolates here with everyone's names on them. Please take your candy and go home. Okay. If you can't find yours, come see me later. Uh, that means you. Y Yukiko? Man, Yukiko's being even bossier than normal. I'm gonna go make sure she's okay. This is chocolate for everyone in it. Take yours and go home. What the hell? Talk about being brushed off. What, you don't want yours? I'll take it. God, you moron. Of course I want it. You were surprised just now. I acted kind of weird. I thought out all these ways to present it to you, and I practiced a big speech. But everyone was there, and I had such a huge box, and it was hard. This is for you. It's kind of big, but... I wanted to make it myself, but everyone else at the end noticed what I was doing. First they just supported me, but then they all started helping out. So 
It's more like a gift from the entire Amagi Inn, instead of me. I only made a little part of it. But I think it tastes good. <laughs> I'll make it by myself next time, with all my love poured into it. Will you open it? That was good. The cooks sure are impressive. But I wish there was more depth to it. They stopped me, but I should have gone with my gut and used the squid ink. add a layer of complexity to the flavor. They are the same color after all. Mm, I can't wait until next year, so I'll try making it next week. Mm, I'm so glad I could give it to you. I couldn't sit still. I've been thinking about this day for so long. I didn't know if we'd be able to spend the day together, but at the very least I wanted to give you the chocolate and let you know how I feel. But even this huge present isn't enough to express the way I feel. My feelings for you are much, much bigger. When I was making the chocolate with everyone at the inn, I felt like you were with me, as if you were standing right by my side. <laughs> I had a little daydream about that. I'll be the manager, and you'll be next to me. When a guest comes, we'll welcome them together. We'll say, welcome, together. And that's how it'll be. You think? <laughs> but that means you'll have to be adopted into our family and take our name. Um, it's kind of an important matter, so... I mean, it makes me happy that you want to, but you should, um, think it through. <laughs> Great, now I'm starting to sweat. It should be really cold right now. But I don't feel any of that. My heart is filled with my love for you. It's so warm. I feel like I'm going to melt. I'm scared that I'm going to disappear. I love you. I love you so much, with all that I am. No one can bother us here. I've got you all to myself. <laughs> Just kidding. Here, this is for you. Sorry to keep you waiting. I knew you'd notice how special it is. I added durian and habanero to it. Anyone can just melt some chocolate and pour it into a mold. Where's the love in that? So I added a bit of originality. I'm certain you'll like it. What's the matter? Oh, eat it now. I worked so hard on it. I want to see your happy face. Aren't you glad, Senpai? Fine then, I forgive you, but you'll have to tell me what you think later. The only thing I can hear is the sound of the waves. It's like we're all alone in the world. I'm going to tell you my dreams. I haven't told anyone else. I want to work and go to college. I think I could study lots of things. 
And during all that, I want to have a serious relationship with a man I love and get married on a tropical island and live in a house with a big yard and get a big dog. I'll cook and live happily with my husband. And then when we're old, we're going to drink tea every day by the garden together. Just kidding. I'm such a weirdo. Hey, don't jump to any conclusions. I didn't even say who I was talking about. Senpai, by a man I love, I meant you. Right now it's just a dream, but it's important to me. So I want to make all my dreams come true one by one, with you at my side. You can't take that back. Did you know, Senpai? People were born from the sea. I feel like we're Adam and Eve right now, just the two of us here. Eve was Adam's wife, so... That means Adam gets to have Eve all to himself. tells me I'm strong for pulling through. That's why I said thank you back. And I said that my big bro and my dad are rooting for me. And that's why I can be happy again. <laughs> really? And then my teacher was so happy. And then she said, when someone's cheering you on, even when you're in trouble, you feel energized. Do you feel like that when I cheer you on? Me too. When you root for me, I get so happy. We're the same. Me, my dad, and your friends are all on your side. Even if you go back soon, I hope you're happy. more chocolate. I made it myself. The big girls taught me how to make homemade chocolate creations. That's why I made one for you. said I should mix in iced coffee to add flavor. Oh, and bacon, since everyone likes bacon. Luckily, there was some bacon and iced coffee in the fridge. Rise chan said that the chocolate should assert itself, so it needs to be either really sweet or really spicy. You're a grown-up, big bro, so I thought you'd appreciate a bitter taste so I put bell peppers and wheatgrass juice in it. I think that sour chocolate sounds really assertive, so I added vinegar and ponzu sauce too. Yukiko said that my chocolate would have depth if I added fish. 
So I added some fish sausage and some of Dad's fermented squid. And now To told me she'd let me borrow a recipe book. And when I told her I was already done, she told me that you'd enjoy anything that I made for you. Um, Big Bro, thank you. I love you. Good morning. Mm. Mm. What's up? Mm. Mm. Well, let's go. All done packing? Well, if you forget anything, I'll mail it to you. Can I go answer the door? Oh yeah, that's right. Sure, go answer it. There's nothing to worry about anymore. Seeing her so cheerful like that, nothing makes me happier. I already bought your train ticket for tomorrow. It leaves at 9 o'clock in the morning from Yasuina bus station. Today's your last day here. Don't worry about Nanako. You can leave her to me. Go see your friends. This might be your last chance to talk to them.
Thank you. Very happy. Thank you. I'll see you later. Yo!
What a coincidence! It must be destiny! Oh, so you guys came here too! It's our very own special headquarters. There are so many memories here. Yo there, senpai. I thought you'd be here. We had a feeling we'd run into everyone if we came here. We were planning on seeing you off at the station tomorrow, but I was feeling too restless. So I decided to come here. Well... Since we're all here, why don't we have something to eat? Ooh, let's have steak! Steak! And make Yosuke pay for everything! <laughs> Will you shut up about your steaks? I really had fun in this world. Dude, your whole existence is about fun. Well, what we've gone through wasn't all fun and games. But I gotta say, I've never felt so fulfilled in my life. It seems we've been working on this forever, but at the same time, it felt like it went so fast. We won't ever gather here again like this, or tear our hair out trying to solve the mysteries. Even if we wanted to talk about it all, there were so many extraordinary things that no one would believe us. Come to think of it, for me, I think it all started when Chie told me about the Midnight Channel. I think I heard about it from her too. How did you learn about it, Chie? I guess it was just a random rumor. A lot of girls were trying it out. Huh, I wonder how it started then. Who knows? Maybe someone accidentally came across it? The Midnight Channel. You know, that really was the cause of everything. I mean, the fog lifted after we caught Adachi, but there's still a lot of stuff that isn't clear yet. It's still foggy over there, too. Hmm, some weird guy might use it to do bad things again. Didn't that Amino something monster say it granted us power? I bestowed power onto those who could brave the hollow forest. In other words, he gave the power to enter TVs to those who awakened to their persona ability, so that he might use us as pawns to enact his scheme. Hey, that reminds me. Didn't your hand suddenly slip into the TV even before anything happened to you? Does that mean you're an exception? Well, wait, then what about Adachi and Namatame? 
Those two could go inside TVs before all this stuff about personas, right? What? Then Senpai and the other two could do it for some other reason? Then there must be something you're not remembering. Anything come to your mind, Senpai? A letter? Hey, this better not be another warning. Huh? This is from jail? It's from Adachi. I'm sure you're surprised to get this letter out of the blue. I'm writing this because there's something I need to tell you. Ever since I made it out alive, there are some things I understand now. It's true that my game's over. As you all insisted at the time, I'll abide by the rules of this world. But as long as I'm in stir here, I can't clean up after myself. So I hope this will give you something to think about regarding this case. There's still this feeling I can't shake. It's about how it all started, about that midnight channel. Now I remember, someone told me about it when I first came to town, before I heard the rumors at the station. And I was intrigued when I noticed that something similar was written on Namatame's reports as well. But I can't remember who it was that told me. Since Namatame and I both gained our power after coming to Inaba, I have a feeling that has something to do with it. I don't know if any of this will be useful or not, but I hope it can help somehow. Hmm, it's not very helpful to know that he can't remember who it was. I'm not sure how to put it, but I kind of know the feeling. It's like... I don't know how to say this. Like something's connecting all these things. Something beyond what we can see. That world. The midnight channel. The ability to enter TVs. They all feel like separate things. You know what I mean? First the rumors, then the serial murder, followed by us deciding to investigate the case. If they all really were separate, they wouldn't fit together like this, right? There has to be some kind of conductor behind everything. So you think the person Adachi mentioned, the one who told him about the Midnight Channel, is that conductor? Uh, did I strike gold again? <laughs> it's seriously just something that popped into my head! Senpai, is there anything like that you can think of? We were involved in a murder case last year, which we succeeded in solving. But the monster we fought last said we did well in playing our parts. Perhaps this means Adachi and Namatame were players as well. Could it be that from the beginning, this serial murder case was merely a portion of a much larger scheme? And none of the people who were directly involved in the case ever suspected it. Hey, this scheme. Could it be the whole thing about filling both worlds with the fog and turning mankind into shadows? So someone was behind the scenes watching us, the culprits, and maybe even that monster, and he manipulated Adachi and Namatame at the very beginning so everything would come together perfectly? Let's go out into town. We might find something. Although, you may be the only one capable of noticing it. Please contact the rest of us should you come across anything. We can't say our goodbyes tomorrow with this hanging over our heads. Let's go figure this out.
The day you first came to town? Hmm, let's see. We were the first ones to greet you, right? Did we stop somewhere on the way home? I'm pretty sure Nanako and I left home that afternoon, picked you up, and came straight back. <laughs> now that I think back to that night, I was called back to work as soon as we got home, so I couldn't talk much. And the very next day, those strange murders started. Sheesh. A lot's happened since then. It's been one heck of a year, hasn't it? Hey, big bro, on the first day, didn't we stop at that place? The gas station. I used the bathroom there. When I got back to the car, you were talking to the weird attendant. Yeah, when I first met you, I remember the gas attendant because he was weird. Hmm, now that you mention it, I do remember that. I filled the tank before you we went home, huh? Uh, yeah, I, I do remember you talking to the attendant there. I didn't remember seeing him much before, so he stuck in my mind. But I don't know about calling him weird. It wasn't like he looked or acted funny. Yeah, come to think of it, I, I never saw that guy again. Mmm, it wasn't really that the attendant looked weird. But after you talked to him, you looked sick, big bro. Mmm, don't you remember? I asked you on the way home. Are you carsick? You said you were okay, but that attendant, he was just a little scary for some reason. Hmm. Well, I didn't know about that. But honestly, I'm surprised you're asking all these questions. I thought you came here just to reminisce. So, why are you looking for the person you met first? Is something going on with that attendant? Do you know him? I see. Well, just remember that you leave tomorrow. I don't know what you're up to, but you should come back home early. There are some dark clouds on the horizon. We might get some rain soon. Okay. Welcome to the Velvet Room. How may I help you? You have solved the mystery and deflected the disaster that so nearly fell upon you. Is there something else beyond this you need our assistance with? Intriguing. So, is there still something that leaves you unsatisfied? Hmm, what may that be? Well then, let's take a look and see what it is you might be sensing. <gasps> ah, this is a surprise. These are shards of power, allowing one to see through to the truth of things without being swayed by hollow rumors. Interesting. Indeed, you have come here today for a reason. Then I shall play my part as well. That is a crystal of power which you have nurtured through your journey. An orb that repels fabrications of all sorts, dispels lies, and shines upon the truth. Truth is a thing which only appears to those who have observed, considered, and made a choice. At the end of the path you chose lies the truth. Believe in it, and continue without faltering. <laughs> How marvelous! 
It seems that you will reveal the journey's true end, one beyond our predictive power. Now go to the place where everything began. So the last battle wasn't enough for you? He has certainly have the powers I was expecting. I saw the potential you had within you. Your friends were drawn to the spark I stirred in you. That's why they're here now, with their awakened powers. Still, I didn't think you'd make it all the way to me. Indeed, I never expected this at all. You're really something. What? You don't remember? When you first came to town, I gave your power a gentle push. Just like this. Are you in high school? Does it surprise a city boy to see how little there is out here? There's so little to do, I'm sure you'll get bored fast. You'll either be hanging out with your friends or doing part-time jobs. Speaking of which, we're actually looking for part-time help right now. Give it some thought, why don't you? We don't mind if you're a student. You're not the only one I welcome to town with a handshake greeting. I did the same for a few other outsiders like you. A handful of strangers were more than sufficient to stimulate a small place like this. But it seems the stimulus was stronger than I imagined. Enough to envelop this town with fog, and later lift it. Not only that, you now stand before me as if your assigned part wasn't enough. What for? What will grasping the truth do for you? Why such greed? I guess it's the foolish nature of being mortal. Izunami, Amano Segiri, ruler of the fog, is merely an aspect of myself that I birthed long ago. You awakened to a power I had not imagined. And now here you stand, face to face with me. I can no longer ignore this situation as mere foolishness. This may be fate, as decreed by the world. Very well. This time I shall pit my full strength against you. But in return, you must come prepared to follow through in your futile resistance. <laughs> I'll be waiting for you there. Hey! 
Hey, are you all right? Who was that you were just talking to? Did she just disappear? Wait, don't tell me. So, it wasn't over after all. You're saying this so-called Izanami is the conductor, and she's waiting for us in the other world? If we don't beat her, I'm sure it'll all happen again. Oh, okay. The others aren't far off, so I'll call them up. Yeah, will ya? Tell him this is really going to close the case. Right. We'll defeat her and put an end to this for sure this time. All right. Then once we're all ready, let's meet up at Juness. I'm sure we'll be all right if we work together. I sense a tremendous presence. It's unlike anything we had faced, and it seems like a new area has formed. I bet it's that lady. She's waiting for us there. That reminds me. That Amino something we beat said stuff like, we'll meet again. If that thing's gonna show up again, let's crush him completely so he can't cause any more problems from here on out. Damn straight. Let's go snap that thing in two. We'll do it and give Senpai a big farewell tomorrow. Let's do our best like always, leader. It is kinda sad that this really is gonna be the last time we do something like this. You know, this might sound like a weird thing to say, but it was a lot of fun. That's because we all strove together toward a common goal. There were many things we believed in without questioning them. The culprit's identity, their motives. There were many occasions where we nearly gave up. It may have been easier if we'd chosen to look the other way, but we didn't. Even if we had to fight every inch of our way, I want to go on feeling, seeing, Touching and thinking for myself. Yeah. Still, one person alone can only understand so much. That's why we're all here together. Right. All for one and one for all! So long as someone's got your back, you can kick against the pricks no matter how tough they are. This is for our future! So we can see him off tomorrow with no regrets. Ew. Yosuke always has to try to make himself look all cool. But he's so pathetic, it makes my skin crawl. Probably just fleas on your ratty old suit. I spilled juice on you earlier. No wonder I smell of orangey freshness. Well then, let's do this.
to darkness. Okay! Places, everyone. And action! Yep, leave it to us! Go! Beat him up! Counting on you! Persona! Damn, it's not going down. Last one! Go for it! Persona! There! Oh, I can't right. defeat it! <laughs> Persona! Tim, barely a one. Have I gotten a little stronger? All right, power it up!
Congratulations in making it this far. Well, thank you very much, Ms. Root of All Evil. You granted certain individuals the power to enter the TVs. You created the Midnight Channel as well. And lastly, you started a rumor about the Midnight Channel to raise its public awareness. Is this correct? All, save one point. This Midnight Channel you speak of, it is indeed a device to draw hearts into this world. But it was always your individual wills that would determine what appeared on it. Humans ache to expose their suppressed sides, while the prying eyes around them are curious to see them lay bare. The want to show, and the want to see. I granted a window that catered to both. That is all. Everyone wished to know more about the people who became famous through the media, and the Midnight Channel was there to grant their wishes. Once the person they wanted to see entered the realm formed by human thought, they would appear even more clearly. I see. So that's how it worked. Are you saying all you did was give that initial spark to Senpai and the others, then watched things unfold? And the rumors spreading, things going wrong. We're to blame for all that's happened? People's curiosity was at fault? Everything was for your sake. To create the world mankind so wanted. Man struggles to understand one another. You can only truly know a finite number of people within your lifetime. But humans disregard this fact and try to know more people than is possible. Only by comparing yourself to others can you define yourselves. Thus, your ever-present anxiety. Your anxiety causes you to see only what you want to see, and believe only what you wish to believe. As I said, your desire is for a world enshrouded in fog. I must agree that the vast majority of people are exactly as you say. But we don't intend to live that way. If we were fine with the world you're making, we'd never have come this far, damn it! We'll keep searching for truth and figuring out who we are as we go on with our lives. We all will. Together. That's right! No more butting into our business! We will continue to live in our world with everyone else. That's why. Then come, sinful sons of man. Throw down! Persona! <laughs> Persona! What's the matter? Did you intend to defeat me with such feeble strength? Ikusuke Senpai! Man, man! Ah! 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 Ah
Ahora. I'm pissed now. Counting on you. Persona. It's over. <laughs> Come on now! You cannot atone so easily for your foolish pride in stepping into the realm of the gods. to defeat me. of power which you have nurtured through your journey. An orb that repels fabrications of all sorts, dispels lies, and shines upon the truth. Truth is a thing which only appears to those who have observed, considered, and made a choice. At the end of the path you chose lies the truth. Believe in it, and continue without faltering. Existences. This battle will determine our future. A god? Huh! Bring it on! You cannot defeat me with strength alone. Soon, 
you will understand. Look out! We've never seen anything like her!
<laughs> Persona! Goodbye. Accept the reality of your death. What's the matter? Isn't it too early to give up? You taught me what a family truly is. I had my hands full just with Nanako when you came rolling in. <laughs> I wasn't sure what to do. But then again, I can get back up as many times as I need to with you two with me. However painful it gets, I'll just grip my teeth. I'll get up as many times as I have to for you two. A father can be pretty stupid that way, huh? Don't go, partner. Everything inside me changed after I met you. I'm glad we met. I wouldn't have made it this far if I hadn't done it alongside you. You can't let it end this way, right? You can keep going. Right, partner? Hey, can you hear me? Don't close your eyes yet. I'll give you our strength. You're our last hope. Please, get back up, just once more. Hey, senpai, how much longer are you gonna just lie there? I mean, like that senpai? Not the kind of guy who can let it drop like this. That ain't the senpai I look up to. Get back up, just one more time. Let me protect you. I came to this town, when I think back on all the fun I had with you... Senpai, please stand up just one more time. It'll be your strength. What's the matter? Are you gonna let it all end here? Come on, you're not alone. Just like me and Ko weren't. I won't let you do this alone. You idiot! Always insisting on doing everything yourself! Some things you can only do because you're not alone. It doesn't matter if it's a boyfriend, a friend, or family. You'll always have to part someday. But our bonds mean we never truly have to say farewell. I'm sorry I can't be there to support you in your hour of need. Life. It's filled with so many things that are dirty, grotesque, and painful. There's no way you can stand it alone. But no one is truly alone in this world. You know that, since you've protected those precious to you, right? Come on. People are waiting for you. Mister, 
actually, you're only a high school boy. You must have gone through so much pain. Yeah, it must have been so tough for you. But it's wonderful to be able to protect someone who matters to you. You showed me that joy. Sensei. I'll protect you, Sensei. You gave me my life. You're important to me. I'm not alone anymore. And neither are you, Sensei. I'm sure together we can do things that no one could do alone. Be. How could I be defeated? How am I the one to disappear? Instead of the endless struggle, wouldn't it be easier to wrap oneself in lies and live in blissful ignorance? Isn't that true peace for humans? How many times do we have to tell you? The hell with that shit! Stop assuming you know us! <laughs> Very well. Then try and live your way. Power enough to erase my existence. You have already exceeded what I thought humanity to be capable of. You have lifted the fog in this world, as well as the fog in your own. And whether that will lead to happiness or not, rests upon your shoulders. Children of man, well done. <gasps> All right, we did it. Uh, thank goodness. It's really over now. Yep. This time it's all over! It seems this is more like a beginning for us, though. Well, now we've got no regrets for tomorrow.
<laughs> How marvelous! You have driven back a godly being and brought about a new world. This will be the last time we summon you here. Soon, the fog will lift and our destination will be visible. We will be arriving shortly. This journey was a fruitful one, worthy of marking a turning point in your destiny. Many a time along the way did the fog of lies prevent you from moving forth. Yet in every instance, you overcame the temptation of easy exits and false terminals. In forging bonds with those precious to you, you moved closer to the truth, one step at a time. And my heart danced with delight to see you succeed. I am most honored to have borne witness to such a wondrous journey. Our destination is close at hand now. Well then, we have finally come to your journey's true end. Our contract has been fulfilled. My own duties end here as well. You were truly a remarkable guest. Now, go forth and see with your own eyes. See the world you have won, the bright, magnificent future. Yo. Well, this is it. You really are leaving, huh? It hasn't really hit me yet. N no more senpai from t tomorrow on! <laughs> hey, quit crying. It's way too soon for that. But... but... <laughs> Sheesh. Um... <clears throat> This stuff's kind of contagious, you know? We gotta put on a good face for Senpai. Hey, bro. Mm -mm. I don't want you to go away. Nanako, didn't you promise that you wouldn't cry? Building a case against Adachi is going pretty smoothly. After all, he's made a full confession to his crimes. There haven't been any more incidents since then. Inaba's finally back to its normal, peaceful self. And Nanako's better now, too. I couldn't ask for anything more. Thanks for everything. To me, you're just as much a part of this family as Nanako. I'm really glad you came to stay with us. Sensei, I finally found a place for me. 
That's why I'm going back over there. To make sure it never goes wrong again. I'm going to protect that world from now on. I can finally be proud and say that world is where I belong. Man, Senpai. This town's gonna feel empty without you. How cruel! Were you even listening? We can see you anytime we want, you dork. Like you'll be gone long. Soon as you start craving something like ice cream, you'll be back in a flash. <laughs> Come on, my honeys. Laughing that way isn't very cute, you know. You're just gonna be going in and out of the TV at Juness. How's that different from what you've been doing? Um, I can't quite decide what to do. At first, I only planned on staying here until the case was completely closed. Maybe I should stick to my original plan and take the train back with you, Senpai. <laughs> Kidding, of course. I couldn't do something like that. It's not as though we'll never see each other again. Feel free to call me anytime, even if there isn't a case to solve. I don't feel like saying goodbye either. Hey, you got any plans during the long holiday in May? If you're free, come over and visit. With no mysteries to solve, we can have some real fun. I'll make reservations now so that we can stay at my family's inn. Ooh, I can get my revenge for that night. Our surprise sneak attack will work for sure this time. Don't bring that up, you stupid bear. Hey, what happened to going back to that world? That has nothing to do with this. It's entirely different. It's almost time. You better get on the train. Come back anytime you want. We can eat ramen again. Me and Daisuke will definitely come crash at your place someday. As soon as I can look out for myself, I'll go see you. Well, see ya. Good luck over there, too. If anything happens on your end, we'll come running. Until we meet again, Senpai. Senpai, I'll be waiting for you. See ya. Take care. I'll be looking forward to seeing you again. Well, be careful. I'll see you, big bro. Bye-bye. <laughs>
He's really gone. It's sad that he won't be around, but we will be okay, right guys? Doesn't matter how far apart we are. The bonds we've made will remain strong. Everyone's heart is connected to the people they know and trust. It's those bonds that let us all search for our purpose in life. As long as it's a purpose you believe in, there will always be someone who can help you fulfill it. You, me, and everyone else, there are no barriers. Our hearts are one. Right, Sensei? <laughs>